Welcome and good morning to Johnson Valley, California. I am Miles Haskins, and this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. Today we are about to go live racing for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, presented by Progressive Insurance. Today we will be going racing here in just a few moments. It'll be two laps, roughly 140 miles. The race will end tonight at 6 p.m. We still have a to give away the Can-Am for the giveaway we've been uh, go, doing all year all season long. It's going to be great to see. And tonight on the Monster Energy stage at 6.30, we'll kick off some music. So while we get ready to kick off the race, I'm going to throw it to the booth. Ricky Johnson, Scott Rain, it's your show. Thank you so much, Miles. And once again, welcome to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries, as well as the Can-Am UTV Hummers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. I'm Ricky Johnson, along with Scott Rain. We've been through a lot, buddy. You, you, <laughs> you, you did my rookie season back at Crandon. We've done this multiple years, but a lot's been going on this week. Oh, yeah. it's it. Right now, what we've been talking about probably more than anything is Mother Nature. has been kicking our butt early in the week. Last two days, it's been absolutely fantastic. A little bit of wind and not much, but you can see how the dust is hanging a little bit right now. That could be a big factor this afternoon. Well, in, in driving in, when we were here last week for the Desert Challenge, um, the, the valley was full of dust. Coming in today, I could see the valley. Everything's great. We got a little bit of wind, and we got all the UTVs. You can hear them in the background as they're working their way here. But the... The, the man on the pole, let's talk about him. He's had a dominating week. Yeah, I mean, it's a. I, where did this guy come from? It's kind of like <laughs> been a 10 years to become an overnight sensation. Every car he gets in, his, he's been phenomenal at, whether it was uh, the 4400 car or the, his Can-Am. But, uh, oh, man, between uh, winning uh, the uh, shootout the yep. other night, uh, took care of that, not a problem. One of the top five qualifiers in the 4400 car yep. the other day, and, and then now starting on the pole. But what I love about this out here at King of the Hammers, this is like everyone's kind of old school. They want to get as much seat time as possible. They're not the prima donnas. We even have some of the short course prima donnas out here. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. <laughs> and I say that with all due respect. But on the on the front row, we have Paul Wolf. Right next to him, Kyle Cheney, last year's champion and also class winner. So there's And also Kyle's a short course guy, so is he going to yeah. give a little elbow on the start? Yeah, it's one of those interesting things. I mean, we got the favorites, the Can-Ams. If you're in a Can-Am, you're just a little bit of a notch above everybody else uh, in the other manufacturers. But there's, I, got, I call them dark horses, but dark horse favorites. Yeah. It's CJ Greaves, Johnny Greaves. They've been doing a lot of work. Johnny was at another event last weekend out in Iowa. Uh, cleaned the clock everybody there, but CJ wasn't. He wasn't there. Right. CJ was tunnel vision. It's all about this week. Dad, I don't want to race that event. I want to concentrate on King of the Hammers. That's right. And speaking of Kyle Cheney, we have a little piece on him. This guy was the dominant guy last year. Take a look at Kyle Cheney. So I'm here with Kyle Cheney, back-to-back 4900 Can-Am UTV champ. Going for a three-peat this year? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we put a lot of preparation in this uh, this fall. We I came out after Crandon and left two vehicles out here, and I f flew back and forth. Terry Madden was uh, kind enough to allow me to uh, keep a trailer at his house, and uh, I flew back and forth, and we tested and tested and tested, and wanted to get all my testing done this year, or before I got here right now. That way, when I get here right now, I can focus on actually pre-running yeah, pre and the track. not the car, yeah. Yeah, like last year we were here just testing the whole time, and I didn't get really any pre-running done, so we've been out pre-running, and uh, we did the rocks today, and we did the the, um, oh, the prologue for the uh, okay. desert race. That's um, going to be pretty wild. Yeah, I, mean, I can't wait. That's tomorrow. The prologue's tomorrow, and then the desert race is uh, Sunday, so we're uh, trying to get this car ready for that race. So you're racing desert, you're racing rocks, and you're racing a, a Can-Am in the 4400 class, correct? Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're doing it all, all about the short course. I guess I could have brought my short course car, but we uh, were short of power pack, so I had to pull the motor and tranny out of it and put it in one of my cars. So which race are you focused on the most, uh, or equally as all? Uh, probably the 4400 race because I've already run one the desert race. I've already won the UTV race, and I, I want to win the 4400 race. And, not, and a UTV. Just, I mean, it, it, it's, awesome. it's a UTV, but I mean, it's almost it's just as capable as their trucks. You know, they, there's places where they're faster than us, and that, well, there's places where we're you know we're smaller and more nimble than them. So, you know, I still think it boils down to driver. I mean, I still think the best man wins. I don't think it has much to do with machine. And, and I agree 100%. And and you touched on it, but you're more nimble. You're lighter. Uh, power to weight ratio. You're probably winning in that category as well, correct? Mm, I don't know. I think there are, some of them are like 900,000 more. So I, I'd say okay. it's pretty close. Okay. Yeah. You know they. 
I don't know what they weigh. I mean, I really don't. Uh, 5, I'd say, yeah, four to five thousand. Yeah, five thousand so, pounds. Yeah, yeah, you're probably about right. They're, they're yeah. probably break down similar. Yeah, they probably similar weight weight to power ratio, but you know they just got a lot more power. Their their drivetrain's a lot stronger, but they also have a lot more power to break stuff. So yeah, yeah the, the, the UTVs are a little more fragile, but k ams really stepped up the last few years, and and you're proving it that they're building a real car oh yeah our cars are tough i mean you know we're racing the stock class this year in the utv race yeah so um, you and both millers I, yeah i was doing my homework and i i was doing it i was like you know pro mom pro, wait stock huh all right I yeah like that. yeah we saw rj did it last year and some other guys and you know he got fourth overall and and you know can am was like you know we want you guys to to race the to, stock to class prove what it, yeah can do. It, and prove to you know see if you know try to win the overall from the stock class so i think it's great you know i think it uh you know our, our big 4400 cars like you know the ones we built for the 4400 race and the cars that we've raced the last couple of years i don't think they're any better than than the stock cars like the stock cars are it's just like i feel like it's almost the same ratio from utv to 4400 like the cars are just bigger you know okay. so now we can race a smaller more nimble car smaller tires you know it's you can be harder on the car because you're not worrying about braking as much because the big yeah, tires the mass, yeah, the, that, yeah the car's lighter so i mean i'm looking forward to it i think it's gonna be fun well we'll see how it shakes out best luck in three races and see if you can uh, get a three peak there kyle thank you all right always a pleasure baby. Yeah. thank you all righty thank you miles and this guy is like i dream a genie like he was right there and now he's in the booth with us miles Welcome to the booth. How did you transport here so damn quick? <laughs> well, it's, it's just been all week going on, so I've just been a little bit everywhere. But, man, it's been a great show so far. Uh, Ricky, Scott, always a pleasure being in the booth with you guys, and this is going to be a great race. Well, I mean, we have the stars of stars. What I love about this, and I was talking about this before we went to the Kyle Chaney piece, is that everybody here, we got Shannon Campbell. We got the, the big dog, Paul Wolf, who, who qualified up there, and they're running these UTVs now. They're not golf carts anymore. I'm looking at some <laughs> of these chassis, and I'm telling you, they are full 4,400 trucks hey. with a belt and, a, you know, and, and in a UTV, in a Ab UTV body. Absolutely. I mean, they're, some of these have custom chassis. They're full-built race cars. And, you know, like you said, you can you can go buy one off the showroom floor, or you can get that one and transfer all the, the pieces into the, your custom-built race car. It's pretty impressive, uh, the technology, where it's came from. But what you can do in the stock vehicle, I came out here with my son Luke, and, and we were out with Terry Madden to kind of show us around. And we trained the guy, the military guys, the Special Forces guys, basically the same thing that we learned from Dave Cole when we were out here and we did the Everyman Challenge and, and the the, the uh, spec truck, but you can go out and experience these rock cars. Now, you're not going to go blast chocolate thunder and backdoor and sledgehammer and all these crazy names that we have, but you can get out there and do some rock crawling and, and learn that and have a good time. But, but Scott, let's let's just go down and look at some of these guys in this field. Well, I actually went to the back of the field and I'm kind of going forward, seeing some names I might recognize. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see uh, Johnny Greaves as far back as, as he is. Um, starting. Well, he had issues in qualifying. Yeah. The, Remember, this race is on adjusted time, so sometimes starting in the backpack can be an advantage if there's a bottleneck up front. And you can uh, really CJ, make up some CJ, time. his son, had problems as well, so he's starting pretty far back. We've also got a little bit of star power starting in the back of the pack with Hubert. Yep. Hubert is here. Yep, so yep. Uh, he's got his fancy uh, bibbed uh, fire suit uh, out here this week. Uh, Robbie Gordon is starting. 97th in his brand new uh, UTV, the Speed UTV. Right, and that thing looked phenomenal. We were watching Mad Max in, in the Desert Challenge last week. It's a great looking car. It is a great looking <laughs> car. It, it, Max had a ton of speed through there, but hey, them and a lot of other people have belt issues because with these, we went from really fast to a couple really steep hills, and what I think happened is that they scarred a couple belts because they're going really fast and they gas it in that high range. So if you are brand new to this, you get going across the desert, you're having a good time, you come to a steep hill, take a second, put it in low range, crawl your way up, get to the top, lose one second shifting, one second shifting to gain what could yeah. eventually be five minutes when you have to change a belt. And five to ten minutes to change a belt sometimes. Unless you're Rodrigo and Pudi and he did it in three. <laughs> I don't know how they friend. did it that fast. That was unbelievable. <laughs> So as we're watching, these guys are going to it. Let's go to the next, to the lovely lady in our team. Emmy is down on the starting line. Emmy, what do you have for us? Take it away. Thanks, guys. I am down here at the starting line of the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race, and the energy is palpable. Helmets are on, motors are motoring, and it is a ton of fun and dust out here. And like you said, you guys, dust is going to be the deciding factor here. I was talking to Jay Shaw. He's the first one off the line in the number 17 car, and he is 
very happy to be starting on the pole. He started on the pole in 2021, so he's happy to be out of the dust and he's ready to do battle. But Bryce Menzies is coming for him in the number seven. I mean, he knows that this is gonna be a super fun race, but he wants the challenge. Bryce is going for the overall in his Polaris. So watch out for number seven. Bryce might be coming up from that ninth position to challenge Jay in the number 17 car. Back to you guys in the booth. All righty, so looking at that, we're going to go over the starting line. We get, we're we're going to step away for a commercial, and real quick, we'll be right back for the start of the UTV Championship at King of the Hammers. Take it away. against your dad is something that 90% of the racers in the world will never get. I've accomplished everything I've wanted to do and now he's just like taking the reins. I want to be remembered for being a, a, a huge part of short course, not just racing, keeping it alive, helping it grow. If it comes down to the last weekend and I'm in it, the boys better watch out. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries, and you are watching the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. We are just moments away from the start, but let's talk about some of the stars. Up on the front row, we got Paul Wolf and Kyle Chaney. So like one, a man that's very impressive this year, but Kyle Chaney can never count him out. And I heard, uh, Scott, I heard you talking a little bit ago about Paul Wolf. He's P2, that's front line for this race. He's also front line for the 4400 class. That is very, very impressive. On top, on top of winning the, uh, the, uh, the shootout, the, shootout yeah. the other night. I mean, the guy's been on the podium. Uh, every time he touches the wheel, he's one of the top two, three, four guys in that class or whatever event that he happens to be in at that time. And he's still less than a year in the 4400 car. Yeah. He, last year in Moab was his first time ever being in a, in a 4400 limited car, and he won that race. He's won multiple races. Uh, so the, the transfer between his Can-Am and his UFO uh, really are, are very similar. I mean, and he makes it a, work. He's such a cool guy, level-headed. I mean, he doesn't get high, he doesn't get low. He's just very, very level-headed. I mean, you talk about a good old boy. That's Paul Wolf. <laughs> there we go. So, hey, guys, we are getting ready. We are just seconds away from the start. And right now on the front row is Jay Shaw and Paul Wolf. They're going to be going off one and two. And then behind them is number third and fourth is Kyle Chaney and Cody Miller. So we're holding for just a moment. We're going to do the best to count it down and give you everything that we can along the way. Um, we have stars in the house. Everybody rolling by. We saw Raul Gomez, the king of kings, <laughs> yep, yep. just walking through. Hey, what's up, guys? You know, got Bill Burgos true cruising through, saying hello to everybody. This is awesome. If you're close, you got to make sure that you come out and check it out. If you're watching, you want to get the premium, go on there, click the premium, and you don't have to watch any of the commercials and things like that. You can make sure that you get all of the action. Yeah, don't miss one there's thing. There's extra feeds. It's only $25 a month. So the next three days, you'll get your money's worth for sure out of that. Absolutely. Everyone's been 
loving it to going back and forth and we get to watch the we get to watch what's going on so we have the premium up here but if you're getting a chance once again we are getting we're just moments away from the start and up front you can see that number 17 is jay shaw and right next to him in uh the number 1018 is Paul Wolf. Let's just go down a couple of the guys. Uh, Kyle Chaney, Cody Miller, Mike Park, and Phil Blurton. Always somebody to think about. <laughs> we got some crowd favorites out there. And look at that. The Can-Ams are strong out front. Absolutely. And then we got uh, Mark Liebel and also uh, Mark Walsh. I'm sorry, Robert Liebel and Mark Walsh. Welsh. Yeah, Mark Welch has uh, been racing with us for quite some time. Great to see him doing so well. Sitting in that eighth spot. All right, you guys ready? Nine, eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one, one, go! Oh, I would have jumped the start. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that more than once, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have started out with the, All right. Paul Wolf taking advantage, looking in, cutting. Uh, a little inside, outside. Yeah, but wait, watch uh, Jay Shaw up on that cushion all the way around the outside. This is a and, great drag race off the start. And now we go into the right-hander, so come see, come saw. But now let's see if that upside really works, which a little bit of push. And Jay Shaw comes out with the whole shot as they start into the desert. And since we had great American short course this year, they really added some uh, extra stuff to the short course. Uh, the NorCal crew did an amazing job getting that going. All righty, Kyle Chaney and Cody Miller are off the line as well. So are we going 30 seconds or a minute? Uh, 30 seconds for uh, this race. Yep. All right. Today so we, and tomorrow is 30 second increments, and then on Saturday be one minute. Yep, so the bigger trucks are going to give a little bit more time, but these guys, get out there. Let's get racing. So off the line next will be Mike, Mike Park and Phil Blurton. All right, where's the Phil Blurton, ladies? Let's hear it. There we go. <laughs> Talk about Blurton. You saw Eric Miramon yesterday took a little ride. If you're not going to get first, you're going to make a highlight. That was pretty wild. <laughs> if you ain't first, you're last. All righty, that goes Phil Blurton. Looks like Phil gets a whole shot on the outside. So Phil uh, with a great start. Next is going to be Bryce Minzy and Travis uh, Zollinger. So Bryce is in that new that new uh, Polaris, yeah, which is Pro great. R. The yep. Pro R. So how much rock crawling has Bryce done? So I was surprised to see him. He what didn't race the desert race with us, but he's yes. just racing rocks. So it, it, he's still fairly new it, but he's got a Oren Anderson riding with him, and he's no uh, he's he's nothing new to the rocks. Yeah, O-ring, o -ring knows definitely what he's doing. They also work together. Next off the line is Dustin Battleaxe. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. The, this is Bryce Benzi. We're back on Bryce Benzi and Travis Oliger. Bryce better That's get the whole Mark, shot. Yeah, Mark Welch and Robert Liebel uh, yeah. off the line. So. Yeah, Scott, Scott's keeping us honest. We got a little ahead of ourselves there, Ricky. <laughs> All right, my bad. See, see, we got this former driver in the booth with us, and he's he's got that mindset of a driver right now. He's out there getting all antsy. No, I, I'm making my mistakes early because I'm gonna clean it up at the end, coming for the <laughs> coming for the win at the finish. Now, Mr. Travis Sullinger, that's a single seat. Can-Am next to Bryce Menzies, and Zollinger gets the early lead. Yeah, and he does. He gets. I'm going to give Bryce a hard time. He gets smoked in the short course. <laughs> Scott, what do you think of the new short course? It's pretty awesome seeing the like American the, short course out yeah, there. Yeah, they, the, the they did a heck of a job banking, putting extra banking in some of those turns, and they did a heck of a job because they, they watered the heck out of it, then packed it down, watered it, packed for, like, what, the last two weeks? Yeah, yeah, You've the last been two weeks. weeks yeah. yeah, they've been doing a great job. All right, Dustin Battleaxe Jones getting the whole shot on Brian Hamby. So Battleaxe working his way, and this guy loves to race. I mean, he's doing it. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's into it. He loves a little bit of everything. Yeah, he's a great character of our sport. And there's Bryce Menzies on screen trying to chase down Travis Zollinger. Yeah, Battleaxe Jones, he's a – would, would you say a uh, uh, red internet? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> I mean, he's very, very, very active on social media. He just does a great job and having fun. You want to watch his videos. You want to oh, watch. He's always too. having fun. Yeah. That's for sure. All right, off line 13, the 14th was Robert Parker and Hunter Miller. Looked like uh, Hunter might have got the whole shot there. Next on the line is Christopher and and Big. And Bergie and, and Matthew Woolraven. Wol we, we saw Xander Woolraven ra race last night in the KOH Kids Race. It's really good to see the whole family affair out here having fun. Woolraven in that brand new Can Am. Oh, taking off by himself. Oh, there he is. And look at the top left. We have our leader. Is that Shaw or Wolf getting chased down by the helicopter? Yep, and then next we got. Uh, 
uh, Zach Pullen and also Shannon Campbell, who's using this for his Sunday race. A lot of yeah, these this guys is a running. Pre-run. There's nothing like pre-run at race pace because you well, see it differently. And what it does to your adrenaline, for your a- energy, and all the different stuff. You can find holes in your game today. Get it, you know, you got tomorrow to take a day off and then be ready for Sunday. And and for Jason Saturday. Berger is race riding shotgun as well, so he's getting to see the course as well. When, and he'll hop in with Jason Shear on Saturday too. All right, uh, Scott. We, next, we got Dustin Robbins and Casey Curry. I can't help but think that Casey's another guy that's using this as a, uh, I don't want to say pre-run for Saturday. Absolutely. Oh, you yeah. can call it a pre-run. Pre-run at race pace is a real thing for sure. Well, and but but they take it serious. All these guys oh, yeah. have, have sponsorship from Polaris or can or Yamaha. Or, you know, the list goes on down the line. But you, you got to make sure there's Casey Curry. Once and again, these short course guys are getting smoked <laughs> on short course. What is going on? Maybe Dustin, they learn patience. Patience. Dustin uh, Jones with all things UTV gets the early lead over Casey Curry. Our next group, yeah, this is another another short course guy, R.J. Anderson. I guess, would you say he's the Polaris poster boy? Oh, he, yeah, he's been doing sure. stuff for years. The jump videos they do with Mad Media, they are just on point. If you have never seen them, make sure you check them out on YouTube. Oh, There we go, finally, huh? Short course guy gets the whole shot. <laughs> and was, Cole Clark in that RMS-built Polaris single-seat Razor turbo power plant. And what I like about this, the row behind him starting 23rd and 24th is Corey Willis and R.J. Anderson's brother, Ronnie Anderson. Yeah, Ronnie came so close to winning the uh, short course race in his Pro 2 the oh, other night. Oh, he had it till the he, very last lap yep. and then smoked an engine. Yep. There's been so much action going on, and we're we're just starting our main race days. Yep. <laughs> it's incredible. All right, there goes Ronnie. Oh, no, Ronnie's on the outside. Another short course guy getting beat. So Corey Willis gets a whole shot over Ronnie Anderson. All right, number 25 and 26 is William Martin, as well as the guy that we all talk about, the mad man with the long hair, Terry Madden. And I believe Darian Gomez is riding with Terry Madden, so he's getting a sneak peek of the course today as well. So lots of strategy going on out there. Watching to see what rocks get pushed around, where it's clean, what 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 the, how the course, course will be in season. Scott? Yeah, it's one of those interesting things. It's the next group off the line. Uh, I guess some more star power coming in. Michael Lee in the 211, and Brian Deegan is out here in the 38. Yeah, he's been racing with us for a few years. Great to see him with Metal Militia. Well, and also, uh, you got to throw a shout out. What he's been doing, what the family, I, I always say he because the dad, he's, he's been there. But what is what the mother and father, be it Brian and his wife, have done for their son, Danger. I mean, he is yeah. flying in yeah. Supercross. He is definitely a prodigy, and uh, it is no fluke. It's and, not just a, uh, it's not just hype. And don't forget about Haley doing the NASCAR stuff. I mean, the, the whole family's doing a little bit of everything. I want just busy. a fraction of their frequent flyer miles. That's yeah, all no I want, just a little bit of that. Well, and I love Brian. You know, a lot, There's a lot of haters and stuff like that. He goes, I don't give a beep what you think about me. <laughs> We're doing our thing. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't, don't. But they, they, they're committed to a lifestyle that I can't. I can't share my life with everybody on Instagram, but he can do it, so God bless you guys. All right, on down the line. Keep going, John. Looks like we got Cody Wallenberg and Johnny Greaves, short course specialist. Is that who's off the line? Yep, we're off the line right now. And did Johnny get the whole shot or not? It looks like they're still, yeah, they're still side by side. Old Going scooter. to the first corner. Does look like Johnny does dip in. Old Scooter Greaves getting a whole shot on the outside. <laughs> and don't forget, we have five different classes racing at the same time. They are scored separately, but all racing at the same time. This race is on adjusted time. We have Pro Mod, Stock NA, Stock Turbo, Stock Sportsman, and the Open class. Well, that, that's the thing that you got to watch is how fast some of these NA cars are going. I mean, they've really stuffed their game up. Well, they don't have the top speed, but they're going to be climbing right with the turbos and stuff, unless they go to the other cars with the bigger wheels. So, Bern Schaefer and Jake Godfrey off the line. Next is 33rd, 33 and 34 of Trey Price and Kyle Smith. And we should have over 100 cars take the green flag this morning. Yeah, I think I saw 100. One yeah, 107. Okay, yeah, 107. We'll see if they all show up. Here's the thing we haven't talked about yet. Over a thousand entries. A thousand sixty-two. Wow. For the entire, uh, you know, with bikes, with uh, the kids, with short course, with a little bit of everything. That's super impressive out here. I think that's a world record. Well, <laughs> it's been it's been unbelievable. What coming in here and seeing the traffic and uh, all the campers and everybody out enjoying it. No more COVID. We're out having a good time. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great shot. Your bottom right. We have Chris May and Dennis Durbin's taking off. Chris May with May Motorsports. His daughter raced last night in the kids' class. 
He's uh, raced Ultra 4 with us for a long time. Sold his Ultra 4 car, but he just couldn't stay away, so we bought a Can-Am. He's out here racing with us. All right, well, we, and what we're doing, folks, is we want to give as much love to the people going off the start. Check out over there at Desert One. We're seeing multiple uh, competitors off there, but we want to make sure that we get everybody as they're going off the line because that that's what they, they're here for. Next, Jason Weller and Nelson Sparks. Corey Weller riding shotgun. Husband and wife team. Great to see you. <laughs> that man, that's got to be. You know what I caught the other night? They actually put it on social media where she made a sandwich. <laughs> she made him a sandwich. Well, yep. well that I'm, doesn't I'm, happen. I'm just curious if they're going to sit at different tables tonight <laughs> at dinner. <laughs> Uh, so I, I've, I've hung out with them quite a bit recently, and they are a great time. They love giving each other a uh, uh, hard time. But, boy, when they when they get a, the green flag goes, they're having fun. And they're giving it all they got. What I love about them is when one's racing, the other one supports the other one back and forth. Between Corey and Jason, I, I love the dynamics that they got, and they, they build the cars. They do everything. So John Schaefer and John Carnville off the line. Hey, guys, this is one thing I noticed why we might be having one car pulling a whole shot over the other. Um, they almost every single race up to this point, or I should say start, there's been a Can-Am Pro Stock Turbo UTV starting alongside a Pro Mod UTV. Ah, there we go. Almost we go. every so single lineup has, yeah, exactly. Yep. Remember, there are five different classes racing at the same time. They are scored separately. Don't forget to go to racingtracks.com. You can check out the live tracker. Go to live.ultra4racing for the live uh, scoring as well. All righty, and somebody, uh, if you lost a phone, um, we have found it. It is a looks like an iPhone, whatever. Oh, it's right up here at the stage. So if somebody lost your iPhone. Come on up. All right. Sorry, the local PA stuff. We're back. We're back to it. So Josh Owen and Kyle Cahill just took off, and now it is Jake the Blonde and Bert Vision Versi versus Dan <laughs> Wyrick. Now, where did that come from? He, he gave it to me. I don't know. <laughs> what? No, what is it again? The Blonde Ambition Versi. <laughs> there we go, the blonde ambition. Wow, enthusiastic. It's kind of like, kind of like Ric Flair. Yeah, and, he, and he's done really well. He's been a national champion before, and uh, he's out here in his UTV really giving it all he's got. All right, next we got up Tyler Rimmerine and Cody Martin. It's hard to believe that it was just one week ago I was watching Tyler and his, both his dad in their two cars racing. Oh, up in the ice, right? Yeah. yeah. That was cold. Not, oh. oh, boy. We know about that, don't we, Scott? Yeah, Tyler Rimmerine, uh, him and his dad, Todd, Showed up to Ultra 4 last year, or last se two seasons ago, and have really made their mark in short course and Ultra 4, King of the Hammers. Really good to see Tyler Rimmery uh, pushing hard. A young man in the sport, but he's got good things going for him. All righty. Chris Coyle and David Zida. Now, what I've found is you typically you love it or hate it, but 99%, 99.9% of .9 everybody that comes and does hammers and does the trails and stuff loves it. From Rob McCacker, Johnny Grease, Bryce Menzies, you get out there and you find yourself in some scary situations, which Rob Mack said it best. I'm more, I'm less afraid going 100 miles an hour through four foot whoops in San Felipe than I am hanging off the side of these hills. <laughs> because it's terrifying. You have too much time to look at the problem. And off the line, Mr. James Cantrell and Kyle Taggart. James has been racing Ultra 4 King of the Hammers for a very long time. Has switched back and forth between Ultra 4, or for a 4400 and a UTV, and there he is out there pulling the whole shot. He's actually starting in that 50th spot. So we're right now about halfway, uh, about halfway through our starting lineup. So our next two coming up to the line should be Brian Starrett and Chris Pierce in the 9004 and 569. Both are in Pro Stock Turbo UTVs. And rolling up to the line right now is Scott Webster and Garrett Martin. As we're watching them going into the first turn, that outside cushion seems to be the spot, but I'm curious to see if that 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 the cushion gets pushed further out if we get somebody up and over the top. And I'm I wouldn't it. I wouldn't doubt it at all because that Sam's getting pushed around a lot late in the latter half of that Pro 2 race the other night during the short course. Yeah, I, I talked to Charlie Sleevey about that, and he said it had some huge holes. Yeah. So it's great, old school. That's the way they, they, these, these young drivers need that <laughs> shit. And I'm doing a quick uh, look at the, the tracker. 17 Shaw's uh, back in the pack a little bit. Oh. And it uh, looks like Paul Wolf is off course just a little bit. So it's a 944. Uh, is it Blurton? So, but remember, these trackers do update at different times, but uh, we could have a little change of the lead. Well, and, and Phil and, and Bo, you got to watch that combination. They're, they're a dangerous combo. Oh, man. And, and, 
and Bo is so strong, so small and aggressive. He's out and into the car really quick. Wow, guys, right off the line is Parker Gill and Rodney Van Eppren. Rodney Van Eppren from the Green Bay area. <laughs> I believe this he is just, his first race out here. Yeah, he's never been out. He, I don't think he's been. Yeah, he's been out here for a couple of weeks. He went to Supercross with his boy the other day and or last week. And he runs around with the Greaves, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, now if you look at that lower right, that is uh, Phil, Phil Blurton out. Look, but it looks like he's still in some dust as we're watching him roll through. That camera is up so tight, but uh, we're going to be watching that as we see Billy Slade and Anthony Young. Anthony out in that stock uh, NA machine. He's in a Honda. So that's why he uh, gets jumped a little bit. As we were, Phil Blurton was running, and Bo, uh, Bo Judge were running really strong in the Desert Challenge, but they broke a tie rod, and then they had to come in or a spindle or something, something to the front. An axle, I believe. I was, yeah. yeah, you're right. It was an axle. They had to come in and go for the change, but they had worked their way right up in, right up to the front. That that Desert Challenge was unbelievable how tight it was. Yeah, Phil Blurton has been up front multiple times. Uh, he, he's due for a win for sure. Our next two up the line is Michael Garcia in the 419 and Kyle Anderson in the 469. Again, one of those. Uh, let's see. that This is the second. Pro Stock NA UTV off the line uh, alongside a Pro Mod. So uh, the, the classes are intermixed, intertwined. Yeah, but they are scored separately, but they yeah. are taking off the way they qualified. If you're just tuning in, this is the 2023 Pro Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. And this is the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Presented by Progressive Insurance. <laughs> All right, I helped man out. <laughs> the one who never messed anything up. You oh, didn't mess it up. up a few things for no, sure. you haven't messed anything up yet. Lots of so cars Tristan off the Leon line today. Gonzalez is off the line along with Dean and Leal. That's number 61 and 62 off the line in our tire lineup. Again, we have a seven, 107 cars uh, taking the green flag. All righty, we have Casey Peoples and Ben Cahill as they work their way up. And now, look, oh, look like we might have had uh, someone off, but we'll go back and see. Um, Sometimes after these guys qualify and stuff, they find out they blew their car up, they broke they it, they can't, issues, they can't yep. fix it. So that's the one thing about these prologues or the qualifying. you got to run your car so hard, and sometimes they run it too hard. But that's what's so great about King of the Hammers and Ultra 4 and all the stuff, that everybody's out there to help everybody. So in the pits, uh, they're they're lending parts and all that, but when it's the green flag drops, it's no hold far. Ronald Beck and Tyler Parks, the 1777 403 off the line, so that's one in a pro mod and one in a open car. So Joey Beck out there running strong. Yeah, you'll see the short course guys run a little bit higher on the cushion, get, go for a little bit more momentum, but you watch these guys as they shoot down. But it's amazing that the, the, what we're going to see these UTVs go through. I mean, that, and we're also going to see some of those UTVs run in the 4400 class as well. Miles. Yeah, there's quite a few of them and there's a few in the top 10. It's pretty impressive, but Dave Cole said, I'm making this uh, this year's race hard, so those UTPs are going to have their, their hands full on lap two and three uh, on Saturday's race. But in some cases, that's a smaller, lighter vehicle, easier to winch little, up. Little they, nimble. They yep. could get around there. As we're watching Jeff Bader and also Joe Gould as they work their way off the line, that's number 67 and 68. Hey, uh, Ricky, you kind of like that number of Jeff Bader? I love that. <laughs> Gotta love that. And off the line now is Michael Adams. And Aaron Clark, yep. Michael Adams, part of your, will be racing with those this season uh, for Ultra 4 USA. He's and Michael Adams is uh, Grizz. He's ra he's racing with hand controls. So just think of this: you you got two hands and, and on the wheel, but he's got one hand on the wheel running the throttle and the brake. He's that's, got his hands full. Well, like Chris plays at the Desert Challenge, and it, when you get somebody that's good at it, as we're watching AJ Hoover and also Luis Leon Gomez, which this is the second Lu Leon Gomez that we've seen out there. So it's Gonzalez. It is, uh, Gonzalez. I'm sorry, Gonzalez. My bad. Good correction. All right, we're, we're two to one. <laughs> I'm winning right now. Um, no, 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 but but this is great because it's a family affair. He's got to go chase. I don't know if it's son, brother, whatever it is, but uh, we got a couple of those, Luis Gonzalez. Next up to line, starting 73rd Sounds like and they're 74th brothers. is Cameron Steele in the 16th and Chris Johnson in the 354, a Pro Mod and a Pro Stock Turbo. And Cameron Steele's raced almost every single race we've had so far. Uh, he's not racing tomorrow. He was looking for a car, couldn't find one, but Cameron Steele, I mean, off-road Hall of Famer, really uh, putting his work in out here 
at King of the Hammers. And he does it every year. And and I don't think it's a benefit. I think I what I'm I, I think it's a blessing that he has to sit tomorrow out to rest and be ready because he's been leading. Last year he was leading. Everything was going great. Had a problem. They've done a great job of getting that getting that car ready. As we're watching the next two off the line, and that is Brandon Anderson and Adam Fitz. Fitza. He did uh, I'm to do a little back at camera seal again. He had a great qualifying run yesterday in the 4400. Yeah, he's up there real good, and he's really putting a lot of effort in the 4400 class. Like you're saying, Ricky, it's probably smart that he's sitting out tomorrow. Well, yeah, he doesn't want to, but I think I think this is the way of the the universe saying, sit down, and relax. We got big things to do on Saturday. And off now is John Coffey and Troy Shipman. Coffey with the early uh, jump. In just a moment, it's going to be starting 79th and 80th. Josh Smith in 1948 and Robert Johnson in the 12. And guys, we're ripping through the starting lineup pretty down fast. One of the 80th cars. That's pretty awesome. Well, yeah, they, the lineup crew did an amazing job. There's so much more that goes into this racing, just like as simple as you got to get all the cars in the right order. And they, they started lining up at 645 this morning. All right, this is uh, Peyton Isbell and Jamie McCoy. No, I think we're one off, Ricky. Oh, That's so Josh dang. Smith and Robert Johnson. Now we're back <laughs> to even, buddy. No, I'm, no, a, he's I'm, still a, I'm on three. Oh, okay. You're on one. All right. My bad. <clears throat> I let my finger relax just a moment and it came, dropped down a line. So. And, and keep your eye on Josh Smith. He's a young kid, but this this man was really, really fast. So and he's got a brand new Can Am built by Zollinger Racing Products. All right. Now we have <laughs> Jamie McCoy getting the whole shot and Peyton Isbell coming right behind him. Jamie McCoy in that Can-Am out front, really looking strong. This guy in the woods, you cannot catch him. But he's having a little bit of problem with the rocks, but he'll get it figured out. But Jamie McCoy and John Boy out front, we'll see how they uh, can play out today. Yeah, starting 83rd and 84th, coming up next, both in Can-Am Pro Mods, uh, the 499.98 of Tyler Thomas and Cody Olsen in the 49.96. A little correction on that, Scott. That looks like the Yamaha yeah, on the Yamaha. inside. So... Um, so Scott's won. No, no, I'm reading. They're in that. I'm calling off the classes. Ah, uh, okay, uh, okay. Well, it sounded to me. I still say you're one. I, you and Miles are, are tied for second. I'm in first <laughs> with three. <laughs> but when you're first, you're last on that one. That's right, exactly. Now, next is the short course guy that has been doing everything. He went all the way through the ranks, which did unbelievable, and has been spending that time. So, come on, Scott. These are your guys. <laughs> CJ Greaves easily gets the whole shot. Uh, and Greg in the 33, Greg Torney in the 428. He's, hey, short course is your guys' twos, man. Well, I know, but you like him better than <laughs> <laughs> Greg Torney's got his no, dad no riding shotgun involved. with There's him. No, no, no Johnson Greaves history involved. I think I got a couple of bruises still from <laughs> those two. All right. They are fierce competitors. That is for absolute That fact. is no bull crap right there. They, <laughs> th those two are, aren't afraid to mix it up. All right. I'm going to let you take this one, Miles. Oh, no. Ruslan Yankovic and yeah. Matthew Jeffrey and uh, one of our own, Donnie Kellenbach's riding with Ruslan. I would have hated to have been Ruslan in first, second, third grade to have to write out your whole name on every paper. That would have crushed You would me. just call him Alphabet. Yeah, I would have, been, I would have rushed Yank. <laughs> is, is, that, is that why you go by RJ? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? This isn't just a hat rack, buddy. This is not just a hat rack. Off the line next is Tim Moy and Justin Barth. Justin Barth's got Dave Johnson riding shotgun, so maybe Tim didn't take the line. Well, we're but missing Justin one Barth and Dave Johnson off, out running. Justin Barth's out of Springfield, Missouri. All right, 90, believe it or not, 91st and 92nd, Patrick Murray and Michael Mellon. Patrick Murray uh, recently retired from the Army. He's been racing with us quite a bit, and he's really uh, putting some time in. He's been racing King of the Hammers with us for oh, six, eight, ten years probably. Well, once again, the, the size of the tires that these guys are able to run on these things. That yeah, they're, they're up to 35s in the Pro Mod class and the Open. Yeah. Uh, the stock class, you do have to run a 33-inch tire, so that is a little bit of difference there. Well, and, and let's talk about the advantage of having the bigger tire. 
ground clearance. Exactly. I mean, that's what the name of the game is there, especially in the rocks. But it doesn't matter what you have. You have 40, 40, you know, 41 inch tires or 40s or 42s or whatever it might be. You're still on a skid plate. You live on a skid plate here in the rocks. Yeah, but still, what about the drivetrain, the, uh, the wear and tear on that boat? Yeah, hey, I was tires. just to say rotating mass. It's yeah. tough. When, when I was racing, you know, this has been a while, but I used to race UTVs and I was running on a 28 inch tire and still popping <laughs> axles all the time. And now we're at 35, so it just shows the, you know, some of these RCV axles and whatnot have really stepped up their game. Well, and also we were talking about that with Fish, and he was saying that the, the that the new Pro R is not smoking belts. So whatever that technology that they got to cool that belt off and keep it living, because we saw a lot of belts at the Desert Challenge. So there's Jeff Martin and Robbie Gordon. I don't see Robbie out there. Not sure if he got his car done or not. Remember, there are five different classes racing all at the same time. They are scored separately, but all on course, battling it out together. All right, next 99 and lucky number 100 is David Ames Ainsworth and Paul Kraut. All right, so we just heard from Ops that Robbie Gordon did not start. He's still in town uh, getting some, doing some final touch-ups. So. But I believe his time just started. So he's technically yes. already in the pits, but uh, the clock's already working against him. Well, and with him having that new speed TV, this is a constant test stage. So he's going to get it out there and go run it and beat the crud out of it and break it and fix it and make it better. That's that's what it is. So and there's, a lot of, there's know, no better place to do that at the Hammers. Well, and, and I'm just going to stick up for him. You know, a lot of people, a lot of keyboard warriors throwing stones at him and Max for breaking and this and that. A lot of cars that have been out been doing this for years, Can Ams and Polaris and stuff, breaking. So don't don't be so hard on Robbie. He's developing a better car for his customers. It's, it's going to be amazing. Off the line now is Hubert Rowland and Brett Harrell. Brett's got his daughter riding shotgun, I believe, and Hubert Rowland has Matt Zeiler riding shotgun. And I think that he's the first of the sportsman cars off the line. If I have been reading this correctly. Yep. So just a few more cars yet to go, and we'll have the full field out on course. There's the number 916 of Brian Tilton and Dylan Heiser. I think Aaron uh, Kaufman's riding with Brian Tilton. Cool to see him out here still enjoying King of the Hammers. All righty, in 105 and 106 is Robert Moen and Martin Duffy. So we just have one single entry after that, but we should be seeing Robbie Gordon at some point getting his butt out there and yeah, driving. Hopefully he can get out on course. We're definitely missing a few of them, but we'll see if we can keep it rolling. And off the line, the final entry. That should be Ben Collier. No, that is no, uh, Martin Duffy and Robert Martin Moen. Duff, there we go. All right, he's catching me. Two for Jeff. Or two, I'm sorry, Jeff. Two, for, two for Scott. We don't, even, we don't have a Jeff you're, on the staff, man. You're, you're Jeff now the rest of the day. <laughs> Jeff Rain. Yeah. Martin Duffy, part of the rookie <clears throat> program. Really cool to see uh, them step up this year. Well, real quick, to talk about that rookie program. I didn't even know it went into the UTV class. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an all-class. If you've never ra raced King of the Hammers, uh, you can be a rookie and go out there playing. So that's the 49-16. We have a couple of guys that are, are starting later. They're probably going to be coming up to the line. That should have been the last two, uh, but we might see a couple other entries working their way to the line. As I, I'm seeing Robbie Gordon as he straps himself in. He's got the helmet on. He's over at the PCI radios. But it looks like hopefully he's heading out to go racing. Well, helmets are on. He's belted in. Coming by in that 77, he'll be headed out, looks like. Yeah. And it says Max Gordon on the wind on the wind visor, but that, it looks like it was Robbie. <coughs> no, Max is not. Max looks through the dash. <laughs> Robbie looks <laughs> under the dash. I think but that's he, why he's so damn fast. He doesn't see what he's <laughs> The aerodynamics are better because it's not, not not as much helmet. That's right. Cooling is, is much better. As we're watching a couple of these entries, we don't have them on, so we're going to do, do the best we can to get them going out there. If you are just joining us, thank you for watching, and you are watching the 2023 Progressive in Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. You are watching right now the k and UTV Hummers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. I'm Ricky Johnson. Did you catch that? Miles. Hummers? Did I say Hummers? <laughs> hammers. Damn it. Four. Uh, shut up. Fun. Shut up, Jeff. It's none of your business. All uh, righty. What a great day of racing. We're just getting started. Here's the heading up the Baldwin jump, I believe. Remember, we are racing this, this track backwards compared to what we did last weekend, so we are going counterclockwise. First lap is, I think, 72 miles. It's about 140 miles total. They'll do one desert loop through the main pits they'll do a rock loop and then the checkered flag will be flying and if you're new to this you're watching this you're like wow this is a pretty crazy desert race then all of a sudden 
bottleneck. There's cars rocks, everywhere. Yeah. It's the hardest one day off road race in the world, if I'm concerned. Well, now, when we see guys like the Gomez, they, they want to go single seat and they have to get out and winch themselves up. And same thing with Shannon Campbell. But I'd rather have a, a guy with me. Oh, absolutely. There's Ronnie Anderson on screen. But yeah, so visibility. The packaging, single seat makes sense, but boy, yeah, I, I would like to just have fun with your friend. So there is Robbie Gordon on the deal, but like we were talking about, I think he's already got about five minutes on his uh, time. All right, he is not. What's up, Chuck Miller? We are not. He is not going to do some siding. That's not a ladder to. I was going to say, <laughs> what, what is on the back? So that's not a ladder so to. Those are to, ramps, probably, those, for the those, rocks. Exactly. That, those are ramps. I was getting to that, but. Um, uh, so, he so hasn't got, made it very oh. far. There he uh, is. Knowing Robbie, he's probably just now buckling himself in and getting ready to go. Once again, it's great to see him out here. On all Testing those that brand new speed UTV car. Yep. So it looks like we're, we're having a little on and off issues. Come on, Robbie, keep that thing rolling. All right, so we've been going back and forth, and when Scott was looking at something. Oh, he's already pulling off. So oh. Not sure what's going on, but I do know he's got his, uh, his, his rig down there, so maybe he's hitting the, the pits. Well, he found well, a bypass. Still, still, still going. <laughs> Anyhow, let's not talk about Robbie right now. Let's talk about the track where we saw. Ronnie there. Anderson Ronnie, making a pass out in the desert. Ronnie Anderson making a pass. If you have a opportunity to go to the tracker, you can see what's going on. It looks like Jay Shaw is out in front. Um, okay. Remember, these, these trackers do update at different times, but as of right now, it does look like it's Jay Shaw, Blurton, uh, and then Paul Wolf, the top three. Miller Brothers are still up there. I see Bryce Menzies. There's, there's uh, Shannon Campbell's uh, mid-pack. Brian Hamby still moving. Well, Phil Blurton started in the sixth position, so that put him on row three. If he is now up behind Jay Shaw, he is probably now on corrected time, which, I mean, we're way, way, way early on this stuff, but he, he could be out in front. So, um, once again, as we're watching Ronnie Anderson as he works his way through the desert. Looks Great like shots. the average speed right now is right around 65, 70 in the open desert right now. Well, and we saw in the Desert Challenge, Miles, we saw a lot of belts. And, and I, it was my opinion that we would go from such high speed to low speed, and the guys wouldn't shift down in, into low range. Do you uh, agree? Yeah, I mean, the, the higher speed, the, the harder you're pinching that belt. So yeah. it's, a, it's a heat issue. And, and then when you jump on and off the throttle, it'll flex. And, and yeah, well, here's, here's the, the thing I've always wondered about, and I talked to Johnny Greaves last week about this. It's that clutch going in and out and pinching that belt like you had mentioned. But he had said that he'd figure out a way to stay on the throttle and that keeps the belt cool as compared to the on off on off on off the throttle. I mean, and fr that friction clutch makes heat. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I because I when I got in this like here's this mysterious magic thing. You hit the gas and this clutch expands and contracts and does all this crazy stuff. But I did le learn from Chris from KWI is that when you're wide open, just crack off it a little bit. And what that does is like kind of upshifting. It's a way of sh kind of shifting it manually and run a little lower RPM. So if you can bring it down 500 RPM, say somewhere around 9,000 or 92 rather than 98, then, then that you can get rid of that heat. But what does a racer do? I'm wide open. Oh, you're, you're giving it all you got because you're, you're the helmet's on. Right. <laughs> you, you don't know any better. Yeah, take put take your brain out, put your put the helmet on and go racing. But in a lot of the, a lot of these guys, they have the sensors that shows them the temperature as well as I ha I wanted a dash. I wanted a light that came on and said, hey, it's getting hot. And they have those. Yeah, they, they have that through the aim dashes and stuff like that. So I'm looking in my peripheral vision. I can see when I'm getting too high RPM, back it off just a little bit. Because it is, you know, as Phil, uh, as uh, from, uh, shoot, I'm sorry. Um, that's five. That's five screws. <laughs> It's not new, it's not nutrition. It's uh, attrition. Attrition. You have to finish first. You first must finish. So you got to maybe give up just a little bit, and it might be one or two mile an hour if you come off. Well, Cliff there's Flattery. Jay Shaw cruising through. It looks like he's our physical race leader out in the desert, making some dust. Well, we were talking so much about Paul Wolf, but we kind of left uh, Jay off. To, you know, didn't talk a lot about him, but he's our number one qualifier. Yeah, and he's been running strong, doing great things way out. There's a shot of some of our good rock trails be hitting later on today. I mean, those look just like pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know better. You've been out there. Yeah. This this place is a is a tough, tough, tough course. Well, folks, if you're like into the you know like the mud runs and, and crazy mental and physical challenges, 
and you're, you're into automobiles, you got to come do a Hammers event. Uh, it's because a bucket list item. I told my wife, I guess it's been 15 years ago, it's a once-in-a-lifetime trip, and I haven't missed one yet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually uh, on an airplane coming for her first time ever coming to King of the Hammers. All right, there's the man, Johnny Greaves, as he works his way through. Um, and look at the size of those tires. It almost looks like a Tonka toy as, it, as big yeah, as they're running. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I'm going to do a little plug for Can-Am. Uh, we've been doing the 17 days of King of the Hammers uh, earlier on in the year, and we are giving away all so sorts of great things. Well, today... Uh, we're giving away a Can-Am later on today. Um, so we've been trying to reach some of our people. If you bought a ticket before the 15th, you were automatically entered. We still need to find Aaron Savage, James Mack, Jesse Mitchell, Omar Luna, Richard Rawlings Jr., Sean Brown, Steve Bixner, and Tegan Moon. If you know them, they have till 11 a.m. to go to the VIP tent. They get uh, two tickets, one for them and a friend, to go uh, to the VIP, and we'll get checked out. You'll get more information. And we'll be giving away a Can-Am later on today. Well, since you brought Can-Am real quick, let's go over the list of some of the sponsors that are behind the scenes that help bring this event at, both here uh, locally and across the country in our series. Obviously, Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, and Griffin Raiders, I think, from the very first. Uh, yeah, they were the uh, Griffin Raiders. OG. The first the first sponsor Dave ever got. Yeah. Uh, Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, PCI Race Radios, SDHQ with the rookie program. And then also we got the Terra Crew on X Off Road, Ricardo Seats, EMPI, uh, Pro Eagle, Baja Vida Beef Jerky, and Buggy Whips. All righty, through Remote Pit 1, we already have Jay Schaefer. We have we just saw Cody Miller. She's rolling through. And look how tight these guys are going back and forth. That looks like Bryce Menzies. I, I, I'm taking a slight and guess look through at the, the dust. dust. That's pretty pretty thick out there. And that's well, why uh, that, that being up front means so much. Absolutely. You want to get want to get through there. Robbie Gordon back on course. So something was going wrong, but Robbie is back out in that speed unit. Um, so good to see him out there. Go, oh, come on, Robbie. Don't do this to me. So per the tracker, it is Jay Shaw out front. Remember, it does update at different times. Phil Blurton in physical second, I believe. Cody Miller in third. Oh, somebody's Whoop. just waking up. Uh, hey, turn your ring gear off, Ricky. I know. I used to have one of those alarm clocks for real that had that sound. <laughs> Back in the old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was Robbie calling you to say, yeah. I'm back on the yeah. gas? Yeah, producer said, Robbie, we're back on. All right, so more cars through remote pit one. That was Mike Park with 904 Racing. So you've done, Miles, you've done this. I've done it. But let's talk from your perspective. You get to remote pit one, and it feels so good to go by there and just give them a thumbs up, and, and it's everything full, is rolling. And it's full race pace. You can bypass remote pit one at full speed and don't have to go in. But if you do go in, you have to do the entire remote pit at 25 miles an hour. And I don't think a lot of people are going to be hitting remote pit one on this first lap. No, but if you do, you've got a problem. There's something's going on. You've already gotten a flat tire. You're re-racking a tire and things like that. But let's be clear. They can't run tire balls and things like that anymore. They used to back in the day. And this is a no-chase race race as well so you can only have fellow competitors or hammer keen safety or in the pits right so if you have a problem we've seen it in the past we've seen lauren healy run it through the middle of the steering box or something like we've that seen so running with gas jugs out in the middle of the desert exactly you miss your mark a little bit and everyone's going to do something Martin a little different Duffy? but yeah great racing here for the 2023 progressive insurance king of the hammers powered by optima batteries this is the can-am utv hammers championship presented by progressive insurance not hummers <laughs> well as we're watching we got maybe one mile an hour of, of air so as you can see <coughs> very hard on the drivers right now but I'm gonna watch what I say because last time I wished for a little bit of wind and, and it just then, and then a windstorm came through and then you went home yeah well, <laughs> you had to stay here and play with that's one of the greaves it looks like yep I think this is CJ they actually came with three cars there's a lot of people they, that came with a lot of cars they, oh, that looks like Paul Wolf possibly in the uh, pits something damage in the front end look at the front the front little clip so did he stuff the front end did he hit somebody in the dust but they're working uh 
That's definitely Paul Wolf, the 10 18. Yes. So tough break for them. This is an unplanned stop for sure. Well, it looks like Brett Skinny down there working on stuff. It looked like the upper AR got loose or something that is bouncing around. So maybe it's a slight oversight when on the prep or they were working on something. Or stuffed it, stuffed it. Uh, exactly. Something real hard. And once again, we're, we're going to speculate. We're armchair quarterbacks here. So we're going to give you the best. And then once we find out the facts, then we'll let you know. And we have Tiffany, a remote pit. Now it looks like they're working on a steering arm. Right below that, you can see it right. It's at, they're actually right below and inside the upper A. And look at that. Some of those are some of those guys work on the car from other teams. Everybody is always all hands on deck there in the pits. You know they want to get those guys and gals out there on, back on course. What I like what they're doing though, they're taking the time. Go ahead and throw the extra fuel in so that they can bypass maybe the main pit. They can also leapfrog you by some other guys. So if you do have to stop at these, these pits, go ahead and do everything so that you can keep yourself rolling and avoid those other stops. Yeah, I was talking to Phil Burton Sr. and he said they're planning on just stopping one time for fuel here at the main pits. And I'll, I'll probably hang out for another 15 or 20 minutes before I run out there and uh, get all ready and get set up to see them come through. All right, so what we're seeing right now is Max Gordon as he's rolling around to go for some test rides, looking around. But that is definitely Robbie Gordon in the driver's seat of the race car because we see Max cruising cruise right in front of the stage with one of the speed UTVs. I don't know if he's going to get Robbie or if he's just going out to have some fun. Some yeah, of the definitely uh, tightening something on the front end. It does look like an A-arm. We need to give that man a bigger wrench. Good thing he's so big and strong. <laughs> Hey guys, some of the companies we forgot to mention uh, while we're going through some of our sponsors uh, was Curry Enterprises, Brannick Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP Race Fuels, Warren Factor 55, ARB, SRT, Share My Coach, Dana Spicer Electrified, Axial RC Cars, Axle Sports Canopy, and Nacho Light. So please support who supports the sport. With all these amazing marketing partners, we would not be racing here today. All righty, we saw Paul Wolf get up and underway. So that, that is a not five to ten minutes, you know, hiccup. That's that's a lot in the desert. Well, because if you get four or five guys go by you, and one of those guys blows the belts in one of these narrow narrow deals. Now the guys from uh, Dave Cole and everybody from King of the Hammers have done a great job at, at giving some routes for these some, guys some, to witch their way yeah, out. Some options. And also we we saw in the uh, Desert Challenge a couple of trucks flipped. They were able to have chase trucks there to get them back on the way and go. Well, not That's, a chase truck. It's a recovery no. crew. Yeah, a recovery hammer crew. Because it's yes. a no chase race. Well, you can only have help five. from them. Yeah, damn. That'd be number five. That's number five. <laughs> well, anyhow. It was a hammers chase truck slash recovery truck. Recovery, yeah, was there yeah. and it got both safety crew. It got both of those trucks rided up and we watched them finish. So that was great. They were 41, uh, 1450 trucks. But look at that. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch those cars come through there later on today on lap number two. Remember, this race is on adjusted time. All righty, when we come back, you will be seeing more Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll be right back after this word. This is the all-new, get-it-done, Nitto Recon Grappler. A true all-terrain for the job site or the campsite. Recon Grappler stands out as the new standard for all-terrain light truck tires. A true all-terrain tire with everything in between. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. As long as 
lot of buttons and knobs in here. Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optimal Batteries. You are watching the Can Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. Right now, we were showing that we had uh, Paul Wolf in. It was in the pit for a little so, bit. So he's a little but, off pace. But Jay Shaw, qualified number one, is leading away, Miles. It's, it's going to be between him. Maybe the uh, Miller brothers are doing really well. Blurton's up there, too. So depends on how often this tracker updates. But, uh, yeah, the top the top five is pretty tight. And it is so about early. Rough, race mile about 42 right now out of, uh, what's that, 72? So a little over halfway through the first lap. And I think I think you called it best when it came to Paul Wolf. Might have stuffed it pretty hard. We're going some really high speeds. This course is really rough because we've been racing on it all week long. And we're racing it backwards from when the T1s and everything was, too. So but the that course is a little chewed up. A little bit better going backwards against those bumps. Look how beautiful it is out here in Johnson Valley, California. All righty, we're going to send it up to Matt in Remote Pit 1. We got some information coming from there. Matt? All right, we're here in Paul Wolf's pit. He just left out in the 1018 car. Uh, came in with a front right upper A-arm bolt that had completely come out. Obviously, it took a little bit of time to get the bolt work back in. Quickly changed. He's a few minutes behind the leader, so obviously he's going to have a little bit of trouble catching up today. Uh, again, it's early, so you never know what the hammers are going to hold. All righty, back right, we're watching here in Paul action. Wolf's pit. He back just the desert. left out. Now, I mean, Matt's going to be up there all day long. And, Miles, you've been in the remote pit. A lot of times your main pit, you're running from side to side and stuff like that. When you pull up on these guys that are having problems and you're asking for information, it can be a touchy subject. So that was funny. Matt, <laughs> Matt uh, is new to the remote pits, and he was asking me that same exact thing. And obviously I've been doing it long enough so that I'm friends with a lot of the racers, but I can just get a vibe from the feel. I can see the driver's eyes. Sometimes they're laser-focused, and I just don't even talk to them. I just see what I see. But other times they're like, they, they give you the, the nod, and they're like, I I'm stuck. I'm sitting here in the pits doing nothing anyways, and they want the camera time and, and explain their day. Uh, so it's, a, it's hit or miss. Is that why you carry that one-inch wrench, just in case you need to smack them back? <laughs> yeah, to little, little protect myself a little bit. All righty. So, so, let, so let's talk about the tracker. We're going to go on there, Miles, and we're going to watch your screen. Walk us through because you got to explain the time stamps and all that. Miles? Well, yeah, I wish we had a uh, fish. He uh, wasn't able to make it here because he's a lot better on the tracker than I am. But up front is Phil Blurton. And like I said, he's doing 37 miles an hour. And that updated at 844, so just three minutes ago. So when you're watching this, folks, when you go online, if you're new, you got to make sure you look at the timestamp. So don't get confused thinking, oh, my driver's leading or something like that because I've done that in other races. You got to make sure that you check when it was timestamped, the mile. And then you can also look at the information below. I also want to add one more thing. If you see, rule. Well, as we scroll down here, we see the red on the bottom. That is zero miles an hour. Once that truck, car, that vehicle is sitting stationary for a while, that is not a good sign. And, and that's our pole setter, Jay Shaw. So we're not sure if he's having belt issues or what, but he is not in the remote pits. So uh, he's out there by himself just with his co-driver. All right, so as it looks right now, it looks like Phil Blurt has made a big move. He's worked past Kyle Cheney, works past, uh, worked past those other two drivers. And so... Um, Phil Blurton, who started in sixth, so is a minute now and a half behind yeah. him. So he's already got time on his side. That is huge, and, and I think once you get in front, you, you can control the race and stuff like that. Because, but you can't assume that nothing is happening behind you. So um, these guys, uh, Phil and Bo, because I think that the race starts at halfway. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying because uh, it just comes down to strategy today and keeping the car alive. Because you can over push the car and really have some issues. It's like a 573 possibly. Yeah. So we just got from uh, Phil Sr. that uh, Jeff's mic is not working. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. By the way, It Phil, was all planned. This is how they wanted it. They periodically just turned me off. So. <laughs> a great heli shot from out in the desert. That's roughly in that 30-mile mark, I believe. Yeah. 
And there's uh, Robbie Gordon making some dust, coming from the back of the pack, the last car to take line in that brand new Speed UTV. Well, this is all valuable because it's one thing to go out and test. And when you, a lot of times what I find is when I go testing, I get the rhythm of the track. I start to know my bumps. I time things. I keep everything flowing to my advantage. When you go out and you race just like Robbie's doing in testing this, you're hitting stuff off cadence. You're making mistakes. You're running into G outs and things like that. So it, this is the best thing that you can be doing. Yeah, this is the best way to prove your product for sure here at King of the Hammers. And look at the dust cloud back there. The dust is going to be thick today. There is very minimal wind. Uh, the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. It's already warming up here. It looks like Robbie did this for a photo op. Let everybody go. I want my own, my own shot to where I'm running out there. But, yeah, that speed unit running really hard, looking good. And uh, let's... I'm hoping and praying to see him at the finish line. Yeah, that'd be great to see if he can make it all the way through. But it's a tough course. This uh, this second rock lap is going to be really tricky. And he doesn't have a whole lot of uh, – obviously, he's in the desert. He's, he's a madman. But in the rocks, he's, he's still fairly new. Well, let's talk about it. You said in the second rock lap, do, do we have a couple surprises? I don't know about surprises, but there's a there's some really hard trails out there. Right. Um, there's a, a couple either ors. Uh, you have to just – going from sledge, you – he, he, Dave left it open. All you have to do is get to the mailbox. So it's really cool with the strategy on some of those things. To, we'll see for the rest of the week. So someone that's so someone that's not listening, the lap is different from lap one to lap two. Or are they identical? No, nope, uh, lap one is a desert lap, and then lap two is a a rock lap. So uh, it's completely, completely two different animals. Right. And so then, and, and so you said mailboxes. Someone's going. What, what does he mean, mailbox? Uh, that, that's part of the. That's an infamous part of the trail above Sledgehammer. And I'll, I kind of feel guilty. I've been coming here for a long time. I still don't know the trail that well because I'm stuck in town most of the time yep. you know chatting with you uh, but yeah there's lots of <laughs> iconic stuff out here and uh, and the mailbox is part of it I mean we have sledgehammer jackhammer we are bypassing back door uh, we've been qualifying up chocolate but we are racing down chocolate and up idle um, so that, that that course has really been uh, taking a beat this week hey guys let me jump in here real quick I'm, I'm looking at the tracker and this I'm on the outside looking in so help it I'd educate me and the, some of the fans that might be interested in this I'm looking at you, you're, uh, you're even figuring out how to use the mouse. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> I got, I'm looking at CJ Grease right now on the tracker, and also uh, it would be Tyler Thomas. Um, both cars uh, appear to be, as I'm looking at it, well off the trail, um, both on the inside and the outside. It, what could be hap what, what could we be looking at right here? I mean, that could be a tire change. It could be a belt issue, or speed. the tracker could be a, a little off. You never know. Okay, because I'm looking at it, and it says here, well, CJ, for 60. example, is 60 miles an hour. I'm going to swing over here now to Tyler. And in the in the desert, you can go 150 feet off course. And it says, in the yeah, rocks, it's 50 feet. It says Tyler's going uh, 66 as well. So I'm just I'm just trying to learn myself as well. I'm definitely not a fish. There's no doubt about that. But uh, yeah, we're no, definitely missing him today. You are a squirrel. I'll give you that. <laughs> so hey, I got I got to jump in real quick. I'm watching this camera shot of Robbie Gordon as I'm fi I'm videoing the screen. I look down. His co-driver has his phone up, filming the helicopter. So we're probably going to get some really cool <laughs> Instagram information from Robbie Gordon later on today. But a consummate. He's probably going. Get that, get the, get the, get the helicopter and, and screen. All right, film it. Oh, they're out there having the time of their lives right now. But the, honestly, I, I got to give it to them. That thing looks like it's handling like a like a dream. We don't, we can't see how fast it's going. It looks probably like I'm going to say somewhere in the 80, 80 to 95 miles an hour. But looks crystal. It looks very, very smooth, very balanced vehicle. Yeah, it looks like it's just, the, the suspension is just working beautifully. But here's the thing. Let's go back 15 years, Ricky. Are we not looking at it just a different version of a Class One? Well, class one with all-wheel drive. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that's there the go, thing. Yeah. So, so we've seen Reese Millen that, that he's come out with some cars that run class, uh, class ten, and, and make the all-wheel drive unit. With it. I think it's the Jackals, what he calls it, and. The side by side, which started out as everyone called them golf carts, way back in the Yamaha Rhino days, and then everyone just went crazy. Then Polaris got in the game, then Kawasaki was in the game, and, and now Can Am has really stepped up the game as well. And Can Am just come coming in, and you see how many factory drivers they have. Their vehicles are unbelievable. You got the two seat, four seat. You got the you could you could buy with multiple options. So Can Am, in, in my opinion, is definitely the motor package to have. It's, it's the top hard. of the game right now for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. 
And don't forget, uh, up by the welcome gate, we have the outpost. So if you, uh, you know, watching this, you take a little break, go up there. We got four breweries and bars. They got a full menu, uh, lots of cool stuff all over. But right here in Hammertown, look at Vendor Village. I remember six, eight, ten years ago, there was just you know 20 vendors. Now we probably have 100 vendors here on site, making deals, having a lot of fun, and it's great to see them support King of the Hammers. Well, and it's it. And they also pass on the deals to the to the fans. So, Absolutely. So taking yeah. some of that. So I've been some. seeing a lot of that where guys and, and gals are just walking around with big axles and tires and wheels and parts and working their way back out to their cars or trucks and they come back in and watch the racing. Yeah, Athens Ice House is out here. Dang Brothers uh, Pizza, Le, Le Fafora. How do you say that? Le Bufador. There you go. All right, I messed <laughs> there up. There we go. That. Yes. <laughs> Another one from Miles. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in town. So sometimes you get caught in a moment. Take time and, and explore and, and, and take it all in. Put the phone down every once in a while and go check out what's uh, what's available out here. Sounds good, Miles. I'll be back in about four hours. I'm going to do a complete back and forth, back and forth. Check the some food vendors. Out. I'm going yeah, 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 to go. have to start off at Racer Coffee, grab myself a nice You've latte. You've already been there once. <laughs> I know. Go there twice. It never hurts. Go down to Off the Grid, get myself some fancy duds so I look good for Steph when I get home. <clears throat> you name it. I'm going to get it done. It's all not right. going to help. And, and speaking of that, uh, wow. Roxy back there in the back at gate number two is uh, selling all the things. So be sure to go check out the merchandise trailer. Uh, the line's uh, been long all week, so if you see a short line, I'd take advantage of it. Absolutely. Get some merch to remember this moment. Now, we're watching the guys, once again, all the vehicles. Now, we don't know if all of them have made it through Remote Pit 1, um, but every, the, the race is going. And I like this strategy. I think doing the desert loop is going to separate the guys before we, if we throw them right into rocks that bunches everybody up. We saw that in King of the Motos, um, which makes it very difficult. I like Dave Cole's strategy. Let let it air out, you know. And unfortunately, some vehicles are going to break. Some things are going to happen. And speaking about things breaking, there's Smith coming in. There's James Cantrell. The, the uh, remote pit number one is a lot busier than I anticipated. Uh, so the yeah, attrition is definitely starting to set in. And look, he's, he's wiggling the wheel, checking the uh, suspension, checking the steering, uh, seeing if anything's loose. Guys, I'm just kind of doing my side. best, learning on this the track for the best I can as I go along. I got Tyler Remerreed, uh right now doing pretty good at 55 miles an hour. It's, I saw, let's see. <coughs> look, Big B's helping uh, James Cantrell with that Mad Ram 11. Again, Everybody helps everybody here in the pits. It's really great to see. Um, well, and and this, what I what I love about this is when I came here and I raced a few years back in the spec class, everybody was willing to help me. You know, yep. I, I went to the short course event up in Reno, and the first day I blew my wheel off. Um, Lauren Healy comes up and goes, dude, dude, what are you doing? This isn't a rock race. You're banging off of those things. Put more air in your tires. Next day, no flats, something like that. I go over. I'm up there by myself working on stuff. Some of the Gomez guys come over and help me. Some of the Campbell guys come and, help and me. And they're, they're helping. To, they'll share knowledge. They'll share, they'll share parts, a little bit of everything. And if you ask, I mean, if you if you walk into this sport being arrogant and stuff, they will let it humble you. But if you come in and just go, hey, man, you guys know this better than me. What should I be doing? Yeah, lots of action in remote pit one, and that's roughly a 35-mile marker. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty tough. There's a Miller, I believe. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm trying to click on every car out there to see if everyone is at speed. There's no one parked on the side of the course that's so far. That's actually Kyle Chaney, I, I apologize. Uh, the, those K&Ms all look very similar, but Kyle Chaney, last year's champion here, is uh, pushing really strong. And I don't see much dust in front of him. That was a big G out that bit a bunch of trophy trucks. And we saw it with that 41, T1s. 50, yeah, T1, I'm seven. sorry. T1, seven, dang it. All right, that T1, that was Kyle Chaney. You notice he had to slow down. That bit a bunch of people, that bit. Stacy Graff, talk with him, has a slight concussion, but, he, but he's feeling much, much better. It was great to see him walk away from that. That was a huge crash. Yeah, that was a, a hard tumble for and sure. We saw the winner of the 4150 just absorb that and suck it up. That was awesome. Yeah, this desert is very tough. It's. Uh, Camera never does anything justice, but the the ruts out there, the G outs, there's there's nuisance rocks in some of the spots, so they really have to pay attention, and that's where having a co-driver really really helps out.
and what I love about this, we got enthusiasts. You know, we got uh, <clears throat> Christopher Pavardi walking around with his with his father. Yeah, they raced they, last weekend for the Toyo Tire Desert Challenge. Had a problem that motor, something happened, something went wrong. He was leading out front, fast qualifier, was running good, but uh, definitely had a problem. But it's great to see everybody still out here. They, that's what I said, enthusiasts. Whatever you race, yeah, the you got to race. Done, but they're still having fun. Uh, Adam Householder who won the T1 race. I saw him at Ultra Three the other night, and still having fun. So there's a well, Miller. If they went home, they'd have to start work. So hang out in the lake but as long as you can or until the wife calls. So that's Cody Miller out there pushing strong. Back to Kyle Cheney. And look at the, the chopper just chasing them down. I mean, they're cruising probably, I'm going to guess, 70-ish miles an hour right now. Miles, come, at, come over here and help us out on the, this tracker. Now, I've been clicking around at different racers. I can't find anybody that's actually stopped on the side of the course or, or not moving. So everybody every, seems to be at speed. Everybody's but, doing pretty well. <clears throat> yeah, everyone seems to be in it just yet. But, okay, how can we look at this now? And, and is it possible to figure out who is the overall leader right now on corrected time? Yeah, this, uh, the race is on adjusted time, so we'll have to do some, a little bit of math there later on. Well, look at, watch Bryce Menzi in this Hamsoil Pro-R. He has got the balance of that vehicle down. It looks very similar to what he's like in, in his uh, Mason all-wheel drive out there. And this has got to be great pra practice for him. He'll be running down to San Felipe and more than likely in the Mint, uh, Mint 400 coming up. <clears throat> that, that's going to be in March. So any time is good seat time. I'm, I'm going to be doing the same thing. And look at him. He's giving the chopper a thumbs up. Bryce Menzi's one hand on the wheel and having some fun. Him and Oren Anderson cruising through the desert. <laughs> charge, charge, charge. Uh, too much fun. That AMS oil machine is running strong. Yeah, or about he's to be the, He's running the open class. Yes, he is. That's yeah. awesome. Carrie should be here someplace I, I, I bumped well. into her last night. Yeah. I, yep. But they're uh, pushing strong in the open class. That's a 2,000cc machine. Well, just to, and to clarify... All C, all, all C time is good, you know what I mean? We talked about what Robbie Gordon doing his testing and stuff out there. This is great for um, Oren, O-Ring, and Bryce to be together talking, communicating, and get those jitterbugs out of the way because you don't like to go to your big first huge race, like be a, a, uh, whether it be a T1 race or a trophy truck race or whatever you want to call it, trick truck, doesn't matter what organization it is, the top level. And this, you can see Bryce as he's moving along, got that uh, Polaris, very balanced, very fast, but it's good for him to get out there. So look at the hot pits there. There's cars all over the place. There's the 4955. That's Joe Gould, I believe. Yeah, yeah lots of action everywhere. There's Matt Holt. Maybe we'll be able to check in with him here I'm a little here bit. With Joe Gould, how are you doing today? How's it, how's it going so far? Activated. Miles got a trademark <laughs> on that. You can't be you can't be using a uh, wrench uh -huh. unless you get it cleared from the boss. <laughs> I'll let somebody borrow it every once in a while. <laughs> but is it metric or standard? Standard, is a, okay. it's a one inch. Okay. I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that you got sponsored yeah. last week. <laughs> Robbie Gordon hooked me up with a speed UTV wrench. There we go. Nice, nice, And nice. he said he's going to give me a toolbox too. We'll see what happens. Well, I'll work on that for you. So now, getting great heli, heli shots from uh, Stevie Wright and Living the Dream hel Helos. If you get a chance, go on Instagram. You can see a lot of his stuff. When we were watching the Class 11 challenge, the land rush oh, start that, that he so has. Awesome. Just like in the old old days back in 07, exactly. the land rush shot start was amazing. It's a little more slow motion, a little more dramatic as they come up. Because <laughs> they were slower. But, right, <laughs> but, but everything was awesome. They went, it went from, you know, 80 cars to 20 to 10 to 5 to 1. And it was just it was such a dramatic shot. So live in the dream, Hilo. And you can check out a lot of that stuff that he's put that information up there. You'll also find on, on uh, King of the Hammers. Yeah, go to the, the King of the Hammers official YouTube. Uh, we categorize everything. You can watch highlights from, yep. from years back. Um, car walk-arounds. So make sure to get on there. Subscribe. Get that premium package. And uh, tune in. we got a lot of cool stuff going. You can watch some of our rookie program videos. It's, we got a lot of cool stuff on there. So we do not know if this is Kyle Chaney or Phil Blurton. We'll get a look at it in just a moment. Looks like Chaney if I had to guess. That's a good guess. Well, Chaney, so let's, let's talk about right now the co-drivers over there calling the shots because he's, you know, you pre-run. Yep, that's Kyle Chaney. All right, so go ahead. Co-driver. Co yeah, so – you got notes. You, you, yes. you pre-run. You put notes in. So where you were talking about those, some of those G-outs, 
the co-driver's just watching a GPS, not really watching the, the terrain much. If you have a great co-driver, yes. I've had some in the past that want to drive through the windshield. The worst, sometimes it's hard. If Bo Judge is really good at this, about separating from being a driver to a co-driver. Your job is to live inside of there because it might have a tight left, tight right, or just a big right or whatever, and then let the driver do his job. But uh, definitely you got to be calling out. If you're running lead nav in some of the new, uh, the new Garmin unit, you can actually have audibles call it out. So you can go in there. Rob McCacken does a lot with the guys from lead nav and he programs his whole deal and it talks to you as you it, go correct it gives you like a 10 second warning 10 second warning 10 second warning and a uh, 5 second warning before you get to get to the corner and so there's Dustin Battleaxe Jones I believe so back to that, you can run a couple different units. And some guys like Rob Mack run a Lorance as well as um, the lead nav system. So there's a lot of great tricky stuff that you could do out there, but it's all in the homework. Yeah, and there's so much more to a co-driver than, than they get credit for. As we see R.J. Anderson on screen and uh, Dustin Battlelock Jones right behind him. Well, and, and that's the other thing is with some of these units, when something happens, boom, they can drop, they can drop a mark, have that ready to let them know the next lap how bad that's getting. All right, as we're watching R.J. Anderson work his way through, we got Matt Holt up there, and uh, Matt's getting us all the information from Remote Pit 1. Matt, what do you got for us? I'm here with Joe Gold. How are you doing today? How's the, how's the day going so far? I'm good, just shaking out this brand new car and uh, trying to get through the dust. You're coming in, they said you're getting some fuel. Is that part of your pit strategy? Yeah, just five gallons. Just five gallons. How's the desert feeling right now? The desert feels great. I know you're headed into the rocks here shortly. What's your game plan going into the rocks? So I'm a rock guy. Yeah? Yeah, I am. <laughs> so, you're, so you're feeling pretty confident? Yeah, I am. Good. Again, the car looks great so far. How's everything going? Everything's going really well. Just getting used to this new car. We got like 100 miles on it, so just getting used to it. Awesome. Well, have a good day. All righty, thank you, Matt. As we're watching more work being done, this is not good to have both axles off. Both wheels off, but down that's to the, the hubs. But that's the, the never quit attitude of yes. these drivers. I mean, they've spent all year prepping. They're not going to let something easy take them out. They're going to completely rebuild that car in the dirt and just keep going. The finish line is open till 6 p.m. tonight, so they still have a long, long day ahead of them. Well, I'll be honest with you. When I did this race, and I was up on top of the hill looking down, I started looking at the map and started. I, all of a sudden I got it too into my head and when I was able to make it to the finish everything nothing feels good at that point you've beaten it to death it's an emotional it's an emotional roller coaster when you cross that finish line you're feeling good you, you get you get teared up because you're like I, I just can't believe I did this like these Spartan challenges or mud runs and or running a marathon this is by far the it, most mentally and, and physically and mechanically taxing race ever. <laughs> All the above, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because look here, you got the fast desert, and then we're going to put you on some of the gnarliest rock trails in the United States. I mean, that's why it's called the Hammer Trails. Is Kyle Cheney back on screen? Yep. So our last year's champion is out front in clean air. As uh, Miles said before, this is the desert challenge. So everyone's out there running around and they're going fast. I wonder if anybody has a belt, a scheduled belt change. I, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be a scheduled belt change because I, I, I think they're just going to go and they've got to, you know, they tune the uh, the clutches. They do all that. So I think they're. I don't think there's a scheduled belt change. I don't. Well, and the other good thing is, is that they're not going slow, fast, slow, fast. They're going fast the whole time. So it's going to really set the belt in, get the sheath going. You know, working with the guys from Gates Belts, they they give you a process how to break the belt in and make sure that you don't just go out there and hammer it because as you said, you scar it and that and, becomes a problem. And then, then you have a, a weak link in there, and that's when it, it can come apart. Lots of the cars are starting to get spread out just a little bit. We started with uh, just over 100 entries today. How many think you think is going to make it to the uh, finish line? I'm going 25. I'm going to, well, it depends on, on what you know, some of these routes and stuff like that. I'm, you say 25? Yep. I'm going to say 40. All right. I, yeah. I, I, think, I think technology and the, the cars that can come out with, and you're seeing what the Polaris Pro R's, you're seeing a lot of the, the field has come up a long way so now it's more in the driver's hands it's like in the 80s in motocross when all of a sudden the wheels were tougher the forks were stronger the frames were stronger the rider could go 100 percent and that's what we're seeing now out of these utvs they're not just pacing themselves 
But yeah, we got a great race on our hands. If you're just tuning in, we want to thoroughly appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We are racing during the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, presented by Progressive Insurance. Kyle Cheney still pushing strong. We also want to thank the guys from Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto Tires, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, four-wheel parts, as well as Griffin Radiators. We want to thank them for all their support. Let's keep the list going. we got Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, LaserNut, PCI Race Radios, and SDHQ helping with the Rookie Program. So explain the Rookie Program. So if you've never raced King of the Hammers before, you could, you could sign up. So... It's too late to sign up now, but for yep. next year, we're doing it again. Uh, but sign up, we'll do a lot of uh, behind the scenes. Uh, this year, we had Lauren Healy, Jason Shear, uh, a lot of guys, uh, Erica, with uh, doing tracking and whatnot, really yep. helping people learn how to do it. They did a lot of Zooms. They, they went to PRI. Uh, and there's some contingency money in the rookie program. If you do well, you get your uh, entry fee back. And I think the, there's going to be a rookie of the year voted by uh, their peers, and they're going to bring home some cash as well. We just had Hunter Miller out there on the 190. And now we're back to our – I'm pretty sure it's our current race leader, Kyle Chaney, in the 191. Um, once again, this guy – defending champion. Uh, Miles is going to go check us out on the scoreboard to see where we're at, see where Phil Blurton is. Um, but once again, <clears throat> we're watching this. This is the desert loop where it's wide open. The guys can really get separated and stuff because once we get into the rocks, it's going to become somewhat of a parking lot. So yeah, Kyle Chaney's running 80 miles an hour right now, and he's right around uh, my race mile 65. So I'm actually going to hop in the, out of the booth, uh, go get my uh, my wrench mic and head down to the pits and see if we can uh, find these guys. And I think they're going to be stopping the main pit, so we'll try to get some uh, hits with those guys. So, so Miles, if you could, run by each pit and give us a little something. Give us a pre before they get in because it's hectic when you get there. But uh, keep that ninja wrench up in case one of them gets aggressive. All right. Well, Ricky, Scott, back to you guys. Thanks for everything. It's been a great time so far this morning. All right. Let's go do it. You got it. Thanks, Miles. All right. If you're just tuning in, you are watching the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries, and you are watching the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. I'm Ricky Johnson, along with Scott Rains. Now, Scott, You've been going back and forth. You're like a, the book nerd over there. You got books. You got the, the computer and everything going. I'm trying um, to reference. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn as I go along. And this tracker is really interesting, the information that it gives you. Um, but I know I'm not even using it to its potential as All right, so as I'm going to gonna give you a couple of tasks as we're watching these guys work so hard. And they're working. Uh, looks like they got to get that trailing them off. And, yep, there's one off. And they're going to try to get that fixed. So I don't know what happened. The... Uh, to, to that looks like they're changing both. <clears throat> Alrighty, as you're watching the, the guys come through the desert, you are watching the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. This is Ricky Johnson with Scott Rain and Miles. We'll be back in just a moment. There's only one place to go to do your rig right, and that's at Four Wheel Parts. Now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels. Now is the time to lift your Jeep at 4WP. off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting.
powered by Optimum Batteries. You are watching the KM UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. That is our current leader and current champion from last year, Kyle Cheney. Now it's going back and forth between him and Phil Blurton. We should see this as they're working their way back towards Hammertown. So it has been the desert loop all morning long, Scott. These guys have been running at speed. Uh, unbelievable seeing these guys at some 80 90 miles an hour but now they start to work their way into the rocks and this is bryce menzies as he's working his way through the rocks so bryce not one to be known as a rock crawler but uh, he's out there in the pro r and watch the hand control watch watch when he's going and i think bryce is one of the best guys when it comes to hands and let me do a little explanation in rocks i'm okay with shuffling hands because you want to keep your arms in a, in a very very strong position so bryce minzy has made up some time he could be very close to being our leader bryce minzy started in ninth position now he is in physically in second right behind kyle cheney and phil blurton should be right in there but as we're watching one of the other drivers i'm not exactly where this this is here comes Phil Blurton as he works his way in. So very, very tight race in anybody's race at this point, Scott. Yeah, I'm looking at the track right now, and Cheney is currently, it was just updated. He's right now at 13.7 miles an hour, which is, seems to be pretty accurate. <laughs> well, well, when you watch this, you think, wow, he's going slow. And you see the, the, the angle these guys are going through. Once again, this is Phil Blurton and Bo Judge as they work their way through. A great team. They've won the 1,000. They've been dominant out here in, in Hammers. So definitely keep these guys in sight. But the one guy that I'm really impressed with right now is Bryce Menzies. Menzies found his way past Phil Blurton. So was that a flat, or did Bryce just happen to get by him in open desert yeah right now what is that turkey claw i think they're close to um that's the only thing that's separating bryce and kyle cheney uh bryce is right now currently at 17.4 miles an hour just southeast of road marker 70 about a half mile away i'm going to click on cheney right away and he's uh kyle's point seven so they're two tenths of a mile separation right now between the two of them Alrighty, that is Mike Park as he works his way down. So not a lot of surprises. The only one that's really made a move is Bryce Menzi to work his way up into second place uh, physically and could very close be, be leading on corrected time. We should have some information from Miles. He has moved down to the main pit as we're watching some of the other drivers as they work their way through the desert. So once again, we're starting out desert loop. They're finishing on a little bit of rocks before they come back into Hammertown, and then it gets tight and technical the rest of the day. At, you brought up Mike Park. He just popped up on the tracker, and right now between uh, Kyle Cheney, Bryce Menzies, and Mike Park, they are both. Uh, there's two tenths of a mile separating all three of them. Right. So once, so th we can't. You know, we're just giving you the information. You guys do the math. You do the figure. You get as much of it figured out as you can. But right now, this has been the quick part. Is we're, we're watching. I'm pretty sure this is Ronnie Anderson. Dustin Jones ain't far back out of it as well. He's right behind Mike Park. Well, that, and that's the thing. Do? We're going to see some of these guys in the back kind of sleepers. We're not going to be paying a lot of attention to them unless we get on the tracker. Once again, that is Ronnie Anderson as he's working his way through the high-speed desert section. Um, him and his brother, uh, RJ, both out here. It's, it's a lot. It's great. A lot of family members dicing back and forth, but they want that bragging rights. They want to be able to get there in front of their, in front of their dad, mom, and say, oh, guess who won the Hammers? <laughs> oh, I'm looking at R.J. Anderson right now. He's showing zero miles an hour. Uh, let's see, right at uh, road marker five. Well, and this is Ronnie definitely not at zero miles an hour. So Ronnie running really strong in that NOS entry Polaris. Um, and I just love the how these vehicles have all up the ante. What it, what it started out before and where they are now, it's pretty unbelievable. So we should be hearing from Miles in just a little bit. Um, we've been getting the, a lot of information from Matt Holt out at Remote Pit 1. Um, we'll probably get some more information as they roll through there again. Um, but we're going to definitely hear some stuff from Miles. I'm looking at Robert Parker right now. He's running in a pro mod at right around uh, road marker 65 going 82 miles an hour. All right, this is live from Turkey Claw. This is just as they're starting to work their way back in. Is that Phil Blurton? According to Tracker, let's see, when was it that updated That was not last? Phil. Phil had already gone through. Okay. Yeah, he's passed it. All right, current race leader, as he works his way back in, you can see coming in, we're getting back to civilization. We're coming in the back side. So did you see that big mountain on the right? 
just around is down and he will be back in Hammertown. So this is Kyle Cheney, our defending champion and our current race leader. Um, Kyle, this this is a good spot. When you get to this point in the race, you're hoping that everything is good. Belt temps are good. Oil's good. No shakes. You didn't smash any big rocks. You did everything is tracking straight. Your steering wheel is straight. So you want so he's in a very good position. So we are going to see our current race leader. Kyle Cheney in the Can-Am work his way in. Now, you're going to see a bunch of those factory teams in Can-Am. you got to give it to them. They have really stepped up, and they're supporting some unbelievable drivers. Scott. You see the tracker real easy. This is a good indication of our top four right now. Let's see, three of them are just past Turkey Claw, uh, as it looks like. Dustin Jones is coming up on Turkey Claw, probably about a mile or so away yet. Oh, Brainiacs, Scott Rain is really getting excited because he's figured out this computer thing. Kinda. <laughs> are you over there playing Tetris or are you watching the scores? Tell me. Now, this is Bryce Menzies. Oh, I'm on Facebook. Enough, enough crap aside. <laughs> Get off Facebook. It's bad for you. All right, watch him. Bryce Menzies as he works his way through. And I want to throw a shout out to Bryce. And I think it's really cool that him and his crew and the whole Menzies Motorsports are running that uh, Ken Block library. I mean, Ken Block was an unbelievable guy running here. As we're watching Kyle Cheney, I'll finish that thought in a minute. Kyle Cheney is back into the pits. He's made it back to Hammertown, so our current leader, and you saw, um, you, you saw Miles running towards towards the pit, and uh, another driver that's come in, and that was Cody Miller. We saw him in Turkey Claw in 221. We'll be getting a report from Miles in just a moment, but uh, a great shot from up there. It's going to be a little frantic here in a little bit, Scott. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, the top five cars are not that far out. All right, Bryce Benzie, second into into the infield as we're seeing him and more than likely he's going to do a one stop and go so Bryce Minzy having a great time out there all righty as we're what as we are watching Bryce as he starts to go through Miles get that wrench out what do you got going for us so down in Kyle Cheney's pit, it looked like it was just a quick fuel and go. The car looked good. You shook a couple of the parts, but uh, so far so good. A, a planned fuel stop? Yeah, they took care of Kyle's. Uh, he's got a great crew this year out here. Um, so everything looks good on the car, and he's out back on the rock section now. Yeah, so uh, so far so good. The car looks good. He's physically out in first position. We'll see if that sticks, if he can back up his wind. I think he's got a good chance at it. He's got a real good shot, so we'll see. I do see uh, Blurton. We're going to run down there. So, Ricky, take it away. I'll go uh, down to Blurton's pits. Thank you, thank you, Miles. As you were watching, we saw Kyle Cheney in the background, and we saw Bryce Menzies go by. He's getting that uh, Pro R that has that unique pitch of the RPMs, and it sounds. But that is great for Bryce to get a physical look at Kyle Cheney and know that the leader is not out of sight. What well, my mechanic well, used to say: "Out of sight, out of mind, running high." What does Kyle Cheney say when he can turn around and he can see Bryce coming? Uh, is that going to make him motivate to, to go harder? Because he knows that, that Bryce started a few lines behind him, so on corrected time, but Bryce has not, not done his pit yet. It's going to be tight on corrected time. But once again, folks, we're only halfway through this race, and they did the easy half. All right, more cars are coming in, so I know we're going to be getting some more information from Miles in just a little bit. But uh, you can see the separation now. These guys started two by two every 30 seconds, and now you're watching them as they come through. Three, four, five, six minutes separated. As you're watching it, the, the short course is in awesome shape. But once again, we got Miles down in the pits. Miles, who do you have? So I've got Phil Burton Sr. down here again. It looked like another f uh, splash and go. I was down with Cheney. They shook the car a little bit, but it was just a gas and go. The car looked good. Burton's not too far behind him, and on adjusted time, it's going to be really close. Boy, they're close. I know Phil wanted to get, you know, up in the top five at least when they hit the rocks. And looks like he's in the top three physically. So we're doing good, and I always love it when he says, I'm coming down heartbreak. All I need is fuel, no parts. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you, you got the whole team here ready. But, yeah, if it's just a, a fuel and go, check it out. You're in good shape. He's got it right where he wants it. But you've been here before. This oh, is yeah. still the hammers. Anything can happen. Well, and, you know, my son, he's, he's podiumed every time we've been here, second and third. But, boy, we're sure looking for a first place this time, you know. So he's put his, he's put his hard work in, and he's a good kid. And Bo's a phenomenal guy to be riding with. Myself. I was just going to say that, yeah, the two teams together, they are an absolute uh, weapon out here in the desert. And going in the rocks, Phil loves that part. Yeah, they said there's a couple spots out there this year that were uh, – Bo actually said, boy, I was a little bit uh, frightened about that one, you know, which I've never heard him say that before. Uh, but one thing that Phil loves about this course this year 
is uh, says there's more rocks than they've ever been. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot harder of a course. And like you were just saying, Phil loves that part. The desert, he's already made it through there clean and clear. Uh, we saw Paul Wolf have some issues earlier, so he dropped back. Uh, the attrition's definitely starting to set in. So sitting through the desert in this spot, it's got to be a good position. No, he's, he's excited, and I'll tell you, uh, before any of this happened, I bought him a little Toyota pickup truck when he's like 16, and he built it, came down here rock crawling before this was happening. So he's been down here because it's not his first rodeo, let's put it that way. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, best of luck to you, Phil. I'm going to kick you off the stage and bring in another character we got. Phil, good luck. We'll see how it goes. We got Mr. Cameron Steele. Uh, you have your other driver driving the desert, and then you're going to do the rocks a little backwards than normal. Uh, yeah, well, Mitchell did a great job. I mean, he builds a car with his Alsop RD. He preps it with his crew. And then, of course, he was top two in the uh, limited class in the desert race. So I was just like, hey, you know the Can-Am. You know the desert. Get out there, do work, have fun. And that's what's all about fun. So Mitchell and I sharing, it's a good time. I'll be out in the rocks, but I think I'm more of a rock guy even more than, than people think. I love it. I mean, you've been around the, the King of the Hammers since, I believe, 08 with Level Brothers. Uh, so to see you uh, continue doing what you do, you know, Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Famer, Baja 1000 winner. Are you going to be a King of the Hammers winner one of these days? You're giving it all you got. I know that's for sure. That's for sure. You know, the Laser Nut number 48 uh, Monster Energy car uh, had a huge changeover this year. And so we qualified in the top five uh, in Power Hour going towards the uh, – the uh, main race, the King of Kings. So I feel really good about that third row start. Uh, I, I feel good about it, but I can't predict it. You know, I'm just going to go out there, race our race, be smart. Cody Wagner has been saying, don't smash, just cruise. And we did a good job cruising and qualifying. And I, I think we'll take that on today in the rocks. We'll learn a lot just cruising, getting to the finish line, see how it shakes out. But that's how we're going to take on the Ultra 4 race, the 4400 race as well. Well, Cameron, always a pleasure to talk to you. Best of luck today and on Saturday. We'll see how it all shakes up. But Cameron Seal, I'll let you uh, kind of get in the zone. Your car will be in here in a little bit, but uh, great job. And I just saw ba uh, Dustin Battleax Jones come through. Uh, looks like here is RJ Anderson. So Cameron, always a pleasure, buddy. And uh, we'll see you around. Ricky, back to you guys. All right. Now, I, you know, he says, I'm going to cruise. Now, his version of cruise is full tilt boogie, and he's got to run, he's got to run hard. But you got to make sure that you save your equipment. But you cannot be passive. You have to hold your position. You got to stay in that running order. Because if you lose one spot, that could be the difference of you making it up some of these things without, without getting winched or your guy getting out. It is uh, aggressively calm. Is that a good way of putting it? Uh... <laughs> I, I've never been in a, you know, a big bar fight, but it, that's what I heard it's like. When you get in there and you're Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Well, I did race Cran in a few years. <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're watching R.J. Anderson. As you can see, he was out of the vehicle as we're seeing number 900 as he works his way back into Hammertown. We got this section. This is all going backwards of what the, the T1s were running the other day. And so the bumps, believe it or not, way better when you're going backwards because the, the tires hit the front side and it shoots the dirt over the back side so it gives them a lot more ramp and it's not as rough as we're watching Shaw work his way back in so we saw this was our top qualifier um, Jay Shaw we saw him have a problem in remote pit one so he's made up a lot of ground he still has a way to go but as fast as he was going and qualifying he's got that problem fixed in the front they did something tightening the A-arm as Jay Shaw works his way into Hammertown See, Cody Miller should be real coming in real quick. And let's see what kind of an update. Actually, this has not updated for quite a while. So it still has Bryce Menzies waiting to come into Hammertown. So I'm kind of trying to figure out what's going on here. Well, and that's the thing. We're going to see some glitches in the timing system yeah. going back and forth. But we do know that we've seen um, Kyle Chaney go through. We do know that we've seen Bryce Menzies go through. We've seen Joe Burton go through. We heard from Phil Burton Sr., which, by the way, is was part of the guys that completely started this whole revolution with the mini mag with the guys from Chenneth. We were talking to Ryan Thomas about this the other week, is that that's where this got going. Started with the Honda Pilot, and then it kept going. As we see, Cody Miller in, does his pit, and going. Another one of those factory Can-Am entries. Um, so many of those vehicles out here, all slightly different. Some more yellow, some more black, going back and forth. But right now, Cody Miller looks like it was just a fuel and go. Um, we're going to keep you guys up to date. 
If you are just tuning in, this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. And then you are watching the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. And a back down in the pit, Miles, take it away. So I've got somebody everybody knows well right here. I've got Mitch Guthrie Jr. here, not in the car this year, but you're here helping out some of your buddies. Everything's going good. Right behind us, R.J. Anderson's uh, here. A couple axles getting switched out. I heard he was uh, complaining about no power steering, but lots of action going on down here, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely interesting being on this side of it. But uh, oh, sorry, we got an issue. Uh, but overall, um, you know, it's cool to be here, and you know, this is King of the Hammers right here, watching everyone come in, issues, and uh, see how it ends up. Yeah, like I said, we were ch chatting earlier. It looks like. Oh, now, hey, senior, how about how about you have a little chat with us? You've won this race multiple times, and it's great to see you out here helping out everybody. Uh, how's it going on your side of things? Uh, good so far. Just got a call though. Um, we got to see what's up. They said something about a fuse, so I don't know if he doesn't know where the fuse panel is or what's going on. But it's going good so far. But, yeah, it's great to see here uh, supporting everybody. Like I said, you've won this race multiple times, and you're still just the big smile on your face says it all that you can't miss it. Love it. Still love coming out here, racing or not, or. Mitchie's not racing. It's a little weird, but still great to be here. Yeah, and like I said, we got lots of action right here in the 37 with R.J. Anderson switching out some axles, working on some power steering. Hopefully get him back out here uh, going, but lots of action down here in the pits. Uh, Mitch, always a pleasure, and uh, we'll see what, what happens when your car comes in. Thank you very much. All right, Ricky Scott, back to you guys. All righty. Hey, we were watching Mitch Guthrie Jr. And, and Miles, I was trying to get in here. I wanted to ask him because Mitch Guthrie Jr. beat Ballistic B.J. Baldwin in <laughs> Silver yes. State. And B.J. was in his trophy truck, but Mitch Guthrie was in that Pro-R all-wheel drive, and it was so fast. So that tells you what kind of speed these vehicles have. You give them the right course, and they're, they're beating the trick trucks, T1 trucks, uh, the trophy trucks, whatever you want to call them. They're unbelievable as we are watching Cody Miller work his way back into the desert. I'm checking out right now uh, our top two, Phil Blurt and Ray Gall, currently second on course. Uh, obviously, Kyle Chaney's running up front. All right, as we're watching, we got, man, more, we got people slammed. It's bumping up right, bumper. Left, My, right. Miles, when you get a chance, let us know what's happening down in the pit. Miles, take it away. So I'm down here in the Baja pits, the uh, BFG pits down here. Everything's going good. I've got Travis Zollinger, Mr. ZRP himself, in this custom-built single-seat Can-Am. This thing's an absolutely beauty. Uh, he'll be racing a Pro-R in the 4400 class, but this thing, I mean, the billet A-arms on this thing, it looks absolutely amazing. This car is good. He loves coming out here and testing with Ultra 4 and King of the Hammers, and he's got this car really, really dialed in. And the BFG guys got him through and out, a fuel and only for Travis Zollinger, quick and easy. He is back out on course right where he wants it to be. I asked him if he wanted to have a quick chat. He said, no, this is a quick pit, but gave me two big thumbs up. He's excited to go out for lap number two. So we'll uh, send it back to you guys up at the booth. Well, Scott, well, Scott you know, I, I, I got my start in short course by be, uh, doing the interviews, being the pit reporter. And that is not, a, not an easy job because guy would be there at Cranon, it went back in the soda days, and guys would come in, they'd be having problems. Here we see Ronnie Anderson, as he works his way in, uh, we'll be going down to Miles in just a moment. But to finish that thought, sometimes the, the drivers are appreciative that you want to talk, but not now, buddy. I got yeah, bigger things to do. Yeah, you're walking a tightrope as a pit reporter. That's, there's no doubt about that. And sometimes they, even the crew chief will pull you aside and just hang on and, and let, let our guy go. And if you get a chance, check out these chassis. Look, they're completely different. They're making them look, they look like boats underneath so they, they don't get hung up too much. So a lot of these chassis, they start with all the original components, but they're completely doing a tube chassis, some of these open classes. And then we, as we're watching these guys work their way in, we see separation going back as we got another driver coming in. Miles, what do you have for us? So Ronnie Anderson just came through. They gave him a quick splash of fuel, and the car looks good. I mean, that was probably a 10-second stop. They were in and out in a hurry. His brother, uh, RJ Anderson, they're still working on his car. He came around the car in his full fire suit, checking everything out. Uh, big thumbs up from Ronnie. Uh, RJ's still in the pits, having some issues on the back of his car. Tough break for him, but Ronnie's back out there on track. Lots of action. The, the pits are hot, and they're a lot of fun, so we'll keep it bringing to you with, with all the action we can find. But we'll send it back. Ricky Scott, take it away. Take a breath, Miles. You're making me tired out there. <laughs> Calm down, buddy. You're doing you're doing awesome. You're killing it. As we're watching Ronnie Miller as he works his way around, we just saw Hunt. Uh, I'm sorry, Ronnie Anderson. Uh, and I screwed up because I was going to say we would just watch Hunter Miller make his way in there into there with a the pit. Um, 
but Ronnie Anderson, one of those guys that drives everything. Short course, desert, you name it, he does it. And uh, we're going to see how good he can do it because we know he's so talented once he gets up in the rocks because that's when the, the game changes. As Phil Blurton uh, Sr. said, Junior's been out here doing this this whole time. He started out with motocross <coughs> and supercross. Then he went into uh, some desert stuff and short course. And now that's that's where Bo Judge is his yeah. strong point. But Phil Blurton <laughs> Jr. is looking for his first King of the Hammers win. But he has to dethrone the current champion and leader at this point, And that is Kyle Chaney in the 191 Can-Am. He is out and running in clean air as we are watching Hunter Miller work his way back out into the rocks. Hey, I'm looking at the track right now, and our guys, our leaders are coming into uh, outer limits, and it looks like that, uh, let's see if I can click on it. Uh, Phil Blurton has got around our leader, Kyle Chaney. Well, we got that's we got we got to look at that. Wait for the timing. So, so check that timing out, Scott. I, I hate to be the the, no, nerd, no, no. the nerd over your shoulder telling you what to do. 33 was the last update. Scott's got to take his shoes off because he's doing <laughs> math. Actually, yeah, you're right. It, it was just recently updated for Phil Blurton, and his and Kyle Chaney hasn't been updated yet. So yeah, it so hasn't that's been updated for two minutes. So. so when you guys are watching, you don't don't have to wait for yeah. us as we're watching another driver's. That is Brian Deegan as he works his way down Turkey Claw. Uh, Brian, obviously the metal militia freestyle done so many different things but also pro four champion pro two champion um rally champion i mean he's done he's pretty much become a student he studies this stuff well and, and when i talked to him about anything that he did i worked with him a little bit i was spotting for him when he was doing his pro four he was willing to bring me in and listen you know for a couple races and that's the thing that he's doing and he's also doing that with his kids um uh, Haley doing unbelievable in NASCAR and also his, his younger son Danger is crushing it in Supercross. The speed that he is showing, it is not a fluke and it is, believe the hype. The Deacons are for real when it comes to racing. And if you don't like them, don't follow them. That's yeah. what I love about Brian. <laughs> yeah, it was just updated, so I stand corrected. Kyle Chaney still is our leader, but Phil Blurton also just updated, so he's much closer than he was uh, probably about 10 minutes ago. Well, like I said, the, the race is just beginning. As we're watching Dustin Robbins work his way back into Hammertown, and once again, the guys ran this the other direction, so the bumps are much better at this point. It'll get a little rougher as the day goes on, but uh, the, it's in a good, the track is in a great position, a great condition for these current drivers. Uh, well, it looks like Dustin Badlax Jones is, a, they all, the top three just, all update at the same time and Dustin Jones is now looks like he's running third on course hey, what camera number well we talked about it Dustin is going to be one of those guys that he's very oh we see somebody up and over but I see them out of the car thumbs up all okay that is two looks like 286 two I apologize because I can't exactly see what that number is, but what the good news is is both the guys are out and they're saying, hey, can you come pick me up? Uh, <laughs> no, we cannot. That looked like number 290, but I'm not exactly sure. Wow, Jay Shaw, are you kidding me? 85 and a half miles an hour. So here's the leader approaching outer limits. You can see course completely different it's gets it the course is good and broke in but yes we're watching kyle cheney once again the i gotta quit saying that kyle cheney the current champion and current leader at this time work his way towards outer limits phil blurton is pretty close if phil can get by bryce and get cheney in his sights he just has to stay within that that short distance and he can keep him in sight the whole time and then try to push kyle to make a mistake but kyle's a multi-time champion and also the current winner here so he's not one of those guys that's going to fold under pressure but maybe just pick it up so right now these guys are getting getting their feeling for the rocks they're they're got it going so we will we'll scan back and see where Phil Blurton is at this time yeah I'm trying to find oh, Bryce Menzies he hasn't updated for quite a while 
Yeah. Well, well, the good news is we got all, this is one of the drone shots. You can see how it zooms in, zooms out. I like the fact that it's up high because as a driver, you can't see around this. And the shadows do play, that they, they give you a little bit of breather off the sun, but you can't see some of the holes and how, how steep some of the rocks are. So <clears throat> we're about at great sun. I like a little bit of shadow myself personally, but not direct sun because with no shadow whatsoever, you lose a little bit of the, the depth of the hole as well. So what you as a driver out here is it? Did you find more advantageous to be later in the afternoon, visually, or right now midday? I, I, I'm liking right now. Right now we're about nine o'clock. You got some shadow, so you can see the, the size of the rocks, stuff like that. One of the things that I hate is dusk. When the sun's behind it's behind the horizon, but the sky is bright and the ground is dark, and your lights really don't work that well, it makes it a real tough, real tough uh, situation. We also want to thank the guys from. Curry Enterprises, uh, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly uh, EFI, King Shocks, VP Racing Fuels, and Warren Factor 55. We also want to get the, throw a shout out to Terra Crew, um, Onyx Off Road, Ricardo Seats, EMPI, Eagle Jacks, Baja Verde Beef Jerky, as well as Buggy Whip. Thank you guys for your support as we are watching our current leader. Kyle Ch no, I'm sorry, I take that back. This is Phil Blurton as he is chasing him down. Our currently second, so we do not know what happened to Bryce Menzies. We'll catch you up on that because when, when they took off out of the infield, Bryce Menzies was physically second. Now we see Phil Blurton has got by him, so we don't know if there was just a pass or if it was a tire or what, or what it might be with Bryce Menzies. But um, right now, second physically and very close to the lead overall is Phil Blurton and Bo Judge. Scott Rain is hurting his eyeballs trying to figure out. Actually, the Bryce Menzies is just outside of the main pit. Stopped. He's, uh, it says here, 1.8 miles east of road marker 70. And he's been there since 939. And he's got a few cars around him as well. So once we get some information, so now here, watch the line, Scott. It, when the, when it, the trail started, they, they came right up the wash. And then what happened in a race, more than likely, is that somebody got stuck down there and they're like, I gotta find a way around. So that's when you start seeing them using the banks and the walls, moving around. And we've talked to Dave Cole in the past. He said, unbelievable, some of these rocks have fallen right into the way. So we're speculating right now that Brent, and I'm going to, it's not confirming what you said, but the rumor is that Bryce is, is broken and is out of the car. Um, if I have somebody, wait, I hear, I, I got a text from uh, uh, Fish. It says Bryce is broken, he's done. So uh, Fish, if you can elaborate a yeah, little more uh, than that. <laughs> Fish knows everybody. Fish Fish is like, uh, he's, he's the Oz. He's, 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 yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he's not even here, and he has more information than us. So, Fish, keep it coming. We're going to rely yeah, on you. Carrie's here. I'm surprised she isn't helping us out via text message. All righty, as we're watching some of the riders work their way back out into the desert, once, once again, we have Kyle Chaney is in front, Phil Ford is second, and Bryce Pinsley, who was sitting in second place, is now broken, and they're saying the rumor is that he is out. But, Kyle, what do you have for us? Miles is down here, not Kyle, but we're having <laughs> Miles, some fun Kyle, now. Miles, come through. Uh, the BFG guys gave him a lot of fuel. He said, I passed a lot of guys in the desert. He gave me two big thumbs up. He's out here having fun on that single seat Can-Am. I just saw Terry Madden over with the Gomez crew. He's got Darian Gomez running uh, with him. Had a few issues, but hey, he's back on the track and moving, and he hit that Yukon launch, and he's really pushing strong. Looks like I see Shannon Campbell coming in, so we'll uh, run down and have a quick chat with him. Ricky Scott? Or Jeff, or whoever you want to be, take it away. <laughs> hey, 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 we're gonna we're gonna we're we're gonna mix it up. All right, we got everybody laughing in there. Kyle, Miles, same thing. Get over it, buddy. It's been a long week, and I haven't even been here. That was Dustin Battleaxe Jones, not Justin Battleaxe Jones, by the way. Dustin Battleaxe Jones. So, uh, anyhow, wow. so I just I don't mean to interrupt you. But no, the go. The speeds that these guys are showing right now. Casey Curry at 93 miles an hour. Yeah, that, that's that's saying something. These these turbo cars can really get up to speed in the, in the new R ones, but the Can Ams are showing strong right now in one and two.
That is <clears throat> that's Brian Hamby, and we're going to be going down as we're watching Dustin Battleaxe Jones as he works his way through. We are going to go down to to Miles uh, up there with Shannon Campbell. Miles, take it away. So Shannon Campbell down here with Jason Berger riding shotgun, doing some fuel. There's uh, steering left and right. Brian Cross down here checking out all the steering. Everything's good. It sounds like he does have a rip in the CV boot. And they're, they're deciding whether to fix it, tape it, or run it, see what happens. They're halfway through this race, through the desert lap, but this uh, open UTV looks really good. Shannon Campbell builds one heck of a machine. And this, again, we were talking about strategy. This is seeing the course at race speed. There is nothing finer for his race day. And then Jason Berger doing the same thing. He'll be riding with Jason Shear on Saturday. Big thumbs up from both of them. Looks like they're uh, still doing a little bit of fuel, but the car looks like it's in good shape, and I think uh, old Shannon's doing good. Jess, you having fun out there? I sure am. Uh, oh, have you heard much radio chatter out there? Is everything going good? Everything's going great. Perfect. Yeah, the car looks like it's good. The number five AZ out of Gilbert, Arizona, three-time King of the Hammers winner, off-road Hall of Famer Shannon Campbell doing some fuel and go. Lots of big thumbs up. Sounds like we're full of fuel, so he'll be uh, getting shipped out. So, Ricky Scott, it's your show. All right, thank, all right, thank you, Miles. As we see Shannon going through, once again, these drivers are out there checking out the course because the, they want to do well today, but they want to make sure for tomorrow. So, we will be right back with the Can Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. If you want to watch, if you do not want to go to commercial break, make sure you go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live and get all this, uh, get the, the get the extra camera angles, behind the scenes, everything you got going on. Never leave the action, but we will be right back with more UTV action after this moment. <laughs> is something that 90% of the racers in the world will never get. I've accomplished everything I wanted to do and now he's just like taking the reins. I want to be remembered for being a, a, a huge part of short course, not just racing, keeping it alive, helping it grow. If it comes down to the last weekend and I'm in it, the boys better watch out. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. You are watching the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. Our man Fish has definitely done his homework. He let us know that Bryce Menzies has a broken shock and he is out of the race. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the top 10 on corrected time. And so when we're watching this, we can see where everybody's at. And this is also going to be very, very helpful as we see at the beginning, before that lap, it was Bryce Menzies, but he is out. And then number no, in second was Kyle Cheney, who was physically first. And then Scott? Phil Blurton currently in that third, uh, second spot, I should say, Mike Park, Mike Park third. Well, it was interesting. I've been following the tracker as close as I possibly can. And it had a moment ago, Kyle Cheney, Phil Blurton, who had up there at the same time, um, almost on top of each other. So they're getting real, real tight. 
Dustin Jones very close in that fourth spot. C.J. Greaves working his way up, uh, currently in fifth. Robert Parker, sixth. Cody Miller, seventh. Ronnie Anderson really having a strong run, starting about mid-pack or so. Now currently ninth on course. And Jay Shaw in the top ten with a 127.27 in that number 17 car in that top 10. And, Jay, and so Jay, we got to keep an eye on him because he was our fast qualifier. He was at remote pit one, doing some work on the front of that car. So he has made up a lot of ground. And now once we get into the rocks, it's going to be really technical as we're watching, uh, watching these drivers as they work their way down Turkey Claw. Very tight, very technical as this Yamaha works his way through. Once again, love seeing the, uh, the different manufacturers out here. And, so as we're watching this driver come down Turkey Claw, we have Miles in the in the main pit. Miles, take it away. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, Cameron Steele's getting buckled up. Mitch Alsup just crawled out of the car in his desert loop. Now he's going to play in the rocks. We have Dean Leal right behind him. So these uh, K&Ms are looking good. Everything's going smooth. But yeah, it's a lot of action down here in the hot pits. Cameron Steele heading out for his second lap. Remember, this is about 140 miles in total. So Cameron Steele heading out. Dean Leal looks like they're doing a driver change as well. Lots of action down here. These KMs are taking the beating, but looking good. Checking everything out. Lots of fuel. A few issues to RJ with those axles, but they got it out with that no quit attitude. Lots of action. So, Ricky, Scott, take it away. All right, as we're seeing some dicing back and forth, and once again, these are the drivers coming in to finish their first lap. Now, when you watch on the tracker, you can see. The the, the, the map changes a little bit and the guys are going to branch off and then go to the tight technical stuff. So once again, it's awesome to see right now we have Can-Am one and two with Kyle Cheney physically first and Phil Blurton uh, physically second. But it could, at this point, it might be Phil Blurton Jr. with the corrected time. We can't give you that information yet, but as we're watching some of the drivers work their way, work their way through the desert and now as they work their way um, into the rocks. Completely different race, Scott. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, Kyle Cheney has not updated yet for about two minutes. And it, he's at the last update at 9.48. Has him in second on course. This, is how, this gives you an example of how each driver, um, they update at a different time somehow. I don't know how that technology works. But uh, Kyle Cheney, last update at 9.48, has him in the lead. And then I'll quick go back to Blurton. And his updated at 9.50. So he has, has a more recent update, has him currently second on course, or I'm sorry, leading. Uh, yeah, he's leading. So as soon as Kyle Cheney updates, I'm expecting him to be back in front of uh, Phil Blurton. Well, guys are watching these guys work their way through. Wow. How about that for a move, huh? 198. I apologize, I don't have those numbers. I'm trying to get those for you as soon as I can. That was uh, Cole Clark who just got passed. Um, I, it might have been Terry Matt. I couldn't quite see who that was. Did you say 198? I think it was. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the other Miller. Okay. Thank you for all the spectators up front straightening us out. Yeah, he, Hunter Miller just updated at 949. So he hasn't updated for a while. And I'll click right in front of him, Cole Clark. He updated uh, 949 as well at the same time. But right now, we're, what, three or four minutes off of updating these guys. And you can see how just a simple update, the flip-flop back and forth on course. And there's some drama going on right there. I'll take, some, take a little gas over to the fueling area. Get ready for the next one. So we had someone run all the way in from back door. Now he's got to carry that out. So it's not as easy. So as we're watching this poor guy carry five gallons of gas through the desert, take it away, Miles. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Joey Beck's down here. We got Tyler Rimmery. Tyler was uh, having a little dust in his eyes, so I'm not sure what happened with his visor, uh, but he was rubbing his eyes. He gave me a, a kind of a thumbs up, but he's still going to be pushing strong. Joey Beck in this brand new car with his buddy riding shotgun. Sounds like everything's going good though. The car looks like it's still in great shape. Joey gave me two big thumbs up. They're out here having fun, fueling up the, the rig and everything's going great. Like I said, lots of action down here. See uh, Matthew Wall raving down the way. Lots of great stuff. Like I said, they're just over their halfway mark as they head out for their rock lap. So Ricky Scott, back to you guys. 
Scott, thank you, Miles. As you're watching these drivers, you see the multiple lines, and some of those were created by the Class 11 cars. If you're not familiar <laughs> with what a Class 11 car, that is a basically a bone stock Baja bug. We saw nine, I think it was 98 of them. To do a land rest start, we saw the legend Larry, Larry Rossler out there running around, the guys from Baja Vida, Beef Jerky, supporting that. But as I was saying, the multiple lines, those guys were trying to get out of get out of that main rut because they, they only have a little, I think, 27-inch tire, so they got to save it as much as possible. We were watching the, just a moment ago that one uh, co-driver, or driver, we don't know who it is, running back to get fuel. Uh, who was it? Was it last year, the year before, actually? created like a backpack gas tank and ran into Hammertown, fueled up that gas tank, strapped it onto his back like a backpack and ran back. Was that, was that Terry? Yeah, that was Terry, Terry Matt, threw it on like a backpack. And that was actually, they gave him a 10, a 10 gallon quick fill can, which I'm like, that seems like a little much. I would just <laughs> want to, I want to splash and go. And that was Rich. Birch at 49.16 as he's working his way through the desert. And 49.16, he is in the stock turbo UTV class. This looks like Ronnie Anderson as he's working his way down. So when we work with the military guys, we, we, we emphasize hands uh, not shuffling when it comes to driving at speed because you lose the steering wheel. But what I learned when I was from Dave Cole when I was driving that uh, production truck, or actually, I'm sorry, the spec truck, was that for one, it had full hydraulics, so the steering wheel was constantly floating to the left or to the right. Um, so I made some mistakes there. And shuffling your hands to keep them in a strong position, Scott, because if you get your arms crossed and you're rock crawling, it grabs a rock, takes the whole force of the vehicle, and spins it. As I think coming up behind this is walking down, I think this is Casey Curry, um, as we see some of the guys doing a little bit more uh, extreme work in the hot pit. Oh, we're getting a lot of updates all of a sudden. Uh, Phil Blurton. Yeah, yeah, that is, I'm sorry, didn't mean to shut you off. That is number two, Casey Curry uh, in the Monster Energy. Uh, pro R as he works his way through. So Casey has done this. The fa his father, his uncle, obviously Casey Ern uh, Curry Enterprises does so much for the sport. Um, not just this, but short course desert all the way around. So, so ch make sure you check them out. They're one of our title sponsors. But Casey Curry, a previous Dakar champion. This guy knows his way through the desert. I just remember that kid when he was barely out of high school. Gosh. And to see where he's at right now in his racing career and his company. Well, he's one of those guys that's going to forever look like he's 23. Remember uh, I used to call him Doogie Hauser? Exactly. <laughs> but back when he started in, in pro light, did great there. But these are unbelievable shots. And you can see, watching him, you can basically go to school and watch Casey Curry work through Look at the, the sidewalls and the tires, how they're kind of they're scruffed up. They're dirty. But then all of a sudden, they kind of edge up against a rock. They kind of scrub off the dirt and they're clean again. Well, and that's some of, that's some of the technology that different tire companies from Nitto, Toyo, BFG, um, the list goes on and on, um, Yokohama, is that they take that into consideration because you have to use the sidewalls to climb some of these rocks. It's not always a straight on hit, but anytime that you hit a rock hard on a sidewall, that's the weakest link. But you can use the sidewall to climb your way up or use it to get your way up or down these hills. Well, some of these race drivers, they run a, a heavy ply side sidewall or a light ply sidewall what's what's well, the thinking there well it, it goes back and forth you get too heavy it gets a little lethargic and it's just too much unsprung weight but you want it you want that for puncture resistance and for here you got to have the stiffer sidewall and also that they'll do a little bit more rubber in the mold to give you more traction and more puncture resistant and it typically doesn't go all the way down what it does do is it comes down about a quarter of the way you'll see a knob tread and stuff and a lot of people think it's there for design no that's in for function because a lot of times when we're climbing the rocks you're leaning on that side or using that sidewall to drive up to make to give you more ground clearance in the middle. It's kind of like like moto tires, where the knobbies sometimes almost go all the way to the rim. Yep, you don't want to go too, you don't want to go too far because that it, it gets for one it's too hard to mount. It, it, <laughs> you also need that cushioning and that shock absorption in the tire because like if you drive a you know I was pre running in a stock stock Jeep basically had a little rusty's pre uh, you know uh, lift kit on it. Um, 
So I was using my tire pressure and shock. <laughs> that was my shock absorber. It's going softer and softer. Once you do that, you have to go slower and slower, but it does cushion out the ride. So that, 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 that tire is an air spring as we're watching another one of the drivers work their way through the desert. Right now, we are at 10 o'clock. We are two hours into this race. If you are just tuning into us, this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. And you are watching live the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. This looks like RJ Anderson has got his way. That's that notorious number 37. He basically did the change and he works his way uh, down so as we're watching RJ Anderson, the current tracker is updated, and the two leaders right now are Kyle Chaney and Phil Burton. I can't tell you who is up front, but these guys, their timers are going back and forth. They're almost going, they're getting their way to Clawhammer. Well, they're close enough on, on the course that the, the tracker is flip-flopping. Yeah. And, 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 and so that, that tells me they're very, very close on course, within a tenth of a mile of each other, obviously. And when you don't know any better, now watch RJ as he works up over this rock. He's got to back it, go a little bit to the left to get around that, because that, don't oh, get a run right up and over the top. But notice he didn't hammer it, Scott. You pull up to it, and you just got to carry a little bit of momentum. And a lot of the guys, you know, we talked to with uh, uh, Cody Miller, I'm sorry, uh, Cody Webb during King of the Motos. He's a trials guy. He looks for the rocks. Desert guys look for ways around the rocks. And guys like uh, R.J. Anderson, who have done a lot, or guys like Casey Curry that, that have a lot of rock crawling experience, look to use the rocks to their advantage, not just try to go around them. How does somebody like yourself or even uh, short course guys in general, like we're looking at uh, uh, Anderson a moment ago, how do they go from a pro to one day and then 48 hours later, uh, he almost won the race here on Monday night in the pro two, and now he's out there being competitive in, uh, in a rock crawler? Well, for one, the racers at that level are a quick study. It doesn't take them long to figure it out. Um, it takes a little bit. My, you know, myself, Luke, uh, myself, and my son, Luke Johnson, came out with Dave Cole, spent a day at, at King of the, at, uh, Chocolate Thunder, tried some different stuff. And, and we were so stupid, we thought, oh, we got this. And we didn't realize that uh, Chocolate Thunder was one of the easiest <laughs> hills. But you, it, it's the same techniques. If you're in a small-wheeled UTV or a stock Jeep or a pickup truck, it's that throttle brake modulation, using your left foot and, and not wearing out your equipment. You can use a little bit more brake. The technique that they use for this is what they call throttle brake modulate, is where you keep your foot on the brake and kind of set your throttle. Like It, it might be like a 2 or, two or 25 RPM and you're using that brake to make sure that the wheels aren't spinning out of control and that it helps you lock up the the drivetrain between both sides oh. <clears throat> well because these these things are these are open dip because they have to do that to, to protect them but to kind of try to fool it you use a little bit more brake in there and that sends energy to the other wheel Just once, I'd like Kyle Chaney and Phil Blurton to update at the same time. <laughs> All right, as we're watching <laughs> Dustin Robbins as he works his way um, through one of the down, down the hills in one of the sections. Um, it's just going to get more and more difficult, Scott. So these guys have to just get into their rock crawling mentality, try not to get too aggressive, but they got to keep moving. Well, there, there's no rhythm to rock crawling. How do these guys, I mean, when you find a rhythm on a short course, you kind of find that zone. Is it the same way? Is there a zone to, to yes. climb these rocks? There is a rhythm. It's not like uh, swing dance. It's more like <laughs> it's more like punk rock, pun intended. But it's one of those things uh, that you have to you have to kind of keep yourself moving. And sometimes, just like there, where we saw Dustin back up and take another run at it, you got to work your way around. But check out how much one driver's on one two wheels or on one wheel or three wheels at a time it's constantly bouncing back and forth well our top three are basically updating within a minute of each other but it has uh kyle cheney out front right now pretty sizable about a mile and a half out front of phil blurton and then probably uh dustin jones is still running that third spot 
It'd make it a lot easier to call this if they would update it all at the same time. But the, these guys are going back and forth. There's no doubt about the top two. Have a little bit gap back to Dustin Jones. But, um, no, they're, they've been bouncing back and forth the top two right now. I'm not exactly sure, but this could be one of our leaders. Typically, a helicopter is going to be keeping an eye on them. The helicopter pilots out here do a phenomenal job, as well as the drone pilots don't want to take anything away from them. Also, the stationary camps, everybody have our productions starting at the top, dog. And that's Dave Cole just constantly, as I said, he is relentless. And when it, <laughs> com when it, com when it comes to the pressure he puts on his people, the pressure he puts on the, the course, the pressure he puts on everything. That, so um, it, it, we have, I think, what definitely, if not one of the best coverages out here, because to see all of this live, I think we used to get, uh, when they, I, I said this before, how they used to report the Baja 1000 was you sent a telegraph from Tijuana and you sent another one from La Paz. And that's how they knew your time to get from one end of the peninsula to the other. And now this is what we talked about. See the driver's window net is down and as... <clears throat> this is a 903 it looks like in the white car on the right side. Trying to adjust its way around, uh, stop traffic. Can't see the number on the blue plurs. It says parks because we don't, it, it doesn't say that, but this is why you want to be out front. So well, here comes the his, third car. Right, see, see the, the person in the Polaris uh, pointing parks to the outside saying, go around this way. Um, that's what you don't want. That's why these guys fight so hard in the desert section to get their way up there as we're seeing more and more vehicles working their way into main pit. Wow, there we go. Wearing a Menzies fire suit, that's indication. That's right, walking away from the pit, so. <laughs> uh, all right, as we're watching, the, we're watching the main pit, Miles got some more information down there. What do you have for us, Miles? So we've got Joe Gould and Kyle Taggart in the Rocky Mountain Speed and Fab with the pit guys down here. So there's two cars going on at the same time. Both of them are looking like they're pretty good shape. Everything's going good. Joe Gould's got a brand new car. Kyle Taggart's got his old players out here too, running strong. But yeah, both cars are looking good. Lots of action down here. Remember, you cannot touch the car when you're fueling other than the fuel guys unless they're full fire suit. So they're just visually watching the steering back and forth. Joe Gold's getting a little drink of water, getting everything going on, but we got a pretty good thumbs up from him. <clears throat> Big thumbs up, everybody's having fun. They just finished up their desert loop, they'll be heading out the rocks. And we've been watching our leaders as Joe Gould takes off, Kyle Taggart right behind him it looks like. So that was an excellent, excellent pit. Two cars real quick, everything's in and out. So great, great pit stop by the pit guys. Ricky Scott, back to you guys. All right, so Miles working double time right now. We got everybody working their way through that main pit as we're watching Martin and Godfrey as they work their way down. Uh, Turkey Claw, as we can see this driver, we don't know if he's smoked a belt. Um, can't tell exactly what happened at this point, but he is right in the middle, and this is exactly what you don't want to have happen. Yeah, I, I, actually, I want to go back a little bit and kind of emphasize a little bit more of what you talked about when it came to this production crew and, and the staff here at KOH. The camera guys, the production guys, they went out in all these remote guys, they went out there about 6, 6.30 this morning out into the desert to set up all their cameras and everything to be ready to go when we had the green flag. So kudos to these guys, man. Very little sleep. They basically had to pack out everything they needed for the entire day. <laughs> their drink, their food, everything, as well as all their equipment. So these guys are out there busting their keister. Yeah, these guys are running really strong paces. They're working their way through. And, and one of the things I want to mention is that driver who was out of the vehicle had a bottle of water. So I don't know if he was overheating or where he was putting that, that, that water, more than, more than likely. But um, as we're watching the drivers, they work their way in the different paces. But we want to thank the guys from Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto Tires, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, as well as four-wheel parts and Griffin Radiators. Thank you so much as we watch these guys rolling through the desert. And, Scott, as a driver, you're, you, you have a hard time not 
see, trying to see the finish and going, okay, well, if I get the, if I get done, I'll get it done at this time. What am I going to do? How's it all, all going to go? But really have a hard time trying to stay present because there's so much that can bite you out here. Well, I'm, a, I'm full of questions for you as a driver. You've been out here and doing this. When you get to the desert, actually, how far out front do you have to look? When you're in the rocks, how far out do you have to look? Well, you're always scanning as far as you can and then coming back and dealing with the problem at hand. So if, if I go across the desert, I will scan all the way across the desert. If I'm, if I'm in a trophy truck or if I'm in one of these, as he comes up here, right now as you go to scan down, scan the whole scan the whole uh, wash as much as you can see because there might be a car stuck there or, or a bottleneck or something like that. So if you have a high vantage point, take a look down. Can I, is there something happening to the left or to the right? Now this rider make, trying to make a move, but that didn't work. Didn't work to his well, advantage. Oh, 428 on their side. So now what they'll do is they're going to have to get there and get the winch, pull it to the back to the left side as they crawl at the top to the left side, put their rock strap around one of the rocks, pull that vehicle back over, and before they get going. So a lot of, in in there. Is a roof sticker? Horn winches. <laughs> There you go. They're going to definitely be, that is going to be worth their weight in gold, having a good Warren Winch on them. But back to finish that thought is that only another racer can help them. Or if they're in a troublesome situation and they have not a chase truck, but a recovery truck from King of the Hammers, from the King of the Hammers crew to help them out. So I love this guy in the back is trying to work to the left, to the right, trying to work his way around. And it looks like he's going to make it stick. So good move by him. Well, I'm glad that we have this view just yet because Obviously, there's, there's rules to just about everything out here, whether it be the car or the, running the course. How far off the off the track can they go in either direction? It's 100, 100, I think it's just over 100 feet. But in some of these areas where they've moved to the left or to the right, they're, they, they're going to give a little bit of lead. But what you can't do is if it has a big, long, looping right hand, you're gonna, you can't loop to the to the far right. The other thing is they have is called VCP virtual checkpoints that are gonna click off. If you miss one of those, it's over a 10 minute penalty. I'm, oh. I'm sure. I know that's what it is when we race down in the score series down in Mexico. But I'm not exactly sure. I'll get that information for you. But these are the things that the that the co-driver has to you know, check because when we have the 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 tracker in there, it'll tell you, Bing, I got the I I got the VCP go because everyone wants to try to shave the corners a little bit. Sometimes you miss a corner by Let's say you're over. You're, you missed that mark by over 50 feet. Uh, you know, with a VCP. Yeah, circle back. Then, that, now you got to circle back and get it. I've had to do it on the dry lake bed. I've done it a couple of times. They're like, you missed it. You missed it. Turn around and go back. All righty. We are watching Aaron Clark as he works his way back towards Hammertown. Uh, it's been pretty busy down in the down in the main pit. Miles has been working his little tail off. But if you are just joining in, this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. You are watching live the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. Right now, we are over halfway through this UTV event. Our current leaders are Kyle Cheney and Phil Blurt, we're not exactly sure they've been going back and forth, but Scott Rain has an update. Yeah, updated at 10, 11, Phil Blurton, and I'm look, glancing down at uh, Dustin Jones real quick. He was updated at 10, 12, but he's currently in that second spot. Dustin Jones is, but he stopped on course. Has he got red below his? Yes. His, yeah, so, so when that, so when you look on your site, you got to make sure that you, uh, if it's red, they could be changing a belt, could be changing a tire. We don't know, so we'll keep an eye, and then it'll tell you how long that's been stationary. So if you're watching this online, you can go to, you can go to the website, and then you can you can chime in and go to the tracker and all the different stuff. If you want to make sure that you get that premium feed, you can go to the kingofthehammers.com forward slash live feed, and you can also um, you can make sure that you don't miss any action throughout the day. And Jay Shaw looks like he's getting in the mix of things. It won't be, shouldn't be too long as there's like a 45 second gap between the updates between Dustin Jones and Phil Blurton. So Phil Blurton should be getting by pretty quick with the 17 of Jay Shaw right behind him. And it looks like right now our leader, Kyle Cheney, uh, hasn't updated for a bit, but he is well up front. He has pulled away. Yeah, we were watching Ronald Ronald Beck as he worked his way down with the rock sections. Okay. 
more drivers that work their way into Hammertown. Um, once again, that is the halfway point. The current leaders are, um, about what mile marker are they at, Scott? Uh, let's see, I'll go back to our leader, Kyle Cheney, in the 191. Uh, mile, mile marker 100, all of a sudden I think my headset turned off. Nope, it's your on, you can hear you loud and clear. So race mile 100. 100 for Kyle Cheney. So I'll just stand be, back just, to so our whatever. second and third place on course. We're talking over the top of each other, but the, the race, the total race miles is 142. So right now, Kyle Cheney, your current leader, is, uh, he's only have, has, I say only has 42 miles <laughs> left. 42 miles, the most treacherous desert you're ever going to find. Well, until uh, our second place card, Dustin Jones updates, he is 15 miles back. Third is about 16 miles back. Bill Blurton, waiting for those two update. And then also on top of that, Jay Shaw, he's right there as well. They're all about 15 miles behind our leader. We're watching Tyler Rimmerid as he works his way back uh, back down one of the technical sections. And there's not a lot of options at this point, Scott, when it comes to this kind of desert. You just gotta kinda keep yourself rolling. If you're in a big hurry, this is a bump and run. You gotta come up, but where's the guy gonna go to get out of the way to, you know? So. This is where your experience as far as looking forward, like I'm, I'm thinking off to the left, shoot real fast to get there, at least pull up alongside, and then try to dance through the rocks on the left. But again, I've never done this before. I'm just going off of what I'm seeing on the screen. Well, and watching Tyler, the, the, you have to think about, well, I can either A, try to push really hard, try to get past this guy, but I think he's doing the right thing. He sees the driver in front of him, keeping pace and going, keeping him safe. So now it looks like he's going to try to work his way around the outside. He, he's had it up. So as soon as I said he's going to follow him, <laughs> he shoots around the outside. So Tyler Remarie making a pass uh, and, and then, then working his way through. Nice job by that young guy. He's, he's another one of those drivers. I think he's multi-talented in just about any kind of surface he races on, whether it be short course, desert, now rock crawling, and a week ago on a frozen lake. Yep, and then that's Ronald Beck uh, that just was take, overtaken. Now maybe he can learn a little something from, from Tyler. Now as far as we're, we're looking down on him, obviously, right now via drone, but as far as the angle that they're crawling, is it downhill at this point? Is yeah. it uphill? Yeah, it's downhill because here that's the thing. Every year they run it a little bit different. Sometimes they'll run down this wash. Sometimes they'll come up this wash. And, and the, But the technology in the vehicles are so good, it really doesn't matter for them. Sometimes it's scarier going downhill than it is uphill. But uh, the technology and the drivability has gone way up. This is Rich Birch as he works his way back into Hammertown. Now, one of the things that I'm noticing on this, Scott, is look, he is missing his left number plate. So did, did Rich go over and, and roll that vehicle? Cody Miller but, and Hunter Miller are really uh, getting uh, really close to each other right now. Just behind them is Robert Parker. Now keep in mind, there looks like there's about three minutes difference in updating their their cars from Phil Blurt. Phil Blurt hasn't updated for about six minutes, so I have no but idea it, where he is right now. But it does not show red. No. Okay, so nope. that, that's a good thing. We were watching Michael Garcia as he works his way into the desert. Alrighty, if you are just joining us, you are watching the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. This is the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. I am Ricky Johnson, along with Scott Rain in the booth. Scott is doing his best <laughs> to geek out and figure out the computer system, but he is not the sharpest when it comes to that. Um, hey, okay, Mr. Uh, what, seventh place, are you? Oh, no, yeah, I, I know. I, I didn't say I was the smart one either. But also, we want to thank the people from Amswell. Uh, Tribe One, Cal California Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, P 
PCI radios as well as SDQ, the rookie program. Thank you guys for your support as we're watching more people as they work their way through our well, hotbed. It looks like everybody's been updated right now. Um, the 191 of uh, Kyle Cheney just updated about a half minute ago, and he's he's at road uh, mile marker 100. Again, he's maintained that 15 mile hour gap or 15 mile gap back to second and third, which it looks like right now, as of the last update, it has Phil Blurton in second, and very very close. I'm like right on top of each other, within a tenth of a mile of each other. Is uh, they're so close I can't even click on his bubble. Is Dustin Jones? He's back underway. They're both right at uh, mile marker 85. Um, then we got a couple cars. Cody Miller was now stopped. All right, on screen is our current leader, Kyle Cheney, in the 191 as he works his way through. Now he's back into the sand, and now he's got to work his way down and then jump back into the rocks again. So you notice that was coming down uh, Chocolate Thunder. So Kyle Cheney is on a tear at this point, and we'll, we'll, do, we'll get a stopwatch to see how long it's going to be before we see somebody else coming through Chocolate Thunder. I'm anxious to see how he handles going up uh, Idle Issue. That I, I watching them come down and qualifying yesterday and the day before was one thing. I was not able to imagine how they could go up idle issue. <laughs> okay, we're giving it. But Scott, and we we watched not not we haven't watched Kyle grow up, but we watched him mature as a racer. When he was doing a racing against the Greaves and everybody in the short course series, he was it developed developing the can amps to what they are now. The suspension, the, the motors, all the different stuff. He wasn't they weren't the top vehicle at the time and all that everything that he's done along the way and I really can appreciate this guy from the Northwest who understands rock crawling and does so much. Short course, rock crawling, desert racing, Kyle Cheney, a lot like everybody else, the Phil Blurtons, the Dustin Jones are just a complete package. And he's such a uh, boy that we got a car stopped just off course. Now that tells me right there, he knew there was a problem. He pulled up the course before the car came to a stop. And that is tremendous, tremendous uh, sportsmanship right there. Well, he also doesn't want to get his vehicle smashed. <laughs> I think that is 4465 Garrett Martin. I can't quite see. I think you're right. Yeah, Garrett Martin is off to the side. This could, this could be a belt. This could be... Uh, a CV joint. Man, they're both out of the car. That's well. That tells me it's something more than they're probably just a belt. And typically, you don't throw a belt on the way down a hill. Uh, you know, it's like the the pressure's not not real hard on it. Um, we see he's got the tool bag out. He's going to be working. Twenty six. My number. That is Chris Coyle. So right now, these guys are back a little ways. We are going to be checking out uh, Chocolate Thunder in just a little bit. We did see Kyle Cheney go through there over uh, two minutes ago. So when it comes to uh, corrected time, it looks like Kyle Cheney is still on it. But we got to see what the other drivers that are coming from the back, see what see how they make it through. Again, I'm going back to the tracking. I click on Phil Burton, and he just updated, and he has pulled away significantly from uh, Dustin Jones, currently at... Road marker 100. I'll go back to Justin Jones. He's about two miles back from him. And then try to find Kyle Cheney. Is he even on the map? Oh, there he is. Way down to a lower left part of the course. Yeah. All righty. Uh, once again, if you do not want to go to commercial, you can go on and get that live uh, feed, get that update, get that premium service. But right now, you're watching the current uh, champion and also the current race leader. We will be back after this short break for the KNM UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll be right back. Built for those who answer the call. This is the all new, get it done, Little Recon Grappler. A true all-terrain for the job site or the campsite. 
Recon Grappler stands out as the new standard for all-terrain light truck tires. A true all-terrain tire for everything in between. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Welcome back to 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optimal Batteries. You are watching the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. I am Ricky Johnson with Scott Rain as we're watching the different riders and the drivers as they're working their way. At this current moment, Kyle Cheney, our, our champion and uh, qualified second, he is the uh, leader at this point. Phil Blurton is where we have second. We're working on the timers back and forth. But as we said before, it jumps back and forth, and we don't exactly know um, how close these two drivers are. We did see uh, Kyle Cheney work his way through Chocolate Thunder five minutes, uh, actually six minutes ago, and we still have not seen uh, Phil Blurton yet. That is Jason Weller as he works his way down in the Can-Am. Has his wife, Corey Weller, in the right seat. Um, Got to be some interesting conversations going on there. A uh, whole different meaning to pillow talk, right, Scott? Well, they got the standing joke about if Jason gets one up on, on Cor Corey, she has to make him a ham sandwich. Wow. And she hasn't had to make one for quite some time until the, uh, earlier this week here at Hammertown. So. No, as I said before, <laughs> that the, these two work really well together yeah, absolutely. as a husband and wife, as in crew chief and driver. And when, when Corey's driving, J Jason is always right there. 100% and vice versa, but this is really cool that normally they're short course racers and one is in and one is out. Now they're both in working together, so great job. My hat's off to them. Now a little bit further back on the course, uh, we got a couple of cars battling. Again, keep in mind, they all updated at a different time, but as of right now, what I'm looking on in the tracker, uh, we got four cars very, very close. Travis Zollinger, is leading this pack. RJ Anderson's back underway. He's right behind him. And let's see, the 52, Ronnie Anderson, he's there as well. They're all moving. And just behind Ronnie is Casey Curry. So we got four cars as it updates. Uh, they might separate, but right now looking at the track, they're all right on top of each other. Robert Parker has stopped on the course in the 900. Well, the signs that we're giving you, we're trying to find out exactly who that, that other driver was that coming through. Jay Shaw appears to be stopped on course now as I'm kind of glancing my way down, down the course. All right, as you're watching, I want to, we also want to throw out to ARB SRT Off-Road for the Motos guys. Also, share my coach. Dana Spicer, Electrified, Axial RC Cars, Action Sports Canopies, as well as Nacho Lights. Yeah. 
We're trying to get some more information on where exactly these shots are coming from. Uh, but as we go through the week, everything, Scott, seems to get better and better and better as they start to identify more of where the cars are coming, uh, shots are coming from. This could be our leader. I'm not exactly sure. It does look like a factory Can-Am. Now, this looks like Justin Battleaxe Jones. Right. So we're, we're having, a, ladies and gentlemen, we're having a couple issues. So we're going to, no, no, no. Everything is positive, but it, when it comes to, when I, when I say we're having issues, it's the time of the tracking and stuff like that. So Scott is trying to figure out what, what's happening. Um, What's happening? We have an issue out there. But anyways, back to the back to the point. As as it tracks, it does not always hit at the same time. So we don't have fish from Fishistics here. Um, <laughs> oh th boy, th the th expert. That, is, that the expert on this. So we are doing the best we can up up here in the booth. But right now, as we know it, Kyle Cheney is your current race leader. With right behind him is Phil Blurton, but we don't know exactly how far back he is. Dustin Jones is showing that he's actually second now. As yeah, Phil Blurton has has updated more recently than Dustin Jones, and Dustin Jones is showing that he's in second. But still, with that with that being said, uh, Kyle Cheney just well out front. He's he's got the field covered as of right now. Probably I'm going to guess at this point um, 12 miles uh, covering uh, second place. Well, and we were just watching one of the Kawasaki's, you know, going going in, and it's great to see them get back into it. We've got representation, obviously, from Can-Am, Polaris, Speed, Kawasaki, Yamaha. Haven't seen a lot of Hondas out here, but it's great to see all the different factory programs and so many, so many uh, uh, factory Can-Am drivers. And right now, that's what we have out in front and potentially the top three between Kyle Cheney, Dustin Jones and Phil Blurton. Oh. This is so now we're watching uh, Dustin Jones as he works his way. He, he's now physically second place, so he's still quite a ways back now. Uh, Kyle Cheney came through 11 minutes ago, so um, he's got to make some ground. But you are watching Dustin Battleaxe Jones, one of the other factory Can-Am drivers, as he works his way through. Now we are watching Kyle Cheney, who is our physical uh, and current race leader, was qualified second as he's working through working his way down Jackhammer. Um, once again, Kyle Cheney qualified second, just. Really, really close between him and Jay Shaw. So a lot of times, you know, some of these vehicles, a lot, a lot of times these light vehicles will not run uh, a, a sat radio because of the weight that they want to do. And when you're down in these canyons, you have no communication whatsoever. Now, a lot of times you can have your satellite pinging you, letting you know if you have a, a Garmin. Once again, here's Dustin Battleaxe Jones in the T978. No, now he is just now down Chocolate Thunder, um, so he is is over 12 minutes behind Kyle Cheney. So Kyle is off to a great run right now. We still have a lot of racing to go through before we even think about the finish line because there's so much going on between mechanical issues and that. So Scott, you've been talking with Emmy. What do you got for me, buddy? Well, uh, we finally figured out uh, the updates have all been very recent within the last 60 yes. seconds. Um, Kyle Cheney obviously has the point significantly out on the course. The uh, so, uh, but he's well up front of uh, Dustin Jones, who is second on course. On track right now, we see Kyle Cheney. We want to thank them for the support as we're going out here. But yeah, so much happening, and right now it is. Uh, we, we've got another person up in the booth that's yeah. going to be talking to us here in a little bit. Um, 
but the weather is absolutely perfect right now. So to kind of recap real quick, um, Kyle Cheney obviously has a very size, well, I'm going to say about a 10 mile lead on the second place physical car of um, Dustin Jones, not far behind. And it, this is physical on course, it's not by time. Uh, let's see, third place is Phil Blurton. Go a little bit further back. Looks like Cole Clark, Clark might be the next uh, fourth place car. Um, but our top three are well up front of the rest of the field. And this man is, put, is actually put on a clinic right now. This is Kyle Cheney as he works up Nacho Dip. Um, and also, you, if you're wondering where the heck did these names come from, because I did it first. <laughs> yeah. But if you're the first one to do it, you can name it anything you want. Oh, so no kids. Well, so we've got uh, everything from Nacho Dip to Chocolate Thunder to Backdoor. I know they're a little to take the wish line. Yep, he's it putting in. it right back in the car because he knows uh, this is going to happen later on. I might as well have it out here with me. So it looks like uh, looks like he's gotten out. Driver's going to keep going, and the co-driver's going to go up to the next spot where they think they might need to winch so that they can save a little bit of time. No reason for a co-driver to belt in right there, right? Well, it's also he's going to spot for him. So he's trying to get up there, let, let uh, Kyle Cheney do his thing. If there's a problem, you know, to, to get in and get out. They know that that's a difficult spot. They pre-ran these sections, so they more than likely they said, you know what, this is gonna be yep, our plan. Yep, this is all our the, winching place right yeah, here. All, all these top teams, they are not guessing. I had somebody, you see the straps around the rocks. I used my my winch line so many times that, thank God I had a uh, na retired Navy SEAL in there, retied it twice because <laughs> I got stuck in the most ridiculous stuff. I, there would be a rock just big enough to top dead center. I have found it almost every time. But right now, this is our current uh, current leader of the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. I'm in the booth with Emmy. Emmy, you were down in the pits. You had a lot going on down there. Anything that you saw that you're bringing back up here with you? Yeah, well, you know, um, when I was out there talking with folks, there were a lot, there's just so much excitement when guys are going off of the line. Um, what I thought was really cool was I was talking to you, number 24, Cole Clark. He's in the uh, single seat. Ironically, he's on Ru camera. Look at that right what there. What timing. Oh, Perfect. It's so good. It's the, he's the only single seat that I saw in staging. And, you know, the, the cool thing about that is that he can really see both of his wheels. So he's got an easier time in the rocks. But when it comes out to the desert, harder to get some. No one's calling a corner for him. Or he has to get out and winch himself. That's right. the thing that I've watched the Gomez brothers. I've watched Shannon Campbell, the whole Campbell family. They run that single seat. Uh, now Bailey's in a, a two-seater. But, you know, running that, there's a situation that um, you're probably wondering what's happening here. He may be going from low to high range. If you are new to this game and you just got your UTV, never, ever, ever <laughs> shift from high to low or low to high underpowered. Stop, take a second, and do it. You might get away with it once or twice. Yeah. But if you're in any vehicle, if you're in a Jeep, if you're in a Bronco, if you're in anything with a two-speed transfer case, stop before you get into low gear, please. All righty, that was your current leader. This looks like Justin Badlax Jones as he's working his way up Nacho Dip as well. But uh, Kyle Cheney, Cheney has worked his way up past there. We saw the co-driver out once making a change, but now we see Justin Jones try to get his way up there try to get a little bit of heat in those tires to hopefully pop up and over and not back up again. Backed up again, get a little bit of run at it, and up and away he goes. Yeah, you know, a lot of this is, it's all a momentum game, right? But you can't have too much. You just gotta have just enough to make sure that you keep those tires spinning, make sure that you've got all of that momentum getting these vehicles up and over these rocks. I mean, these rocks are as big as these UTVs. Right, it, just like right there, as they go up and over the top, you can see it's, it's not clearing anything. It's bouncing and hitting off yeah. everything. And what ME means by momentum is, if you think about it, if everybody's ever bump started a car, um, it takes a lot of energy to get it rolling, that initial movement. But once it's moving, one person can get keep that vehicle moving forward. All right, as we watch. Dustin Battleaxe Jones worked his way into Nacho Dips, a.k.a. Sledgehammer. That is Hunter Miller. He is, Hunter has got a good pace going. He is through uh, Chocolate Thunder and now working his way up. Those notorious sand dunes, you always know that's one of the few places that has sand dunes here in King of the Hammers. 
Yeah, and you know, these guys then have got it, they're choosing a, a tire pressure. They've only got one tire pressure for both the desert and the rock. So they've got to find that happy medium there. Um, and be careful to not have too low of a tire pressure, so they're going to kick a sidewall out. What do we got here? No, looking at the sidewall, you can yeah. see uh, uh, Maxis has gone with that. Now, some some people might think that's a little too much weight, but they have the, the knobbies about three quarters of the way down the sidewall, and they're using that, how wide they are for the flex and for that, but it also gives them more puncture resistance, and you can lean on that sidewall a lot harder when you're trying to climb. Yeah, you can definitely get right on the side of that rock and use that traction that you get from those from those uh, grooves on the side to help pull you through. So, you know, if people think you need the bottom of your tire on a rock. No, you just need the side. Yep, but but that is weak link, but Maxis has really went towards that, that more aggressive knobby pattern down the sidewall. So updating here on the tracker, uh, number 190, Hunter Miller just updated at 1041. They have him at 24.2 miles per hour. Um, unfortunately, it looks like everybody has hit race mile 100, which is not true. Yeah. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So we're gonna keep things going. That is Travis uh, Zollinger, I'm sorry. Yes, take that back. Yeah, Travis Zollinger, as he works his way down Chocolate Thunder, once again, notorious to see that sand dunes right there. Now he's switching maybe into high high gear, or high range. Yeah, because again, you need that momentum in the sand, right? You got low gear, you can't get enough speed to get on top of that sand. But Emmy, did you see that? I it did. did. It didn't look like he had front wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, he got a lot of sand was going right outside of the back, out of the back of his tires. I think he's got it now. Yeah, but it just, it, it was kind of interesting that we didn't, now we're seeing a yeah, small now, reach down yeah, to the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that is, you know, it, <laughs> you think about it, all of the, the, the roughness that these vehicles have to go through, and these guys are just putting them through its paces, and then, you know, there's a very real possibility that you could lose four-wheel drive out here very, very easily, and then when that happens, your day in the rocks is done, my friend. Well, it, it's, 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 it's a domino effect. Yeah. You lose one, you lose one axle. Then you're on three. Then you then that's that's minimal. Then you lose another one. Then another one. Then another one. And with these hills, it's just a matter of time. And right there, that shows that he's having trouble. I think he has lost his front wheel, yeah. four, four wheel drive. So, <clears throat> yeah, trying to rock it back and forth a little bit, get that transfer case to engage. But he's well. No, it looks like he's got it. I don't think that's a two wheel drive. If that is, that is one great performing two wheel drive. Truck. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I've done a lot of dumb things in two-wheel drive, but that's not it. No, that, that that's genius if you can pull that off. As we rifle through our page to figure out 916 and 903. I don't even have 903 in here. I don't have a 903. I have 916 as Brian Tilton. I do not have a 903. No, late entry? I don't know. This is Dustin Battleaxe Jones as he's working his way. You know, maybe 903 is the guy that um, showed up to race and wasn't registered and just kind of showed up in tech and was like, I'm here to race, but had never registered. Do we get a name on that? Method Race Wheels? I can see that he's sponsored by Method yeah. Race Wheels. You guys, uh, put your name on the side of your car so we can <laughs> see who the heck you are. Emmy, he can't hear you. <laughs> Yeah, and you're screaming in my ear. I believe you. I'm, I'm all about it. I know. It. When I get excited, my voice goes really loud and high-pitched, so I apologize ahead of time, everybody. You're not alone in that. So it was bouncing back and forth between 903 and our current leader, Kyle Cheney. That is Cody Miller as he works his way down Chocolate Thunder. Once again, in those Maxxis tires that you can see a mile away. Yeah, those are pretty cool. But I love that with this racing, it's not like a road race or anything like that. Everybody's trying something a little bit different. Do I want a thicker sidewall? Do I want steel belts? Do I want carbon fiber belts? Do I want knobbies down the side? Whatever it yeah. is. And, the, and also the compound. Yeah, and it all depends too on your driving style and what is going to be the best thing for your driving style, your rig, the race you are go, the race you're in. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different uh, there's a lot of different tires that you can get in this and still be successful, and that's why we see the Maxis out here. You know, we see the BFGs out here, we see the Yokohamas out here. Just a lot of different options that you can go for. 
Some of the drivers are a little bit further back, working their way back into Hammertown. So they're getting ready to start their second loop. But I, Kyle Chaney is on a tear right now as we're watching Dustin Battleaxe Jones as he's trying to chase down our current champion and race leader Kyle Chaney. But the pace is actually quite shocking how fast they are already at this point. This is crazy. I thought that we weren't going to see the first person through here until like one o'clock or two o'clock that is not going to be the case if kyle keeps going at this pace he's going to be here way earlier than that it almost makes you think like are we going to have to add a second rock loop for the for the like pro pro racers and then have a kind of a sportsman group that only does one lap in the rocks well every year it's the same thing whether it was jimmy lewis back when he was doing king of the motors he's like ah oh, it's going to take him four hours to do this and then they do it in three and then uh this year that the king of the motors ah oh, it should take them this long and they, they they beat it then dave cole's like i'm gonna make it so difficult no one's gonna finish and then they clear it so between the pre-running and the equipment everything is up there Annie, quite a bit as we're watching that is phil burton in the, in the 944 i don't exactly know that where that was but phil had lost up in second position that was right through Wrecking Ball, so Phil Blurton is still in the mix. He had lost a position to Justin ba Dustin Battleax Jones, uh, and once again, our current leader is Kyle Cheney. But right now, that's three factory can -Ams. We got one most yellow, kind of yellow, yeah. <laughs> some yellow. Yeah, and, and Dustin and, Dustin and um, Phil are pretty close together right now going into Jackhammer, so we'll see if anything happens getting through Jackhammer there. But our 191 car leader, Kyle Cheney, I mean, he is just like, he's miles ahead of everybody. Yeah, well, he, he's done his homework. He's obviously very comfortable. He's very happy with that KNM. And so here, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is Dustin Battleax Jones as he's working his way up. Once again, yeah. So we'll watch this, we'll keep this camera shot on, and then we'll also get an idea on where Phil Blurton is. I think Blurton's back a little bit further. We're not going to see him for a while, but we'll keep an eye on this as you're watching uh, Dustin Battleax Jones. Once again, these guys are there to, to help, to, to be there to support the drivers, but they are not there to help them only if they're exactly. in, if they're out of the race or there's something endangering another driver exactly so these guys roll over if they're going to be if they can self-recover themselves and keep going then that's on the co-driver and the winch right but if it's to a point where that they know that tar, car is not going to keep going that's when our uh, uh king of the hammer recovery people will come out help get them out of the course help get them to safety so that the other racers um you know can get on by quickly and easily so that would look like that was Dustin Battleax Jones up in uh, what they call Nacho Dip. And so I put a stopwatch on that. We'll see where Phil Blurton is in relation to that. Man, Nacho Dip, dude, I really need some nachos. Can you go get me some nachos? It just made me hungry. I so. know, I really need some spicy nachos. I'm trying to cut down on the carbs, knock it off of me. Oh, come on, it's King the Hammers Week. Calories don't count. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. All right. This is the fun part about this. So now watch when he heads up the right, because if you, if you take off, if you stay up there, you got to keep the ball rolling. You got to yeah, use momentum. Yeah, look at how sideways at all the trails that is. Down. Oh, yeah, that is scary. And you see where all the escape routes, where everybody is turned yeah. down. When I when I did that, that line years ago, literally it's one of the spookiest places because you have the sand, you're trying to keep as much momentum as you can, but if you can stay up there, yep, yep. it's about a 30 second uh, advantage. Did you see Carlos Sainz at the Dakar rally do a similar thing in that electrified yes. Audi? Nuts. Well, well, and, and he, Nuts. And he, but that looked like he was 3,000, it was a 3,000 foot sand dude. It was ridiculous yeah, how high it was. Yeah, he was just like was. traveling sideways across it before he could get that traction to get up there. That was just crazy. Yeah, if you guys want to YouTube that, Carlos Sainz in Dakar, he, he traverses the side of this dune. He just never gave up on it. It was pretty, pretty phenomenal. And now that is Phil Blurton as he's working his way up. Um, once again, another factory can -Am. So right now, Can-Am uh, factory sponsored drivers are one, two, and three with Kyle Cheney. Uh, Dustin Badlack Jones, and now watching Phil Blurton, also with Bo Judge in the right seat. Emmy, talk about how important are co-drivers. I mean, oh, co-drivers are co-drivers are the boss in the car, right? Co-drivers, uh, yep. All right, he's got it. Co-drivers are the ones that 
they tell the driver what to do, they tell the driver where to go, and they make sure that when the driver makes a mistake, they are their their biggest cheerleader. They're keeping them on the right pace. If they're going too fast and they're gonna, you know, uh, kind of get their adrenaline is gonna get the best of them. The co-drivers are there to calm that driver down and to get them to be going into their race pace. So the co-driver is absolutely integral to making sure that you can get a vehicle off the line. I mean, there's two teammates in there, right? Yeah. Both of them have to take care of their third teammate, that vehicle. That is something I learned from Miss Emily Miller. Well, there you go. But one of the things that these guys are like the dynamic duo of Batman and Robin. Bo Judge is kind of the short course. He's the one that runs and wins those races. But when these two get together, here we see him come up. He's like, I'm not going to tear that up. Watch how athletic and strong yeah. Bo is. He's the If you had to design a co-driver, he's it. Strong, in shape, great mechanical skills, as well as uh, a, an unbelievable driver. And these two, when they were running, so what we're watching on the screen is, is Phil Blurton as he's, as he's heading up, chasing down Dustin Battle Jones, but we see Dustin's spotter is out of the vehicle. So both guys are using the winch at this time. And where is that? Boy, Bo is strong. He is I'm, jo I'm joking. Um, in Jack Hammer, we got so now this is second and third place. Down below is Dustin Battleax Jones as he works his way up. Same thing Kyle Cheney did. He, he let the co driver get out, works his way up, and now we see Bones or Bo uh, get back in there, lock up the lock that up, and then from the inside, Phil Burton can run the winch. Yep, yep. Look, I mean, I'm sorry, I would trip so fast. I would trip and hit my head, and then I would just be out for the rest of the race, and people would have to drive around me because I'd be knocked out. They're, they, you, you always think like, well, yeah, co-driver, what do they have to do? They just have to sit there. Like, no, in King of the Hammers, co-driver is key. Oh, they're holding everything, and yeah. then they're holding a jack, and they're holding all the different tools, all the, all the different things going on. I would still be trying to unbuckle um, at this point, <laughs> <laughs> arguing with my drivers, why are we stuck? Um, but this is the teamwork that these guys have, and as I said, if you had to design a, the perfect co-rider, someone small that can get in and out of the car, physically fit, and then, but also is a great driver as well. So we're watching that Dustin Balak Jones is having a little more difficulty in that section than Kyle Cheney did. Kyle Cheney was stuck in the first part, but then uh, Dustin Jones is having a little bit more trouble. As we watch uh, Bo Judge just continue to run up because there could be more spots, I say could, they pre-ran this, and they know that there's going to be more spots. Absolutely, and you know, um, once these vehicles get through, and we've got more and more vehicles getting through, I mean, those rocks could 100% change. Yes. You know, they can. They're not going to throw a, you know, one of those big rocks, but they could definitely move some of those smaller ones as they're going up through and as they're winching. So, sure, you've pre-run, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the trail is going to be the same by the time you get up there. So that is great teamwork right there. It's yeah. like, okay, we've got that section cleared. Let me hop back in. Typically, I like the the, the, the two-inch uh, cam lock belt so I can mm -hmm. clip my belt, my lap belts in first and then go for the yeah. shoulder harnesses. Yeah. And I mean, look at that terrain. And to think that an, a UTV is going to go through that a couple of years ago was just like absolutely nuts. And now they're out here and they're getting it done. And it's just... You know, I spend my life looking for the shortest way and the and the smoothest way around stuff, and these guys are just like, yeah, let's go do the hardest thing possible. Well, that's how this race got started. With uh, see, Dustin Jones is is still stuck there, so he's he's been he's been messing with that for a while. So we should see Phil Burton work his way into the picture here shortly. But Dustin Battlex Jones getting caught. Yeah, right and by 24, guy. yeah, by Cole here. He's he's going there in that single seat. Cole, Cole Carter in the number 24 car. Uh, he has been, uh, he's updated at 10.50, um, and they have him going at 6.8 miles per hour. You know, the, the last part of this lap is, you know, not that many miles, but when you're averaging five or six miles per hour, it takes a really long time. Yeah. Look at that. Back in that valley, you know, that is a view that not a lot of people get, but it looks like we're headed back out here into the desert where we've got the number 41 car. And, right, is that 41? Yeah, yes, 41. Yes, number 41. There we go. That is Troy Shipman in the number 41 car. So let's see if I can. So he is approaching race mile 80, Troy Shipman in the 41 car. Uh, so we should be having some people come in to Hammertown here pretty soon. Um, on the tracker, I've got number 615, Hubert Rowland from Redneck Racing. You know, I love teams that call it like it is. Yep. Yep, Redneck Racing, that's us. 
Well, that's about 90% of the people on the lake bed right now. So, <laughs> and, I, and I identify them by that statement, so I'm okay with that. We just want to make every, let everybody know, know that if you're just tuning in, you're watching the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optimum Batteries. You are watching live the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. This is a two-lap race. Now, this driver is just finishing, finishing his first lap. The leaders um, are about a race mile 120 ish so they're working their way as we're watching cole in that single seat polaris just rip up there it looks like he has gotten by uh dustin battleaxe jones so a race for second place underway closer to those rocks the tire when it comes up but being able to see both and know exactly where your tires are at all times that's a key advantage and there's and that as we're watching our current race leader kyle cheney as he works his way in i'm going to pass it on to my brother from another mother from great britain jim marsden jim we have got a race on our hands our defending champion kyle cheney is out in front but now the man on the move is is definitely cole clark so keep an eye on him in that single seat jim take it away Jim, hello, how are you? Good afternoon, Emmy, it's great to see you. Yes, it's a Thank lovely. Thank you very much, Ricky. Lovely day for racing out here in Johnson Valley, California. We've got a crowd gathered in front of the Jumbotron. You and I are stuck here in our little duck blind. I got a Diet Dr. Pepper, I'm ready to roll. <laughs> Fantastic, been watching the race action all morning and it's been absolutely awesome. Yeah. Kyle Chaney, he's having the race again, isn't he? Kyle Chaney is so far ahead of everybody else here. It is absolutely remarkable. We've got Phil Burton way far back. He's got a lot of uh, northern driving to get to before he can reach him. And then uh, number 24 in our single seat, that's Mr. Cole Clark. He is coming in. He's third physically on the course, but he has passed a ton of people to get here. Uh, he started pretty late, like back in the 20s, I believe. So we'll have to see where he is on corrected time. But for right now, Cole is kind of the man of the hour. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, where he can do. But it's so interesting when we watch these UTVs picking their way through these rock trails, just how advanced they have become over the last few years. I mean, jokingly, and we've heard you talking about it this morning. So oh, no, they're golf carts. 100% <laughs> they're, <100 laughs> they're golf carts. I will, you, I will die on that hill they are golf carts. <laughs> well, I think you might be eating your words in the 4400 race later this week because uh, I've got a feeling we're going to see more than one in the top 10. But right now, it's about the UTV Hammers Championship that we are watching here. And the way these vehicles pick their way through these incredible rock trials is just a mystery to me. Yeah, I don't. You know, I got to ride uh, last year with Hunter Miller when he was doing some pre-running in his Can-Am, and I'm, I was just floored. I had never been in a UTV up there, and you look at those rocks, and they're, you know, twice as big as the UTV itself, and you think, we're not going to do that, are we? And then it just Billy goats right up it with, like, just seems like it's so, so very easy. It does indeed, and it's also the technology that we've got advancing through um, the technological parts of it. The, what, the fact that we're managing to get axle shafts to last with these 35-inch tyres, the fact that we're getting suspension to hold together at the speeds that they're hitting in the deserts, right. and also these drive belts. I mean, the drive belts used to be such a massive issue on these vehicles, and we're now seeing those hang together. We don't see quite so many stopped on the side of the track changing belts. This is all remarkable stuff. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. These um most of these uh, vehicles out here are continuously variable transmission. So it's a CVT, like a kind of like a band transmission, like a rubber band. So the vehicle is always in the, like the kind of the right RPMs for the for the the speed of the wheels. And in a car, it's not really my favorite transmission. I just kind of feel like it's droney and doesn't give me the power that I want. But it just really works in this application. So it's interesting to see, you know, like. Out here in the dirt, yeah, it totally works, but you put it on the street, I'm like, no, please, please, just give me a manual transmission. <laughs> and in the bottom right of our screen there, we are seeing Hunter Miller, the car 190, making his way out through Sledgehammer, and he's running the slightly smaller 33-inch tires in the stock class there, but still making that car work. 
Wait and see later in the week how the 4400 class go through there on 40 inch tyres and you'll just see how impressive Hunter Miller is right now. Now Hunter Miller right now is uh, physically behind his brother Cody in the two, in the 221 car. Um, he looks to be just not too far away. It's tough to tell. My tracker is saying that everybody is at race mile 100, which is obviously not true. Uh, but Hunter and Cody are pretty close together. Then uh, we've got Dustin Jones is uh, out there. and But the number 24 car, the single seat, has gotten ahead of Dustin Jones. That's Cole Clark. Then we've got uh, car number 944, Phil Blurton. And then, of course, our leader is out there uh, hanging out in the lead up above everybody. Okay, we are here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers for the 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race. We're gonna head out to a short commercial break and we'll be right back with the action here live at Hammertown. Introducing Nitto's all-new Nomad Grappler Crossover Terrain. Built for the adventurous types, on-road or off. Nomad Grappler brings with it legendary Nitto toughness, while providing a smooth, forgiving ride for the path less traveled. Stand strong when the pavement ends. years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We are here today for the 4900 
Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship here live in Hammertown. I'm Jim Marsden and joined in the booth by Emmy Hall. How are we doing? Oh, we are doing so rad. It's a wonderful day for racing. We've got a little bit of a breeze here, which is always welcome. We can see the helicopters helicoptering. We've got some great footage there. That looks like our leader on Emerson Rich. So he is through the rocks, Mr. Kyle Cheney. Uh, his tracker pinged at 11.06. But you know what, you guys? This guy is way far out. Uh, unless he does something really dumb, I don't think that anyone's going to catch him. Yeah, but it's a tough race, Emmy. These courses are completely unforgiving. And you never, ne ever know what will happen, which nope. is why we love this racing so much. As we watch right now, the 221 of Cody Miller making his way through Nacho Dip. Wait, what did you say? Nacho Dip? <laughs> Nacho Dip. Same thing, yeah. It is Nacho Dip. <laughs> Good Lord, these British people, they got a different word for everything. Tell me about it. And oh, that who is, is that? 1883? No, the triple eight that car is, and I should know that off the top of my head, and it'll come to me in a moment. That is Jeff Bader. Looks like Jeff Bader is, uh, all right, they're getting it back up. Looks like they've got uh, some recovery help there. Both driver and co-driver yeah. are out. So hopefully they can get that thing righted and keep going. I mean, what's great about these vehicles is they're so hardy, you can flip them and just keep driving. Yeah, that looks like another race team there because uh, they are in race suits and you will see attrition taking place around this course. We already saw, of course, our, our race leader, Bryce Menzies, coming to a stop earlier on today. Yeah, that's what's really great about uh, this sport is that racers definitely do help each other so that they can all get through because it takes a village, right? Absolutely, and that is Travis Zollinger there making his way, continuing his way along the course. And it looks like we're predicting that we might see our leader here in just over 30 minutes come into Hammertown. So if you are out here in Hammertown, come on over to the big screen so we can watch. Uh, hopefully, we'll be Kyle Cheney coming in in right around 30 minutes. Um, of course, that will be an unofficial first place because nothing is official till we get it from timing. But it certainly will be exciting to see him come through Hammertown and uh, get up here onto this podium. Look at that beautiful shot from Emerson Ridge. Yes. Oh man, that is that's painful. Yeah, that looks like Jeff Bader there still being recovered the Triple Eight car. Yep, and 1993. That is Martin Duffy making his own lie there on the other oh. side. Now this is interesting. Martin Duffy actually comes from the UK and then moved over to Does the US. Does he say Nacho? Uh, quite possibly. <laughs> he has a very broad Sussex accent. <laughs> but, uh, I know there'll be lots of guys, particularly Joe Bo John Bowden, and the guys from Off Road Worldwide will be watching with great interest. So it's awesome to see. Martin Duffy there on screen and still going strong. Now, while we expect our leader here in about a half an hour, you know, we've got people that are just coming in to Hammertown. Uh, looks like we've got 417. Justin Barth is on his way in to start his, uh, start his lap out into the rocks. So, you know, we've got some people here that are super fast already in the rocks and some people that are just getting in. Yeah, it's worth noting that we do have a cutoff time for people to be going out on their second lap. And I believe that is one, uh, 2 p.m. today, but I'll just have to get that confirmed. And race close is going to be at 6 p.m. today. So that means that uh, race close at 6 p.m. That is full dark at that point. So if people don't have their lights on and they're still out there at 6 p.m., <laughs> oh, that might be a bad, that might be a bad thing. Yeah, I've been on these trails when it's pitch black and it's no fun yeah, at all. Yeah, that would be super scary. Just look at these awesome images here, Em. Oh, I just love it. You guys, this is the best day ever. Can I've we got, see who I'm, that is? Just looking for a number right now. I believe that is the 93. 93, I don't have a 93 on my list. Can you give me another number? <laughs> 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 Let's see, could it be 932? I'm not sure. Well, it's definitely 93. Uh, now, ironically, that used to be a number raised by a friend of mine called Philon Par Potters, but I don't think he's out here That's this not year. him? No. <laughs> he was supposed to be here, so I'll be, if that's him, it'll be a miracle. So looking here at our tracker, which uh, just updated a little bit, uh, 944, that's Phil Burton, is just in aftershock, so he's probably having a super fun time up there. He is second on course, and he pinged at 11-11. So remember, you guys, what you see on the tracker may not actually be the actual truth because the trackers are all pinging at different times. 
we try to ping every two minutes, but sometimes if there's no service for whatever reason, it might take a little bit longer. So use the tracker as a guide, not as a gospel. But we've got 944 there, Phil Burton coming through Aftershock, and then hot on his tail is number 24, Cole Clark in that single seater. Looks like he's coming through Masters, and right behind him is Dustin Jones in the 978 vehicle. So Dustin Jones and Cole Carter are, uh, sorry, Cole Clark are pretty close to each other. There is a race right there. There is indeed, and you saw the car standing back up, making their way down past Jeff Bader there. But it's great to see that vehicle back on its wheels again. Cut off. So the cutoff to uh, take your second lap is at 1 p.m. So drivers have to get their vehicles through Hammertown by 1 p.m. if they want to take their time in the rocks. If not, they are going to have to retire the car. Yeah, and that's our physical second position car at the moment. That is Phil Blurton on track, making his way down through the trails. And just look at the pace of this vehicle as he picks his way down through the rocks, Emmy. Oh, it's remarkable gosh. stuff. Yeah, they are so fast through all of this. It is, it's just crazy to me. You know, I remember when they first came out and even me and my little 1600 buggy, like I could kick their butts and now, no way. Those guys are crazy, crazy fast out in the desert. And the fact that these UTVs are doing this with 33, 35 inch tires. I mean, come on, that is just absolutely nutso. So it looks like we've got uh, that car is up on its wheels, but still not moving. And cars are having to make their way around that vehicle, which is still standing. Oh, no, wait, moving, moving. Come on, baby, keep moving. So it looks like uh, Kyle Cheney is approaching race mile 125. So just a few quick, fast miles for him to get back here to Hammertown. This is all a little desert loop right now from, from uh, where he is back to home. So he should be here pretty darn quick. Oh, we saw Jeff Martin passing Jeff Bader there. So it's all the Jeffs out on the trail right now. <laughs> So now it'll be interesting to see if we're going to have uh, vehicles taking that uh, bypass line around where Jeff used to be, if they were now going to have two lines through that. Oh, no, because I was going to pick it up. And the sun is shining here in Hammertown. It's a beautiful day for racing. We've got a small amount of breeze. It's a perfect temperature, perfect weather. And if you're in the local area, come on down to Hammertown. Come and enjoy the atmosphere and come and see the racing for yourself. Bring but if it on you... down to Hammertown. Absolutely. <laughs> and everyone loves a sing song, particularly with you, with, with you, Emmy. Oh, thank you. I love to have a sing along. So <laughs> looking at the tracker here, it looks like Hunter Miller is uh, ahead of his brother Cody, but he is uh, stopped is what it says. Um, just past, well, everyone is past race mile 100 is what the tracker is saying, which is incorrect. Uh, but Hunter is in front of his brother Cody, but not by much. Um, I, you know, I love to see those uh, sibling rivalries out here on the track. I think that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, and that's the car 577 in front there, are Tristan Leon Gonzalez. But look at the amount of vehicles here. Look at the carnage down there. There's broken cars all over the place. Oh, man. I hope we don't get a bottleneck here pretty soon. It's like a tribe of UTVs. Now, Jim, do you happen to know what race mile that is? It's Just trying to get confirmation of that right now. Yeah. I just want to see where what that looks like on the tracker here. Yeah. That's at Spooners? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's coming in down through Spooners at the moment. This is one of the tougher trails on the tracks out there. Like a little trail of ants picking their way down through yeah, these trails. Yeah, yeah. So, so the tracker is showing like six vehicles right there, uh, just all like backed up one against each other. Um, we've got one more vehicle that's coming into there. In at 4990 is going to come into that traffic jam right there. But it looks like we've got... Yeah, that's number 24, uh, Cole, in the single seat right there, coming in through uh, Aftershock, I believe. Yeah, that is Cole Clark down the bottom there. So it's good to see. Now, that's a single seat vehicle. It's, it's worth talking about seat. that. Yeah. 
how difficult is it for these single seat vehicles out there? Well, they you, just... you haven't got that. You'll see this big jagged bit sticking out everywhere. There's nasty rocks on the side. All of them trying to grab hold of your tires and tear the air out of them. Yeah, you know, it, we do a great job here at King of the Hammers at the live show with, with showing how gnarly this course is and how gnarly it looks on your TV, you guys, it is a hundred times worse when you actually see it in person. You would 100% not believe it, how crazy it can get out there, how many rocks are out there, how many whoops are out there, and how ridiculous it is to try to get a vehicle through this. I mean, this is definitely doing things the hard way. It is indeed. And as we continue to watch our second place vehicle there, let's put a shout out to our sponsors. Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto Tires, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts and Griffin Radiators. And also we've got Amsoil, Tribe 16, California Technologies, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Lasernut, PCI Race Radios and SDHQ with the Rookie Program. Curry Enterprises, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP Racing Fuels, and Warn Factor 55. And then we've got the Terra Crew, Onyx Off Road, Recaro Seats, Empy, Pro Eagle, Baja Vida Beef Jerky, and Buggy Whip. And ARB, SRT Off Road Moto, Share My Coach, Dana Spicer Electrified, Axle RC Guys, Action Sports Canopies, and Nacho Lights. Please support those who support the sport. Absolutely. I want to go get me a buggy whip. <laughs> I do. They're so cool. And look at that. Coming down off of Emerson Ridge with that big lake bed right in front of them. That is going to be pedal to the metal, full speed ahead, getting across that lake bed. It's nice and smooth. That's where you can go as fast as possible. It is. And I love the transitions here at O'Hammers. One moment you're doing 100 mile an hour across the lake bed, the next you're doing two or three mile an hour through the <laughs> biggest rocks you've ever seen in your life. Yep, those last 40 miles are the longest 40 miles of your life. Yep, you can picture the finish line in your mind. You're already thinking about how you're gonna thank your mum, and then it all goes wrong. So our leader, uh, 191, Kyle Cheney, he is coming around on the last bit of his uh, the last bit of his race <laughs> absolutely and you know we've still got cars that have not gone out on their first race which is a little crazy yeah and we're watching our fastest qualifier from this week which was jay shaw in car 17 picking his way through these rocks jay shaw is running in the 4900 can-am pro mod utv class i mean look at you wouldn't even know there were rocks there no it's amazing isn't it putting those 35 inch tires to work just uh. and it looks like they are out gonna Okay, so we watch Jay Shaw here. It looks like they've already got a plan here for Sledgehammer. It looks like his co-driver's going to get out. They're going to start the winching right now. Now, we are here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. This is the 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race. We're going to pop out to a short commercial break. But if you don't want to miss the action, head on over to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live. Sign up for the live for, for the premium feed and you can stay with the action. And join us as we watch Jay Shaw making his way up through Sledgehammer. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy James over here at Full Wheel Parts, live out here at KOH. We're doing a bunch of cool sales out here. We have winches, straps, just anything you need for camping. And while you're out here, and a bunch of chairs, which is really awesome. Behind, like I said, we have a bunch of new tires out, wheels, everything we have here in stock, ready to go. So if you guys need anything, and if we don't have it, we can always get it here next business day. Give me a call, guys. Come on down. Let's do it.
I'm Brian with Nacho Off-Road Technology, and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting. Okay, and welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers here in Hammertown. It is the 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race, and what a day of action it's been. I can tell you now that our leaders are heading towards Hammertown on around about six to seven minutes out of Turkey Claw. It's not gonna be long now before we have them back on camera again. Emmy, what a race. I really thought that this was gonna, they were gonna finish up around like one o'clock, maybe we'd see the leaders. Uh, Jim, it's not even 11.30. I mean, they have been going so fast and there is our leader right there coming through Turkey Claw. That is car 191, Kale, uh, Kale, Kyle Cheney. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. Does he have a brother? <laughs> he might have a brother named Kale Cheney. Uh, coming through and you know, we still have some cars that are on their first lap in Turkey Claw. Look at, look at that, Emmy. I can see Hammertown in the background. Yeah, look at that. Come on home. Look at these, just going down, going, getting through there. He doesn't have anything really difficult after he gets through Turkey Claw. It's all going to be a little celebration. So unless something goes drastically wrong, looks like Kyle Chain is going to be our unofficial winner. That there is a car, number 20 car, Travis Zollinger, coming through, making his way down there through those rocks. Now that looks like another single seater. I thought that 24 was our only single seater. No, 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 famous C. Travis runs a single seater. He also does ZRP parts, which you do all the UTV parts for so many of the vehicles racing out here this weekend. Awesome. But I still can't believe the pace of that man, Kyle Cheney, who's making his way towards us here in Hammertown. This is going to be one of the fastest races in Ultra 4 history. I mean, I hate to say it, but Dave's going to have to make this harder. I agree with you entirely. I ha I mean, are we going to see a three-lap UTV race next season? Right? Like, are we going to see them having to do two laps in the rocks? Indeed. During the break also, we did see Robbie Gordon with his window net open. It was suggested maybe opened it because he was a touch too warm. <laughs> You're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that is there a nacho dip. That is the 900 car. Yeah, that's Robert Parker there picking his way through. Now, Robert is going very strong here. Great pace. Always amazes me how many... I believe that the 4900 is one of the hardest classes, if not the hardest class to win, because there is so many fantastic yeah. vehicles in there. Okay, it's split down between different classes inside of that 4900, but even so... It's absolutely remarkable, the power and the pace that these vehicles do. Yeah, have. look at him there on that sideways, dude. I mean, that is scary. You just got to go full full power on that. Keep your steering in the way you need. Keep keep that car going the side on the sideways and just hope that you don't roll over there. Yeah, there's one fact that is true, that gravity sucks. And gravity to, sucks. Gravity sucks. And you need to pin it to the wall with as much horsepower as you have. Now, our second place, Phil Blurton. Right now, I have him on the tracker, uh, probably right around race mile 123 or so at 11.27 and 30 seconds is the last time he updated. And then our physical third on course is Cole Clark. Uh, that was at 11.28, and the tracker's got him going 69 miles per hour. Cole is really ripping it out there. He started pretty far behind, so we'll be interested to see where he ends up on corrected time. Yeah, the one thing I really find remarkable, Cole Clark, let's not forget, this is a single seat vehicle so a remarkable display considering we also have seen the two seat vehicles stopping at sledgehammer to winch absolutely yeah so you know that cole's been doing all that by himself we didn't see him winch at all so maybe he was able to find a line get the power to get up and over those rocks so that he didn't even have to get out of the vehicle yeah that looked like a single seat vehicle there picking his way down through jack i'm not sure who that was whether it was, it was travis look at all those spectators out there at jackhammer 
Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about coming down to King of the Hammers. You can get out on these trails. You can go and see your heroes wheeling literally. That, that is Casey Curry right there. That is indeed. Yeah. He is a hero in his own right. He is a yeah. previous Dakar winner, of course. And it's great to see Casey out here. He's so, so much history on these trials. Yeah, and you know, speaking of getting out there to the course, you don't need four-wheel drive to get out to Chocolate Thunder or Sledgehammer. You don't even really need off-road tires. You could get out there in a uh, any crossover. You could get out there in a Honda Pilot. You could get out there in a, I don't know, you could probably get out there in a Miata. I'm only saying because I've done that. <laughs> so if you're responsible for all these cars getting stuck in the desert, we will point them It's in your fine. Direction. You can get out there. It's easy. <laughs> no, it is. It's it's wonderful. One of the lovely things about being here in Hammertown and being in Johnson Valley is the accessibility to the racetrack. But please be safe if you're going out there. Follow the marshals. Say thank you to the marshals because without them, we wouldn't be here racing. And just take on board their advice and make sure you take your litter home. In fact, make sure you take someone else's litter home as well. Yep, and you know, last night as I was leaving Hammertown, uh, I saw um, two cars on Boone Road had gotten pulled over by law enforcement. So remember, uh, Boone Road is an actual road. Um, it is not off highway, so you need to make sure that you follow all rules and regulations when you're traveling in and out of Hammertown. We do have law enforcement out here. We need to give them the respect that they deserve and make sure that we keep everything safe for everybody. But this right now is Casey Curry, and I'm loving this view. As the former Dakar winner makes his way up through these trails, he is racing in the Can-Am Open UTV class. And it looks like he might come upon, according to the tracker, he might come upon Jay Shaw, who was our uh, uh, pole qualifier. But the tracker shows him not moving just in front of Casey. So we'll see if we've got a well, little this bit. Is, well, this is the waterfall. This is the waterfall here, right here. That is car 900, which I believe is... That is Robert, Robert Parker. Parker. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting stuff. That is our current race leader. That is Carl Cheney. This is the man of the moment, and he's only got a few short meters before he heads back in to Hammertown. Yep, we should see him coming up over the hill here any moment with those drone footage, those helicopters. There is Hammertown right there in the background. Kyle is bringing it home with a blistering pace. Look at this. He's making his way into the short course right now. He is only literally moments away from clinching victory here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers 4900 Can-Am UTVs Championship. I'm going to pass this. Oh, look at this. Joining me back in the booth now, I also have with me the man himself, Ricky Johnson. Ricky. Kyle Cheney. Kyle Cheney has been running so hard all day, and that's the reason why he is the defending champion. He's had a crystal clean run, qualified second, got in the lead, and never looked back at me. Yeah, he is looking great coming through here, coming through the short course. Will we have the checkered flag right now? And here he is. This is Carl Cheney. He takes the checkered flag. He takes the win here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race. Everything's unofficial at this stage, but right now it's all about this man, Carl Cheney. <laughs> Kyle Cheney has done such a great job, and the guys at Can-Am got to be stoked. As I was saying earlier, I watched Kyle cut his teeth, and when he was just developing the Can-Ams, they were getting faster and faster. They're winning short course championships, and then now back-to-back -back, King of the Hammers is unbelievable. And I guarantee nobody who laid out this course ever thought that they would finish at 11.35. No, he's still got time to go for a round of golf. <laughs> 18 holes at that. <laughs> but no, th this... He's got to be stoked. And that Can-Am was flawless all day long. Not one problem. I don't. I didn't see a flat. I saw him actually get get out and winch because I think that was an advantage. Not to drop the ego and not tear anything up. Get through it and keep moving. Yeah, I think that was a plan right from the start. And it's interesting to see that. I think we're actually going to see some of that in 4400 this year as well. As people are trying to look after their cars rather than tear them up in the rocks. Yeah, I mean, sometimes slow is fast, right? you got to take a little bit of a hit with time to make sure that you take care of that car. And you're going to get through things faster if you can just take just take all of, a little bit of that caution. And one of the problems about being up here in front is you get you get shots from the, from the audience all day long. I just was corrected. Kyle has won this three times now, as well as Big Scott Douglas came by and let me know he is also an Amsoil driver. So <laughs> everybody's going to be Take really the boxes. has got to Take be the absolutely boxes. proud of Kyle Cheney. Um, we saw an interview early on, right before the race. 
how serious this young man is and how hard he works at it. So I think he had the course laid out exactly the way he wanted. Everything fell, fell right into place. We spoke about this um, uh, earlier on. Years ago, it used to be a case of these manufacturers, they used to employ 4,400 class drivers to come into this class and basically go out there to win it. You can't do that anymore. We have these professional drivers, Kyle Cheney, Hunter Miller, Cody Miller, so many of these top people. All righty, so now we have the man with the guy that's, that's won it back to back and also a three-time champion, Miles taken away with Kyle Cheney. <laughs> I was so scared of getting a flat tire. Thank you. Killer, dude. Thank you. Good job. And then third on course, according to the tracker, is Dustin Jones. He pinged at 11.36 about a minute ago, moving at a blistering 72.1 miles per hour. Yeah, and I think that's Travis Sollinger there we've got coming on course. Or is that possibly Cole Clark? Hard to say, no, definitely, Cole, a, definitely a single seater, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that is uh, that is the number 20 car. Cole Clark is actually going right behind... Um, is it right is behind uh, Dustin Jones. So we've got Dustin Jones and Cole Clark pretty close together, just past race mile 125. They are uh, third and fourth on course, respectively. Yeah, Travis going very strongly here. I was chatting to him the other day in the pits. He'll be very pleased with this. Great to see, and hopefully we'll be cutting back down to Miles very soon, who's going to be talking with our unofficial winner, Kyle Cheney. But right now, it's all about the action still out there on course. But we still have so many vehicles heading towards Hammertown. But it just goes to show how dominant Carl Cheney has been this uh, has been this morning. It's hard to believe, Emmy, that it is still this morning. It really is still this morning. I mean, most of the time on a Sunday, like I'm never up at this time, and there these guys have done a, a whole race. All right, so right there. Uh, who got right there it's tough to see their number but i, I mean, think that's i think that's jamie mccoy car 70 just trying to see that yes it is now jamie mccoy is great to see him moving he had an absolute shocker in qualifying rolled his car in chocolate thunder which just goes to show how hard and tough that qualifying course was but it's the man at the moment the man with the wrench mic it is miles with our unofficial winner kyle cheney well thank you guys i'm doing a quick walk around this can am everything still looks like it's in great shape he had almost a perfect day down here kyle cheney may have just done a repeat for this Can-Am Hammers Championship. What a great run. Again, everything is unofficial, but Kyle Cheney, you, you're doing great. Once again, you may have just repeated this thing. How are you feeling right now, buddy? Uh, great, man. It was awesome. We had a great race. Um, Co-pilot did awesome. We didn't really make any mistakes at all. We had to winch Jack, but we kind of figured we would. We thought we might have to winch Thor's Hammer, but we made it right up. Um, but yeah, everything was smooth. Uh, in the desert, we kind of had to slow down a little bit there at the end. Our belt temps were getting hot, but you know we just played it cool and Play, played it safe and kept going. Uh, so you only got out to winch uh, one time. Other than that, any issues? Uh, just a fuel here in the pits? That yeah, was it. Just fuel in the pit. Man, you got to be uh, feeling pretty good about that. And you just did a great pre-run uh, for Saturday's race because you're going to be racing another Can-Am. It's a different Can-Am, but it's very similar. So it's going to like it just gives you a really good feeling on how you're going to shake out on Saturday as well, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, our 4400 car is definitely uh, a little bigger of a car. Um, definitely could take a little more. But man, these stock cars are awesome. They, you know, to put it through its paces out there and that race course was probably the hardest race course that we've had so far. So <laughs> you're saying it's the hardest race course we. Uh, we've had so far we haven't had lunch yet it's before noon you came in quick i mean we've only been racing for what is that you know four hours the desert section was fast the rocks were slow yeah so we uh, i caught up with you earlier in the week and we were talking about uh you know this this race right here you're excited about but you're really focusing on the 4400 race but you still came here and just made it happen yeah for sure i mean 
Um, we definitely focus on the 44. We focus on everything, but we want, really want to do good in the 4400. I mean, we knew we had what it takes in the side by side, but you know we're still unproven in 4400. So, yeah, there's a few of them up there that are going to do well. It's going to be interesting to see because it'll be a third lap on Saturday, a uh, bit similar to the second lap. Uh, what, do you have any game plan for uh, the third lap if you're ready to go right now? Yeah, we, I pre-ran it and uh, looked at everything, and uh, I think we're going to do just fine. I think the can are going to do great. Yeah, well, Kyle, I'm going to let you kind of get with your people, but thanks for the quick chat, letting everybody know what's up. We'll do some awards later on the day. Uh, but, man, what a great run once again, buddy. Unofficial a three-peat. Thank you. All right, well, Kyle Chaney, what, what a great job. Like I said, this Can-Am still looks like it's in amazing shape. It's ready for a third lap of that. We'll have to shake that out on Saturday. So, Ricky, Jim, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Miles. There's a very cool Carl Chaney there. Doesn't look like he's been in a race at all. He still looks clean, still looks fresh. Looks like he can do it all again. As we watch Jamie McCoy here, picking his way around what looks like the bottom of Idle Issues there, coming out the bottom of Chocolate Thunder. Hey, Emmy, how we doing? Hey, what did I miss? I had to take a quick bathroom break. <laughs> you missed Carl Cheney, our unofficial winner here at the 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race. See, blink and you miss it. <laughs> exactly, just blink and you can miss it. So we just saw Phil Blurton, he is second on course. We just saw him go through Turkey Claw. So we should see him about five minutes from now coming in for his unofficial second place uh, assuming that nothing terrible happens but uh, you know Phil's a great driver he's gonna be going through Turkey Claw coming around seeing Hammertown and realizing that he's got a frosty beverage that's in his future yeah Phil Blurton of course is a consummate professional we we're talking about that earlier on these guys really are taking the sport of UTV racing to another level it's remarkable to see and the battle here for third, at least according to the trackers, between Justin Jones and Cole Clark, they are right on top of each other on the tracker. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see which one of those guys can come through. And I think this is images of Phil Blurton making his way towards Hammertown. And it doesn't look like he's very far away from us at all. Soon be turning the corner and making his way onto the short course. Actually, I think that might be... No, that's Phil. No. No, that's Hunter that's Miller. That's not. That's Hunter Miller. That's Hunter Miller. That's so, got 190. Yeah, Hunter. That is Hunter up uh, off of Emerson. That's not Emerson. Sorry, not Emerson, but he's come around Emerson before. He's headed back west around north of us a little bit. Uh, looks like Hunter has made up a lot of time. He has. And that is Martin Duffy there in the 1420. No, it's not that sorry, so I do apologize. That's William Martin. Getting myself all my knickers in a twist here. <laughs> all right, according to the tracker here, Cole Clark has pulled ahead of Dustin Jones and is coming into Turkey Claw. Of course, our second on course, Bill Blurton, is already through Turkey Claw and coming into Hammertown, so we expect to see him at any moment. But this has been a great race today between, well, all of them, first, second, and third, much faster pace than any of us expected, at least here in the booth and also with scoring and timing. We expected them around 1 o'clock and it's only 11.45. It's just nuts how fast these vehicles are. There it is, and that's Jake Versi there picking his way up across the rocks. And it's these little sand washes that are so difficult, they sap the power out of these vehicles. As we cut back to 14.20, which is William Martin still picking his way through. Doing a great job there. Well, I find it absolutely unbelievable that we've actually got a winner across the line before it's so 12 early. p.m. It's so early. Race course is open until 6 p.m. today. And vehicles that have been struggling on their first lap can still enter their second lap up to 1 p.m. Yeah, we still do have a few cars out here that are on their first lap. Uh, they look like they're not moving through Turkey Claw, the cars that are on their first lap. So, uh, you know, We'll see if they can get going here in the next hour and 15 minutes and get going on their second lap. Um, you know, we don't want them to start out too late um, and be out there in the rocks after dark where it just gets real, real scary and a little bit harder to recover. 
And also, we have to give our course marshals a break at some point, as we have another two days of epic racing ahead of us here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. Tomorrow is the four-wheel pass Everyman Challenge, and we'll be starting here live in Johnson Valley at 8 a.m. Then on Saturday, it is the big one. It is the Nitto Race of Kings. Be sure to join us at 8 a.m. for the start of what will be a truly epic race. And here in Tamar here in Hammertown, right by the booth, we've got the tech and contingency for the EMC challenge. So what's great about being in Hammertown is that you get to get up close and personal with all of the vehicles. Check them out, talk to the drivers, see what is going on. And that is our Phil, our second place, Phil Blurton coming into town. You can finally see Hammertown in the distance. He's gonna be coming into in the this distance, short In the I distance, mean, it's a hundred it's a couple of hundred yards away as Phil Blurton <laughs> makes his way around and he will be entering the short course any second now. Only a few short turns and our second place, Phil Blurton, will be joining us here. Look at this, Emmy. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And look at the pace as he brings his can -Am round. Only three more turns. Look at that. Just coming in through here. Let's see if we can get a little bit of drift there. He's going to play it safe. And I love the fact that we finish on a jump. He's got his lights moving. Ricky Johnson has just come in to the booth here so we can talk about 944, getting that checkered flag happening right here as he crosses the line. Second place unofficially at the Can Am UTV Championship. Well, that, I mean, Jim, this is what you want. This is what you work for. This is what you do. And they had some issues, that, you know, they, they lost a little bit of time to Kyle, but then they worked their way back into second. Unbelievable for Phil Burton. He, and he's, he's, he's the bridesmaid again. He's gotten second, third, second, third. Uh, Kyle Chaney, obviously the hat trick, three in a row. But this has got to be a little bit of a heartbreak for him and Bo. Absolutely. And let's not forget, they will have been working all year in the preparations for this race. This is the big one. It is the 4900 uh, UTV Hammers Championship race. This is what they all look forward to because this is where you prove to everybody in the world how good you are. But second place, that's not to be sniffed at, Ricky. No, no, no. I mean, they have to be proud of themselves across the board. can has got to love it. One, two on the podium. Looking like we're going to have third as well. But right now, it's the for one and two in there. So great for can -Am. They sponsor the event. But right now, Miles has got another one of our finishers down there. Miles, take it away. Thanks, Ricky. Yes, we got Phil Blurton Jr. and Bo Judge down here. Can-Am's back to back. Everything's looking good. The car still looks like it's in great shape. It's ready for another lap. And what a great run. He's been up front so many times and just can't quite pull it together. But right behind his teammate, Kyle Chaney, Phil Blurton had another great, great run out there. Lots of people are excited to see him out. So what a great run they had. They've been doing this all day long. It's been one heck of a run. Phil Blurton, we saw him doing some great things earlier on today. So Phil Blurton, how you feeling right now, buddy? Oh, good, man. That was a that was a really fun course, and I mean, we got done a lot quicker than I was anticipating. Uh, we just got that, we got a flat that I definitely earned, and somehow we lost the socket for the impact. And we like dug through the bag, and finally found the socket sitting in both seat, and that just put us way back. Uh, I mean, that's just part of it. The desert was uh, fast, the rocks were tough, but you're here. That's what matters. Super fun, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, good, good job. job. Like I said, second, second place unofficially. We'll see what happens. But it sounds like Ricky Johnson has our unofficial winner, Kyle Chaney. All right. So we've got those vehicles still making their way up. And it looks like, according to the tracker, we're going to have a great race for third place between Dustin Jones and Cole Clark. They are right on top of each other on the tracker. Again, this tracker does not update all racers at the same time, so we'll have to wait and see when we get eyes on them. But that's going to be a cool, kind of fun race for physical third place. But remember, Cole started pretty far back. So when we get to corrected time, Cole might actually take it depending on where he lands here. And just look at these guys just tearing it up here. 1793 making his way up. That is Corey Willis. Oh, Corey's got some fans out here. Look at that. <laughs> So 
So as the action continues here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. We uh, are right. going to be passing it over to Ricky Johnson, who's going to be joined live on stage by our finishers very shortly. All righty, here we are. The hat trick, Kyle Cheney. Unbelievable. I want to see a smile on that face. This is a huge. I've been, I've been saying this before. I watched you when you struggled developing the Can-Ams in short course. They didn't handle right, the motor, all the different stuff. But you've, you've stuck with them the whole time. What does this mean for you to win the Can-Am UTV Championship as well as a three-peat, a hat track? That is not done very often, sir. Well, actually, Can-Am stayed with me. I've had my years, so, uh, but no, it, it's awesome. You know, my Can-Am did great. You know, we raced the stock class this year, you know, kind of after last year, you know, CT Raceworks and, you know, all my other sponsors, we build these freaking awesome cars and, you know, everybody talks crap. Like, oh, the only reason these guys are winning is because they're in these $100,000 cars. So Can-Am's like, we'll just go out there and kick their ass in a stock car, and that's what we did. There we go. I was like, I was like, is it getting that? If after three times, does it get boring or what? But no, to see a little emotion out of you is awesome. And I heard you talk to Miles. It was very uneventful. I felt you did the absolute right thing up there. I think you winched one time. You came up to it, and you knew, don't mess with it. Don't tear up the car. Yeah. So, so we were like, we're gonna probably have to winch Thor's hammer. We're probably gonna have to winch Jack. But I'm gonna try him. I got to Thor's hammer, I'm like, I can make it. Like, I kept my momentum going, we popped right up it, and Scott was already, like, about to get out. I'm like, no, we're good, we're making it. And we got to Jack, I popped up it, and I did make it, and I'd already broke, like, three axles there pre-running. I'm like, I'm not trying it again. I'm like, just get out in the winch, let's play it smart. Like, I know we already got a, a decent lead, let's just keep it and not be dumb. So, obviously, Scott, congratulations. I mean, this is huge for you guys, but with him, Everyone thinks, oh, he's just sitting over there. But how much is he navigating for you and also either piping you up or, or today calming you down? Oh, I couldn't do his job. He's looking at that GPS, and I'm ramming him into holes and everything else and rocks. And so, yeah, he's got that got a, a heck of a job. And he did a heck of a job winching today, too. You know, we kind of had everything planned out. He got out, hooked it up. You know, he, well, I pulled up to a rock so he could get in easy. And, you know, boom, bang, we're on our way. What a nice guy. You, just, you gave him a little stepping stool to get in. But Scott, just sitting side by side with this guy, I mean, from, from what we saw, it was a perfect day of racing. It felt really good. I mean, uh, we had a few missteps, but I mean, this is, a, this is the hardest one day race in the world. And three times in a row, it, it, it's kind of a wild moment, really. Well, and I also had uh, Scott Douglas make sure to come by and tell me that you are an Amzola guy. <laughs> but uh, who do you want to thank? Um, can I look at the car? Get them off for you. We got Amsoil, we got Sparko, we got give, give, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> you know, first and foremost, I want to thank Can Am, uh, CT Raceworks for building the car, Warren Winches, SSI Graphics, CNR, uh, Power Radiators, Intercoolers, Race Line Wheels, AIM, AIM Sports Data, uh, PRP, Amsoil, Fox, G Force, Rival Can Am, Action Off Road, Pro Eagle, ZRP, Hess, Hayes Brakes. Um, Man, this thing's fast, but you got to be able to stop it. So, oh yeah. Well, you know, my girlfriend came. You know, my crew bust their butt. You know, for months trying to get ready for this race. So, uh, you know, it's just awesome. You know, my guys stayed up till like three in the morning last night. I think they woke up at five. So, you know, it, it's nonstop work, and you know, my guys did what it took for us to win. Ninety-nine percent sure. Oh, Yokohama, I don't know how I missed that one. I, it's on the bottom of the door. Yeah, I mean, that's the tire that made us through the race, and I freaking was hammering some rocks, and I'm like, man, I, I can't believe I haven't, I haven't got a flat yet. But, uh, you know, I had no flats, and, uh, you know, we were able to make it in with pretty much a clean car. Everything looks, it, it's unofficial, but everything looks good. Ladies and gentlemen, your unofficial winner we will see later, but give it up, Kyle Cheney. All right, thank you very much, Ricky. And it looks like uh, number 24, Cole Clark, has come in, in our unofficial third. Uh, Dustin Jones has also come in, and Hunter Miller is close behind coming through in Turkey Claw. Yeah, it just shows you the quality of this field. Everybody's just stacking up behind Kyle Cheney now. But look at the lead that Kyle Cheney had when he came in. Absolutely took it to everybody and said, hey, this is what I can do. What do you got? Yeah, and I mean, nobody had a reply. He had time to go all the way to Yucca Valley, get some Burger King and come all the way back before <laughs> second place came in here. He was just so fast out there in that Can-Am. It is redonkulous. It is indeed. As we watch the 143 of Tyler Remery there picking his way down through. I believe he was chatting to Pam Hall earlier today. Very talented young man. 
Now, Pam has also given us a little nugget. Um, Josh Smith in the 1948 car, he's lost his power steering and he's called the race. But what's interesting about this is that he's supposed to race the same car in the 4400 race on Saturday. But if he can't get that fixed, he's not going to be able to race on Saturday. So we've had some some guys and gals out here that have been using this race as a pre-run for the 4400 race but of course the the uh risk there is that you're going to mess up your car and not have it ready for the big race on saturday yeah absolutely so just let's recap here first across the line unofficially today is carl cheney second across the line today was phil blurton in third position i'm sure we'll be speaking to him very very soon is cole clark in the single seater and then in fourth is Dustin Battleaxe Jones. And the number 48 car there taking, and that is Jackson Weller, taking up, backing up just a little bit as he gets up through those rocks. That is such a narrow little pass, passageway there, trying to get up through these rocks, making sure that that four wheel drive is working. You gotta be fast, but you can't be stupid. So, Ricky, I know you've got somebody else out there. I believe it's our third place, Cole Clark. Take it away. One Emmy. We have Phil Blurton and Bo Judge. Oh, now, uh, let's just go right into it. Congratulations. And I know it's got to bump you out a little bit. You've been second, third so many times. But uh, how did the race go for you guys? Really good. I mean, that track was super fun. Uh, Bo got out just to winch us up sledge, which we had planned. Uh, really like a pretty flawless day. So were you were you surprised at the speed that Kyle had? And, and were you, how, how much information were you getting knowing where he was versus the, the other guys behind you? Uh, pretty good. We have, we have satellite communication in the car, so we can kind of talk to anybody whenever we want. Uh, we had heard that he went up jackhammer so we took sledge and it seems like he really pulled on us there so i'm not sure if that was exactly the right choice but either way like we didn't hurt the car all day this thing was freaking flying so it was fun so Bo, obviously you've been out there running with phil you also ran with ryan prosser in the trophy truck and stuff like that i think you're i think you're perfect for for co-rider you're small fit smart and a great ride a great great racer as well but it's a very physical job running up those hills yeah, for sure. Uh, like like you said, at Sledgehammer, that was the plan to get out and winch right there. So, I mean, we, we had it dialed in perfect. I was able to uh, hook on real quick. It just winch right up, and then I finished running up the hill in case we got, um, you know, stuck on anything else. But that's why we kind of get in shape for this race to, to make sure that uh, we don't get tired or anything. But, yeah, and then just jump back in the car, and we just took off. And I like, like Phil said, we had no problems. I mean, the track was super fun, the desert. We were kind of going back and forth and, and not sure what trail it was, but when we were coming out, we were making time up on Cheney, but then uh, something happened in Sludge and Jack where he got away from us and we just couldn't, we'd never really seen him again. So there might, I guess maybe, I guess it was the wrong choice, but uh, all in all, it was a fun day. Phil drove an awesome race. Sorry for him, that it's not the first, but we did the best we could. This is good. You got to be stoked because Can-Am is title sponsor of the race and you guys going one two has to mean a lot to you i know as i said second place no no one wants that but you got to be proud of your performance you guys are all done before noon yeah it's crazy i mean i did not think we'd be done this fast uh this race is really cool because like kyle and the miller brothers and all of us we all race separate series this one race we all get together and you know work as a team and it's cool to see can -Am be so dominant here the last handful of years all right you got a lot of people that help you out who do you want to thank yeah, definitely can am Monster Energy, Vision Wheels, uh, BF Goodrich, uh, Hanson Trust Company, Bo for riding with me, my wife for putting up with all this stuff, uh, Kevin, he's my one of my main pit guys, he kind of organizes all this stuff for me, and uh, Josh in my shop. Josh has been assembling all these cars, and we haven't had a mechanical issue on a car in the last handful of years. Well, that's why you know, I talk with Bo and talk with you during the week, and it's like, can't talk right now. I'm building this car for that race and this race and that. But congratulations, unbelievable job. Phil Burton, Bo Judge, your unofficial second place. And congratulations to Phil for that second place. On screen right now is the 190 Hunter Miller. He is coming in close to Hammertown. He is through Turkey Claw, really getting close here to Hammertown. Uh, he will be our unofficial fifth place, I believe, as my compatriot Jim Marston is riding down. And look at that, there he is coming into Hammertown, just coming around that bend. We'll get into the short course here where he's going to be flying across that jump and taking the checkered flag. Yeah, he's picking his way around the bottom of King Hill there. And it is the 190 of Hunter Miller. His brother, Cody Miller, is still out there on course. 
and it is really quite remarkable. This is a true Can-Am lockout. Yeah, Can-Am sweeping it. So here he comes, he's making his way around the final bend now. He'll be coming on into the home straight. Oh, oh what, just slowing what, down. What, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you stop there. Keep Don't going, you baby. stop there. Keep going, okay. baby. Just get it across the finish line, my friend. Uh, okay, he's got two more bends and Hunter Miller is slowing. Oh, no. What's oh, going no. on? I've got a feeling this could be a belt fail. Oh, no. Start pushing, guys. No, they can push it across the finish line and that works, right? Yeah, that okay, works. Okay, they're going to push it. Oh, Hunter and Look his co-driver. This. this is racing, man. This gentlemen. is racing. This is one more bend. Pushing one more this thing, 180. Pushing it across the finish line to come in for fifth place. Now, luckily, uh, his brother Cody is far enough behind him that he's not going to have to now worry the, about him coming in. But this is awesome. No, it's not awesome. <laughs> no, this is great. You know why? Because this is determination. They are going to get this car across the finish line no matter what, even if it means pushing this vehicle across the finish line. These guys are going to do it, and this is why we love racing right here. Absolutely. It's all about that attitude. I will never surrender. I will never give in. I don't care what it takes. You can see him there. Hunter Miller trying to take his helmet off. It's around about, what's it out there at the moment, Emmy? About 70 degrees? Yeah, it's a really nice warm day. But you know, don't forget, they've been sitting in a race car all day. They, they will be hot. They will be sweaty. Yep, and they just don't have that racing there suit on. They probably have a second fireproof layer underneath. Exactly. There he goes, getting that helmet off. Come on, you guys, you can Come do on, it. Come on, guys, we give are... us some enthusiasm. Yeah, give us Hammer some encouragement. Town, let's hear it. Tell them, Hammer Town. clapping for these guys, getting it around the corner. Now, I do believe to take that checkered flag, they do have a slight uphill that they've got to get this they have. across. They cannot have outside assistance, but other racers can help them. Now, can other racers that have finished come out and help them? Ah, uh, no, I they're off course. Okay, they they're are off finished. Course. So right now, the only person that could help him oh, no. would be his brother who's coming around close or to Jerky Or anyone Claw. on pits. Now but get they... around the back of that car. Oh, come on, you guys, you come can on, do guys, it. Come on, guys, you can do this. Oh, this 100 is... 100 yards. This is 100 amazing. yards of pain after 140 miles. And, all right, who is, who is that that came to his rescue? I didn't uh, see. I don't know, but I hope it's legal. I uh, know, and there's his brother <laughs> coming through Turkey Claw, Cody Miller coming through Turkey Claw right now as we get Hunter Miller across the finish line here at the Can-Am UTV Championships presented by Progressive. What a great finish for Hunter. Just shows grit and determination. Uh, that is their other driver helping them push. That is allowed. So here we go. They're able to take the checkered flag in an unofficial fifth place finish. Now, if the reason that you'll see them pushing it to the side here is they can still cross the timing beacon by going to the left. There's a timing beacon goes right the way across. So even though it looks crazy, they're doing this so they don't have to go up the uphill slope. This is clever. And they are going to be crossing the timing loop at any second now. And that is Dustin Jones that went out and helped them help them push. That was Dustin. So they did it. <laughs> Hunter collapses. What a great finish for Hunter Miller here. It might be fifth place unofficial, but I'm sorry, he's first place in my heart. <laughs> yeah, it's always about the spectacular here in Hammertown. It doesn't get any more spectacular than that. Oh, that An incredible was... stuff there from Hunter Miller. And we're going to be seeing his brother, Cody Miller, joining us here on stage, or joining us here in Hammertown very soon. All right, I believe that Ricky Johnson is on stage with another third place, Cole Clark. Ricky, tell us what Cole's thinking. Thank you so much. Well, I'm up here with Cole Clark, and we were just talking that you're in a single seat. I asked if you had to get out and winch, and you said you did get out one time, but you found some bad news. The, the winch didn't work. Yeah, the winch didn't work, but, uh, you know, I just had to had to hunker down and go for it, and it, it climbed out. This car is insane. It just beat it all day long, and it, it, it held up, so I'm pretty stoked. Pretty amazed at how far back you came, past a lot of people through traffic, uh, dealt with a lot of dust, and you didn't have a navigator telling you left or right, so you had to do double duty. Yeah, I just, it, it's all about, it's all about the prep, you know, all these guys out here, anyone who's up here, it's not by mistake. We just spend so much time and effort, you know, I, I, can, I know that course like the back of my hand, I can, I can do it uh, blindfolded, so it's a lot of effort and time, but it, it's worth it.
worth it in the end. I like it in the rocks. You know, I don't have to look over. I don't have to talk to my co-driver at all. It's just a one-man show, and it's it's really fluent. Well, Emmy was pointing that out with a narrower chassis that you can you can sometimes squeeze through the rocks. You're not spending so much time on a skid plate. Absolutely. Yeah, it's only 29 inches wide at the bottom, so it rips in the rocks. If I could just figure out how to be a little faster in the desert, it might be at the top spot. Well, and so sometimes the shorter wheelbase and stuff gets a little squirrely. We've seen it with the other Polaris vehicles. They're very quick in the tight, but when it gets to the fast high speed, it gets a little bit of a handful. Yeah, this one's actually the same. It's a, it's a 102, so it's the same as those guys' wheelbase. So it, it boogies, but uh, just starting so far back was really hard. The dust was insane. Like, you, I mean, you guys can see over there, it's, it's just impossible to, to, to get through traffic. And, uh, yeah, I just had a clean run. And, stoked about it all right so Cole who do you want to thank you don't come you don't get here by yourself uh, my dad he's in the trenches with me my pit guy Christian uh, my girlfriend Lacey always t talking me off the ledge uh, my mom for taking care of business at home uh, I'm not sponsored by Maxxis but these tires are awesome like they're insane I just smashed on them all day long and so Maxxis maybe you need another driver for next year I think you should give old Cole Clark a call anyways go back to your story Potentially, but uh, I don't get emails back. But uh, basically, my business, um, you know, I, I put so much time and effort into myself so I can come out here and race, and I'm super stoked. Um, RCV, Zollinger Racing Products. Um, I'd hope to put Polaris on board one day. That would be awesome. Um, KMC Wheels, those things worked out pretty good. Rugged Radios and PRP Seats. Awesome. Well, there you go. Unofficially, your third place finisher at the KM UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance, Cole Clark. Thank you very much, Ricky. Awesome to see Cole Clark there up there in third position. I'm uh, just looking at these guys, and they look like they've been to battle, but they've still got loads of energy. They're still so happy to be back here in Hammertown. Well, that's what the finish line does to you, right? You are you think that you're never going to get there, and then finally you do, and then suddenly you've got this brand new wave of energy. Now I'm looking on the tracker here, and uh, Cody Miller is just about to come in. Uh, he's pretty close to Hammertown and then behind him just through Turkey Claw is Travis Zollinger so we're gonna be seeing a couple more vehicles come in but right now that's the 211 truck out there near uh, Hammertown or yeah. sorry near Chocolate Thunder yeah that's Michael Lee's coming up to the bottom of Idle Issues in a moment that's pick his way up through that rock trail now Idle Issues is the trail we watched them coming down uh, during qualifying in the last three days and I find it remarkable that these UTVs can go up, up it. it. I know, I know. It looks scary enough going down. I just can't imagine coming up it. Yeah, no, it's an incredibly tough trail. And they've been picking his way to the top of this and then working his way up through her problem. These trails are so famous. Or so infamous, should I, I say. I would say infamous. Every time, you know, I do a lot of writing about um, stock vehicles. And when I come out and I, I test a vehicle out here, not through these trails, but just kind of up in this general area, I always say this is the place of the infamous king of the hammers. And this looks like this is Cody Miller making his way into the infield now. And Whoa, look at the pace we've don't. just... Come on, Cody, keep it together. <laughs> we've just seen his brother Hunter Miller having to push his can -Am across the line, but Cody Miller is doing no such thing. It's a full power assault as he makes his way around the final bend and towards the checkered flag. He has no idea of the adversity his brother's <laughs> just had to face, and he takes the checkered flag to finish the... The 2023 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship in unofficial sixth place. And I believe this should be the number 20 vehicle of Travis Zollinger coming over into Hammertown here in just a few minutes. Oh, and look at that drone shot. Look at that. Oh, look at all of those spectators coming out here. See what this King of the Hammers Can-Am uh, challenge is all about. Oh, and look at that, 519 is out of the vehicle. 519 is Nelson Sparks. Uh, not sure what is going on there. Looks like he's got his winch line attached. Co-driver is still getting into that vehicle. We'll see what's going on with them. But in the meantime, it sounds like Ricky is on stage. Ricky, what do you got for us? All righty, I was just catching up. Unofficially fourth place, Dustin Battleaxe Jones. I was just giving you a hard time, but I got to give it to you. You and your co-rider jumped over the fence and pushed 
I, I don't think you're doing those two days anymore. You and Cerrone got to get back after it. Listen, Dustin Henderson has been doing CrossFit, burpees <laughs> in the parking lot, running in place. Not me. Dog, I sit in a driver's seat, so I would just sit there and eat and drink all day. I wasn't cutting out, cut out for running and pushing, but we got him across the finish line. But that's pretty awesome. And, and Can Am has had a great show in here today. But it was a good, also a good show of sportsmanship to jump over and help another competitor. Man, I would have never left those guys behind, and I, I can uh, confidently say they would have done the same for me. And I know no spectators or outside help can help racers, but racers can help racers. And so as soon as I saw those guys out of the car pushing, I told D, I said, "We got to go, dog." Uh, it was awesome. You were there, then all of a sudden he takes off, everyone's running, and you and you gave a little check before you touched the car. I like that. Like, we cool? And they, and they gave you the green light. Yeah, I had to make sure, man, because I still want those guys to get a finish, uh, no matter how their day went. And so I had to make sure, like, if I help, this is not going to put them out of it. They gave us a head nod, and so we started pushing. All right, let's talk about your race. You were up and down. You had a couple issues in some of the rock crawls. Yeah. Um, but, but all in all, your Can-Am was on point. Yeah, man, it was a tough day for us, and we ran pretty clean in the desert. That's our forte. But, man, when we hit the rocks, even even from pre-running clean, when you're in race mode, it's, it's a little bit more of a struggle. And so you will have to work a little harder to stay focused. We got off the line a couple times. D jumped out and went running up and downhill. Did an amazing job. And, uh, you know, a couple times we blew our backbones out our buttholes on some gnarly G outs in the desert. A couple times we kissed our own belt. Hold on. Blew our backbones out our buttholes. That's a hard hit. That, that's a real hard hit. When you kiss your own butt belt buckle, that means you fold it in half. So, uh, but overall, good day. King of the Amherst is always so fun, man. And it's just, you got to expect the unexpected while you're racing. The rocks are hard. The desert is difficult, and it'll sneak up on you. So, man, King of the Hammers, you just can't miss it. Well, and, and as you're saying, it's in race mode time is tick tock tick tock and like one second feels like 10 seconds so you get anxious and you made some mistakes well you have to make that decision of do should i keep bumping this obstacle keep trying it hoping i can get up should we get out and winch and so i probably waited a little too long to get d out and winch because he's so proficient at winching but it's those split second decisions and like you said you can literally hear the seconds ticking in your head while you're racing and you know you know that your competitors that are in front of you are gone having the perfect day and the guys behind you is having a perfect day too. That's what gives you such anxiety is those guys that did jump up and clean are just getting a little farther ahead. And you know, once you get over this, you got to make up that time. you got to push harder, and that's when things get real risky. Hey, but you're here. Everything's clean. You did an awesome job. Who do you want to thank? First of all, i got to thank God for giving me the blessings to be able to do what I love for a living. So get out here and race. Thank God for letting me be able to do that. Next, I got to thank my pit crew individually. Thank my dad, my uncle Calvin, Cord, Shane, Chris, and all the other people that threw in to help. Next, I don't think co-drivers get enough notoriety, and Dustin is the only reason that I got to the end of this race. And so without a doubt, my finishes and today's race uh, couldn't have been done without a good co-driver like Dustin. Next, uh, K&M. They sponsor us, take care of us, and these cars are unbelievable what they can do. In fact, we got a couple of k that are going to be running the 4400 race, so there's something to be said for that. Monster Energy for keeping our Camelbacks full, and sometimes we put it in the gas tank just to hype this thing up a little bit. KMC wheels, Max's tires, we got the lizard fingers on this thing, just crawling up everything. Fox shocks, <laughs> Baja Designs lights, Evolution Power Sports for making it rip, KWI clutching. Um, Hold on, let me look at my car real right quick. No, 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 that's good. Oh, oh, and uh, we put a little sticker on the back of the car, and so uh, ripped to Ken Block, one of our good buddies, one of our good racers. We're going to miss him and a good friend of mine. Well, awesome, man. Well, there you go, unofficially fourth place. We will know more. It is not over till it's over, buddy, but congratulations to Dustin Battleax Jones. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Robbie. Look. Thank you very much, Ricky. <laughs> it's Robbie that we're looking actually on the screen right now. So that is Robbie Gordon in the Speed UTV. Yeah, now he's just finishing his first lap. He hasn't even been out into the rocks yet, so I'm not sure what happened to him on the desert lap. Uh, earlier, we saw car number 70, that's Jamie McCoy, both driver and co-driver, out of the vehicle, helmets off. So not sure what had happened there, if they had thrown about. There they are. Looks like they're working on a little bit of their front suspension. So hopefully these guys can get going here pretty soon. And that's just what you want when you have a problem, is someone to wander over with a camera. Oh, 100% <laughs> like, hey, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? In your most stressful moment of your day? Yeah, sitting there. How's your day going? Oh, well, I'm having a great well, time. Well, let me thanks. tell you, pretty crappy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's car 43 there, Jake Versi. Looks like they're just re the winch in Sledgehammer.
Now, the winches on these vehicles are quite small, so if they get a bunching on the cable, i.e. the cable bunches to one side of the drum, it can actually seize the winch up, so they have to be very careful that the winch rope is actually laid onto the drum correctly. That is the 9004 there of Brian Starrett. So I'm looking here at the tracker, and uh, we've got two vehicles that are right around Turkey Claw, but unfortunately, both of them are showing moving at zero miles an hour. Tyler Thomas, he pinged his tracker at 1212 at zero miles per hour. And then behind him is the 441 of Robert Libel again. At 12.13, tracker pinged, moving at zero. So that's kind of what's going on right now on the tracker. Uh, hopefully the time, the next time that upgrades, we or updates rather, we will see them moving. Now I've seen Jamie McCoy there just taking off his AGM jack. This is a battery operated jack. If you've never seen one before, they're quite remarkable. Looks like we're gonna get a demonstration. Oh, I moment. love it, I love it. I'm always looking for, you know, good jack options <laughs> out here in the desert, you know, cause you need something small, lightweight and portable, but something that can stay on your car, you know, get strapped to your car and stay there reliably. Exactly, so these are battery operated, you either use the DeWalt or Milwaukee batteries. That'll be the Milwaukee version. And up she pops. No, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're not bad, are they? Oh yeah. While we look at that, we've got our unofficial leaderboard. In fifth position, it was Hunter Miller. In fourth, it's Dustin Jones. In third, we just seen him on stage. It's Cole Clark. In second, it was Phil Blurt. And then first, the three-peater, Carl Chaney. Oh. Is that a little bit of uh, CV grease I saw there on that uh, steering? It did look that yeah. way. So maybe a broken shaft there for Jamie McCoy. I still find it absolutely remarkable, Emmy, that we could bring these amazing shots from all over Johnson Valley. Let's not forget we are in the middle of a desert over three hours south of LA. And we're back into Sledgehammer here. And you can see the co-driver's got his helmet off. A lot of these crews, they don't use Bluetooth comms, so they only have comms when they're inside the vehicles. So when they're outside the vehicle, they often take their helmets off just so they can communicate. Yep, and if they can't hear each other, I'm sure that they have a bunch of hand signals as well so that they know, yes, we're good to go. Nope, do not winch yet. I'm not ready. Yeah, I know there'll be some very frustrated people in Europe and Australia who still wouldn't understand why yep. the US now you see him, don't do you that. You see him right there doing this with his hands yep. like he's talking. That means little, 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 little. Just want to take up the slack in that winch just a tiny, tiny little bit. And then once that winch gets tight, then they can go ahead and start pulling that vehicle up and over those rocks. Yeah. And he needs a sundial to time this winch, it's so slow, but let's hope it will pull him up these rocks. Yep. Now these vehicles have very small batteries, so unless they actually upgrade the batteries, uh, winching isn't something they can do for long periods of time. Yeah, because that just draws right from your battery, right? It does indeed, so they have to have the vehicle running. And while we continue with the action here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, we're going to pass it over to Ricky, who's on stage. Ricky, what do you got? Well, unofficially fifth, Hunter Miller with some drama at the end. If it was going to break, it broke at the perfect point. I mean, your lungs aren't going to tell me that right now, but uh, congratulations, you pushed it to the line with a little, te a little teammate help, but what the hell, what, what broke? Uh, I think you missed it on the perfect time. Perfect time would have been after we crossed the finish line. <laughs> but uh, no, we, uh, man, we had a solid day. And uh, right there at the end, we were still feeling great. We pushed all through the cross grain and stuff. And then uh, thought we were home free. As soon as we hit the short course, it blew. The belt blew. And we we're like, oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. We tried to let it coast as far as we could. And thought, oh, maybe we'll make it to the finish line. But it didn't happen. So we were like, hush, oh, we. Should we get out and change it or just push? Chad's like, push! <laughs> so uh, luckily he's a lot stronger than me. So uh, that was uh, that was tough, but uh, you know, it's a good way to finish, I guess. Great show, the car was in great shape. I mean, I mean, a belt is always one of the weakest links, but for it to go when it did, who do you want to thank? Oh yeah, I mean, first off, Can-Am, my family, my wife at home, uh, Maxis Race Line, UTV Race Shop, uh, Factory UTV, Liquid Molly, uh, Recaro Seats, just, uh, Max's tires, Raceline wheels. I'm, I'm sorry you got me on the spot here. I'm still winded as hell, but uh, trying to remember everybody. My whole crew, uh, everybody, thank you so much. Double E Racing, Elko Suspension, uh, of course my co-pilot Chad. I mean, 
You know, a lot of people say that a good co-pilot makes uh, your life easier, but uh, no, he, he makes it possible for me actually out here. We had a, we had a solid day. We, we jammed through the rocks. We just uh, had a couple issues in the desert early on that pushed us back. We were, we were making a great time. Uh, we're, I think we are up to fourth or fifth physically, or getting close to it anyway, and uh, lost brakes and, and got out and noticed a, a rock had hit the banjo bolt on the brake caliper and knocked it loose and fixed it. Had a little bit of breaks and uh, just tried to push through the finish line. You got it, Chad. You had to work your ass off for that one, climbing up the hills and then pushing across the finish line. Oh my God, it was it was quite the day. It was one thing after another, and uh, just as we got to the smooth ground and we thought we could relax, we got to get out and push. <laughs> that sums it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unofficially fifth place, Hunter Miller and Chad. Thank you very much, Ricky. What a story. You couldn't make that up, could you, Emmy? You've watched there, Hunter Miller nearly, so nearly made it to the finish line and then had to push it across the line with the help of Dustin Battleax Jones. That is true sportsmanship right there, having another driver come out and help you get your vehicle across the finish line. Now I'm looking at the tracker. We've still got Tyler Thomas and Robert Leibel are still showing zero miles per hour right there around Turkey Claw. But our uh, pole position, Jay Shaw, should be coming in in maybe 15 minutes or so. He's right past race mile 125. Yeah, we watched the car there blowing his way across Emerson Ridge. Let's not forget, we had over 100 vehicles start this morning. 107 vehicles starting this morning. Uh, what do you think the attrition rate is going to be on this one? Do you know what, Emmy? That's really interesting because the attrition rate in these races used to be absolutely phenomenal. And we used to see only as few as sort of 15% of the vehicles finishing. But these UTVs have come on so far. I think that we're probably going to see something in the region of around about 60% or maybe even higher finishing this race today. Now, are, are, are these guys going to straighten that with a rock? It looks like that's what they're going to do. Yeah, I think, like that's, uh, I think what we're about to see is some uh, very damaged fingers. Oh my, oh my gosh. Yeah, there is actually an easier way of doing it, but I can't tell them from here. <laughs> well, you can tell our audience what's well, the easier the way of doing it. the best way to do this. it is that you hold the, the long end, the one at the ends, and then you're broken, and they were just winching the car out of the way to clear the race through sledgehammer. And that is the 431. Yeah, I mean, that is just, that's awesome that they're able to just at least get their car out of the way so that other racers can pass them when we don't have a bottleneck. So yeah, 431 that is, is... No, that's Jake Versey, car 43 there, so I did call that right. So tough, tough luck there for Jake Versey. So here we are at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers live in Johnson Valley, California at Hammertown. We're here for the 4900 Can-Am UTVs Handman's Championship. It's unbelievable that it is only 24 minutes past 12 and we already have seven cars across the line. It's just ridiculous. It is a beautiful day for racing though. The weather is warm. We've got a little bit of a breeze. There's some dust hanging out here, but it is not too bad. It's perfect wet racing conditions as we see. The 1420 really? truck looks like, or sorry, UTV. It looks like he's uh, trying to make a decision here. Yep, they're going to get out and winch. Yeah, that's the right, that is absolutely the right thing to do here. So this is William Martin. And the undercut here at Sledgehammer is huge. It swallows 40 inch tires, never mind the tires that we see on these UTVs. Yeah, oh, he's not going to winch, just going to spot. All right. Oh, no, no, no. I think he's going to push the nose up, and then I think maybe you'll see him break, uh, go for the winch. Co-driver standing very, very, very close. Very close. I would not want to be that close. No, he's got a winch line there. Yeah. Okay, while we continue with the action here, we're going to pass it over to Ricky, who's on stage and has got another finisher for us. Ricky, what do you got? The other half of the Miller brothers, Cody Miller. It looked like a tough race. Not quite as tough as your brothers after pushing across the finish line, but how did it work out for you? Uh, you know, we, uh, we came out strong. We got the whole shot on Kyle in the second row there, and then... Uh, before you know it, we, we were just about to get into the dust and he freaking passed me on the inside and these rollers and I knew it was going to be a long day after that because of the dust in the desert, but uh, we charged hard and we made, uh, we made it all the way past the first two guys and then we were only about 100 yards behind Kyle, uh, 50 miles into the desert and we got our first flat rear tire and so we kept driving on it for about 10 miles and we were going to take it all the way to main pit, but then it shredded. So. 
we had to pull over and change that. That was the first tire we changed, and then we ended up popping two more throughout the race, and uh, we had to get out, you know, and change each one of those, and then we had to stop at remote pit two, three times to get more spares. So uh, that just all in all just cost us a lot of time. As far as the obstacles and the track, you know, we had hardly any hang-ups. Uh, we did we we got out to pull the winch a couple times. We never actually used it. Um, Cody just was exercising, getting in and out of the car. Um, but uh, yeah, I was really happy with the way the car performed. You know, this Can-Am held together really strong. I didn't have a single mechanical issue all day. It was just, uh, you know, I just couldn't quite keep air in the thin tires. So uh, all in all, I'm really, really happy the way it turned out. You know, I, I believe we got like third in class, maybe six or so overall. And I'd like to say thank you very much to Can-Am Off-Road for getting us here, Maxxis Tires, UTV Race Shop, Liquid Molly, Raceline Wheels, Elka Suspension. These guys have put in so much work, you wouldn't believe the shocks that I've got on this car. Thank you to George White and Doug Roll for uh, tuning these shocks. It's been a lot of work, and, but it, it was it really paid off. S3 Power Sports, we've got some awesome uh, hardware on this car. Texera Tech, these, uh, these suspension parts are amazing. S SSI decals, factory UTV skid plates. Recaro Seats is a new sponsor this year, and they are extremely comfortable very supportive thank you very much to them sparko usa sweet fire suits hess motorsports got all kinds of billet aluminum parts on this car tire balls if i had tire balls out here i probably could have won but uh, keller performance parts uh, a aim uh, sports data uh, all these computers are, are amazing belt temperatures are always on point anti-gravity batteries dp brakes hmf uh, you wouldn't believe the work that they've also put in we had to put some seriously custom parts on those those other cars we run in the 4400 class thank you to them uh, warranty killer uh, Warren, we pulled the winch a couple times. We never actually used it. Just had to wrap it around the front bumper. Um, Boostine, Race Fuel, Evolution Power Sports, Pit Viper, Monster Seal, Baja Designs, Run BC, Brinson Power Sports, Dixon Flannel, brand new one this year. I don't know if y'all seen these sweet pit shirts we got. Uh, and Handy Lists. These, uh, I don't know if y'all seen our cars on display with these new lists. They're, uh, they're pretty awesome. They make things a lot easier for us. Well, I was going to ask you a second question, but you pretty much nailed it all. Ladies and gentlemen, Cody Miller. All right, thank you so much up there with Cody Miller. Now we just saw a shot of Jay Shaw coming through Turkey Claw. Looks like he's going to be our next finisher. Uh, we still have two vehicles that are not moving at all on Turkey Claw. And uh, that is the 218 vehicle. Uh, that is Dan Wyrick looking good up there, making his way through those rocks as he comes around here in the Can-Am UTV ch Championship presented by Progressive. Yeah, Dan Warwick used to race in 4400, and in fact, his old car will be starting at the front of the grid for the 4400 race on Saturday, but with a different driver. This time, it will have Paul Wolf behind the wheel. Um, and the 52 car, Ronnie Anderson, looks like, again, the co-driver is getting out there, getting out to winch, getting him through those rocks with the minimal amount of damage. And wow, he is in a hole. Look at that. That's the 4979 vehicle. Yeah, that is David Zeta. Look at the size of these rocks. They are absolutely enormous. Yeah, you can see the winch cable pulling tight there. Now, of course, while they're winching, the driver is also, you know, doing his job and making sure that he's putting some power to those wheels to help that winch get them up and over. Because you don't want to depend on just on your winch to do the job unless, of course, you ain't got no power. Absolutely. As we were saying earlier, these vehicles have quite small battery, uh, small batteries, so have to be careful. Now, the holy grail of off-road winching is we want to be turning those wheels at the same speed that we're making the winch recover. Yeah, and that's really hard because you can see that winch losing tension as it goes up and over those rocks. So it really is kind of a dance between the winch line and the driver to make sure that everything's going to go at the same speed. Doing an okay job there, makes his way through. Nice bit, they'll be taking the cable off now, stowing the cable and continuing their way down Sledgehammer. All right, so we have uh, Jay Shaw making his way through Turkey Claw to be our next finisher. And then behind him in the 900 car is Robert Parker. So we should be seeing those two here in Hammertown momentarily. And there's the number 70 vehicle hanging out up there at the top. Those were the guys that were having a hard time with their tie rod. Yeah, that, that's Jamie. No, I don't think that was. I think it was someone else. But this is Jamie McCoy, who's now back in the vehicle. Looks like they're putting their belts back on. 
Getting everything sorted, they'll be back on track very shortly, but will we continue with the action here? Ricky's live on stage with another finisher. Ricky, what do you got? Well, thank you, Jim. I'm here with Travis Zollinger, the second single seat. So I want to ask you, do you think the single seat was an advantage or a disadvantage on this course? Oh, 100% advantage, for sure, at, at times. So we were talking with the other finisher that he was saying that it was a little cold, it was a, it was a little bit squirrely in the desert, but it was definitely an advantage on the rocks. You know, my, my car handles good in the desert. Um, I got a great shock tuner and uh, ride on Fox, so smooth ride in the desert. Um, the rocks, uh, the single seat is a huge advantage. Um, navigating the dust, you know, a little scary, a little sketchy sometimes, but uh, yeah, stayed on course and we're here. Any, any, any uh, uneventful race, looks like you still have the tire on the rack, all good. Yeah, BFG tires perfect again. Um, I've I've honestly only popped one of them in a couple of years, so uh, yeah, lucky and good tires. Well, you don't get here by yourself. Who do you want to thank? And do you want to do like everybody else and step back and watch? Or look, you got to figure it out. Uh, yeah, we'll give it a try. Um, first off, I want to thank my wife and then uh, all the guys back at the shop, uh, my little kid, and I'm gonna dedicate this race to my little brother. Had a heart attack yesterday, two days ago. Hopefully he's watching. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I wanna thank Rick for sure. There's a lot of them out there. Um, well, you're welcome. <laughs> you're a Rick? I am a Rick. There wow. We go. Wow, no respect here. Yes, I am. I am one of the many Ricks, but good th I'm not the one you're thanking. But yeah, go ahead. I've got some great sponsors. Uh, Warren, K&T Performance, that's where we build the build the cars. Um, Riley does all my prep on the, on the chassis. Uh, Mike, Corey cooks for us. All the guys that came out, Wyatt, Corey with K. Gentry, he's the designer behind behind the cars. Um, man, we did we did a lot in the last month to get here, and uh, we're gonna keep digging. All righty, man. Well, all the best uh, to your brother. I know he's smiling, watching you, watching you do this. So unbelievable job, and you did it with no brakes. Let's talk about that. <laughs> well, I lost brakes. They they were a little spongy earlier in the race, and they kept coming back and. Dropping off before the lake bed on the backside, they they were gone, and that was a pretty sketchy ride down there. Heartbreak <laughs> Ridge was pretty sketchy coming off that. I'll be honest with you there. And uh, other than that, yeah. Awesome, ladies and gentlemen, Travis Zollinger. All right, thank you so much, Ricky. It looks like our next finisher is going to be Jay Shaw is coming down close to Hammertown here. He was the first one off the line. Looks like he'll be a little back further in the field. However, it's still a top 10 unofficial finish. So look at him there coming through in that little little desert section there. It's, you know, a little whoopee out there, but not too rough. They can kind of relax just a little bit because they know they're almost home. Coming around that ridge there, coming around King Mountain, almost to that short course. It is number 17, Jay Shaw from Adventure Lifestyle in the 4900 UTV Pro Modified class. He will come into this short course here, take his checkered flag momentarily for an unofficial top 10 finish. We always love to see these guys come in safe and sound after a good day of racing. But you guys, it is only 12.30. These cars were so quick today. The pace was so fast. It is ridiculous how quick these UTVs are. They've just come so far in such a short amount of time. Yeah, and the number of Can-Ams that are on the top of this pile this afternoon is incredible. Now, when you consider that you've got 107 starters, you know, a top 10, a top 20 finish is really, really good. And here we go. Jay Shaw taking the checkered flag here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Championships presented by Progressive. And speaking of Can-Am, we've got a special announcement. 
Miles, what do you have for us? So we started this out just uh, earlier this year. If you bought a ticket before the 15th of January, you were entered to win a lot of stuff we were giving away. So thanks to all of our vendors and sponsors for making this happen. But especially Can-Am, they're having a great day. But right now we're about to give away a Can-Am. We had uh, 17 finalists, half of them are here. And we're gonna hand them a bag. They're gonna get some Can-Am swag. Each person grab a bag, don't open it yet. Go ahead and grab them. And then there's gonna be one King of the Hammers buff. The rest are Can-Am. So whoever has that King of the Hammers buff is gonna take home a Can-Am KOH edition. So let's uh, run down the, the line and tell me your name and where you're from, buddy. I'm Corey Selleck, I'm from Tehachapi. I'm with Winch Mob Recovery Crew. Jared Bryant, Elmira, Oregon. Chuck McLean, Reno, Nevada. Ray Kempton, Globe, Arizona. Kylie Bias, Joshua Tree, California. Rod Newholm, Alpha Valley, California. Jesus Garcia, Bakersfield, California. Amanda Ramirez, Yucca Valley, California. All right, well, who's excited to see who takes home this Can-Am? Somebody already won in a Can-Am today, and now somebody's taking one home. They're going to take some Can-Am swag. They're going to go to see Roxy here in just a minute and get some more swag from her. So let's open these bags up. We got one winner coming right now. Who's got that King of the Hammers buff? Can-Am, Can-Am. Can-Am. There he is. We got a winner right here on stage. How stoked are you right now, buddy? Dude, I, it's, I'm at a loss for words, man. This is amazing. I'm just glad to be here with off-road family and just having a good weekend. So you bought your ticket to King of the Hammers. How long ago did you do that? Uh, just December. So you got it for 50 bucks. So you got all of King of the Hammers, and you're taking home a Can-Am. I mean, you can't think of anything better right now, Candy. This is better than winning the lottery. Oh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's the best place to be. Every year I'm going to be here. That's what I'm talking about. What, what are you going to do with that can when you get home? Uh, drive it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. What, you got some trails around you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have some uh, trails about an hour from us. So, you know, we'll take it there, and then I'll be back here, you know, playing around with it. That's awesome. So give it up for Jesus Garcia taking home that Can-Am. Thank you, especially to Can-Am. Valor's going to give him a little Can-Am swag pack. And Jesus is going to take that home. Man, can you believe this guy just won a free Can-Am right here at King of the Hammers? Isn't this amazing? Oh, that's why we love being here in Johnson Valley. Everything, every day is something a little bit different and absolutely awesome. We're going to take a short commercial break. We're currently here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers at the 4900 Cam Am UTV Hammers Championship. And we'll be back with more action very soon. Introducing Nitto's all-new Nomad Grappler Crossover Terrain. Built for the adventurous types, on-road or off. Nomad Grappler brings with it legendary Nitto toughness, while providing a smooth, forgiving ride for the path less traveled. And stand strong when the pavement ends. years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Chase, 
Number 23, it's 2023. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. <laughs> Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Okay, and welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We're here today for the 4900 UTV Hammers Championship. And joining me on stage right now is a man who qualified first earlier this week. It's Jay Shaw. How are we doing, Jay? Good, man. Uh, had a couple issues out there, but, uh, man, the team just come together and, and got us to the finish line. So a uh, little bummed, man, just uh, a hard effort to, uh, to be disappointed. But at the same time, you know, um, it's, it's always come to – fun to come out here and, and compete with these guys and um, you better be flawless if you want to be on the box so um, we had a good run at it man can't thank these guys enough for having us out here venture lifestyle stepped up huge and they're the only reason we're out here so um, just thanks to everybody man uh, my, my family coming out here um, just everybody that steps in my co-driver man he worked his butt off today and um, yeah just I, I really appreciate everybody man this is uh, this is our second time we, uh, we qualified first in uh, 21 and come back, did it again this year, and uh, it almost makes you not want to qualify first. So uh, we, uh, I don't know, man, we um, had a good run, but I, I guess uh, come a little short. Well, we watched you out there on track, and it's remarkable. As you were just saying, you cannot leave anything on the track. You've got to put it all together 100%. The quality in this field makes this probably the hardest of the races this weekend to win. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, dude, we had a phenomenal car, uh, but obviously racing's racing and a mechanical let us down. Uh, we fought a power steering issue for, for the majority of the rocks and it just killed me. Um, we got, in, got into pit two and got it fixed up and um, yeah, we were able to salvage a finish. So not, not what we wanted, but we're not crazy bummed up about it. Fantastic. So we're going to see you back here next year for another effort. I don't know, man. I might have lost my sponsor not winning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'm very proud to tell you that you are an unofficial top 10 finisher here at the 4900 UTV Hammers Championship. You can go and celebrate now. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. And back to Emmy in the booth. All right, thank you so much, Jim. And, you know, we had 107 starters. A top 10 finish is definitely nothing to sneeze at. But I'm looking here at the tracker. It looks like Casey Curry is going to be coming in next. He's on his way to Turkey Claw. And then he's followed by number 188. That is Terry Madden. So those guys are on their way coming down into Hammertown. And uh, we've got that's probably Casey right there on the tracker coming into Turkey Claw. We've got car number 42 here making his way down into Idle Issues. Car 42, that is 
not on my list, so I'm not sure who that is. I'm really sorry, good driver and co-driver of car number 42, because you're not on my list. But he's looking pretty good there, getting through that soft sand as they're leading up into idle issues and going up into the rest of the course. You know, they came down at this section when they did qualifying, and now they've got to go up it. So I've got to have a brief stop there. Oh, Scott Webster. Thank you, Scott Webster, for having the name on your vehicle in car number 42. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget it. 42, Scott Webster headed up the hill there, looking really good. You know, I'm looking at the tracker, and we've got so many vehicles that are still out there in the rocks. I mean, they just look like they are stacked on top of each other. If you're looking at the tracker, remember, these trackers only ping like every two minutes or so, and not every tracker is pinning, pinging at the same time. So you want to take this tracker as a guide, not exactly as gospel. If on the tracker you see a little red dot on their number, that means that they are not moving the last time they pinged. So you got to make sure that you're looking at these guys. We always want to make sure that people come through with a smooth, clean, and safe race. But man, there are a lot of people here in the rocks still at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive. And look at that aerial view there. You know, we have got a crazy amount of drones out here and a ridiculous amount of people up on mountaintops bringing you this footage. But we'll go through our unofficial leaderboard here. Car number 191, Kyle Cheney is in first place. Phil Blurton, unofficial second place. Cole Clark, unofficial third. Dustin Jones in fourth. And Hunter Miller pushing his car over the line in an unofficial fifth place finish. There we have car number 9004 going through Jackhammer. That is Byron Sturratt getting through Jackhammer there, one of the tougher trails here at King of the Hammers. Backing up, going to take another line here. You know, they've been through here. They've all pre-ran. They all know what line they want to take, but that doesn't mean they're actually going to be able to take that line because stuff changes as vehicles go through. The 888 car, that is Jeff Bader looking good, coming through here, making his way down. And going up in through the rocks. And there is Terry Madden coming through the KMC Turkey Claw. We should expect to see him pretty soon here in Hammertown. And uh, Casey Curry, he's bringing up the rear from Casey Curry coming through. He should be here any moment. I have him pinged at 35 miles an hour at 1248 through Turkey Claw. So we should see Casey Curry in the number two vehicle pretty soon, followed closely by Terry Madden in the 188. Okay, I'm joined on stage now by a man and a gentleman by the name of Robert Parker. How are we doing? Doing great, sir. Tell me about your day. Another day at the office. Another day in the office. Just another day in the office. You do the hammer trials every day? No, sir. We, we do a lot of work every day, and we put in work a day. Fantastic. So tell me about this course. How tough is it? It is. It's called King of Hammers for a reason. It is absolutely rough. Uh, beats the car all to pieces. Brand new car. We still got dents in it, but it's made it to the finish line. Fantastic. Now tell me, who have you got to thank? You seem to have a lot of extra people up here on stage. Yes, sir, absolutely. Um, I'm going to look right here a little bit. I got KMC Wheels, Performance East. They come in real clutch for us this year with a donor car, CT Raceworks, Air Dam Clutches, Pocket Change Fab, Dynajet, uh, Mr. RPM, uh, Warren, Garage Products, and Parish Fire. Uh, Mr. Brian Fulcher, he uh, has absolutely made this happen for me and my family. So. Fantastic, looks like you're getting emotional there. I can tell you that you're unofficially a ninth place finisher. It's a top 10 here at the 4100 Can-Am UTV Championship. How does that make you feel? Pretty dang excited. Just get, sets the bar that much higher for next year. Superb, so you're definitely coming back? Yes, sir. Well, we can't wait to see you back here with your team. Mr. Robert Parker, car 900, ninth, unofficially at the 4900 Can-Am UTV Championship.
Oh, and wait. I've just had this point. That, just had this pointed out to me. He's also the number one rookie to cross the line this afternoon. So a fantastic stuff here from Robert Barker. All right, thanks, Jim. It's always cool to see a rookie in the top 10. That doesn't happen much. That means that Robert Parker certainly has got the goods to come out here and kick some major butt. Now we're seeing the 1777 car of Ronald Beck here making his way up Chocolate Thunder. Uh, like I said, we've got a lot of cars still stuck out here in the rocks. Fortunately, it looks like most of them are moving and he's setting a pretty good pace here going through Chocolate Thunder. The uh, 4997 vehicle doing the same. Just looking really great. That is Michael Adams coming through all of these rocks, making his way up right behind there. We've got two cars. Looks like a race through Chocolate Thunder. Everybody's going to go around, take that secondary line here, and make a pass. It's funny, you never see a lot of slow, slow racing making passes, but there you go. At the King of the Hammers, you take every advantage you can get. So we've got a pass here happening in Chocolate Thunder. That's always exciting. Now looking here at the tracker, like I said, we should have, we should see Casey Curry coming through here at any moment, coming in to Hammertown, followed closely by Terry Madden in the 188. Now Terry's got a uh, Gomez brother in his co-driver seat who's gonna be racing in the 4400 class later this week. So he's got a front row seat for a pre-run, which is always good. You know, you can use these smaller races to pre-run. There on screen is the number two car of Casey Curry. As he's coming into Hammertown, he's going to be entering the short course here in a few seconds with an unofficial top 10 finish for Mr. Casey Curry. Of course, he has been a Dakar competitor, really great guy, really knows his stuff. He's out there in all kinds of different vehicles. Uh, And coming through there, you know, that section of the desert right there, there's a few G outs. It can be a little whooped out. So all Casey needs to do here is take it slow. Take, Don't take any risks here. Just get that car through Hammertown and back home to where he can, uh, his friends and his relatives and all his sponsors are waiting to give him a warm, hearty welcome. It's always fantastic to bring people home here in Hammertown. And it looks like he's going to be joining us very, very soon indeed. He's going to have lots of stories to tell us about those fabled trials and what's been going on out there today. So, Emmy, we've nearly got a round out in our top 10 here today at the 4900 Can Am UTV cha Hammers Championship. What a fantastic day of racing we've had so far. And what a quick race we have had. I mean, it is 12.53. This is when we thought we were going to see our finishers, and instead we've got 10 cars across the line at here at the Can-Am UTV Championships. Just a blistering, blistering pace. Uh, I just really can't believe how fast these vehicles are getting. You know, next year, my, maybe this is going to be a three-hour race. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking to myself, I can see a third lap appearing next year. I can see a third lap appearing as well. <laughs> as we watch, former Dakar winner Casey Curry taking the checkered flag and finishing unofficially 10th here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship here in Johnson Valley, California. And it is a beautiful day out here. Hammertown is crowded. We've got the EMC uh, tech and contingency happening right here next to the Jumbotron. People are out here just hanging out, watching the Jumbotron. There's all of the dogs are here. It's just a great atmosphere. The dogs? I love the dogs. The dogs are like <laughs> the second best thing about King of the Hammers. <laughs> wow. You heard it here first. What, the racing it, and the dogs, come on. <laughs> but the action continues out there and it looks like we've got somebody else making their way back towards Hammertown that, right now. That is car 188, that should be Terry Madden coming into Hammertown, coming into the short course. Terry Madden should get an unofficial 11th place finish. Yeah, don't forget this is all on adjusted time. So our scoring is all unofficial at this time until race ops give us confirmation and that's why we always do the official prize giving after the race. Yeah, you know, because these cars have started, they didn't start in the same order, they've started at different times, so once you get that adjusted time ready, 
that's when you've got your winners. It is indeed, and it's Terry Madden. Now, Terry Madden has raced in every single class here at King of the Hammers. He's a firm crowd favorite. He is Mr. Thor, as you will see when he comes up on stage. And he's giving it absolutely everything. He's been working with Can-Am this year to put together this effort. And he crosses the line in unofficial 11th position here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammonds Championship. And I'm sure he'll be joining us on stage very short, shortly to give us lots of stories about his day in the office. Now, if I'm looking at the tracker, we actually look like we've got a little bit of break in the action in terms of finishers. Uh, Garrett Martin in 4465. He looks like he's a little off track, so I'm not sure if he's gonna if he is the next uh, physical person on track. But then we've got the number five of Shannon Campbell should be coming in now. Shannon said earlier that he was just using this as a pre-run for the 4400 race, but you know he does have a car that can finish, and uh, I love that Shannon is you know, doing well and he's not even trying. Yeah, absolutely. We're just watching the car 529 there, Cody Willenberg. But no, it'd be great to see Shannon in here. And now, if anybody didn't see Shannon's qualifying running power hour yesterday, get back over to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live. Or should I say, pop over to YouTube, King of the Hammers channel, and check out the replay from power hour yesterday. Shannon gave us the show of his life out there on that track. It was yeah. absolutely fantastic to see. That was amazing. I don't know how he didn't roll down that entire hill. It was crazy. Indeed. And this is Josh Owen here working his way down through Chocolate Thunder. Chocolate Thunder was up, has been our qualifying course all week for our classes. But in during qualifying, they had to go up it. During race, they will be coming down it. You know, and it's amazing to watch these guys actually use the rocks as pivot points to try to get through some of these tighter channels and tighter turns. They can just pivot around those rocks because you know what? Nobody cares about body damage. All we care about is suspension damage and engine damage. I don't know about yourself. I don't want to damage my panels if I can avoid it. Oh, but. come on. That <laughs> makes you look cool. It shows you're really out there. You're giving it your all. Yeah, I'm having to put a full set of skins on my car at the moment, I have to be honest, but there we are, that's a different story. That's uh, right, more action continuing here on the course. That is the 4951 car of Kyle Taggart making his way up there through Jack. He's looking pretty good there. Now, like I said, the tracker here, we don't have a lot of cars that are going to be finishing it anytime soon, but I know that Jim has gone out on stage to get a couple of interviews with our latest finishers, Casey Curry and Terry Madden. So we'll wait for Jim to get ready as we keep our eye out here on the Jumbotron. But uh, uh, Jim, what do you, who do you have for me out there? Okay, thank you very much, Emmy. And joining me on stage is previous Dakar winner, Casey Curry. How are we doing, Casey? Uh, we're a lot better now that we're here. But uh, last year, I went and flipped it over on qualifying and didn't even go a mile in the race. So we just wanted to finish this year. But th this new Pro R is unbelievable. Like, everything on here is a complete bolt-on. I didn't weld on the thing at all. Not a single problem with it. Sean absolutely killed in the right seat. No flat tires on the Nitto tires. The craziest thing is having the old shit button on the steering wheel. You use it like 500 times up there. Every time you're going too fast down a section, you just squeeze on that button and stiffen the suspension so you don't rip a corner off. But it was dusty on the first lap, and then the second lap, there's just bottlenecks, man. You're just sitting there waiting your turn to go up, you know, Thor's hammer, sledgehammer. Uh, there's two or three other ones that it just made it tough. You think you're going good momentum, and when you're just sitting there for five or six minutes, you get anxiety trying to scream at him to go help them get up the trails. But overall, it's it's brutal out there. That's exactly what Dave Cole wanted, and, boy, he got it, man. It's uh, I, I have no idea where we're at. It, we could be 100th place for all I know. It's just been dusty all day. Well, before we get to tell you what position you're at, let's have a quick word. We're here with your co-dog. So how was it for you, sir? Oh, it was a fantastic race. Casey is so good in the rocks, and we just stuck to a plan of just survive and get to the finish, and that's all we could hope for and just see where we ended up position-wise. Uh, I think I only had to get out three times, so that was what we were going for. Like we said, no flats, no nothing. So we, he drove a great race. I give my hats off to him, and, uh, yeah, let's see where we finish, I guess. Fantastic. Now, Casey, I know you have an army of people that you'd like to thank. Uh, first, the guys at the shop, they put the 
phenomenal car together. Uh, Monster Energy, KMC, Nitto, Fox, Mala, HP Tuners, the list goes on and on. Um, literally my whole family, my dad and my uncle for being out here, we've been pre-earning a lot. We have put the miles in and having a family behind you makes it really good. But you know, all the guys at Curry Enterprises and all the guys at my race shop, we put a lot of work in. It's been a lot of fun to be out here and whew, get ready. To, uh, we got two more days of this, so you know, 4,400 race is gonna be brutal. Yeah, now we saw you qualifying yesterday. So, I mean, what, what do you think your chances are in 4,400 later this week? Honestly, we uh, cut the whole front off the car. We got a brand new portal set up in the front. We got a new transmission or transfer case that's pretty wicked. And we cruised in qualifying and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, we look forward to seeing you lining up on the grid once again. But Casey Curry, I can tell you that unofficially you are our 10th finisher here at the 44, uh, 4900 Can-Am UTV Champ Hammers Championship. Congratulations, Casey Curry. All right, thank you so much, Jim. There we see the 375 vehicle of Josh Owing making his way down Chocolate Thunder and around onto Idle Issues. Now, I've been looking at the tracker here, and uh, Shannon Campbell, who looks to be at his tracker pinged at 12.59, so that is about two minutes ago, and uh, he was moving at zero miles per hour, so we'll have to wait for that uh, tracker to update. Hopefully Shannon is okay out there. Again, he was just using this for a pre-run, but still we want to make sure that all of our folks get in here safe and sound. Now up ahead also is uh, Cameron Steele. He's ahead of Shannon by a couple of miles. Uh, he pinged at 12.59 as well, moving at 32.3 miles per hour. So we've still got some big names out there. They are just, just before race mile 125. So it looks like 375 there. Josh Owen is just kind of getting his plan ready to get up the idle issues here. And I know we're going to get uh, our unofficial leaderboard here up in a second. Uh, the 96 vehicle going through Chocolate Thunder. Look at that little guy go. My goodness, it's adorable. All right, here's our Can-Am UTV King of the Hammers leaderboard. Again, these are all unofficial. In first place, 191, Kyle Cheney. Second place, 994, Phil Blurton. Third place, 24, Cole Clark in that single seater. Fourth place, Dustin Jones. Fifth, Hunter Miller. Sixth, Travis Zollinger. Seventh, Cody Miller. Eighth, Jay Shaw. Ninth, Robert Parker. And 10th, Casey Curry. Again, those are all unofficial times of the Can-Am UTV King of the Hammers. All right, we are going to take a quick commercial break, but stay right here for all of the actions right here from the Lake Bed at King of the Hammers. Renowned worldwide for reliability, the ARV Airlocker is a must-have for off-road drivers, including rock crawlers, overlanders, and racers. With over 100 applications, ARB Airlockers gives your vehicle the traction you need to tackle virtually any challenge with the flip of a switch. Dana's involvement with King of the Hammers includes our sponsorship of the EV spec class with our Spicer Electrified E powertrains. Dana is here not only to invest in the next generation, but also to provide the next step of technology that's needed to race in the desert using electric technology.
Curry Enterprises has over 60 years of off-road knowledge. From the harsh deserts of Baja, to the extreme rocks of King of the Hammers, to the Jeeps we drive every day, Curry has the right axle set up to fit your needs. Curry Enterprises, passion for performance. Okay, and welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We are live here in Johnson Valley, California for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championships. And joining me on stage now is a man who is no stranger to this stage. It's a man who's been here many times before. It is Terry Madden. Terry, how are we doing? Good, Jim. How are you? I'm having a great day, mate. What was it like there out there on those trails? We had a pretty good day. Um, I mean, obvious failures. We... Uh, I didn't get to pre-run at all. Some of the stuff was the first time I saw it because we were working on a new car. So we were kind of winging it. We did a little bit of turning around in the transitions. Um, the course was, I didn't pre-run as much as I normally would. We was concentrating on working on the car because figured we just figure it out as we went. But the uh, course marking was non-existent this year. So, so we struggled a little bit there, but uh, all in all, good day. Fantastic. Now tell us a little bit about this vehicle because I know you and your team have been putting a lot of work into it. I'm really, really excited about this car. This is, uh, Can-Am's worked with me really hard this year. CA Tech built us my dream car, and uh, it did everything perfect. I think the only two bolts I didn't check on the car were the steering column, and uh, it came loose on the desert lap, so I was trying to balance the steering wheel on my knees and hold it up, and uh, we were off pace because of that, but then we got behind people in the rocks because of the desert lap, so next year. Fantastic, now there's a guy next to you who uh, is no stranger to these trails at all either. It's Darian Gomez, how are we doing? Good man, uh, typically sitting on this side of the, of the seat, but sitting passenger today. Decided to race with Terry uh, here back in Nationals, and uh, it was fun, man. It was, it was, it was rad, trying a totally different thing that I'm usually doing, which is driving and uh, co-driving. Totally different for me, but I, I kind of li like it. Uh, we had a good, rough day today, but uh, we wish we could have done better, but thanks Terry for asking me to co-dog, and Thanks to the whole GBR team for helping out and, and Terry's guys as well. Now you're both going to be racing in the 4400 later this week. Has today's race been able to give you some good pre-running for that race going ahead? Yeah, absolutely. That's the, uh, you cannot pre-run like you can run another race at race pace. It just, it helps so much to do it at pace and in the dust and, and be able to do that. We, uh, we found a few new, new lines today. We actually took some notes as we went <laughs> to, uh, to plan towards 4400. Um, all in all, we had a really, really good day. We broke one axle. We got tied up on Thor's hammer with, uh, with RJ, kind of banked back and forth a little bit, had some fun, had a few words. It was racing. It was heated, but I love you, RJ. Um, the, uh, the new winch was unbelievable. We uh, got in a few spots with that broke axle that I wouldn't normally be able to get out of, and we just went right through it. I got to really thank Baumarker for backing me this year, and uh, We'll be back. Fantastic stuff. Have you got anybody else that you'd like to thank before I tell you your position? Uh, there's just, there's too many. I, uh, everybody supports me. I, I, I could not possibly do this without my friends and family and all the late nights at the shop and all the guys driving clear across the country. That's just, uh, that's the only way it's ever possible. Fantastic. Well, I can tell you, Terry Madden and Darren Gomez, that you are unofficially 11th position in the 2023 Can-Am UTV Championships here in Hammertown. Thanks, Jim. It's a pleasure. Emmy, back to you. All right, always good to see Terry crossing the line. Now, we've been showing a lot of live pictures here, and it looks like in Jackhammer, we've got number 218, Dan Wyrick, and number 4951, Kyle Taggart, have been trying to winch their way up there. It looks like they just got moving. And joining me here in the booth so that I'm not all by myself, I love you, Mr. Miles. Thanks for being here. 
Yeah, I saw you are up here hanging out with all your friends, so I figured I'd come <laughs> join you for a minute. But, uh, yeah, man, what a great race. They finished so much quicker than we anticipated. I mean, this was a tough, tough race, but they just prove what they can do. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, we thought that people were just going to be coming in now, and we've already got 11 people across the line. Now, looking at the tracker here, it looks like our next person in, although it's probably going to be another 10 or 15 minutes, just might be Cameron Steele in the number 16 car. Uh, he pinged at, oh. And that's Corey and Jason Weller out there working on their car. Oh, both no. of them out of the car, both rear tires off, so I don't know if it's a, uh, a hub issue or an axle, but they're definitely on the struggle bus right now. So yeah, you can see an axle outside yeah. of it. Tough, tough break for them. Oh yeah, and they're you know they're just a great couple of off-road racing, and we love to see them out here doing stuff. Their Corey's working on their on short course a lot. I uh, just love seeing these guys out there. It's always sad when you have to have both wheels off, and you're like, oh man, this day could it get any worse? Yeah, tough break for them. They're right in the middle of that nacho dip area, but they'll get it fixed. On screen right there was Hubert Rowland with Matt Zeiler riding shotgun. Switch back to the Wellers. And back to Hubert Rowland. That's Travis Pastrana's favorite redneck, his mechanic. Great to see him out here running with us. There's Dan Wyrick trying to make his way up. I believe that's Jack Hammer. And making his way out. Remember, we go down Chocolate Thunder during the races, so he's making out through the bottom, then he'll go up and out through Idle Issues. So the number 218 in dedication of his son, Dan yeah. Wyrick. And he's been there for quite a while trying to winch through, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Uh, but I actually got a tracker update. Uh, looks like Cameron Steele is going to be coming through next, followed by Ronnie Anderson. Although, w depending on when all these trackers pinged, so it's always a little, like, got to use it as a guide, not as gospel. And uh, who we got up there out of the car on top of Chocolate Thunder winching up? 49 97 and, you know, it doesn't look that steep on camera, but that is steep right there trying to walk up that with a winch. So that's Michael Adams, Grizz himself, with Yellowstone Off-Road Racing a Series. We'll be racing uh, later on this season with them up in Montana, a great race. And he's driving with hand controls out there, really that's making it happen. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty wild. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so 218 is finally making a position there. And then we're back to the Wellers trying to get that rear end fixed. Can you get a better view there, uh, Miles? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be an axle. And they may have messed up some splines on the end. Not quite exactly sure, but they're working hard. But you notice they kept their helmets on. Yeah, I was just so, thinking that. So they, it they can't be that bad. Yeah, they anticipate getting going uh, quite a way, uh, pretty quick. Cause yeah. If I was going to be there for a while working on something, I'd No, I'd, I'd take use, my helmet off yeah, right away. <laughs> better visibility. And, exactly. And it's hot out here. Oh, well, now look. They're getting a wire. They're getting there's, a wheel put back on. And there's Cameron Steele, number 16. And look at that. That helicopter going really close there. I love all of these heli shots. It's just something that, it's, you know, it's so special to be able to have these guys out here. Those pilots are amazing. Cameron Steele going across the desert as fast as he can on the tracker here. I have him pinked at 83.3 miles and per hour. And you missed it, but Ander uh, Ronnie Anderson was right behind him by about 100 yards. So oh, there's neck man. and neck. It's going to be a race to the finish between Cameron Steele and Ronnie Anderson. Cameron Steele in that monster machine, that also built Can Am, pushing strong. He's racing almost every single race this uh, this year for the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. Yeah, the only thing he's not going to be in is, is the EMC challenge. Yep, the correct? four wheel parts, every man yep. challenge tomorrow. All Back right. to. Hubert Rowland. Look at that. Somebody's coming. right behind him. I know, right? And so at this point, you got to think like, do you panic and think someone's behind me? I got to like move faster? Or is it just, hey, you know what? I'm going to keep my pace here. I'm going to make sure that I don't mess it up in these rocks. And then after we get out of them, then I'll put the power down. Yeah, I mean, you got to save the car because obviously they know they're out of contention for the win. You know they're in, uh, you know, PCI race radio communication. And uh, so they're just trying to play it safe and make it to the finish line. Absolutely. You know, uh, sometimes you got a JFF, just F and finish. <laughs> we saw Travis Cook a little bit ago. He's been running Chocolate Thunder. He has been extremely busy with all the qualifying, with all the shootout and stuff. And, Looks yeah, like. now that section right here on Jack, we've had a lot of people winch up that little section right there. So that's got to be pretty uh, pretty challenging for all of our drivers. 
getting out, getting through that tiny little chute there. Yeah, it's been a great day of racing for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Man, look at all those spectators too. You know that you can just see a few of those guys lined up, but you know Chocolate Thunder right now is hopping. There's a lot of people. It's a great place to watch. And then tonight at 6.30 when the course goes cold, there'll be people playing out there. But actually, it'll be before that because at 1 p.m. is when we uh, close the, the line to go out for your second lap. So that's coming up here. Has it it's, happened yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it past 15 1 p.m. Right, it is so, past 1 p.m. So nobody else can go out on their second lap. But, however, we still have a lot of people that are in line trying to get to Chocolate Thunder. So please don't go play there yet. We still have a, a live hot race course. So on our tracker here, Cameron Steele looks like he's going to be coming in next, followed by Ronnie Anderson in the number 52. And it's going to be close. Not, the tracker shows them very, very close, and again, and depends on, screen, on when they ping. Yeah, yeah. On screen, we saw uh, Cameron Steele just ahead of him, but not my butt. So not you know, he's, much. he sees the, the dust, he's smelling the dust, and he wants to pass in the dust. All right, and we've got a stopped car up there on Chocolate Thunder, looking like they're getting ready to winch. You know, I, I'm always surprised. I always feel like there isn't quite as much of a sense of urgency once they get out of the vehicle to winch. I feel like they should be running around. Yeah, I mean, it, it just kind of it depends on exactly what's going on with their mind right there. But that's the 569, I believe that's Chris Pierce. Still moving along in his Can-Am. But that was uh, Grizz we saw earlier still winching. But he'd been there for a while, like you said. Yeah. So the sense of urgency is a little low. Yep. Nacho dip, dip, dip. So much great racing going on oh, out there. What is there. happening here? We got a helmet off here on the 4916 vehicle. That, I believe that's Rich Burst with Cody Quattlebaum riding shotgun. And it sure, yeah, Cody's got his uh, helmet off. So they're trying to do something. I don't, they've got tools out, but I don't see it out. They've got a jack in the front. So we're not sure what's going there. Is Cam Steele coming through the KMC Turkey Claw? He'll be making his way through Hammertown and the checkered flag here pretty darn soon. Probably within five minutes for Cameron Steele. What a great uh, week he has had thus far, and he is not done yet. He is out there pre-running at race pace for his uh, uh, effort on Saturday. He has led this race multiple times. He rebuilt this car. Uh, we've chatted quite a bit about it, and he is extremely excited to see how he can do in that uh, Monster Energy laser nut machine on Saturday morning. Yeah, I don't know how he races so many races. It would just physically wear me out. He must have stock in Advil or something, because you know that guy's taking a ton of Advil and a leave to make sure his body's okay. Yeah, he is an animal for sure. He's been racing a little bit of everything for a very long time, a great ambassador of our sport. And there's Ronnie Anderson coming through the KMC claw as we speak. So if that is, you know, uh, in real time, they're pretty damn close. Yeah, yeah, I mean, within a minute or two. So. Yep, yep, and there's a little bit of desert after this where these guys can really uh, show their power, get their power out. We might be able to see a little bit of racing as they come into the short course here. And look at the crowd at the KMC Claw as well. There's a Jumbotron up there, so you can kind of see all the action. That's a great place to watch yeah, this Yeah, that would be really fun. And there's Shannon Campbell coming through. Yeah, Shannon Campbell was stopped for a while uh, right around race mile 125, but he has gotten going again. And uh, look at that. We've got another single seater there. The uh, That's Dennis Dermis, I believe. And another Zollinger Racing product single seat Can-Am. I heard you say there's only one single seat earlier, but I believe there's three. There's a few of them out there for sure, but it's really cool to see the different the different styles of machines and all the uh, factory support. Yeah. You know, Can-Am's really stepped their game up the last few years and helped us here at King of the Hammers. Although, you know, the best reason to have a co-driver is so that you can tell all the stories. Because uh, I mean, no one believes you. You're having you. fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No one believes you when you're in a single seat and you say, yeah, and then I drove off a cliff. But if you got someone to back up your story, you know, that's a little bit better. So that's why I like to have a co-driver. And look at Hammertown in the background. That is absolutely amazing out there. But yeah, yeah, I, I mean, waved to you. Did you see me? No, I missed oh, you. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, single seat versus two seat, uh, the, the bait's out there. I mean, there is more visibility. You can package stuff different. But like you're saying, I want to have fun with my friend. I want to have help when I'm broke. I yeah. don't want to winch by myself. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different uh, areas to, to work on it. At. Yeah, you really, if you're single seat, you really got to be the total package. Whereas if you've got a co-driver there, you can have 
one person that plays, plays to a certain set of strengths and the other person plays to another set of strengths. And then together you guys are like the perfect, perfect race car person. And what a beautiful day it is out here in Johnson Valley, California. Sun is out. Breeze is blowing just a tick. It is can't get any better than this. Miles, you're in short sleeves, so you know it's pretty warm out there. I was running a little bit ago. I got hot. <laughs> All right, so the tracker showing uh, Cameron and uh, the number 52 car. It, they're close, neck and neck. So let's see when we get a visual on them coming around. Should be coming around the corner here pretty darn soon. And there is the 645 vehicle of Zach Pollard coming through Turkey Claw as well. Looking really good. And he's in a two-seater, but he told me he was going to run by himself. He was wanting the, the lighter weight, and he was going to yeah. give it all he had, a make it or break it style. So, that is, so that's... Oh, look, he's got axle shafts in the passenger seat. <laughs> well, you need a little bit of ballast. He's got three. Does he have three uh, or four? There's four of them in there, it looks like. Well, at least three. Yeah. So that's not illegal. If you've got a two-seat car, you can run by yourself if you want to. Well, let's give some of our uh, amazing sponsors some love. So we have Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, yes, Optima Batteries, Nitto, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, Griffin Race Radiators, Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, PCI Race Radios, SDHQ with the Rookie Program, Curry Enterprises, Brannick Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP, Warren Factor 55. So please support who supports the sport. Without all those amazing marketing partners we would not be racing here today during the can-am okay. hammers championship presented by progressive insurance man that is a lot of sponsors i love that just knowing that we've got all of this support here in the community and we like to make sure that we support the people that support us so if you're looking for parts if you're looking for tires if you're looking for wheels make sure that you take check out all of the sponsors here at the 2023 king of the hammers prevented by presented not prevented by presented by progressive yeah, whether you're building a race car, a, a mall crawler, a tow rig, I mean, they build a little bit of everything for for anything you got out here. Absolutely. And, all right, going There's down. There's Peyton Isabel. Making his way down at Chocolate Thunder. And we saw just a moment ago, Cameron Steele should be in town in just a few minutes. How far back's Ronnie Anderson? You know, he's uh, hungry. So we've had the top, what, we've 10? We've had the, the top 12. Uh, 11th. So okay. Terry Madden came in at unofficially 11th. So right now we're looking for 12th place and lucky number 13. What a great showing by all. These Can-Ams uh, came out strong and really looking good. And then we gave away a Can-Am just Dude, a little bit ago. How was cool not, is that? That guy won a Can-Am. I would have been a lot more excited than him. He was a little reserved. but I think he was in shock. Cause... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How cool is that to walk out of here with a Can-Am? I hope he's got a trailer to trailer at home. They're actually going to uh, pick it up from the nearest dealer when they get home. Ah, you know, because some people fly out here, somebody, you know, all perfect. that different situations. So we're going to make that right with them as Shannon Camel is in the KMC Turkey Claw. Back to Cameron Steele. And don't forget the outpost is uh, ha happening all week long out by the Welcome Gate. We got four of our breweries out there, Sonora, the Tiny Pony, uh, Big Bear, and they've got a lot of different beverages, a lot of food out there. So it's just another great addition to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. And Cameron Steele coming through into the short course here. Looks like he's going to get an unofficial 12th place. Getting through these turns in the short course, man, I I want to be on this short course so much. It looks like so much fun. Yeah, adding the Great American Short Course this year, they really upped the game out there, and yeah. this short course is a lot of fun. So one more turn to go. He'll hit the Yukon launch, and that checkered flag will be flying yep. for the Can-Am Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. And here we go. Cameron Steele taking that checkered flag. Yeah, buddy, and getting some air on that jump. 
coming out an unofficial 12th place. Remember, we need to wait for our scoring and timing to make everything official. And that is why we are going to be doing awards today at 4 p.m. right here on the stage. So everything that we're giving you right now are still unofficial. Yeah, we'll dot our I's and cross our T's, check the trackers, make sure everything is good to go, and we'll hand out some of that LaserNet hardware later on tonight. And speaking about tonight, 6.30 p.m., we kick off live music on the Monster Energy stage. And uh, Sublime's playing tonight. That's always a, a fun one for sure. Yeah, Sublime Spray is, the, Allen. Sublime is the, uh, the headliners, right? I think yep, it's right yep. around 10.30. Yep. Oh hey, it looks like uh, Jamie McCoy got going again. That's good. They were they were stopped for a hot second, I believe. So it's nice to see them running again. The CA Technology Machine pushing strong. And that's Dermus, and that single seat Zollinger Racing Products machine at KM, similar to Travis Zollinger's. Yep, so he's going to be coming through here pretty soon into Hammertown, just going around King Mountain and coming into view. A great push all the way to the finish line. What a great day. It was so awesome seeing uh, uh, Cody push his car across the that line. That was I mean, amazing. All hands on deck. Yeah. Destin Balak Jones jumps the fence. I was hoping he was going to trip, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made it out there and uh, pushed his, uh, his fellow Can-Am teammate across the line. And, you know, that's what it's all about. There's, it's a no-chase yep. race, but fellow racers can help you. Yep. So we've got Dennis Dermas coming in here. Now, he's actually not on my tracker, so I'm not sure what is happening with him. But he, I haven't had him on the tracker all day. But he's here. But he's here. And he's finishing, taking that checkered flag. Going so through the Bronco Arch. That is our... Very lucky 13th unofficial finisher, and that is going to put uh, number car number 52 coming in will be the next person. Ronnie Anderson coming in will be the next person coming into Hammertown. And there's Ronnie Anderson in that NOS energy machine pushing strong. Saw his brother R.J. Anderson having a few issues, but the team got the car back together, and he is still out there on course. Do you think his? Do you think he says to his co-driver, "Jim, hit the Nas," <laughs> and get her done, huh? <laughs> we'll have him here in Hammertown in just a few minutes, and we have Jim out on stage. We'll probably be having a quick chat with Cameron Steele here in just a few moments. So yeah, it does sound like Jim's out there with my buddy Cameron Steele. Jim, what's he got to say? I have. A Thank you very much, Miles. I'm joined on by stage by the one and only Cameron Steele. Cameron, how are we doing? Yeah, we're doing medium. You know, we got to the finish line just outside the top ten, but uh, you know, super stoked on the effort. Uh, Mitchell also drove the desert and some of the rocks. Uh, Brian Wood, my navigator. Um, I also want to thank uh, Richie Brueger for navigating, but overall it was a solid race. You know, Mitchell uh, builds this car, also RD, and uh, Monster Energy gives us the power to get here. They supported the five class challenge, uh, along with BF Goodrich and Raceline, BP Racing Fuels, Va Designs, and Fox. And we wanted to prove that we were a factor, but uh, we were just a little bit less than a factor today. But still, uh, overall, I think a solid finish. It's our best rock finish in the UTV. And uh, Can-Am makes it so even a dummy like me could drive this thing in the rocks. It's unbelievable. The, the ability of the Can-Am is second to none. And uh, of course, this guy, pretty amazing. He's only uh, 30 years old, but he's got the, uh, the wits and the smarts of a seasoned veteran. And I was, I was proud to have him drive the desert loop for us this morning. Well, let's just jump in there and have a quick word with Mitchell. Mitchell, how are we doing? Very good, very good. Desert, uh, desert race went or desert loop went good uh, today. Uh, Cam Cameron got the car, uh, got him in the rocks, and goofball. <laughs> Overall, great day. Um, shoot, being 12 to being here. Can Am, great car. Also, RD builds a great car. We build a great car. We have a great team. So. It's all good stuff. So, now, what? Cameron, what? did you have to do any winching in the rocks? Yeah, no, we, uh, so, um, we had this special challenge going on where we wanted to do the whole thing with, without locking the diff. And so when we got into Sledge, 
Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's this about not locking the diff? Yeah, it's just a challenge. Brian, my navigator, has been rock racing for years, and uh, he said that uh, he didn't think that we could pull it off, so we went to do sledge without the diff, and uh, we had to winch a couple times, uh, but that's all right, because we have a worn winch, and the thing is reliable. It keeps going, even if we're dumb and let it reverse fuel in or we tangle it up. No matter what happens, the worn is always there for us. It's smarter than any one of us as drivers. <laughs> Now I'm gonna speak to you. For sure. Let's speak to your co-driver here. Now come on, tell me more about this not using the diff. And you're worried about coming in an eleventh? Oh, we just you know, I needed a little more exercise I guess today, so I got to run up and down sledge a few times, but you know, it was all worth it. You Fantastic. Huh? You call me an idiot? No. Somebody <laughs> told me I needed more exercise, so I had to run. Okay, right Cameron, it's always great to see you up on stage, mate. I mean, we're going to be seeing you in more races this weekend. So tell me, what are you going to be racing? Um, I'm very proud to be racing the uh, Laser Nut Monster Energy number 48 in the King of Kings race. Uh, that's going to be on Saturday. We qualified inside the top five. Um, we had a very nice cruisy qualifying. Uh, Rodney Stowe has built an incredible car. Uh, for those people that don't know it, uh, Jamie Campbell cut the entire front off and all four corners of the car and uh, Matt Taylor, who built Shannon Campbell's cars, uh, built something that was more PAP-proof, uh, more indestructible, and the thing is sitting on these giant FK Himes and Uniballs. The thing's pissed off. It's so ready to go. And I, the biggest thing is I just got to be calm, cool, and collected. And so today, we were in the rocks, and a guy was kind of catching us. I just pulled over and let him go, and I said, see, Brian, we can be calm, too. <laughs> well, this is great stuff. I've never heard you talk quite like this before, Cameron. I am super excited to see you on Saturday morning. Congratulations on your unofficial 11th place finish here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Yeah, we're, my daughter will be stoked. Her birthday's on 11-11, so she's going she's gonna to be stoked on that. I wanted to congratulate my teammates, Kyle Cheney, and, of course, Phil Blurt and everybody that was in the top, the Can-Am team was railing. I had to get out of the car because I had some gas spilled on me. And I, I got to watch the lead cars come down after uh, Zandy's. And uh, it was amazing to watch Kyle and Phil come through there. They were on the pipe. And I'm just stoked to be able to race it with a couple, uh, I was going to call them names, but a couple great guys like that. I think overall Can-Am has put together a team of not only people that can drive, but people that have good personality and are respectful of the desert. And I think it's a pretty amazing opportunity to be a part of that. Fantastic. It's always great to have you up here, and I hope to see you up here on Saturday. Yeah, me too. I'm just stoked I'm not announcing with you right now. <laughs> right, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, Cameron Steele and his team. Well, great job, Cameron Steele. Thank you, Jim, for doing that. We just saw Ronnie Anderson come across as well as Zach Pollard. So we have a little break in the action. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back after this. PCI Race Radio is the leader in off-road communication since 1972. Our equipment was developed for racing in Baja, perfected for enjoying the weekend with family and friends. Stay in touch with our track stereo intercoms, two-way radios, satellite communications, helmets and headsets. Find new adventures with GPS. I can't hear you. Breathe clean air with Race Air Fresh Air Systems. PCI has the highest quality communications, navigation, and safety equipment, backed by the best support in the industry. This. Find us at hundreds of events each year, supporting our equipment on site and providing the PCI Weatherman Relay. See you in the desert.
the toughest one day race in the world as far as I'm concerned. When you need your winch, that's the only thing that matters. It's about getting to the finish line first, it doesn't matter how you do it. Welcome back, world, to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. You just saw Camp, uh, Shannon Campbell come across the line in the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, presented by Progressive. So we still have a couple more uh, interviews coming up on stage. And it looks like Jim's ready. He's got another guy coming on out. Jim, it's you. Thank you very much, Miles. I'm joined on stage by another finisher. And this time it's another one of those Iron Men, another one of those gentlemen who like to do this on their own. And this time it's Dennis Dermas. How are we doing, sir? A little tired, but I'm good. Missed the trail a couple times, got way back. Just start making it back up. I'm just glad to be here and finish. That was my goal. And Team ZRP, man, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Travis Zollinger, the whole crew at ZRP made this happen for me. Well, you've been our stealth warrior all day because your tracker's not been working. So all of a sudden it was like, wow, there's Dennis Dermas, he's flying. Yeah, I had a good run in through the desert this morning and then I was doing really good in the rocks and had to winch one time, but RJ was right there and helped me out so I didn't have to get out. It was the only winch I had to do. I uh, got into that last pit, and when I came out of the last pit, I, I took the wrong turn and um, finally found my way back and got on it and got her in. Fantastic. Now, talk me through, why do you run a single-seat car? Have you just run out of friends? No. I got talked into it by the owner of ZRP. He said, I got a single-seater for you, and he runs a single-seater, and we're good buddies from back in the snowmobile hill climb racing days, and I took his advice, and I, I'll do it again. Yeah, well, Travis finished a little bit earlier today, and he looks super stoked, and he'll be super stoked to see you here right now. Have you got anyone you'd like to thank? I'd like to thank my wife for letting me do this, my buddy Rob for coming out, Walker Evans Racing for setting me up with some killer shocks, and Brian there just turned, turned me in. My uh, dealership back home, Weekender Sports, all my guys there for working while I'm out here playing, and um, just everybody, k and Performance, all the guys back at that shop that helped build this car, and especially ZRP, man. Riley, Riley right there, he, he's a main man uh, when it comes to building these cars there and taking care of them, and I appreciate them all. Thank you very much. Well, Dennis, I'm very pleased to tell you that you're unofficially in 12th place in the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. How good does that feel? Holy shit, that's awesome. Congratulations, time to go get a cold beverage. Everybody, Dennis Dermas, unofficial 12th here at the 2023 UTV Hammers Championship. Well, thank you, Jim, and congrats, Dennis, for coming on in. But we have Dr Brian Deegan, number 38, with Metal Militia and that K&M getting ready to hit the Yukon launch. Grab the checkered flag at the Bronco Arch. Now, I love that they get to finish with the jump. That just makes me so happy. It's great to see that is an absolute fact. All right, number 916 on the winch there, getting through those rocks. That's Brian Tilton with Aaron Kaufman riding shotgun. And the 490 vehicle right there, backing up, taking another line. Looks like we've got a little bit of some traffic out there in the rocks, which is always good to see. I'm looking on my tracker and there are a ton of yellow dots just all making their way through those hammer trails. There's Christopher Pierce. Sorry. 
So lots of action all over the race course still, but it looks like we have Ronnie Anderson out on stage and we'll have a, let Jim have a little chat with him. Jim, it's you. Thank you very much, Mars. And joining me on stage now is the man himself. He's Ronnie Anderson. How are we doing? Um, definitely could be a lot better. We have had uh, quite a journey here today between me and Cole. Uh, broke our shifter, ended up doing all kinds of crazy things, which I think four or five times. So uh, definitely uh, an interesting King of Hammers for us. So talk to us, where was your starting position this morning? Uh, we rolled off the line 24th, blue belt about three miles in, went back to 35th-ish, and we came through the first lap around 10th. So it's been a real up and down day for us. Superb. So now you say you've broken your shifter. What's all that about then? <laughs> um, well, when we uh, we changed one of our belts, we accidentally spaced our secondary a little, little too wrong. And I uh, went to go from low to high one time and just... Uh, pushed it on a little too hard and didn't like it and broke my shifter right off so I had no shifter call I had to get out and shift from low to high every time we needed to, to needed to shift <laughs> so he's physically having to get under the vehicle and move the lever by hand yeah exactly every time we would go through a couple rock shells get to a desert section you'd get out shift it to high and we would just hope we would make it through every rock shell without having to use reverse because then it was all kinds of all kinds of screwed up and uh, definitely not the easiest to get into reverse so what are those trails out like out there today Oh, uh, it was brutal. We definitely, uh, I log jammed up uh, sledge today. I'm not gonna lie. I put it on in there and totally just squirreled in there and uh, totally, totally just log jammed it up. But got to thank all of our sponsors and the whole team, uh, Anderson Brothers team. They killed it. Our car was on fire in the desert. Definitely, I think we had the best car there was. Uh, and just struggled a little bit in the rocks today, but it is what it is. Just got to thank NOS Energy Drink, Polaris Razor, BF Gooders Tires, Walker Evans Racing, South Point. Everyone who helps us out. Thank you guys and. Uh, We'll probably be back next year. Well, we look forward to it. Ronnie Anderson, I can tell you, unofficially, you're in 14th position at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. How's that feel? Yeah, it feels good to get it finished. Definitely came here for, for a podium, came here for a win, but uh, we'll take the finish for now, and uh, I'm sure we'll be back. Fantastic. Ronnie Anderson, everybody. Back to you, Miles. Well, thank you, Jim, and congrats, Ronnie Anderson, as we see the 569 of Chris Pierce still trucking along. Emmy, it's been a good day, Ed. It has been a great day, and you know, Ronnie Anderson, it sounds like everything was growing great for him until it wasn't. <laughs> That's the name of the game, yeah. <laughs> You know, can you imagine? So right here, right now, this guy's shifting from low to or from high to low. So Ronnie there at that point had to get out of the vehicle, shifted into manually low switch it. Yeah. That is, I mean, that's some old school locking your hubs up. Oh, what is happening here, Mr. Pierce? I mean, look how tore bit. up this course is becoming. Yeah, right. You know, you pre-run one thing and then you get to the race and it is something completely different. And he is hung up on something. That front wheel is completely off the ground. He needs to back up and give her a bump. Oh, it looks like he has a left rear flat tire, so that's not helping his uh, cause nope, at all. Nope, not at all. And you know, sometimes it, people at home, you might think like, well, how come he doesn't know he has a flat tire? It's actually really, really easy to not know what's going on back there. You cannot see your rear wheels at all. It can be tough to un to figure out if you've got a flat or if you doesn't, if you don't, but hopefully he's going to figure that out soon, making another run for it here and still having a hard time, but he's made it past that one choke point. So maybe he's going to try to get up this uh, part of this course here with a rear flat tire. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. Chris Pierce giving her all he's got, but it looks like we have Zach Pollard up on stage. So Jim, let's have a little chat with him. Okay, thank you very much for joining me up on stage at the moment. This is Zach Pollard. Zach, how are we doing? Uh, it was a good day, man. Uh, we're here, so we finished. That was that was the first goal. So. so how many times have you done this race before? We raced last year for the first time. I had some bad luck, broken spooners last year right at the beginning of the rocks. Uh, so took those lessons learned, came out this year and pushed it hard. So did you find the course is harder than last year? Yeah, we got to do a good bit of pre-run last year, so I still got to see the course. Um, I would say this rock, these rocks were a, a good bit harder, going up sledge and stuff. Uh, luckily, we didn't have to winch once. I say we, I didn't have to winch once, but uh, yeah, it was it was a heck of a course. Well, I'm just looking across there at your co-driver, and your co-driver is literally all arms and legs, quite literally. It's just a row of drive shafts and a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, we, uh, we built the car to go fast in the desert this year. It didn't really get to stretch its legs because of the dust, um, but figured, one, we'd have lightweight, two, we wouldn't risk two bodies. So throw one guy in here, run as hard as we can, and hopefully it comes back in one piece, and that's what happened. So did you have to do any winching out on stage that, today? Not a single time did we pull line. Uh, no broken axles. We busted some boosts, but we ran with them. 
um, and one flat tire, and we broke the gearbox in half. Well, other than that, just just a minor breaking a gearbox in half. Yeah, uh, yeah, I heard I heard it go, and I just uh, looked down the steering wheel and press on the throttle. So I was like, if it goes, it's gonna go. Fantastic stuff. I'm sure you've got an army of people you'd like to thank. Who are they? Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my best friend, uh, Kyle Sturke, standing right behind you down there. Uh, he doesn't get the recognition he deserves because he's the one that makes sure this happens. Uh, Patrick Murray and his crew, uh, Simon Perry, that are out here helping us. Uh, and then my wife back home, uh, taking care of the house and you know doing all that stuff while I'm out here getting the race. Well, fantastic. 107 vehicles crossed the line this morning to start. I can say, tell you that unofficially you're in 15th position at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. How does that feel? Feels good, but I hope everyone is as hungry as I am because I'm starving and uh, I'm coming back and I'm going to be on the podium. Fantastic, Zach Pollard. We look forward to seeing you next year. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Jim, and good job, Zach Pollard, for the top 15 unofficial finish. Still some action out on course. We'll still be racing for about another four plus hours. Yep, our finish line is going to be close. Well, our, our awards are going to happen at four o'clock because right now everything, of course, is unofficial. We've got the 1003 vehicle there at the bottom of Chocolate Thunder. Going to make his way through some of that soft sand and then head back up in the rocks. That's Dustin Robbins, looks like, with all things UTV. Doing yep. some winching, and it looks like a left front broke axle on this machine. Uh, yep, and it looks like he's holding some people up there. I believe that is um, Mike Park in the 904 vehicle. Having some issues. Yep. Man, just... look at the, yeah, there's a lot of cars out there at, at the Nacho Dip Sledgehammer area. And it looks like Jim has somebody else up on stage that needs no introduction. Jim, take it away. Hi, okay, thank you very much, Miles. Right, I am joined by the one and only, the legend himself, three-time king of 4400. It is Shannon Campbell. How are we doing, Shannon? Pretty good. Glad to be here. I'm thirsty. <laughs> That's something that happens every single day. But tell us about what's been happening out on those trials. Uh, we just kind of took it easy all day, hoping not to get out of the car. And we did get into a little bottleneck up on Thor's. I thought Jason was going to get in a fight with a couple of guys. They, he was helping them pull their car out. And then the other guys borrowed our rope and said hey this is mine and <laughs> wasn't gonna give it back so Jason said screw you took it and we winched around him and just kind of take it easy all day and then coming in we lost a belt and noticed our rear axle was hanging out but other than that we didn't beat on it we were just trying to make sure we finish get a good pre-run for the big race now you're saying that this is just a pre-run uh, when you're out there but uh, I know you you're massively competitive I'm sure you would have liked to have been at the pointy end if you could well, I would have, but I know I didn't have half a car of them guys in the front had, and it was it was really more just to get a, a good pre-run, and one of these days I'm going to have to borrow Kyle Cheney's car and try it. <laughs> we'll have to organize that for you. Right, Jason, how was your day? That was great. That was great. Absolutely. Always have fun with Shannon. Superb stuff, short and sweet as always. But uh, okay, guys, well, I'm very pleased to tell you that unofficially you're in sixth position at the 2023 Can Am UTV Hammers Championship. I'm sure you want to get away and go and have a drink. Yeah, we're thirsty. <laughs> Shannon Campbell, thank you very much. All right, so we've still got some cars backed up here in Nacho Dipner's Sledgehammer, trying to get that parks car up and out of the way. We've got one, two, three, four cars waiting to get by. You know, this must be really frustrating because you're all amped up and you've gotten to run at, run at a great pace and then suddenly you're just stopped waiting and there's nothing you can do. And up in Jack, we got one on its side and yeah, it's a winch fest everywhere. These rock trails are tough and it's showing it's uh, to prove its pace right now, but it's a great thing to see all the other drivers. Brian Deegan. So it looks like Brian Deegan came across the line just a little bit ago, so we'll bring him up, up on stage here in just a moment. But in the meantime, that is 4979 coming through. He's really close to hammer. MF Racing, I can only guess what that stands for, but he's coming around through Turkey Claw. Looks like he's going to be pretty close to Hammertown, but we've got Brian Deegan has just pulled up onto the podium, and Jim has got an interview with him. So, Jim, tell me what you know. Okay, joining me on stage now is none other than Brian Deegan. How are we doing, sir? 
doing pretty good now that we're done. <laughs> so, now it was a it was a gnarly day for sure. So talk to me about those trails. This is supposed to be one of the hardest tracks out there this year. What's it like? I don't know if you can even call that a track, dude. That <laughs> was like, I've never done anything like it. And uh, out of everything I've raced in my life, from dirt bikes to rally cars to off-road trucks, it's definitely the hardest uh, race to just finish, really. Uh, there's so many moments in that race, things could go the wrong way. And uh, luckily for us, we got through a lot of the stuff pretty good. We just got hung up. At, um, at Thor's hammer there was a uh, traffic jam. So once we got there, we had to wait a real long time and that kind of that, that killed our run. But over, other than that, we were solid. There's way better year this year. Last year was my first year doing it and I had to come back for more. So I don't know, I think each year we get more competitive and uh, who knows, it, it's a competitive nature in me to keep coming back and do it. And like, Can-Am's a, a beast, dude, for going through all that. I can't believe it goes through all that stuff. Yeah, these vehicles are absolutely amazing. We keep talking about the technical, technological advances made every single year. So, you coming back next year? Yeah, that's the plan, you know. I think we keep getting better every year. And uh, I, had a new, uh, I had a race against my co-pilot from last year with Terry Madden. And uh, now we got Jeremy's really uh, helped me out this year. And I'm still new to the rock, so going through them, I still need someone kind of telling me, hey, go right, go left. It helps me, otherwise I just start bombing the rocks and breaking stuff, so. Um, but yeah, I'll be back next year. Hopefully we'll be a little little more, uh, get, get some more time to come out and pre-run and get a little better at it. But uh, I've been busy with my kids. Man, my son just turned pro in Supercross, so that's taken a lot of time. But just happy, man. The kids are kicking ass right now, so that takes a lot of my time. Fantastic. We love the fact that your whole family is involved in this, in motorsport, right the way across the different, um, uh, across the different types. I'm sure you've got an army of people that you'd like to thank. Yeah, for sure. You know, the main thing is Kyle Cheney built the car here. I know they, they put a lot of work into that. So the Can-Am is the main reason we're here, you know, and Monster Energy guys have supported me for many years. Uh, you know, Max's tire and uh, hooked us up there with some tires. And it's just kind of a, one of those deals. You just kind of throw everything together and go out there and try to kick ass and uh and they gotta last right the method wheels like i went through a lot of rocks hit really hard i thought for sure we broke a wheel or uh got a flat but somehow these things keep getting better as you can see the results more people are finishing usually it's just everyone last year i think only like 20 guys finished and i was like the 20th dude crossing the line and it's um crazy this year it seemed like a lot more cars have finished i think all the manufacturers have done a good job of, of building better units which overall is better for the customer better for all the people out there it's just uh it's just cool you know yeah absolutely well i can congratulate you and say that you have got a top 20 finish here unofficially you're in 17th position at the 2023 can-am utv hammers championship how do you feel Feel good. I think in my class, in the production class, I think someone said we were like fourth or fifth or somewhere in the top five. So that's cool. We have to run smaller tires. It makes a big difference in the rocks. But uh, yeah, the main thing is this machine. I'm going to go out to Moab and do some more just family stuff. We're going to use this machine a little more. So I had to put good products on it. Like I said, the Can-Ams I think are the best machines with the guys from CT Race Works with the arms. And there's so many cool parts and uh, that, that it's developing from this one event right here. So, uh, yeah, and Bill Stein shocks. Uh, I think, it, I don't know, might have been the first time they've done this class, and we finish, and it goes through your head. You're like, okay, the shocks get beat up the most. So you probably think, oh, they're going to last. I can't believe how this stuff lasts in here uh, from racing short course and rally car, which is you, cars usually break within minutes, you know, and these cars are lasting. So I like it. I think it's a cool event. Fantastic. Well, Brian Deegan, congratulations once again, and we look forward to seeing you next year. Yeah, check us out on YouTube, the Deegans. We'll have a bunch of videos coming off of this. And uh, we, we put out three videos a week just because we want to share our message of uh, it's just really a faith, family, and freedom. That's our message, so uh, we'll keep spreading it. Fantastic stuff. I'll be checking that out on YouTube myself. Thank you very much, Brian Deegan. Thank you, Jim, and congrats, Brian Deegan, for uh, finishing another King of the Hammers. we got a special uh, guest in the booth. We have Mr. Jason Shear. How's it going, buddy? Oh, it's awesome. What a what a race today, huh? Yeah, it's been wild. Uh, uh, you know, so you've been racing this race since 08 or 09? Uh, I was a co-driver in 08 my first time okay. for Jeff Mello. Yep. yep, and then you've won this race three times now. You're the only back-to-back -back champion in the 4400 class, but look, uh, Kyle Chaney just uh, did a three-peat, oh, we think. I mean, how uh, wild is that? That's impressive. It's so impressive, you know, and I've watched a couple of those runs in the desert where you see, like, Rob Mack pull it off, and now... Uh, 
you know, Dan McMillan get a couple in a row and, and the effort it takes from the whole team to make that happen. You know, you don't luck yourself into back to backs. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Hey, let's like let's go back to the old days, back oh eight, oh nine, ten. I mean, these cars they used to be rock crawlers, you tried to go fast, and now you have an absolute weapon out there. I mean, kind of talk us through what you started. I mean, you started with a Jeep based trail buggy and now you've got an absolute weapon. Yeah, and it's it's been such a fun process all the way along. You know, we didn't really know exactly what we could build until we started to kind of explore other sports. And I got super fortunate. You know, my first time running this race was in 2008 with Jeff Mello, but my um, my spotter in the rock crawling side of it was Lance Clifford, and he had gotten into desert racing. And so I had this rare opportunity to buy a seat in Pistol Pete's trophy truck as one of the two people that sits yeah, in there. Yeah, because he sat in the middle. Three-seater. Yep, yep. And so I, I rode in a trophy truck in the 40th annual Baja 1000 in 2007 and then came to King of the Hammers in 2008 and said, oh, this might be the greatest two things that we could ever combine in the world. Fine, and, absolutely. And so I, I had Shannon Campbell, one of our good friends that uh, my co-driver just got out of here in the UTV race. Good job, you guys. Nice finish. Um, they, uh, <laughs> they got... I got with Shannon and we built an awesome car, um, but it was a rock crawler. It was kind of a pro mod car, but it had an LS7 in it, right? So it was like a kind of a departure from the rock crawling. Yeah, where a hot something. rod rock yeah. crawler. And so we came out here and practiced and practiced and practiced. And that's where I fell in love with the hammers. You know, we were we were down here 10 times that year and 12 times the next year, just <laughs> enjoying the hammers, loving this place, and learning how to tune the cars, you know, and, and had some support from Fox at the time and BFG to come down and, and make the most of it. But yeah, I mean, and then it's came such a long way. I mean, you got a new car now, and that thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, it looks like you have a few little trick things you've done to it. Uh, I was kind of crawling around it, and uh, that thing's a work of art. Well, thank you. I gotta, I gotta thank Keith Beam at Get Bent Fab, and uh, our friend Dallas Lund who helped me with some of the SolidWorks design on the front end, and uh, obviously Matt Taylor helped us at the finish line there. Um, what a car! It's so cool, and it has kind of all the new latest and greatest gadgets on there, uh, specifically the Fox Live Valve, right? Yeah, I mean, those are pretty wild. No, it's game-changing, you know. Um, we're a sport that has a massive difference between the desert and the rocks on what you want from a suspension setup, and to be able to just hit a button and change between those two, it's actually turn a dial, but you get the best of both worlds, so it's really fun in both aspects. Uh, absolutely, yeah. It's really cool to see where the, the sport has came and where it is now, and you've uh, you've been a part of it a long time, and you've had your, your, your really good buddy Jason Berger riding shotgun with the entire time. He just got out of a, a race now, so he's going to be fresh for race day. Uh, I feel like he got a, a good chance. Yeah, it's really nice of Shannon to take him for a good pre-run lap out there. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> but, no, it is. It's helpful. You know, last year I got to ride with uh, Bailey – uh, Cole in the 4600 Bronco. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was nice for me to go see the course one more time right before race day, and things did change. So, you know, I'm sure Jay will have some notes for me on things that are different today than they were when we pre-ran it earlier in the week. Which I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can use them to our advantage. Um, you know, it's a trip. But yesterday was a milestone day for us. Um, you know, qualifying, we didn't have qualifying at the onset of the sport, and I don't know if a lot of people know that, but there was a... Uh, there was a show that we did every year about a month before the race or three weeks before the race, and we had a big barrel with the numbers in it, and everybody's number would get drawn. You'd say, yeah, okay, just random draw. Yep, yep. Jason, you're starting 34th, and you're like, all right, that's where you started, right? And that's how this started off. And then we had – It was uh, one race back then, too. Now yeah. we have 10, 12 races. Oh, I mean, we all heard it. There will never be another class. Run what you brung, right? Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so we now have qualifying, and it's probably one of the greatest spectacles to watch, right? It's a couple it, minutes of oh, everybody going for it. And um, you're uh, you're right up there up front once again. Yeah, so nine years in a row on the front row, which is a, a crazy Nine stat. years in a row. Wow. Nine years in a row. Um, I don't even know how that's feasible. Right? Like, there will be some records broken. That one might take a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jason, always a pleasure. It looks like we got another competitor out on course, but I saw you out in the crowd. Just wanted to come uh, and have you chat with me. I always appreciate it. Best luck on race day. Thank you guys very much for having me, and uh, congrats to everybody so far. This has been a great weekend of racing, and, and it's going to be a fun one on Saturday for sure. Yep, absolutely. Jason Shear, always a pleasure, my friend. So it looks like Jim has David Zida out on, on uh, the stage, so take it away, Jim. Thank you, Miles. Joining me on stage now is David DeZita. How's your day, David? Started off a little rough. Flopped the car in the third turn. No, I got it up, kept going. 
Um, everything went pretty smooth. Had a couple hard hits out in the desert and ended up getting a flat after first time into pit two. And other than that, I mean, everything went pretty good. We got a little mixed up on course a couple times, but I think that's normal out here. Yeah, it's a tough course out there. What was the hardest part for you today? Uh, I guess the short course, since I'm not good at that. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was good. I mean, we pre-ran a lot, so we were good with all the rock trails, made lots of passes there, and, and uh, kept the car together, and kept it upright, and it was good. Fantastic. Let's have a quick word with your co-dog over there. How was your day, sir? It was amazing. I, just to finish it and know that we did a prep job that lasted through a whole race is what we strive for, so we're happy with it. Fantastic. How many times have you raced here before? This is our very first time. So you're a rookie. I'm a rookie, but apparently they wouldn't let me in the program, but here I am. <laughs> well, we don't need to be on the program to be a rookie here, but it's fantastic to see you to actually complete this event at the first time of asking. That's a huge achievement. You must be incredibly proud. Yes, it's awesome. It's been something I want to do for a very long time, so it's been amazing. Now, I'm sure you've got an army of friends and family standing behind you. Would you like to thank them? Absolutely. Uh, the whole MF Racing team, uh, Jeff and Linda, for giving us the opportunity to build this car and come race this car. And, um, I mean, everyone did an awesome job today and uh, keeping us going and, and cheering us on. So it was awesome. And thanks to everybody at home who makes this happen. Superb stuff. Well, I'm very proud to say that you are a top 20 finisher here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, finishing in an unofficial 18th place. How does that feel? Oh, that's awesome. It's amazing. I love it. Fantastic stuff. David Dezida, everybody. Miles, what do you got? Well, thank you, Jim, and congratulations, David, for a finish here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. There is the Wellers uh, still making on course, but we still have a few more companies we need to say a huge thanks to. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. Sometimes, adventure is a road. A ribbon of dirt winding through the woods, or a strip of pavement disappearing over the horizon. More often than not, how we travel these roads is the adventure. Move confidently. Journey often, and stand strong when the pavement ends. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. <laughs> Seriously? These fools think I'm pride? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. 
Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Welcome back, world, to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We have been racing all day during the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, presented by Progressive. And it's been a great day. Kyle Chaney, I believe, locked down his third win in a row. Again, it is all official until 4 o'clock when we hand out some of that laser nut hardware. Now, I'm uh, looking at the tracker here. It looks like our next person in just might be 311 Dustin Robbins. With all things UTV. All things UTV, and he's followed closely by number 70, Jamie McCoy. They're pretty close, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw those two positions swap out. We will see. Again, we still have a lot of cars out there in the rocks. I'm looking at the tracker, and it's just a bunch of little yellow dots all over my screen. They are certainly uh, stacked up in a few places. Other times, there are, there are guys that are just out there all by themselves. So, you know, you never know if you're going to be in traffic or be alone. And who do we got going through there? That must be 311 coming in. That is Dustin Robbins as we speak. He'll be coming into Hammertown here in just a moment. He's already cleared the KMC Turkey Claw area. And it must be so nice coming in and you, you see all of those RVs and you know like, oh man, I am close. And look at Hammertown yeah. in the background. How big is it yeah, this year? It yeah. is. I think Dave said last night we're 40% up of what we were last year. That That's is absolutely crazy. insane. That's crazy. I mean, I can't wait. We've got to be over 100,000 now, right? I mean, we I, have to be. It's, it's insane. I wouldn't bet, doubt it one bit. Yeah, that. I mean, Yucca Valley only has a population of like 20,000 officially, <laughs> so we're five times as big as the nearest town. It's absolutely insane. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. When I showed up a month ago, there was absolutely nothing out here, and we brought electricity, all these campers, all these tents. I mean, it, all the fencing. There's so much that goes into behind the scenes that I used to take for granted, and now it's really cool to see it all come together. Yeah, when I come out here when uh, when nothing is around, I don't know where I am because I have no reference point of where town is, where the uh, media tent is, where the Optima booth is. I have no idea when you come out because it's just completely empty, a big empty lake bed. But there we've got 311 coming into the short course for his finish. I believe we are on uh, just over 20 unofficial finishers right now. 19 or 20 unofficial. I believe, yeah, he'll be the 19th unofficial finisher, Dustin Robbins, as he's coming on into town. One more turn to go. Oh, and that just must be sweet, sweet relief. Look at that. The checkered flag will be flying as he rolls through the Bronco Arch and hitches, hits the Yukon launch. Checkered flag is out, and, and Dustin launch. Robin All makes right. it across. So we should have Dustin up here on the stage in just a hot second for JAMA to ask a couple questions to. Next up, we're expecting Jamie McCoy in the number 70 Can-Am G-Force racing vehicle. And then after that, we've got number 1420 has just cleared Turkey Claw. That is William Martin. So, And you just said Jamie McCoy. There he is <laughs> on screen as he's coming into town. Number 70, Jamie McCoy and John Boy riding shotgun. That CA Technology built Can-Am. They had a few struggles today, but hey, everybody had some struggles today except for Kyle Cheney. Well, yeah, Kyle Cheney had a, a pretty, pretty decent, pretty flawless race. But, you know, I love that people, you know, they've got problems out there. They persevere. They solve their problems out on the race course. You know, they're working on their cars in the dirt. I don't even like to work on my car in the driveway. <laughs> and Jamie McCoy grabs the checkered flag at the Yukon launch. You can see the wind's blowing just about perfect oh, right now. number 529 on his side and I believe is Jack that's Hammer. Cody Willenborg. 
Have, trying to self-recover. Putting a jack on the side of the car, trying to get him up and over because there isn't really a good way to, to hook the winch up right there. No, there certainly isn't. So I'm assuming that is the driver that is out, and the co-driver is just kind of stuck there going, oh, help me, I'm on my side like a little bug. He may have crawled out the front windshield. He might have crawled out the front windshield, that's true. Desert one, look at that, from the helicopter, looking good, going through that desert, cruising along, probably pedal to the metal, fully pinned. I was talking to one of the k and I can't remember, it may have been Chaney actually, and he said he got up to 103 miles an hour in a <laughs> can am UTV. I mean, that is insane. That is ridiculous. I mean, you remember when these things came out and they were like 30 mile an hour vehicles? Oh, yeah. I got one of the first uh, Razors back in 08, I believe. And, yeah, when I got up to 55, we were flying. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is, like, shaking and fluttering, and you're like, we're going to die today. And they yeah. came such a long ways. Now they're hanging with the, the big dogs. Yeah, I mean, these are essentially, you know, uh, Desert Class 10 cars, really. There's uh, Mike Park on screen. It looks like Jim has Dustin Robbins. Let's have a quick chat. Thank you, Miles, and joining me on stage now, Dustin Robbins. How are we doing? Uh, man, I think we could do another hundred. Another hundred? Well, best of you go out there and try again. Just take the hills out, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your days, Dustin. Uh, started out in 19th and uh, made a lot of clean, uh, air, you know, clean run, and then got to Thor's Hammer, and there were some bottlenecks at the top. Uh, we actually ran a brand new winch line before we started this race, uh, just to make sure that the other one wasn't rotted. Well, get up there and. Uh, Ended up getting a little bit of help in the wrong direction, broke the winch cable, and then uh, Deegan and uh, Shannon Campbell actually climbed over my car. Uh, congrats to them on that ballsy move there. But finally got out of there, had a flat tire, fixed it, went to pit, got a, got a tire, and here we are. Fantastic stuff. Sounds like you've been really in the wars out there. What was the course like this year? I mean, it was great. Uh, we wouldn't have had any problems. I mean, we were ready to winch. You know, we went sledge and Thor's hammer. I mean, it was, it was magnificent, really. I you know, really wish it was marked a little better. But other than that, you know, kudos to Hammer King. Fantastic. How's your co-driver been getting on? How are you doing, sir? Doing good. How are you all? Fantastic. You happy running winch cable all day? Yes, sir. A few times anyway. Superb stuff. Now, we know you've got a big team here. I'm sure you've got plenty of people that you would like to thank. I've got a few All Things UTV um, for getting us here. And basically my team, NRP, for the uh, some badass suspension parts. And then uh, ZRP for, for some really, really good billet components. Um, Optima batteries hooked us up on the way down here. Other than that, mainly, uh, you know, blessing to have such a great team. We travel well. We prep well. Everything goes really well. And uh, special thanks to, to God for keeping us safe all day. Fantastic stuff. Well, Dustin Robbins, I can tell you that you're an official top 20 finisher, finished starting in 19th and finishing in 19th position at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championships. Congratulations. Go and get a beer. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Dustin Robbins, everyone. Back to you, Miles. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, Dustin Robbins and Bill Hilliard just had a great run. It looks like I see Jamie McCoy in the background, so we'll bring him up here very soon and as we see the 1420 of William Martin. Yep, William is coming in. He is from MF Racing. Like I said, I can only imagine what that stands for, but he's coming through Hammertown Heights right now, seeing a little bit of home. It is amazing. I mean, we've talked about this, but just amazing how many – RVs and people that are out here camping and spectating, and it's only Wednesday. It's only going to get more and more it, people it's, here. It's Thursday. Oh, is it Thursday? <laughs> it all bleeds Jeez, together. I can't remember what the heck day it is. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we got a couple more days for the big day, and it's uh, it's here hot and heavy. And there's a lot of people here on site. So many amazing vendor sponsors out here selling all the things. And yeah, make sure you go talk to uh, Roxy. She's got a lot of stuff, but it looks like Jim's got Jamie McCoy. Jim, take it away. Thank you very much, Miles, and joining me is none other than Jamie McCoy. Now, Jamie, this hasn't been the best race for you, has it? We watched you on qualifying, have a little bit of a tumble, and then uh, we've seen you in, in the action out there today. Talk us through it. Well, you know, we, uh, we, we, we tried a line in qualifying, thought it might work, it didn't work, so we started from the back of the pack, but, man, we passed a lot of people, and uh, John Boy was on it, and uh, we were in a lot of dust, and we were moving through the field, and uh, we got back into the rocks, fresh uh, full of fuel and uh, uh, 
picking people off. And then we got into a really bad bottleneck, and I hurt the car on the front end to uh, trying to get through. So we uh, we limped it out, got through got through that section, and then we got a, took it off, took a big rock, and beat beat the tie rod back straight and uh, what we call straight back east, and um, uh, got it home. Yeah. Now we actually saw all this work going out on the. Uh, on the trail, we had our cameras out there. What was it like being filmed while you were trying to repair your junk? You know, uh, uh, I thought they were just uh, guarding the PCP there or whatever, but um, you know, they were actually droning or whatever like that. But the guy was really a nice guy, man, and he said it made his day, so it was, it was all right. Oh, it was fantastic. It was great to see a leading competitor out there repairing your car in the field and then getting it back to the finish line. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, it, it was a little bit of a challenge. Um, you know, I, I I love racing. I'd like to I'd like to go back and get a couple sections again right now. You know, I, I still got a lot of things in my mind, but um, but uh, all in all, it was a pretty good day. John Boy was absolutely on point in every single thing, and I uh, I protected the car all the way back with a you know limped it in. But um, you know, uh, this is a purpose built uh, Ultra Four car, and this is my second year. I drove it all year last year, and this is the second King of Hammers. I didn't finish the first one. Uh, CA built this car. This is an amazing Can-Am, and um, you know it's a lot of fun, man. Gary tunes it, and, and Pete done his magic, and uh, I, I got these tires, no flats today, and uh, golly, I got a nice car, man. It was really fun. Now we know you're a fierce competitor, and I know you, that uh, your result in the prologue would have been a real kick in the teeth. So does this mean you're going to come back next year and try and set the record straight? Yeah, I'm probably good for a couple more. I'm glad to hear it. Well, I can tell you that unofficially, on the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, you're in 20th position. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I got, uh, man, I got a lot of pe people in the crew there. Uh, you know, Gary and Pete, they, they, they work their heart out, John Boy, you know, every night. What are we eating? Chris and Joe, uh, Joe the welder, you know, Justin and his, his two boys and uh, uh, Brad come along with us and uh you know we come across all the way from uh, tennessee and uh man i'm missing my family right now well you can go and speak to them go and enjoy yourself and enjoy the fact that you are an official finisher here at the 2023 can-am utv hammers championships congratulations jamie mccoy we love seeing you here racing Thank you, Jim, and congratulations to Jamie McCoy. It looks like we have William Martin who has crossed the line here just as we were chatting with Jamie, so we'll bring him up here in just a little bit. Miles, that was so sweet. He starts tearing up at the thought of his family. You know, hopefully they're here watching the live show. Uh, you guys were missed out here for sure. I just, you know, there's so much family here. Uh, and just seeing the kids racing with their parents and brothers and sisters. I've talked to so many father-son, father-daughter teams out here. It's just, oh, that's what I I really love about off-road racing is that everyone is together it's really keeping the family together it's a great way for families to work together play together solve problems together just become better human beings together absolutely and that is brian tilton with aaron kaufman riding shotgun they're still making their way through the kmc turkey claw so we should see him them here in town here in the next five to ten minutes There's uh, the backside of Turkey Claw. All those campers back there having a great area to spectate from as we see Cody Willenborg on screen right now. We saw him on his side just a little bit ago, so great to see he's back righted. It's tough to tell. There's a lot of people on top of each other on the tracker. Yeah, sorry. Sounds like I hear a little sound check going on at the Monster Energy uh, stage yeah we'll be it's playing gonna be a, later on this evening it's gonna be a giant party tonight you know that's what's really fun is we can come out here and we can race all day and then and there's then party a all party night. all night so next coming through we should have uh number 916 should be coming through soon but it looks like we've got 1420 up on the stage here so jay jim is gonna be uh interviewing him really quick out here on stage here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive. All right, Jim, what do you have for me? 
Thank you, Amy. Always good to be here on stage. And I'm joined now by William Martin. But I'm actually going to hand this off to my good friend, Scott Wren. We work up here. There's a whole army of hosts here. And Scott's going to take this one and bring this young man home. So, Scott, all over to you. Thanks a lot, uh, Jim. You know what? He's been have, doing a hell of a job up here this morning. How about a big round of applause for Jim Marsden, our guy here from, from the UK. Comes out over here. Jim, heck of a job. And uh, I got to ask you, Mr. Martin, I thought it was the other way around. Dad was driving and you were co-driving. And I, I look inside and it's, it's not so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited that I got to drive this year. Um, and, I mean, we finished. It's pretty exciting. The front end supposedly is uh, the front arm is you know cracked and stuff, but it was pretty awesome. It was definitely hard and uh, very challenging this year. Would you do it again? If I could, yes. <laughs> and your dad, when you guys started this morning, he wasn't that gray, was he? He was what? He wasn't that gray. What I'm saying is, I'm teasing you a little bit about your driving. Did you cause your dad's gray? Oh. <laughs> I didn't get that. Well, now look at your dad. He's like, what the hell was that last minute about? <laughs> you missed the dad goes, now you know how my day went. <laughs> how was your day? It was good. Um, I mean, it, it, it was pretty fun. I yeah. mean, you know, being out here, we pre-ran it a, a ton, and we're like, we're you know, woke up this morning, super excited. Started the car up, came out here, and um, you know, when we launched the line, it was you know, it was definitely exciting. I mean, you, it was cold, but you know, it's pretty pretty awesome to, to come out. Well, you guys, you guys been working on this thing I quite uh, for quite a while, I would guess, and you had a full crew behind you getting it ready. Um, what was it like? You finally got to that starting line, and you looked at your dad. You guys probably fist pumped. Let's go do this. What was that moment like? I mean, it was, it was very, it was very exciting. We were next to Terry Madden. We were next to Terry Madden, and, and it was just we were looking at everybody around us. And we said, "Oh my God, we qualified 25th," and we were just like, "Oh my gosh." I, we couldn't believe we were that far up. Terry Madden was right next to us, and we, then Brian Deegan we, was right behind us. I, mean, I told him, I said, hey, let's just run right into Terry Madden. It'll be all <laughs> over the, the internet. Just just slam into him and roll him right now. And, and then break check Brian Deegan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we, we, we tried not to. We, well, we, you know what? You guys are finishers of the 2023 uh, k and UTV King of the Hammers uh, championship, so one hell of a job. I'm sure this is a memory that not only this interview, but I think also the race itself you're going to remember for a long, long time. Nice job, Wade. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Scott. Congratulations to William Martin. Looks like he's got a lot of fans finisher. out there. And the 9,004 9, car coming through Turkey Claw. That is Brian Sturat, Team 904, coming through Turkey Claw. We've got a couple of new, a couple of people that are, should be coming through here soon. Car 211, Michael Lee should be here in a hot second. Also, uh, Brian Tilton in the 916 car. Those are guys are also through Turkey Claw, so we should see them pretty soon here at Hammertown. Oh man, look at those. Just coming down through Turkey Claw and you can just see what's going on in Hammertown and you just know, man, I am almost at the finish line, ready for a frosty adult beverage. I mean, except for that kid who just came through. He cannot, he can have, he can just have he a soda. He probably shouldn't have. He probably shouldn't have. And I got an update from Tiffany Stone out at Remote Pit 2. Uh, Rodney Van Eppern uh, broke his front diff and he is out of the race at Remote Pit 2, so tough break for him. We've got some winching going on here at Jack. We've got two cars totally stopped, 569 and 529. 569 is Christopher Pierce, but I don't, and 529, Cody Willenborg. So those guys are both trying to winch their way up Jack right now. 529 there, Cody Willenborg getting a little bit of help there from his co-driver. His front tires are moving, his rear tires are moving, the winch is attached, but he is not moving. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of uh, winch fest going on out yeah. there today. Yeah, all and right, there we go. Finally got a little bit of traction to get up and over that. I mean, they are just using those rock rails, screaming right over that through all of their clearance here. 
still spinning their tires a little bit, trying to get that winch line straight. And there's Dan Wyrick in the background, so he's stuck in Jet Hammer as we speak. Tough break for him. And don't forget, 4 p.m. we'll be doing awards, handing out those laser nut trophies. And I'm getting a fun little update from uh, Ryan Miller, who rides shotgun for Bailey Campbell. They had engine issues, were unable to make uh, qualifying, but they got the engine back. They're heading back to the uh, shop to put it in. And uh, he sent me a little picture of Bailey. She's passed out in the passenger seat. <laughs> They've been working their butt off, but they're going to make it happen. Yeah, you know, I can't believe they, they left here. They went all the way back to Arizona, worked on that motor and now they're bringing that car back and they are the never say die Campbell's they're gonna be here at this starting line come hell or high water so that is the 916 car Brian Tilton he should be our next finisher in at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive going through Hammertown Heights and that's, that's the high rent district right there. That's the fancy spot. Yeah. It's really cool to see Aaron Kaufman still out here playing with us. He came out and raced a few years back, uh, but he you know, linked up with Brian Tilton, and they're uh, out here having fun. Let's see. So we've had, what, 21 unofficial uh, – yes, we've had 21 unofficial um, – finishers of course those are unofficial we're going to wait for scoring and timing but as of right now that's where we're at first place is kyle cheney came through with a pretty flawless race everyone has been really fast i mean we expected our finishers we expected our leaders to come through right around one o'clock and they came through much earlier right around what 11 30 11 45 11 30 it was a way great run. quick going off i mean that's three and a half hours yeah it's a great that's run nuts there comes Brian Tilton and Aaron Kaufman coming in town, so we wait on them. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. to go to do your rig right and that's at four wheel parts now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels now is the time to lift your truck at 4wp off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting.
Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We are racing the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, and we just saw Brian Tilton and Michael Lee come into town. Yep, and it looks like our next finisher is going to be number 9004, Byron Starrott. But it's great that we're getting all these finishers in right now. Uh, we're going to have... Looks like that Scott is. Rain's going to have Brian Tilton up on screen. So, uh, Scott, take it away, buddy. Thanks a lot, Miles. And Brian. Oh, come on out. Heck yeah. I'm sure you guys want to stand up after this. But I, I got to tell you, um, this guy here has been coming for a while, last couple of years. This is the reason why. <laughs> this is our, uh, our fifth year, and our, our sixth race and fifth, uh, fifth year together. And that fire suit just kills me. I just love it, man. <laughs> I figured you'd like it. What, what was it what was like on course today? Oh, man, our course, uh, it got exciting off the first jump when the GPS broke and Aaron had to hold the GPS the whole entire first lap. So trying to figure out where we're going and make adjustments, and, and it was wild. And then we came in after lap one. We had to take an axle shaft and fuel and thought we got, got things settled in. And then we got out to the rock trails, and Spooners was fine. And then... Made a, made a bad mistake on auto limits and ended up completely upside down on our lid. So it took us about 20 minutes to figure out how to get the car back over onto its wheels so we could keep going. And then uh, after that, it was just a smooth day. Tried not to make any more mistakes and just get it home. So what you're telling me is you made this guy work today. Oh, okay. oh yeah, oh yeah, he, he did a lot of work today. <laughs> it was all good, you know, it's like every time we come and we end up here, finish the drive across it, it's the race I wanted. Well, congratulations to both of you guys. Uh, I don't have an official finishing order for you, but obviously it Half the battle is finishing, and you guys did just that. Congratulations. Absolutely. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And unofficially, 22nd position for Brian Tilton and Aaron Kaufman. Great to see them out here running strong. There's another car it's coming to a stop just oh, outside no. of town. Who Not sure that? what's going on there. That is Mike Park. That's a tough break for him. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's 9,004. I think Mike Park's 904. Yeah, Mike Park is 904. Who's 9,000 for? That is Brian Stratton. Byron Stratton. Well, our next across the line it should be 211 Michael Lee. But again, we've got Byron Stratton out there at Means Butte. Stopped. It looks like he's rolling a little bit and looks like he's getting going again. So hopefully that was just a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, maybe a little gearing issue. Whatever it was, Whatever they're moving, was, so that's all that moving, matters. And that's all that matters because those guys are almost finished. And I can hear the sound check right behind us because uh, tonight at 6.30 p.m. on the Monster Energy stage, local uh, anthology will take off, then Spray Allen, and then Sublime with Rome at 10.30 p.m. tonight. It's going to be a great oh, show. It's going to be a party tonight in Hammertown. Are you going to sneak off and go, go hide, or are you going to uh, yeah, hang out party? I'm totally going to sneak off and go hide. All right, and the 904 car, 9004 car is coming into Hammertown, taking the checkered flag. And uh, looks like I got Ricky Johnson here to replace me. So thank you so much, Miles. Emmy? It's been a pleasure as always. Have fun and uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. So I'm safe to say, always a pleasure working with you, Emmy. We'll see you in the morning. That is Michael Lee, number 211, pulling up on stage. He could possibly be third in class, if I'm not mistaken. But Scott, let's have a chat with Michael Lee. Mike, I'm looking at you right now, and actually, he looks worse for the wear. You not so much. Well, until you did that, but uh, um, no sweat. You're not beat up. Your face isn't all dusty. I look at your co-driver, and like I say, not so much. What was your day like? Um, you know, we got some trail plugs, and we took, we took a pretty conservative pace all day, but uh, I never got out of the car, thankfully. Uh, my co-driver, Chris Armstrong, he, uh, he got out of the car twice, and um, just some trail plugs along the way on the rocks, but we made it through no problem. Looks like you made him work, though. Yes, I definitely did. Uh, wouldn't be able to do it without him, so definitely appreciate him. Well, it take, takes a full crew to put something like this together for, uh, for a race. Uh, 
Talk to some. Talk about some of the guys behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely MRT tires. They definitely uh, took all in the rough stuff out here, no problem. Polaris Razor. Uh, they're providing us machines and parts and stuff and doing a great job with it. L and W Fab doing some prototype testing on some control arms. Uh, RCV axles, 503 designs with the window nets, rugged radios, Super ATV, G Force suspension technology is getting us through the rough stuff at, uh, as fast as we could go and just having a good time with it. So, well, congratulations. I want to say unofficially top five in class. I don't know exact number. I'm sure Miles will let us know, but. More, more importantly, at this point in time, finishers of the 2023 KM UTV Hammers Championship. Nice job, guys. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you, Scott Rain. Congratulations, Michael Lee. Unofficially 23rd overall and possibly third in class. Great, great run. I'm bringing uh, in my buddy Ricky Johnson back in the booth. How's it going, buddy? It's been good, man. When I was looking around, went and had some lunch, um, it, it's we're finally getting the win that we were looking for earlier, uh, but a lot of these guys are just starting to squeak their way in. And uh, but I was listening. Y'all have Brian Deegan up there, so I, I think he's going to. How cool is that to have him out here playing and and, and finishing pretty well? He was unofficial uh, 17th spot. Well, I mean, but he's got to be stoked because I mean, there's so much you're going for him to finish or you know, not. He's he's always one of those guys that's always in the top. You know, four or five, top uh, three. If anything, he does behind the yeah, wheel. Yeah, yeah, he's almost always winning. So for here, this has got to be good for him because it is. He is so much in your own head. It is so much against you and the track, and not like in rally cross or GRC or uh, or short course where you're constantly, you know, going up against other guys. Looks like that's the 2377 of Luis Leon Gonzalez as he comes his way out of the KMC Turkey Claw area, heading towards Hammertown. Right now they're talking about, man, can you believe we did that? Wow, remember that time and all that. So it's, it's good to see the reaction on these drivers when they get across the finish line. Yeah, KMC's really stepped up uh, in a short time here recently, so thanks uh, to them for coming on board. And let's give a, a big shout-out to Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto, Progressive Insurance, Toyota Tires, 4 Parts, and Griffin Race Radiators. And it looks like Scott Rain has another interview for us. So, Scott, take it away, buddy. Byron Starrett, congratulations, man. Now this looks like a racer right here. Look at that dusty face, a little bit of sweat, but uh, obviously you ran one hell of a race today, a long afternoon. First time out, definitely. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an experience, for sure. Well, I'm looking at your logo, probably one of the coolest logos out there uh, with the state of Florida in the background. Uh, well, was it any adventures in the hall coming out here? Because there was some big time weather. I-10 all the way. I mean, that's the that's an adventure in itself. So, but we enjoyed it. We, what was like? What was your afternoon like? Bumpy, long, but I loved it. Great. How were the rocks? Rocks wasn't bad. It was a good time. Love a challenge. But what about the dust? As I look at your co-driver, he's like, "Thank freaking God, we are over." He's happy. <laughs> I can promise you. Did you put him to work? Oh yeah. Not too much. We went one time. Other than that, we're good. Well, congratulations, guys, uh, finishing this race. Um, you guys just created a memory that the two of you are going to remember for a long, long time. Some of the people behind the scenes, uh, who helped you? Man, our team, our family, Team 904, all the way from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, you got Team 904, Evolution Power Sports, Demon Axles, uh, ZRP, Cryo Heat, Raceline, uh, Tire Spine, CT Raceworks, and Double E. You do realize that that there's going to come a day you're not going to need to look at your door to remember your sponsors? At some point, at some <laughs> point. But, you know, don't like naming names because you'll forget somebody. So. Byron, congratulations, man. Uh, we'll see you out here again next year. Thank you. Appreciate you it. it. Enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Scott. Congratulations to Byron Stratton as we see the Wellers moving on down through the KMC Turkey Claws. We'll see them here in Hammertown in the next five to ten minutes, but I believe we should have Luis Leon Gonzalez coming up on stage here shortly. we got a lot of finishers. I guessed 25 earlier. You guessed 40. I think you're going to beat me there, Ricky. You finally beat me at something. Well, there you go. But I, I really like the way you say Luis, Luis and Gonzalez. I like the way you say Gonzalez. <laughs> Am I messing up? No, you ain't messing it up. It's just you, you're, you're doing it in your perfect southern drawl, the way you're doing it. <laughs> That's like all when, I got. Like when you order a chimichanga, you order a chimichanga. Chimichanga, yep, yep. <laughs> and the fajitas. <laughs> I'm not getting that bad. There's Michael Adams still struggling up there. 
And there's James Cantrell. Haven't seen him much lately, so great to see that Mad Ram 11 machine still moving strong. Well, this really makes you appreciate what the guys up front, like uh, Dustin Jones and Kyle Chaney, I mean, how fast they went blistering through that section. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they've really put the paces. I mean, they finished this race in three and a half hours. Wow, I mean, flying. and we were talking how tough this course is going to be, and they just keep building better cars, and they, you know, practice makes perfect. They've been doing it for a few years, and they're really doing well. And it looks like Scott's got another interview Ooh. to have. So, Scott, take it away, buddy. So, what was your afternoon like out there on the racetrack? See. <laughs> Were you watching your dad in the live stream? See. See. Are you happy he finished? See. Can you say anything besides C? see? <laughs> He's outside. Well, you know what, Luis, congratulations, man. Uh, this is what this sport's all about right here for family. As I glance down here behind me as well, uh, I've said it before a couple of times, you guys just created a one hell of a memory for everybody involved in this program. Um, what was your afternoon like out there on the track? And don't say C. C. <laughs> well, it was rough for a minute. And you go to the rocks and there's some parts where you, it's too hard to go through, but you got to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying until you make it out. And then, um, man, it was a rough race. Uh, this is our fourth year racing but the same car in our first time up in the finish line. Well, congratulations. That's half the battle right there is finishing this event. And I'm, I look at your co-driver. He looks kind of beat up, man. Did you make him work today? Yeah, he was working today a couple times with uh, winching uh, in a uh, wrecking ball. We were stuck right there in a big boulder, but um, er er everything went well. We had no flats. Um, Got to thank everybody that support us, our family, my parents, my, my family, my girlfriend, my little boys. Um, our sponsors that are right here can't really think of anything right now because uh, it's our first time finishing and it's it's crazy because man i always dream about this and now i'm here so it's it's some, something to be, be proud of you know well it's, it's hey buddy hey, oh, hey 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 is it party time tonight really yes, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations man <laughs> we got another finisher. Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive, and there's Tyler Rimreed on the top left of our screen making some dust. We've still got a lot of cars out on course. We started this morning with just over a hundred cars as we take a peek at the KMC Turkey Claw. Yeah, Miles, we're seeing a whole bunch of cars out there, and the, the, the clock is ticking. Now, when it gets like this, that's why you want to get through as quick as you can. And a lot of guys are probably going to snap some belts, have some problems. And but, now we're looking at some log jams up there in Jack. And, uh... If you are going to go rock crawling, Get with your spotter or your friend or whoever's going to be out there and help you and figure out what the hand signals mean. Very, very, very important because a lot of times the right, it's like tapping your head, you know, rubbing your belly. It does not go together. So try to tell somebody what hand is going to turn and the other hand is going to control power. Yeah, and, and there, you know, that's what you're doing because once you get out of the out of the car, you lost your comms. Yep. Um, so that's just part of it. There's the 502 of James Cantrell. Still making his way through. And this course, this same exact course will be raced tomorrow for the four wheel parts every man challenge. We'll have three different class, four different classes racing tomorrow. It'll be the Curry Enterprise stock class, the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Lessons class, and the EV Dana Electric Electrified. So hey Scott, I'm just curious, are we having a good time out there interviewing everybody? I, I, yeah. See. Come on, dude, I set you up for that, and you didn't uh, take the bait. I would, yeah, I know. But I, I, Miles, Ricky, look at the crowd. This yeah. is midday. Mid mid on, on a Thursday on at a that. Thursday, and uh, we've had fans here since first thing this morning. Yep. It was like, what, 40 degrees, 38, 40 degrees? Yep. And they haven't moved. 
They'll be firing up that Tribe 16 fire pit here in just a little bit too, and then the crowd will get even better. Yeah, I just, I am so impressed with the crowd. They are camped out right here in front. Um, thank you so very much. Hey fans, give yourself a round of applause. You guys are what brings this sport back to life better than here. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I've turned up. I'll give you one. Your bike's on now. So there's Corey and Jason Weller. Jason's driving, Corey's riding shotgun, and they're coming around. We'll have them here in Hammertown in just a few minutes. So officially, what time are they going to close the course? Uh, six o'clock. Six Plus a little adjusted time for everybody that took off the line. But 6 o'clock is when the, the, the course goes cold. And they cannot head out for their second lap right now. So if they come in, finish from their first, their, their day is over. And it'll be a rinse and repeat for tomorrow for the four-wheel parts, every man challenge. That's Corey, or Jason and Corey Weller on screen. I wonder how that dinner's going to go tonight, or if they're just going to go to completely different places. <laughs> you never know on that <laughs> one, yeah. No, they'll be all smiles. They like giving you a hard time, but uh, they're out there having fun. And that's that's relationship building 101 at its finest. Absolutely, absolutely. But as I said before when we were watching them uh, on lap one and the beginning of lap two is that they, they do well and, and complement each other. You know, typically it's one driver and one spouse, um, but a lot of times when, when Jason's racing, Corey's behind him 100%. When Corey's racing, Jason's behind her 100%. So it's, it's, a, pretty, it's a very, very cool dynamic that they have for a relationship, and it, it's awesome how they make it work. And yeah, we saw them earlier, they were broken down. It looked like they had an axle issue on the left rear of that machine, so they took their time, they fixed it, and they're bringing it on in to Hammertown. Their Can-Am still looks like it's in great shape. They're part of the uh, stock turbo class. We have four, uh, five classes racing today. We have stock turbo, stock NA, stock sportsman, pro mod, and open. So we'll be giving away some of those laser nut trophies at 4 p.m. That's, that's what all the information will be official. Right now we have all everything you got coming across the line is unofficial, even though right now it's still looking like Kyle Cheney was in first with uh, Phil Burton second and uh, Cole Clark in third. And there's our KMC leaderboard as Jason Weller grabs the checkered flag and hits the Yukon launch. Back to Tyler Rimreed, the number 143 in his pro bond. He's been racing a lot of short course, a lot of uh, Ultra 4, and here at King of the Hammers. He was up uh, with, with Scott just uh, last week racing up in the ice. But now, Miles, so... There's the 49.54 of Trey Price. Out by the Desert One Spectator area. Trey Price looks like he's having a pretty decent day. But look at that. Kyle Chaney, Phil Blurton, Cole Clark, Dustin Jones, Hunter Miller, Travis Zollinger, Cody Miller, Jay Shaw. Exciting tracks back east. I've been watching all the highlight reels are unbelievable. But you guys look like you've really worked hard to get that series booming as well. Yeah, it's it's been a great time. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the official uh, first race in the Ultra 4 USA series. Uh, then we go to uh, Kentucky. Oh, somebody's on their side. That's the 713 of Ben Collier. So tough break for him, but yeah, we've got a lot of uh, exciting things. We're gonna end up uh, in Lake Havasu. We're racing back in Montana. Uh, they're at Visions and at Disney once again, and there's just a, a lot of great racing yet to come this season. As Trey Price still moving his way through the desert.
So it looks like Jason and Corey Weller are crawling out of the Can-Am, so we'll send it back up to Scott. Scott, take it away, buddy. <laughs> you missed it yep, from where you guys are sitting. Corey comes walking on the car, and she's got this kind of look on her face, you know, kind of one of those deals. First off, did you get her out of the car to uh, do any work this afternoon? Corey was out of the car a lot. It was, uh, it was a tough so, so, So my comment now is he's making you sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> I, I deserve a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> That's not the deal. That's not the deal. But no, no, no matter what, Corey makes sandwiches. No matter what. I'll do, I'll do anything else. Well, what was the afternoon like? Let's talk about that race. Uh, it's brutal. We, uh, we kept uh, getting caught up on the rocks that are undercut and just steep, gnarly rocks that all the Ultra Fours, I think, went through here and, and dug it out. So stuff we had at pre-running, we went right up, and stuff we had in the race, man, it was like it was like we had to get up it hard, and, and we had all kinds of issues with axles. and Yeah, just out of the car, like, Corey was probably out, like, 15 times, maybe. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of people stopped in front of us just trying to get up stuff, so wait, waiting a bunch, a lot of winching. Yeah, it was... Well, I'm starting to think that maybe... You need to be making her sandwiches since you put her in that position to have to do all that. I'll make her like a steak or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What's it like? I mean, you get this question all the time in almost every race you're at, I'm sure. And for some of the fans that maybe haven't seen you before, uh, what's the dynamic like when uh, not racing against each other finally, but racing with each other? Uh, it's really tough, you know. I, I think the co-driver is is part of the responsibility is keeping the driver calm, you know. And I, I think it's probably a little bit harder with husband and wife because you've been together so long and you know each other's buttons and stuff. So I'd say there's times when I was pissed off, and there's probably times where she's pissed off, but she never jumped out of the car. So I think we're good. I'm still in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole thing, your whole comment right there, that whole 30 seconds or so, I'm not even looking at you. I'm watching her, and. It's a good thing you weren't, but uh, you know what? Congratulations. The only I believe that you're the only husband and wife team that are racing out here at Hammers this week. You guys pulled it off. The dynamic of your relationship, the marriage, I absolutely love it. You guys have been racing together for how many years now? Together? I'd say she started racing UTVs in like 08. I started probably like 12, so a while. He's been my crew chief for a long time. So basically you're supporting her racing. Yeah, I'd say the, uh, last year was probably the first race we've actually been together, like for the full race, you know. So this will be the second second one. Well, it should also uh, should also be noted that you guys race against each other in the short course series. Um, that's a whole other animal. Um, sometimes you let her have honey badger. Sometimes she just takes it. Uh, but then there's a few times you kind of showed her away around the racetrack last summer. Sometimes not so much. But uh, you know what? I love seeing what you guys have done this afternoon. Yeah, I think uh, it's easier, you know, because we have the Can-Am and the SR1, it's easier this year where I'm spotting for her in the SR1 and she's going to spot for me in the Can-Am and the short course stuff. It just uh, makes it easier and, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, huge thanks to our crew. You know, we, we, we put a lot of time in this. We start in, like, November, um, maybe, maybe even before that, prepping for this and pre-running, and a lot of guys spend a lot of time at our shop and home and, prepping and getting stuff and making it out here and we really appreciate those guys that come out and do that and uh, and can am and demon axles and weller racing and all our fans and sponsors we appreciate it well you guys work so hard in that shop week in week out month in month out every single year have you taken her on a nice tropical vacation lately tropical well okay any vacation well, she did buy that condo in Lake Ozark, so I think this year we're going to try to make a few trips out there. Well, congratulations, guys. Yeah, hell whole afternoon. Corey, it's nice to see you up here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Scott, and congratulations to Corey. And Jason Wellers. We were watching, I can't quite tell who's on screen, but a great aerial shot. But what a great day of racing it has been. We still have two more yet to go as we're starting to wind down just a little bit. Remember, awards are at 4 p.m. here in just about an hour. We get to do this up till 4? No, I'm just curious.
There is the 310 of Ben Cahill. He's uh, made it through the KMC turkey claw situation, so he'll be down here in Hammertown here very shortly. Well, Miles, as I look at it, we see a whole lot of people that are still up there. I see a parking lot in a lot of those rock trails, so a, a the recovery crew is going to have uh, their hands full tonight uh, recovering all these UTVs that are spread out throughout the class. But you can see a lot of the guys are still moving, that they made it um, out, and they're after aftershock. Um, and so we'll be, we should be expecting them in after a while because that's a lot of desert section coming through there. <coughs> So let's uh, give Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto, Progressive Insurance, Toyota ti Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, Griffin Race Radiators, Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, LaserNut, PCI Race Radios, SDHQ. As well as Curry Enterprises, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP Racing Fuels, and Warren Fact, uh, factor 55. ARB, SRT, Share My Coach, Dana Spicer Electrified, Axial RC Cars, Action Sports Canopies, and Nacho Lights. And the Terra Crew, Onyx Off Road, our Recaro Seats, EMPI, Eagle, uh, sorry, Pro Eagle, as well as Baja Verde Beef Jerky, and Baja Vita Beef Jerky, and Buggy Whip. Well, please support who supports the sport. Without all these amazing marketing partners, we would not be racing here today for the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Battery. All righty, we want to thank you when we come back. We have some more finishers here at the King of the Hammers. Um, we'll be right back after this break. Nitto's all-new Nomad Grappler Crossover Terrain. Built for the adventurous types, on-road or off. Nomad Grappler brings with it legendary Nitto toughness, while providing a smooth, forgiving ride for the path less traveled. And stand strong when the pavement ends. of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. 
Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Welcome back, world, and on screen we have Tyler Rimreed. One more turn to go, he'll get that checkered flag here for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive Insurance. The checkered flag will be flying as he hits the Yukon launch and goes through the Bronco Arch. Ricky, another one here in town. That's absolutely right. I mean, that feeling when you cross that finish line is unbelievable. And right now we have Scott up there with Ben Cahill, another finisher. Take it away, Scott. Well, Ben, see a lot of cars come up here that this is, okay, I'm going to shut up just to look inside. <laughs> yeah. That's King of the Hammers. That's a big <laughs> Hey, Ben, a lot of cars that come in here this afternoon and, you know, worse for the wear. You know, they, obviously they're out there for King of the Hammers. This car, really worse for the wear. What you can't see is what's on the other side for the fans. What was today like? It was pretty rough out there. Um, I just rough. So tried to hold a good speed, and uh, it just it's tougher than I imagined. It's my first time being out here. So you gonna do it again? Uh, if we can build a stronger car. <laughs> so I've I've turned it over twice. Um, I don't even know where we were, but uh, it was fun. Well, I'm looking at your co-driver. Looks like he would do it again because he's all smiles. You, I'm like, uh, kind of concerned. What? Oh yeah, I'm just a little wore out. We had a we had a blast out there. We yelled at each other a little bit, but <laughs> we made it work. Well, congratulations. I'm not too sure where you finished in line, but uh, you got more importantly your finishers of the KNM UTV Hammers Championship by Progressive and Optima Batteries. Nice job. Yeah, we limped this car in probably the last 40 miles the drive lines coming out of it so it's, it's probably about that much left on the spline so it's uh it's not it's not happy so we had fun well time to go crack open that second um whatever it is you got in your hand there nice job guys yep thank you that's what it's all about miles right there the guys i mean because you go through so much you've been out there you've run with the guys you're screaming at each other, but you're, you're best friends. You're putting each other through harm, getting people in, getting each other in trouble, getting each other out of trouble. And then you're in town. You <laughs> succeeded. You're excited. As we see uh, Joey Beck, the number 1777, coming on in. I work with him quite a bit on the other side of things, so great to see him out here having fun racing and bringing her on home. He's already cleared the KMC turkey claw. So a lot of great action has came today. It's been a lot of fun up here, but I'm going to take a little break and pass it over to my buddy Pam Hall. All right. Thanks, Miles. It's been a great day of racing. I've been watching from afar, paying attention to all that's going on. Ricky Johnson, it's great to have uh, be up here in the booth with you again. There you go. I mean, normally we're passing each other back and forth when it comes to the stage, but um, so what have you, you been doing all day? I know you've been oh. in here a couple times. What have, you, what have you seen? What have you found out? What's some scuttlebutt? What have I haven't been doing is the question. <laughs> no, um, I literally have just been running around getting stuff ready, the awards up on the stage and everything. But uh, right there on screen, I'm going to say that is Joey Beck coming in for a finish line right now here momentarily. I was actually over talking to his wife, and she's just been tracking him all day long. Um, but what have you found out today? Well, I was amazed at the pace and, and 
just the 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 leaders made it look so easy, oh, and, and honestly, yes. they, it blew my mind how quick they got back here. They, they finished at eleven thirty, and no one expected that. Everyone and nobody. expected like two o'clock, and that. And uh, Kyle Chaney just he flat put it to everybody today. Phil Blurton said he had a great run, was clean. Him and, and, and Bo Judge, everything was going great, but it was um, it was. But just just so impressive for Kyle Chaney doing a, a, the hat trick, three a three peat, very unbelievable. All right, it looks like we have Scott Rain up there on stage with Mr. Tyler Rimreed. It's down to you, Scott. Tyler, is there any place you won't race? Uh, short course, desert, ice, a frozen lake, and now out in the middle of nowhere on a dry lake bed. Uh, are you that much of a diverse driver? And I'm looking at your co-driver. He's like, dude, get me the hell out of the car. <laughs> if it's got wheels and a steering wheel, I'll drive it. Well, what was your afternoon like? Uh, I'll tell you what, we started out great. Um, got into the rocks clean. We got held up on Thor's hammer. There was like a 10 car pile up. We were stuck there for about an hour. Um, once we got through that, we were running pretty great. And uh, our next challenge was sledge. We got through sledge, uh, four wheel drive started, stopped working. And we winched in multiple different spots, got to the top and flipped the switch back on and we kept going. So it, uh, it was a it was an eventful afternoon and only one flat tire and we made it here. One week away. Let's see. Today's Thursday, so a little, little less than a week away. You were on a frozen lake, and it was like eight degrees below zero. Uh, talk about the contrast between that and here. Well, yeah. At the end of the day, it, uh, you know, we it was it felt like negative 22 out there in Okaboji, Iowa. And come here now, I'm like, man, should I wear my long johns this morning? <laughs> and uh, no, we started racing, and you, we really warm up pretty quick because you're just working so hard and you don't even realize it. But you know what? Um, I would honestly prefer the cold more than anything because I think this dust is kind of getting ev getting to everybody. Well, you know what? Congratulations. You had a pretty stout co-driver with you, and John Fitzgerald, famous for short course racing. But either way, man, you did a hell of a job this afternoon finishing your uh, first KOH. Uh, this is my second KOH. Second KOH, that's what I meant. I'm two for two, man. I'm going to keep the streak going. We came out last year, first time ever we finished, and second time out here ever we finished again, and I'm, I couldn't be more happier. Next year you have to drag your dad out here. I want to see both the memories on the track course. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to have a couple more cars out here next year, but we're just going to keep pushing. All right, we'll see you next year, man. Thank you, sir. Well, that's pretty amazing going from the ice to the King of the Hammers. Um, but but that's that's a driver right there. We see Johnny Greaves, Bryce Menzies, we saw Shannon Campbell, um, you name it. And not to mention the, the UTV aces, but everybody loves to come out here because this is such a unique challenge, as I said many times, that it's like running the... The, doing the Iron Ironman triathlon or one of the mud runs or the Spartan runs or something like that. If you want to push yourself to the absolute end of your rope, you can definitely do it behind the steering wheel of at the King of the Hammers. Exactly. This race, this race is such a hard race for so many people. Some people come out here, they've raced many, many years and haven't even completed this race. Yeah. But uh, to come out here for Tyler Rimreed last year as a new driver with the series and to finish it was amazing. And now out here again, finishing it, with some issues today, but there's yep. issues, you know, some people had major issues today. Some people finished clean, like Kyle Chaney. Seriously, what you were saying. Yeah. To finish in three and a half hours, nobody at all was expecting it. Had a fun interview with him afterwards, and, you know, his strategy definitely paid off for him today. All right, and it looks like we have Scott on stage with another finisher, which is going to be Mr. Ronald Beck, known as Joey Beck. Scott? Take it away. Joey, get your ass out here. <laughs> Bump ya. This guy right here is, what? Now I can say I've undressed, undress him. Uh, I'm going to guess right now that you guys had one hell of an afternoon just by looking at your co-driver. Yeah, he's sick as a dog. Uh, he's threw up a few times out there, but uh, he made it work wearing it counted and uh, couldn't have done it without him. Got a big support system, man. Everybody who pitched in, we're just a bunch of friends come out here goofing off. We didn't pre-run. We didn't uh, look at the map. We really didn't know where we were going. Uh, we didn't well, that's normal. Yeah, That's every day. 
we didn't do anything. Everybody thought we'd never finish, so uh, we come out here to mostly have fun, but uh, finally got the finish I've been chasing for many years. This is my sixth attempt, I think, and uh, finally got it done. Well, who's behind the scenes to help you get here, obviously, man. This is a big accomplishment. So Mid-America Outdoors, 100%. Uh, those guys and what Jason Robinette's doing for the off-road industry and the way they get behind everything and push the whole sport and program forward has been amazing. S3 Power Sports built one of the most amazing sheet machines I think they've ever built. Uh, I'm real proud of it. I've been keeping it clean all week. It's a little bit dirty. I'm about to go clean it right now, I think. Uh, we won the show and shine and contingency. Y'all y'all didn't know there was one, but we won it, okay? Uh, so we got first place this weekend in that. Uh, there's a lot of other people out here. Team 360, MRT Tires, Baja Designs, um, Moto Race Tire, Doom Swell, uh, five-star tuning with an excellent tune on this machine. Uh, One Source Home Solutions, that's my company. Uh, me and Ryan, we, we do big things out there. Uh, we appreciate all the guys back at home holding down the fort while we're out here having fun. And, man, I'm just telling you, the, the biggest thing I can say is uh, God watched over us today, kept us safe. Uh, he was able to bless us with a, with a finish, and, man, that, that means the most. Well, you, when, you know you're a driver out on course when you make your co-driver scream at least once. Did that happen? No, but there was some questionable, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? We are going to die. There's a few, there's a few of those. But he scares me, too, because he'll be like, cut right. And I'm like, you sure? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, congratulations, guys, both of you, uh, finishers of, of one wild, wild event. Again, it's the k and UTV Hammers Championship. Very progressive and optimal. Nice job, Joey. All right. Got some assistance from people out front letting us know that the volume might be a little bit low. So we got to talk louder. But uh, um, right now, unbelievable. Uh, here the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. No pre-running. I mean, no map. Co-driver throwing up, and they still made it to the finish. Well, you know, sometimes you don't pre-run, and you do great. Sometimes you come out, you pre-run, 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 and then you don't finish the course. But... Uh, Joey and his co-driver, Ryan, that's awesome that they did finish. He's been, like he said, sixth attempt out here at King of the Hammers, and there we go. They're going to get some photo ops up there on stage. He's a part of the big, you know, the rock bouncing uh, family as well. But let's see who we have coming in to the finish right now. Couldn't quite see their number. Forty-nine fifty-four. Let's see who that is. Are you having a blast out here? Trey Price. Trey Price. <clears throat> Trey Price is he made to the finish line? Still, we have a. It is like a parking lot. If you look up around there. Uh, some of the before you get to aftershock, it is literally there is more red dots out there than the law allows. The problem is just like some of the competitors have said that <clears throat> they get stuck behind somebody and they're there for an hour exactly. at a time just waiting. Or if somebody breaks, now you have to try to you have to get permission to run over their wheel or this or that. You can't just blow them out of the way. So a lot more people still stuck out in the trails. Exactly. And you guys out here watching us live and you guys at home, we, just a quick reminder, we are going to do the awards up here on the stage at 4 o'clock. So it's going to be awesome to see, give away all these laser, laser nut trophies. And that there on screen is the 1470 of Jeff Martin. Jeff Martin still working his way down Chocolate Thunder. As we said before, when Kyle Chaney and the early guys came down through here, such a fierce pace, <clears throat> keeping it rolling. But it, but it was almost Kyle expected it. You know, right. after the race, he's like, well, you know, I'm like, can you show me a little enthusiasm? He's almost act bored. But I think he was just so laser focused on what he was doing and, and had a perfect plan, great pre-run. The car was awesome, did everything right. 
Well. Yes, he did very well. No issues out there. On the stage right now, we do have the 4954 that is rolling up. Going to get an interview here in just a moment. As soon as he's ready, they are going to take their helmet off. All righty, Scott, you have, so, you have another driver up on the stage. Take it away. Wrestling with a little bit of the equipment in here, and Trey, uh, I'm looking at you two guys, both of you. This is a racer's face. Look at the camera. That is an off-road racer right there. Then we got Richard Petty over here at the, the Shades. But uh, talk about your afternoon, man. Well, we had a had pretty good go at it. We ended up losing an upper control arm in Thor's hammer. Took us a little bit to get that fixed and get back on the road. Uh, we're on the same four MRT tires that we started with. I can't thank them enough. Same race line wheels. Uh, and my wife and kids at home, want to thank everybody for allowing us to come play this thing. Uh, thank Ross Pilgreen, this natural state racetrack racecraft chassis. I mean, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's a beast out here and the hydraulic steering is uh, unmatched. Well, I'm looking at your co-driver. He's looking pretty pretty refreshed. Did you put him to work at all today? <laughs> <laughs> he put in a lot of work today. He had to get out of the car three or four times, so we had to winch and ended up rolling on turkey claw on our way back in. Just made uh, ran out of talent. Well, who, who's it behind the put the scenes uh, to bring you out here? Raceline wheels, MRT tires, uh, natural state racecraft. It's about all of our crew, uh, everybody in the pits. It's uh, rode all the way out here from Arkansas to give us a hand. Well, nice job, guys. Congratulations, Thank finishers you. of the K&M UTV King of the Hammers Championship. Thank you very much. All right, Pam, look, we have another finisher across the line. I think they're going to keep trickling out. We is the, the, the track is going to be open for 45 more minutes. We see a driver that's upside down as he starts to crawl out. That is 1470. Oh, that is Martin. He was earlier on. Oh, yeah, last name Martin. I have to find his first name out here really quick. But, yeah, that is Jeff Martin on his side. Absolutely right, Jeff Martin. Such a bummer, almost to the finish and uh, getting put on the side. But this has been a race, a driver's race right there. All right, well, let's take another. Um, this is her problems, but that's not what we're looking to look at in just a moment. Let's take another look at that roll on Chocolate Thunder from Jeff Martin. He goes to climb the ridge and just gets a little too high. Doesn't quite make it. And then as he goes to back up, catches, can't, almost saves it and then goes over. So it, it, when it comes to rollovers, that's pretty soft right there. He's in a decent spot so we can winch up to it. Oh, no, they're oh, bringing up the safety truck to pull him out. Well, that's interesting because it looks like the position he's in, it looks like he would just be able to get his winch out and possibly get into a rock and winch himself out. But unless he did other damage or he... Maybe I've been hearing a lot of people saying they've been breaking their winch lines today. Yeah, and when I did this race, I broke it probably three or four times. <laughs> you know, I, it just because I was in a hurry, I didn't use a rock rash around the, around the rocks and stuff like that. So I was constantly snapping my line. Gotcha. And that is the 4990 you're seeing on screen there of David Ainsworth, Ainsworth going through her problems. That, in qualifying, they were going down that. So today they're going up it. So getting to run the line a little bit different. Well, look at here. They do have, they do have the uh, winch line out on the 1470. And, and notice that the, that the co driver is up there, and he's tying knots and stuff like that. So he's obviously broke that winch line before. So, so now they got to work, work their problems out there. So that's his problems, not her problems. <laughs> well, he's almost or almost to her problems, right? Or has exactly. he already gone through it already? Right there by her problems. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you put that, though. It's his problems, not hers. Yeah, it's his right now. Oh, goodness. 
Ricky, have you been having a good time out here today? Absolutely. You can hear my voice. I'm, I'm pretty much shot. I think I'm about to call it a day, so I'm, I have something to, to, to talk about tomorrow. But, yeah, we had so much going on early on. Great racing. I think <clears throat> I think the course was laid out perfect. I think doing the, the desert high-speed stuff in the morning like we're watching here, first lap, it, what it did is it helped separate the drivers. This this is obviously not from this morning. This is now as this driver starts to work his way back in. Yes, and that is Matthew Walraven. So as Matthew comes starting to work his way back into Hammertown, just, just listening for gremlins and wondering if anything's going to break on his way back in. But I think they did an awesome job on doing the desert section first to create mm -hmm. the separation before the rocks. And what you're, what's in going through their mind right now is probably we only have a couple miles to go. Let's just get there. Let's just do this. A couple miles to go. But then once you hit that short course, yes. you start to reminisce of all the things that you had to do to get there. It's kind of like when you drive across country and you finally get to your destination. Once you get to your destination, you think, oh, I, I'm almost there. I'm there. And then you start to think about all the things you had to do on the way there. All right, and you can see the 529 right there on screen of Cody Willenborg going down that rock section that he is in. These rocks are massive out there. There's sharp rocks out there that you know, can cut your tires. The tire pressure is definitely key when you're going through the rock sections here. But just getting down, getting in that last section of the race course just to make it back here to the finish is where you really start going, please, just let me get to the finish. Well, you apologize to your car an awful lot. Like, yes. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit that. I, I, you know, or you think when you think you got a flat, you're, uh, sorry, please, oh, please, oh, please, don't be flat. <laughs> yes. I'll be nice, I'll slow down. But uh, I do that to my daily driver. If I hit a curb <laughs> or do something, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Please just be good. <laughs> Take her to the car wash and get her buffed out. She'll be nice to you. Exactly. Exactly. I went looking at a new vehicle and my truck was decided it wanted to start picking, not being happy with me anymore. But there look at they're still trying to get that winch. All right. And we have, I believe, Rookie. He's a rookie. Or I'm not sure. But we have Jake Godfrey up on the stage. Scott, take it away. Thanks a lot, Pam. Jake, all smiles. And we're your co-driver. He's all smiles. Um, <laughs> there, am I missing something that happened today out in the race course between these two? It's questionable. <laughs> I'm looking at your car. There's not one blemish. There's not one dent. Not one scrape, scratch. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you put him through the paces out, uh, kind of winter or anything, but he put me through the paces. I didn't do a whole lot. I just drove the car. <laughs> Well, you had a hell of an afternoon. Let's talk about that. It was a lot of fun, man. We had a, a couple mechanical issues we had overcome, uh, but couldn't ask for a better day just to be out here. And, and this race course was over the top. I mean, it's more than I more than I expected, and I'm just pumped to be here. Would you do it again? Absolutely. We'll be here. Like right now? 100%. <laughs> I'm looking, at your, I'm looking at your co-driver, and he's like, are you freaking nuts? Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh... Talk about some of the guys behind the scenes that helped get you here. All these guys right here, man, everybody with Godfrey Fab Works that, that helped uh, prep the car and, and make this dream happen. I uh, can't thank everybody enough. My wife. Okay, okay, you're new to this whole racing thing, all right? You can thank your crew all you want, but the wife is always first. You're not wrong, <laughs> and, and, she, and she should be first because she's, she's put up with a lot for us to be here, uh, and it's just, it's been awesome, man. Well, I got I to gotta say, the crew was kind of weak in that cheer just a moment ago. You were a lot louder. Than you yeah, see? That's what they sounded like when you drove up here. So congratulations, man. Nice job today, Jake. Man, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Jake Godfrey right there. He is a part of our rookie program. It's been an amazing program for all of these new drivers out here. They're very thankful for it. Uh, they're the seasoned racers that have been doing this for years, they wish that they had it when they were racing. But you can still see the recovery that was going on over there on Chocolate Thunder. On screen there, that is the 491. All right. This, this one's going through the saddle right here. We'll get the number on that car here in just a moment. All right, if you guys are watching at home and you're live track 
live tracking it at livemap.racingtracks.com or you can go to kingofthehammers.com and that's where you can track your drivers on the race map, find out where they're out on course, how fast they're going. Here in Hammertown, if you have Wi-Fi, you can do the same exact thing. It's a really cool way to follow your drivers. Still having a little bit of issue seeing the number on that car. But they are coming through almost to the finish. That section right there is very whooped out. There's a lot of dips, rocks on the last section coming into the short course. Well, I think you just explained from the green flag to the checkered flag. <laughs> the rocks, dips. <laughs> rocks, <laughs> rough, I know, right? Rough, rough, rough <laughs> there's a, everything, a little bit of everything out here. That's what's really cool about King of the Hammers. There's, there's dunes, there's sand washes, there are lake beds, the rocks, the mountains. So much different terrain out here. And you can tell that that's a very steep ridge, Emerson Ridge, that this car is going down. see what that number of that one is. It's really difficult to see the numbers on these cars. I'm well, the, the sun and the dust. And also most of them have rolled and they ripped their number plates off so it's hard to see those True. as well. So <clears throat> All right, and you can see going through that sandy whoopy section right there. Getting ready to enter into the short course that is right there behind Means Butte. And that is the 49.55 of Joe Gould. That short course is so much fun. The kids last night, we had our first ever KOH kids race last night, and the kids had so much fun on the race course. The NorCal Rock Racing uh, crew, they came out and they killed it again on building an amazing short course out here. Well, and it's amazing how much they've done with, with the water and getting the berms up there uh, because that's, I mean, it is tough. And they have moved a ton. And not, not when I say a ton, like a, a thousand tons uh, of dirt to make that track. And, and a lot of the guys at the Gas Short Course Series were talking about it. It was unique. It got rougher than they're used to, but it was great racing. Right. It, it was really good racing for sure. I mean, it's different, too, because they're used to, racing on clay right there everything is pretty much really groomed and much nicer and stuff like that but now i think it's a little more old school like when they used to run at riverside and things like that so it, i think it's good for the drivers and also good you know give them give them a variety exactly change, change their setup exactly and that right there is the 228 of john carnival and on the screen there And you know what's really cool about this, so everybody that's here, they don't see it from the beginning, but if you come out here and you go camping and wreck wheeling, you know, there's nothing here. But by t Monday or Tuesday after this is completely over, you will never even know it's here. Yeah, it's spotless. I, I, I think they do a better job. I, I'm, I'm very confident that they do a better job than Burning Man as far as coming into the desert, using the desert, enjoying it, yes. and then leaving it like it's no, no one's ever been there. And what's really cool is Tread Lightly has been out here. They've been going around. <laughs> the, they've been giving out trash bags to people. They've been picking up trash. Um, it's really cool to have Tread Lightly out here again this year, uh, helping keep our deserts clean, keeps us open. And that right there is such an amazing shot. That is what we were talking about, the dry lake bed as one of the terrains out here. It's a fast, fast section right there. Last week on our T1s, we were seeing high speeds of at least 120 miles yeah, yeah, per hour. Yeah, we saw, we saw 120 plus. We saw some guys up to 140. We saw Kyle Cheney this morning up to over 95 miles an hour. So, uh, I mean. It's a fast section. Very, very. Well, it's wide open. But if you got the wind on your back, the wind against you, mm -hmm. it changes it. So, I've been doing testing in the desert where I can lose 15 miles an hour going one direction or the other if you're going into the wind. Yeah, it all depends on that for sure. There's a 39.83. 3983 of Robert Moen. They're still doing recovery over there of the 1470. 1470 of Jeff Martin. 
You know, when we have our race of kings, our Nitto race of kings on Saturday, we'll be seeing upwards of those high speeds into the 100 plus miles per hour as well, as well out there on these dry lake beds. Well, and tomorrow's Everyman Challenge is yes. going to be awesome because we're going to see s such a variety because they call it Everyman Challenge because there's a class for everybody out there. We see everything from like not stock trucks obviously they have shocks and things like that they got they have to get around but it's amazing what they can do here we're seeing the the the, the driver that was on uh chocolate thunder now getting winched up to the top so where he was having trouble he's getting a little help so he might just have rear wheel drive and there you see right there matthew Walraven in the 118 it looks like his winch line has probably been broken as well by the way it looks on the front end there all righty. Well, Scott has another driver on the podium. Scott, take it away. Come on, Joe. Get out of there. Up. Up your butt. I want everybody to see this. Right there. Was a really pretty sticker at one time. But, uh, Joe, talk about your afternoon, man. You know, what a day. What a day. Um, actually, let's, let's move this way so your co-driver kind of gets in here. Come on in, Carter. Thanks a lot, brother. Thanks, man. You know, a couple hours before uh, we were going to race qualifications, Carter jumped in with me. Uh, had a last-minute change in co-driver. Uh, my co-driver is down there watching and was supporting us. Uh, and I was really worried about that. But uh, this this young man right here, he really came through, and uh, he kept me he kept me really straight. I uh, got to thank Warren. Uh, we did have to use the winch a couple times, so thank you, Warren Industries. Thank you to our newest sponsor. CT Raceworks. Thank you for King Shocks. Thank you for Raceline Wheels. And then I gotta thank you for my wife right down there. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you thank her first. <laughs> I, I, I thanked her before I left. So <laughs> yeah, it was a great day. We just kind of ran it smooth, and you know, this is a this car had 34 miles on it when we left, so. Um, a lot different than my other car, so you know we just kind of took it easy. Smooth was good. Well, I'm not sure if it was from the dust or if your co-driver is getting emotional, but that the guy's like getting like kind of teary-eyed right up here. Talk about the afternoon. Oh man, it's been uh, it's been outstanding. I've been teary-eyed for about the last 10 miles. I've watched my old man come across this, and I've been waiting. I've been wanting to come across this. So uh, I love you, old man. I can't wait for a whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> well, is your dad here? He is not. This is the first year he hasn't been here. So uh, he raced the past four years and didn't come this year. So, well, I'm sure he's watching, oh, yeah. and I'm sure he's looking just like you, uh, sitting at home. And uh, the old man's proud. Yep. This man's proud. And proud. it's nice to see you across the finish line, both of you, Joe. One last shout out to Polaris. These should not be called razors. These should be called tractors. They really are. It's a tractor. No, congratulations to both of you, and I hope your old man gives you a big-ass hug when you get home. <laughs> nice job, both of you guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, Scott. We are going to go to a quick break. If you're watching the Facebook feed at home, we are going to shut down, reset it, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. So we will be right back in just a moment. ARB Airlocker is a must-have for off-road drivers including rock crawlers, overlanders, and racers. With over 100 applications, ARB Airlockers gives your vehicle the traction you need to tackle virtually any challenge with the flip of a switch. Dana's involvement with King of the Hammers includes our sponsorship of the EV spec class with our Spicer Electrified E powertrains. Dana is here not only to invest in the next generation, but also to provide the next step of technology that's needed to race in the desert using electric technology.
Enterprises has over 60 years of off-road knowledge. From the harsh deserts of Baja to the extreme rocks of King of the Hammers to the Jeeps we drive every day, Curry has the right axle set up to fit your needs. Curry Enterprises, passion for performance. Alrighty, welcome back to the 2023 Progressive King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries, as well as you're watching the finish. Just the last couple guys come in before our awards at four o'clock of the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive. I'm up here with Pam Hall and Pam, it is, as you can tell by my voice, it has been one heck of a day. Yes, it has. It's been a great day for sure. You guys have been up here talking away. I've been running away all day long. <laughs> I can't wait to see my step meter at the end of the day, but I love seeing the crowd out here watching this. We also have tech and contingency going on for our EMC class that's racing tomorrow, starting at 8 a.m. So lots of action here in Hammertown. But if you look across the valley, you can't see from where we're sitting. Over there at Chocolate Thunder, there are so many cars over there watching that, that section of the race course. Boy, and this is what, I mean, that, that's what I love about this is enthusiasts. I mean, it's one thing, you, you know, you go to certain things like stadiums and stuff like that. There's a lot of fans. 99% of all the people that are out here at Hammertown are enthusiasts. They have a Jeep. They have a side-by-side. -side, they have a rock crawl. They have something, and that's what they're. That's what this is all about. They're, it's, it's about a big community of people, of users, not just fans. Right, exactly. I, I, I'm kind of jealous because I don't have a, a rock crawler to get out here, but we do. Uh, let's go back to the screen here. This is a 3983, and then we have the 491 hauling across that lake bed there is robert moen in 3983 oh and he is on his side oh, no we were just that was just out of our shot coming down to chocolate thunder so so robert moen has he gets out tough tough break such a bummer i do not like seeing it when the cars flop no. over on their side well the there other we go now we have the 491 they're going across the lake back bed super fast but we are going to throw it to Scott because he is up on stage right now with Hubert Roland. Hubert, you look worse for the wear, man. I've seen you on tractors, bulldozers, graders, having a big old good time. Right now, it don't look like you're having a good old time. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Um, this man right here is what kept us going. There's many times I'm thinking, man, this is kind of kind of silly. I need to go home. <laughs> and, uh, He's just encouraging the whole time, giving his little notes. He's, uh, we had a flat and he helped fix that. Purely my fault, just getting kind of whiskey in the rocks, trying to pass somebody. So Matt, uh, Matt really helped it, helped it all happen. Well, talk about that afternoon. I, you said you put him to work a little bit, but uh, this isn't your first time here at the Hammers. Uh, what was this year like compared to the last? Yeah, so this is about my, this is my sixth year here racing. Uh, you learn a little bit more each year. Um, I, being sportsman's class, I love it that we have a few bypasses, but I know the hey, people that we passed in the bypasses dog. were like, how did he get back in front of me again? <laughs> I know that happened at least two or three times, but it was a great time, a uh, great course, definitely challenging. Um, of course, dusty as always, and it, just lots of fun. Well, congratulations, guys. Either way, man, you finished another one of the King of the Hammers events, and uh, uh, you put it up here on stage. You drove it, you drove it home. Yeah, we drove it home. Uh, thanks, for everybody, for being here, for watching. Uh, thanks for all the companies that help us out. Can-Am, Super ATV, Tread Lightly. Y'all, when y'all go out and ride and stuff like that, pick up your trash. If you, if you haul it in, take it back home. Very simple. Uh, I'm also doing a lot of power sports safety stuff with kids, really raising awareness for safety. Wear your helmets. Know how to run your machine, run the right size machines. Very simple stuff. Um, but, of course, all the companies that are on here, Pit Viper, Big Frig, EFX, Fuel, Wheels, all that, Ibex, Clutches. The list goes on and on. Great people to help us out, and, of course, the biggest help right here is my co-driver, Matt. He really made it happen. He came from Tennessee. He kind of went through some hard times before he came here. His, his shop burned to the ground. Oh, no. And uh, he was kind of iffy if he was going to go. And I was like, well, you know, if you want to go, you can roll with me. And he was all about it. So I'm thankful for him. No matter what happened, he, he came and made it happen. Well, it was meant to be. Something in that mess that is in your life right now, you're supposed to be here. So, Matt, nice job. Thank you very much. Um, I, I got to thank Hubert for, for forcing me to come out here and, and ride with him in this crazy race. I've been here a bunch of times, and this is my first time being in the co-driver's seat. And uh, I, I wouldn't really ride with anybody but that guy right there. Um, I, I got to give a huge shout out to uh, a couple people, uh, Casey Gilbert and uh, Chip McLaughlin and JT Taylor. They, 
they went above and beyond. They got me all new race gear because everything burned down in our shop last three weeks ago, and it's been a it's been a hard road. I can't thank them enough. All of Team Indiana, um, my beautiful girlfriend. It's just been it's been a blessing to be here and to be able to finish with this guy right here has been awesome. He's a killer driver. He's been taking notes from some of the bad dudes he rolls with. So, thank you very much. Well, when you get your home, get back home, and you're in the middle of that mess, just think back to this, and that will put a big smile on your face. Nice job, Matt. Definitely. Uh, I'm I'm pumped. I can't be happier. Thank you. Uh, one last thing. Uh, we lost a good friend a few months ago, Ken Block. He was a great friend to us, Travis, everybody. Don't take advantage of your friends and your family. Keep them together. Keep them close. Tell everybody you love them. They care about them. Better words could not be spoken. This guy right here. All right. Give it up for Hubert Rowland and Matt Zeiler out there reckoning out there for, with the race. But I want to welcome back into the booth my partner in crime, normally at the regional races, Mr. Miles Hasselquist. It's awesome that, to work with you out oh, here right absolutely. now. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Ricky was uh, getting a little tired, so I told him I'd come check back in on him, and uh, he's ready to go get a little rest, get ready for tomorrow. we got another long day yet to come, but it's been so much fun watching the Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. Today is the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. And that's the 569? That's 569 of Christopher Pierce on screen. We've seen him quite a bit on screen today. Looks like he is stopped for just a second for some oddball reason. Is that James Cantrell? I think it is James Cantrell. Cantrell. The 502 Mad Ram 11 machine has cleared the KMC Tur Turkey Claw. And he'll be in here in Hammertown in just a little bit. And there's Travis Cook and uh, Farmer. They've been uh, helping recover up in Chocolate Thunder for the last few days. They've been really working hard. So a huge shout out to our entire recovery crew. They they get up early, they stay up late, and there's a like I said, Farmer and Travis Cook. All righty. It sounds like Scott is up on stage, ready for our next interview. So Scott, take it away. Thanks a lot, Pam. And uh, almost everybody that comes up here takes the moment right now to take advantage of getting their butts out of the car so they can stand up for the first time in quite a few hours. You guys, not so much. We hit a G out on lap one. I'm not sure if I can walk anymore, so <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to stay right here for now. Well, speak of this afternoon, what was Zipper Race like for you guys? Man, it was, all things given, it was pretty good. We had a, a little drop shaft issue, kept coming apart, but other than that, we ran smooth. Uh, no flats, although we lost two spares. Um, everything was perfect. Went great. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, the car looks excellent. The car looks great, minus two spares in your winch line inside the cockpit, which, which told me that uh, you guys had some action out there. How many times did you make him get, get his butt out of the car? Uh, the only time we winched was, or no, we winched twice. We winched the top of Thor's hammer and then on sledge. How many people it took to get you guys here this year? <sighs> Man, all, all these guys right here have been out here all week with us. Just grinding. It was out last night making sure... Everything was 100%, and I mean, it showed today. It paid off. And Alex did an amazing job. kept us kept us going straight. I mean, we might have made a few circles, but uh, he did did great and uh, got us across this line here. So. Well, congratulations to both of you guys uh, crossing the line of the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship by Progressive and Optimum Batteries. Nice job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All. All right, Scott, thank you. As we were watching that picture in picture, James Cantrell was coming through the finish line. But right there, we do have the 1128 of Casey Peoples on screen, and we have the 354 there again of Chris Johnson. And we saw just a little bit ago in the KMC Turkey Claw area, that was Chris May. So Chris May and James Cantrell will be our next two coming in, and they're a very familiar face in the Ultra 4 world, so great to see them still out here racing and having fun. James Cantrell and Chris May will be coming in town here very shortly. And fun for Chris May. His daughter, Raleigh, was racing last night. And How'd first she do? Ever, I missed it. She didn't end up finishing, which is unfortunate, but uh, she's usually one of them that is a kid that's on top of the box at every one of our races that we do. Lots of great action yet to come. We, today we're winding down a little bit for the 4900 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. 
And tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. PST will kick off the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. And then Saturday morning, once again at 8 a.m., we'll kick off the Nitto Race of Kings. So two big races yet to come. All right, it sounds like Scott is up there again with another finisher. Scott, take it away. Once again, thanks a lot, Pam. And uh, the best comment we've had, oh, we've, got, we've, got, we've got Tracy up here helping us out all day long running the whole stage. And she's like, okay, ask every driver, do you want to get, get out or stay in the car? Matt's comment, get me the F-bomb out of this car. <laughs> uh, tell me how that afternoon went. Morning went great. Afternoon went uh, not so great. Uh, we had some issues with our programming and uh, sat still for about 20 minutes in the desert after having a good start. And um, we turned it off, turned it on, turned it off, turned it on, and it went away. So we finally got moving, um, lost brakes somewhere close to the end of the desert. We had about a quarter of a pedal maybe. Um, and then we got behind in the pack and ended up just getting traffic jams, trying to push a little too hard, taking some lines that probably weren't there. And uh, we broke a left front, then we broke uh, another left front, and then we broke a right front, and then we broke another right front. So right now we're three wheel motion uh, with a diff locked with, uh, so the last probably 25 miles in the desert, we were in uh, two wheel drive. So your co-driver bus had tailed this afternoon. Oh yeah, Dale Scholl is the man. He, uh, he, 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 I mean, he busted his ass all day long and uh, I can't thank it. You know, everybody, my little boy Xander, he finished fourth last night, JW Performance, uh, CT Raceworks, <sighs> Raceline, Maxis, uh, Handy Lifts. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on, but I, I, I God, my brain is kind of uh, washed out like the sand. You kind of have that look. What did your dad tell you when he drove up on stage? What did he say? Wait, what? <laughs> when your dad drove on stage just a moment ago, what did he tell you? Um, that he's uh, proud and tired and stuff. And that I love you. Yeah, and that he loved me. That's what I wanted to hear. That is King of the Hammers. Both of you, congratulations. Congratulations to you as well. Nice job. Thank you, Scott. And yeah, Matthew Walraven and his son Xander. Both doing great here during King of the Hammers. And it sounds like we're going to have a little bit more fun yet to come. But before we uh, see a little bit more action, we'll take a quick break and be right back to some racing action after this. This is the all-new, get-it-done, Nitto Recon Grappler. A true all-terrain for the job site or the campsite. Recon Grappler stands out as the new standard for all-terrain light truck tires. A true all-terrain tire with everything in between. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. Choice of champions. King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology.
All right, Chase, number 23, it's 2023. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still got to eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. With a name like what this guy has right here, synonymous with King of the Hammers, Ultra 4 USA Racing, uh, James Cantrell, you look worse for the wear, brother. Man, check out the hair, check out the fire suit and all that dust. Your co-driver's looking pretty good over there with the Red Bull. You not so much, man. <laughs> yeah, man, it was a long day. Um, I made a big mistake in qualifying and put us towards the back of the pack. Uh, with no wind this morning, we fought dust all morning. It was brutal. Um, my shocks are horrible, so we got in the dust. We just cruised, um, started losing belts lap one, then just kept fighting all day. Just kept fighting, keeping the car moving forward, blow a belt, change a belt. Um, can't thank Corey enough for hopping in. My other co-driver had a family emergency last night. Um, called Corey up. He volunteered, hopped in. Man, he worked his butt off today. He got us through Thor's hammer, got out, got everybody cleared, got us through Sledge. Um, couldn't have got here without him. So I, I, I kind of don't think it was like you asked him. I think it was a, one of those voluntold situations. But either way, it looks like he had one hell of a time. Yeah, man, we had a blast. Um, King of the Hammers always puts on an awesome event. Dave built a great course this year. Um, it was challenging. It was fun. It was fast. It was awesome. Well. And with a, like I said, with a name like Cantrell, uh, you guys obviously kept that namesake going and never gave up. And you find yourself out here at the finish line one more time at the K&M UTV Hammers Championship by Progressive and Optima Batteries. Nice job, James. Thank you. To James Cantrell. Thanks, Scott. And we just see Chris May with May Motorsports in that 725 machine. Missing some hardware on the right side. But uh, he made it on into Hammertown. Grab that checkered flag. All right. And that right there, we do see John Carnival. Looks like they're going to be pulling their winch line out. But he's looking up underneath. Hopefully there's not an issue under there. But spotting them up these rocks. Those rocks are sharp. They're big. The cameras don't do any justice for some of these rocks up here on these race course, on this race course. And they're definitely having some issues with that car. It's a tough break, but they're still battling. They're going to adapt and overcome and make things happen. And that's Chris Johnson right there. They're still doing some recovery on him up there on Chocolate Thunder. All right. It sounds like Scott has another interview up here. So, Scott, take it away. Well, I'm not going to talk to this guy. I'm going to swing around this way. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. What kind of a birthday afternoon is this? Oh, it's an excellent one. What else can you ask for, man? Well, how old are you? Uh, good old 45. 45? Hot damn. Are we going to sing happy birthday to him real quick? <laughs> can we embarrass the living hell out of him? And... All right, ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Wait, I sing for myself? <laughs> He's turning red, really turning red. <laughs> Thanks, John. Well, it, happy birthday, man. I'll swing over here real quick. And, uh, Great day of racing it has been. Still have a couple more hours yet to go before we close that finish line. And then tomorrow morning, we'll kick off the four-wheel parts every man challenge. 
All right, it sounds like Scott has another one right up there on the stage. So Scott, take it away. Chris May, welcome to the stage, man. And then the finish line, get over on this side. I don't want to, I don't want to have my pack to you. But uh, much like almost every other off-road car you're gonna come across, the driver's side always looks pretty good. The passenger side, not so much, not so much. It is just wiped out. And that tells me he got real close on your side of the car more times than not and uh, were you kind of like sucking it in a little bit because he was getting close well there's a little bit more weight on that side so you know when <laughs> when the car lanes it kind of digs into the rocks on that side <laughs> what was it like riding with this guy chris and what was your afternoon like hey it was awesome uh i gotta thank everybody team indiana out here my wife and daughter is our first king of the hammers my daughter got to race in the kids race it didn't go that good this is my first time driving a utv it was awesome what's crazy is we're from south carolina and I swear, we were with Matt Warren, he's from North Carolina, Josh Owens there from South Carolina. It's like we were all in a little clique right there for a minute. Uh, the course was crazy. I, we, we got to turn around a little bit, top of Jack. I think we went down something crazy because, like, all the crowd started moving towards us. And I was like, I don't think we're in the right spot. We were about to, I think we were about to drop in the sledgehammer from Jack Hammer. I don't know where we were at. But we got turned around just awesome. I destroyed the whole side of the car. Warren Winch, we use it a lot. Rocks are my specialty, and these dang UTVs, I mean, no hydraulic steering, dang. I screwed up, flipped it on its side. Just, he winched all day, it seemed like. It's just hard work. I got one final question for you. South Carolina, what the heck do you tell your neighbors that you're doing out here in California, and do they get it? Oh, man, I think they're starting to get it. We've been coming out here since 2010, but it's definitely, <laughs> yeah, you can't explain it, so. <laughs> How, I mean, who got you here, brother? Because uh, coming from across the country in a car like this, in a race like this, you guys didn't do it by yourselves. Yeah, man. It's uh, I, I like some new UTVs, Can-Am 64-inch car, Max's tires, Raceline wheels. Had one flat. It's probably my fault. Um, Turner axles, uh, Barnes four-wheel drive, crawl off-road, residential septic and grading, full throttle batteries, rugged. Like I say, Tommy Glenn, just awesome, man. So, and like I said, that worn winch, we use it a lot. So... We'll add it to your resume that you guys are finishers at the K&M UTV Hammers Championship. Nice Appreciate job. That. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're back up in here in the booth. That's the 375 right there. You're watching on the screen of Josh Owen. Everybody that's out here in the crowd, we will be doing the awards here in just a moment. So if your whole team is not here, you might want to get them here. Miles, the awards is Probably one of my favorite parts is getting to see these guys celebrate. Yeah, it's pretty cool to hand out some of that laser nut hardware. They fought all day long to get it, and that's just what they want as we're watching Josh Owen in the KMC Turkey Claw area. So he'll be here in town in less than 10 minutes. Looks like he's taking a little bit easy on the car. It's been a long day. Yes, after Turkey Claw, it's not a smooth ride back into Hammertown, into the finish line. They go through some areas that's, you know, still a lot of rocks, but there's a lot of dips, too, as well. It's just, it's not a smooth selling ride like you would want to have when you're finishing the race. But it's great to see so many of my good buddies. We saw James Cantrell coming through, uh, Chris May, Will Harris. I mean, it's just a great stack of guys out there uh, making it happen, living the dream, enjoying it out here for the 2020. Progressive Insurance, King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We see this one on Chocolate Thunder. Not quite sure exactly where it is or who it is because I cannot see the number. Oh, and there we have the 226 right there. Stuck in the sand of John Carnival. They are having a rough time right now. But we do have a great crowd out there. Lots of cars have came in and finished. Kyle Chaney put down a number today on his time. Three in a row. I think it's going to stick. We'll see when it shakes out when you hand out those trophies. But Kyle Chaney is a man on a mission. Yep. So let's give a huge shout out to Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, Griffin Race Radiators, Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, PCI Race Radios, SDHQ, The Terra Crew, On X Off-Road, Recaro Seats, MP, Pro Eagle, Baja Vita Beef Jerky, Buggy Whip, Nacho Lights, Action Sports Canopy, Axial RC Cars, Dana Spicer, Electrified, Share My Coach, SRT, ARB, Warren Factor 55, VP, King Shocks, Holly, Yukon, Brannock, Curry Enterprises. So please support who supports the sport. I have a prediction. I have a prediction. 
All righty. If you guys are watching at home, watch that racingtracks.com. But we, there are so many cars still out on race course miles. There's a lot that have finished, but you can see on there, it's like little dots all over the place, and it does have their car number with it. But having all these vehicles all over. They've had a long day out on the trail. The recovery crew is probably going to have their hands full tonight. Uh, but it's great. I mean, it's a safety, right? You see where they're at, so we know who to go get when, and they can communicate on weatherman and all that through the PCI race radios. And there's Christopher Pierce, Nelson Sparks. They're still moving. Kyle Smith and Aaron Clark. We've had a lot of racers racing all day long. And it's great to see them still plugging along. All right. We had a hundred, about a hundred and how many vehicles started the green flag this morning? 102? Uh, 107 was 107. the number we had. I don't know if that's a official official, but that's how many I had on my list. And there's Justin Barth and Dave Johnson coming down. Chocolate Thunder getting ready to head up. Idle issues. And, and qualifying the other day, he had a little bit of issues uh, in his UTV qualifying run, but it's good to see him back out there, got it all fixed. Let's see who that is in the saddle there. That is a rookie of the 490. That will be Peyton Isabel. Can hear people out in the crowd cheering on. Peyton. Yeah, go to kingofthehammers.com and you can check out the, the there's a whole uh, list of the rookie program. It's a really cool uh, thing we have going on, so sign up for next season and uh, we'll give you some tricks of the trade. And don't forget to go to King of the Hammers official YouTube channel. You can get all that premium content. Hit that subscribe button and see all the behind the scenes. We'll have picture in picture during commercial. Lots of great things happening on that YouTube channel. And this section that uh, Peyton is in is that section I was saying. It's not a smooth ride coming back into Hammertown to get that checkered flag. It's definitely a little bit of a rough ride, especially when we were in the uh, course marking. It's a really rough and defender. The, they're amazing work vehicles, and they're fun, and they get us everywhere we need to go. But uh, the suspension definitely is a, a, a must it's, on, it's, that, on it's, that road. It's not a race machine, that's no, for sure. No, exactly. It's a working utility vehicle, and it's an amazing working utility vehicle. There is a UTV hauling across Emerson Ridge. All right, we do still have the 226 of John Carnival right there stuck, getting ready to go up her problems, but is not quite making it up. And look at that course. It is getting completely blown out. Oh, there's Justin Barth at the back of a Chocolate Thunder. All right, and we got the 354 that's in the front of that of Chris Johnson, the 713 in the middle of them of Ben Collier. And back to Peyton Isbell coming on into Hammertown. We'll have another unofficial finisher coming right in here very soon. And then, Pam, I think you're going to be handing out some of those LaserNet awards here very soon. Yes, it's going to be a good time. These guys are going to get to celebrate with a little bit of champagne as long as they are of age. If not, they will be getting some sparkling cider. But there is Peyton Isabel right there going through the last little bit of the short course. One more turn to go. And he'll be coming on in, grabbing that checkered flag, hitting the Yukon launch, and going underneath the Bronco Arch here in Hammertown for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship, part of the 2023 Progressive King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. Oh, it looks like they're getting their way through there. There's Justin Barth and Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson just had a, a kid about a week and a half ago. Oh, wow. So that all uh, tuned out to be perfect timing, and he's in a race car having fun. It's been a wonderful day of racing. And it's been a lot of fun. Thanks to each and every single one of you for staying tuned in all day long. It's been a great day. We've got two more big days of racing yet to come. So we're gonna take we're gonna step away, take a quick break, and be right back after this. place to go to do your rig right and that's at four wheel parts now 
is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels. Now is the time to lift your truck at 4WP. off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting. <laughs> you didn't look. Let's put this when he pulled up on stage. You know, normal sized guy, he crawls out. Hot damn. Yeah, I'm a big boy. <laughs> what, was, what was your afternoon like out there, Val, besides uh, the dust? Uh, fighting intercom issues, brake issues, a lot of other issues, but we made it. <laughs> and he's giggling about it. So I'm looking at your co driver. This, I'm telling everybody, I see that this is a driver right here. It's probably got dirt in his teeth, it's grinding, it's all gritty, and I don't even gonna touch your beard, but uh, <laughs> this guy look, doesn't look all that bad. Did you put him to work today? Oh yeah, I put him to work. <laughs> How many times do you have to get out of the car? Uh, like two or three. Well, that ain't so bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Well, what was the afternoon like on Corso? Uh, it was rough, it was fast, it was a lot of fun. You're new at this, aren't you? Yeah, I am. This whole, this whole interview kind of thing. Uh, who's behind the scenes to help you out, help you guys get here? All these people down here. <laughs> you notice how clean they are? Yeah, they're not working. They just came to party. <laughs> well, how about some of the companies that helped you out? Uh, Godfrey Fabworks, they do a lot. Of, and um, I, honestly, they're the ones that do the most for me. So. so what you're saying is you owe them a lot. Oh, I owe them everything, yeah. I, I, he really is like talking to a trophy cart kid, man, right? That's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, where are you from? I mean, how long have you been doing this? I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is my first ever race, so. So Tulsa, huh? That ex yeah. kind of explains a little, kind of, you know. You know some? <laughs> no, no, up here. What do you think about Ultra 4 racing and uh, being out here at King of the Hammers? What do you think about it? It's time to get back to work and uh, make some upgrades and come back again next year. So you will do it again? Oh yeah, we'll do it again. All right, man, that's awesome to hear. Thank you so much and congratulations once again. You finished. Yeah. First time. You And not many people could say that, their first time. You finished the k and UTV Hammers Championship here at King of the Hammers. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, Scott. Congratulations to our rookie, Peyton Isbell, for finishing as we have Josh Owen coming into town for another finisher. And I know we're getting closer and closer to giving away some of that laser nut hardware for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. It's been a wonderful day. It's been a beautiful day. Starting to get a little chill in the air as the checkered flag is flying. It's the Yukon launch. Crosses under the Bronco Arch.
There's the 713 of Ben Collier over in her problems. And relieving me from the booth, I got my good buddy, Jim Marsden. So thanks, Jim. Always a pleasure having you in here, and uh, I'll see you in the morning. Miles, it's good to see you, my friend, and I'll catch you very, very soon. I'll, uh, yeah, we'll catch up in a little bit, buddy. Thanks for everything. And still the race action continues here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We are here today for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. And we've already had an absolutely fantastic day of racing. And very soon we're going to be doing the awards and getting all these heroes up on stage. But while that's happening, there's still plenty of action happening out on our course. As we watch the 713 of Ben Collier making his way down her problem. It's a long day in the office now. These guys have been on course since 8 o'clock this morning. Okay, so we continue watching the action here. We're gonna throw it over to Scott Wren, who's got someone on stage with him. Scott, who you got? Yeah, Josh Owen. Did it last year, did it again this year. I guess I'm not gonna make it get out of the car because it's kind of, this. talk about tight confines. Uh, what was it like this afternoon up there in that course? That was brutal. That was a brutal race, rough. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. So what's, it, what, <laughs> what's, what's that saying about this event, this race, this track? Uh, where you go out there and beat yourselves up, beat your equipment up, and then want to do it again tomorrow. That's that's the sport, I guess. Not having enough sense not to, I guess. <laughs> That'd be probably what it is, for sure. Hey, who got behind you guys to bring you out here for this week? I'd like to thank God, first and foremost, I'm my family. Uh, all the boys from South Carolina, my co-driver, and his brother. If it wasn't for them two, we wouldn't be here. You know what? You can't see it from here, but this guy's getting a, just a tad bit choked up. Just a tad bit. And our wives back home. Our wives back home. I know you guys ain't new at this, but I tell you, give you a real hint right now. Wives are always first. I keep telling everybody. I said, I said the, the the family, the wife and the family. No, you said family, man. Oh. I'm I'm gonna bust your balls all the way to South Carolina, man. I know. How how was the race though? I mean, uh, did you make him work today? He worked his butt off. I. We come into Jack over there, and we decided we wasn't going to go to Sledge. There wasn't nobody there, so I get up there, and there was one car there, and I flip over and lay on top of him. So <laughs> there you go. But That's the only problem we had. That's the only problem we had all day. We blew, one belt. We blew a belt, and, and had to pull the air filter out because it got stopped up. But other than that, it was good. Well, you know what? You can add this to your resume one more time because you'll be coming back again next year. As hard as this was, as tired as you are, as beat up as this poor car is, something tells me you're going to be back again next back. year. I'll be back. We appreciate it. Everybody, everybody all y'all's work that puts this on, it, it makes it worth it. Well, congratulations. Add it to your resume that you are finishers of the KM UTV Hammers Championship. Nice job, guys. Thank you.
If you're just joining us, you are here for the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers here live in Hammertown. Today has been the Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships and we've had a fantastic day of racing. We're just getting ready to do our main awards ceremony. But let's not forget 107 vehicles left the line this morning and we still have plenty of them out there on course trying to fight their way round these fabled Hamel tri Hammers trails. This, uh, this morning we saw Kyle Cheney three-peat winning his third title here at the Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships. And I think that might be car 569 we see live on screen at the moment. And I think that's Christopher Pierce that we see coming along there, making his way back towards Hammertown. We've got a large crowd outside now waiting for the awards to be presented and Pam Hall is going to be leading that very soon. Let's not forget we've still got another two days of racing here and tomorrow will be the four wheel parts every man challenge starting at 8am tomorrow morning. We will have three classes competing, the 4800s, the 4500s and the 4600s. We'll have to wait and see who will lift that title. And then on Saturday, it's the big dance. It's the big one. It's the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, Nitto Race of Kings, powered by Optima Batteries. We watched the qualifying yesterday, and there was so much drama, so much action. But Saturday morning, they'll put it all to the test as they start to leave the line at 8 a.m. Be sure to be here. Be sure not to miss it, because there are sure to be fireworks. And as always, nothing is certain in Ultra 4 racing. Who will win? Will it be any of our former kings? Or will a new king be crowned? Or will our new king from last year, Raul Gomez, retain that prestigious title? I'm just looking at the track and now I can tell you that we've still got people moving at the moment. Christopher Pierce and the 569 is making his way towards Turkey Claw. Carl Smith is also on the move, 50 mile an hour. Around about 15, 20 minutes out. Along with Nelson Sparks will be our next finishers this afternoon. Course is still open till 6 p.m. Although there is an allowance for adjusted time. Uh, it looks like we've also got Aaron Clark is making his way back towards Hammertown. There's about 30 minutes away. Fantastic footage here. 
still coming in from the race course as we continue with the 2023 King of the Hammers Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships here in Johnson Valley, California. We see so many people crossing the line today. But the amazing thing about this, for me, Scott, is the number of people that are racing in multiple race car duties. Cameron Steele's doing multiple races. Shannon Campbell doing multiple races. Terry Madden doing multiple races. I love that. Well, it's not only that, but also the fact that um, they're doing well every time they touch the steering wheel, whatever class they're in, which I find kind of amazing. You think that, say, in, in, if they're in a lower class than what they're normally uh, registered for, that they're here to run, um, you think they'd kind of like take it easy a little bit and kind of monitor the course, take mental notes, uh, things like that. Obviously, they're already pre-running, but still, the fact that these guys are, are trying to win in every single class that they're out there running. Yeah, it is quite remarkable, but thank the Lord that they do because it gives us fantastic racing. So how's the day been for you, Jim? It's been absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. I've very much enjoyed this race. <laughs> It's always cool time being here in Hammertown. I got, I got a prediction for the awards in, ju in just a minute. I got a prediction. Don't, if you're going to tell me you think you know who won. No. no, no. <laughs> I predict that there's going to be a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot of black and yellow fire suits up there. <laughs> yeah, it's been a Can-Am lockout this weekend, that's for sure. And then we've still got the main race coming up on Saturday, starting at 8 a.m., <coughs> will be the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers Nitto Race of Kings, and I'm I'm not wouldn't bet against seeing some of these yellow seats on the podium. Then there's a aren't there a couple that are already registered ahead of time for uh, oh, they Saturday's were, race? But then we already have two Canams in the top ten for qualifying. Oh yeah, absolutely. And heading back towards town right now is Christopher Pierce. Currently showing at 45 mile an hour as he makes his way down towards Turkey Claw. And he will be the next driver, if everything holds together, that will be joining us in town. You know, it's also been really, really nice is the fact that as the day wore on, as, as more racers came in and finished, the same fans that were here this morning at like 7.30, 8 o'clock for the drop of the green flag for this race are still here. They Absolutely. haven't left. They may yep. have walked the uh, vendor area, and, but they've all come back and sat in front of this Jumbotron. And that is so damn cool. Yeah, the whole thing's very cool there. And we're just looking out onto our live screen there. We still see vehicles moving. Okay, as we continue here, watching vehicles making their way back into Hammertown. We're going, to cross a cro uh, we're going to cross over to Pam Hall, who's going to be giving out the awards this afternoon for the 2023 Nita, uh, <laughs> Progressive King of the Hammers Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships. Pam, what do you got? Thanks, guys. We are here for the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. We are going to start off our awards ceremony with our fastest rookie. The rookie program is something that has been amazing. The drivers that have been racing with us for years, they wish they would have had it when they started out. But I'm going to want to bring up, first off, the Pro Stock fastest rookie, Mr. Ben Cahill. He is in the Pro Stock Turbo class. If you could please make your way up here to the stage. If you are here, hopefully you are here. Ben, are you here? No? Okay, so let's move on over here. We are going to go into our Pro Mod highest finisher. We have the number 900 of Robert Parker. Are you here? <laughs> I hear cheers. Come on up. Well, that's one way to get up here. Congratulations, you were the fastest in the rookie class. Awesome job. Thank you. Let's get some photo ops with our, mo our monster girls here. So sportsman stock will be next. All right, now let's bring up our Can-Am sportsman stock class in second place, the 615 of Hubert Rowland. Go ahead and make your way to the stage. This is and then we have the first place finisher, Mr. Brian Tilton. Come on up to the stage. Are you guys here? I don't 
don't think they're here. All right, let's move on. It does not look like they are here right now. So we do have in the Can-Am Pro Stock class in first position, Kyle Anderson. Are you here? <laughs> All righty, we're going to move on to our fourth. So we have the open class in the third position, Michael Lee. Second position, Shannon Campbell. And in that number one position, Mr. Casey Curry. Make your way up here to the stage. All right, that Can-Am open UTV class. Can you guys hear me out there? So Michael Lee, Shannon Campbell, Casey Curry. Come on up. Come on, Casey. You're no stranger to a stage. Yes, he is in the open UTV class. You get to celebrate by yourself. Your other people left. Yes. So you got first place oh, in your class. Yeah. You didn't know that? All right. Yeah. Take some pictures. You're going to have some champagne. Just don't spray us. All right, ladies, let's give him that bottle of champagne. And I'm stepping away. You don't want to spray it? Yes, you get to spray it. That's why we're giving it to you. Twist cap. Twist it. All right, congratulations, Casey Curry, getting that number one position in the Open UTV class. All right, now we're going to bring up some people I do see out here in the crowd. In the Can-Am Pro Modified UTV class, in third position, Mr. Dustin Jones. In second position, Mr. Cole Clark. And in that number one spot, Phil Blurton, make your way to the stage. All right, let's give it up one more time for Dustin Jones, Cole Clark, and Phil Blurton. Get them all set up here. Phil, you're going to go in the middle. Oh my goodness, yeah. All right, boys, let's put those trophies down and spray that champagne. I know you guys had a long day out there racing and had some fun. Let's show everybody out there how you can now spray that champagne because all of you are no strangers. Congratulations again to Dustin Jones, Cole Clark, and Bill Blurton in that Pro Modified class. All right, in this Pro Stock Turbo class, I see you guys out here as well. In third position, Cody Miller. Second position, Hunter Miller. And in that number one spot, Mr. Kyle Cheney. Cody and then Hunter and then Kyle's in the number one spot. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Can-Am 1, 2, and 3. They're all matchy-matchy up here. Awesome. It's a twist top, but you guys are going to take your picture with your trophies first. You guys, let's give it up for Cody Miller, Hunter Miller, and Kyle Cheney. All right, congratulations, guys. You guys throwing out some goodies to the crowd. You know they all love the goodies, love the giveaways.
<laughs> All right, congratulations, guys. All right, we have one last trophy to take care of, you guys. I'm sorry. You want to grab that? We have the overall, the overall trophy right here, Mr. Kyle Cheney. Come on down. You're going to get the awesome trophy made by Laser Nut. He is our overall winner, you guys. He put down a fast time today. I'm curious to see if it's going to last for the rest of the weekend of racing. But congratulations, Kyle Cheney. All right, we're going to bring up our second and third to get a photo. So Phil Blurt and Cole Clark, if you guys can come on over here, we're going to get a photo of you with Kyle Cheney on the one, two, and three of the championship overall. All right, guys, let's get some posing for the photographers. Congratulations again to our overall can-am utv hammers championships the first position kyle cheney second phil blurton and third position cole clark all right and let's get back to you in the booth jim thank you pam always good to see people up on stage collecting the awards and scott what an amazing day of racing here in Hammertown. Just look at those shots from our drones up ahead. Yeah, great crowd here in front of the stage. Uh, still got a lot of guys out on course. But I'm wondering, um, and I have no problem letting people know that I'm kind of like trying to figure this out, but is this the third year in a row? Possibly the fourth. I want to say third year in a row that can am has swept the podium. I wouldn't like to say for certain because I can't say for, with certainty but I've got a good feeling that you might be right <laughs> yeah, they're certainly laying down the benchmark for all other UTV manufacturers well here's here's the other thing uh, the strength of a driver by the name of Paul Wolf everything he touches this week he's he's been on top or near the top um, and he's been dare I say uh, just going to stop your thought there okay, as we just yep, watch yep, Carl yep. Smith working his way down through Turkey Claw and he'll be able to see Hammertown in the distance and make his way down towards <coughs> here where all the celebrations are still taking place. Where well, earlier today we saw Kyle Cheney crowned king once again. And we've got multiple people now, only a few moments away from Hammertown. Christopher Pierce, 569, is making his way in. Just saw him a moment ago. Carl Smith is also going to be with us very shortly, as is Nelson Sparks. So we're still bringing vehicles in right to the end. Let's not forget this race is not over until 6 p.m. and then we have to allow for adjusted time. So still lots of racing to do today as the shadows start, start to lengthen here in Hammertown. But what an awesome day of racing it's been so far. And it's only just getting started here. Tomorrow is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Then on Saturday is the big one, the Nitto Race of Kings, powered by Optima Batteries. And we're watching the 569 there. That is Christopher Pierce. And he is literally two minutes out of Hammertown. He'll be sweeping in to make a finish here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers Can Am UTV Hammers Championship. No doubt he'll have lots of stories to tell because anyone who's been on course this long has been racing hard and has undoubtedly had the odd problem on course.
So it's Christopher Pierce making his way around the bottom of King Hill, heading down towards the short course. And he'll be joining us in town very shortly. Got to say a massive shout out to our production crew. We've absolutely killed it today. Multiple cameras out on course, multiple drone assets out there, helicopters, and of course our wonderful production crew back here in Hammertown. Who bring us all this incredible action. And Christopher Pierce makes his way through the short course, takes the checkered flag and is an official finisher here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships. Always great to see these vehicles finishing after a hard day of racing. And I think our next finisher is likely to be Nelson Sparks. And just as I say that, it looks like Nelson's come to a standstill, so I will watch that and let you know if he gets going again. Fantastic angle there from our drones. We can just see the size of these rocks. Still amazes me how these UTVs manage to punch their way through. This is Michael Adams. Looking for a new route. As he picks his way through these enormous rocks. The UTVs have had to do two laps today. One 70 mile, 72 mile loop of the desert and then into the hammer trials. And they are racing the same hammer trials and we'll be watching the EMC. And then on Saturday, it will be the 4400s. And you see he's got tape there on his spare tire. The reason they put tape on these spare tires is so they can see a quickly at a glance if they need to put a new one in the rack. So he's clearly obviously had to change a tire fairly recently. And tyre technology is something that's really improved over, year, over the years. So many manufacturers now making dedicated tyres for these vehicles. Dedicated tyres for this type of racing. And we saw so many of the top running vehicles coming in today. And telling us about the fact they've had no flats. Which is absolutely incredible when you consider they've been racing out there for 140 plus miles. And it's so easy to get a flat tyre here. You can see how sharp some of these rocks are. You just nip a sidewall. It all happens so fast. And this looks like this is going to be our next finisher. That is Carl 146. That is Carl Smith. Saw him off course a little bit earlier. So whether it's just a tracker ping or whether he had a problem and pulled off the course to do it, to fix something, I'm not sure. But it's great to see that he's moving now and making his way back to Hammertown. And as we wait for more finishers to cross the line, we're going to cross on over to Scott, who's got someone up with him on stage. Scott, who you got? Thanks a lot, Chairman. Just a little bit of celebration going on up here to the cruise. Guys, get up. Chris. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're a cameraman. Hey, I, I walked your car. It don't look too bad except for this big spot right here. 
I tried to go back and get it. it but something tells me this has happened before because I see fresh welds right there. Yeah. So, so what's going on with the car, man? Uh, it's going back in the garage and getting worked on. <laughs> How was the afternoon up there on the course? Uh, this is my fifth year racing and first time finishing. Well, that in itself says something right there. And that tells me that, uh, come on, quit yelling, get over here. The crew, uh, your co-driver, I got to ask him, you guys look all messed up. I mean, dust, tired, and then, y yeah. <laughs> Uh, what did he did he did he make you? Yeah, I'm supposed to ask. What is that gas smell? What well, is? We had to borrow it. Our pit crew didn't show up, so we borrowed it. Next car? I don't know. I was I, I heard gas. Oh, but uh, what was the afternoon like for you out there? Well, he asked me five days ago to be a co-pilot on at King of the Hammers. I've never even been to, <laughs> so so this was wild. Did you like any pre-running around the yard at least? No pre-running at all. We were working on the car the whole time. Our first look at the course was when we took off racing. And, and the first time you finished? First time I finished. I, I raced a Legends class and a 4400 class. Uh, first time in the UTV and I finished. Yeah. So, who, who helped you guys get here? I mean, this is not just a two-man yeah, no, operation. No, yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 it's all me and you know, the help of uh, you know my best friend over here. And, you know, yeah. Chris did it himself. He pushed this whole thing. None well, of us would be here without him. I bought this car one month ago. Yeah. One month ago, and you got KOH ready in one month. Yeah. One, month, yeah. one month ago, KOH ready in one month. Well, that in itself is, I think, a story right there. But uh, both you guys, congratulations to your crew that's here. Congratulations. Uh, you guys just f finished one hell of a race. Thank you. And uh, What's it like they're, they're not really pretty, though. I mean, they're not really, like, <laughs> no, not her, these two. Okay. But we're, nice we're job. Finish races. Nice job, guys. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Scott. Always great to bring finishers across the line. And still, we have lots of action out there on course. I think this is going to be Nelson Sparks making his way into Hammertown right now. We do still have a lot of racers out there on race course. And the finish line will be closing here in just a little while. So they will be... Uh, oh, we've got quite a while yet, Pam. It's quite still, a while? Yeah, we've still got around about an hour and a quarter until course closes. And then we've got the allow allowance for adjusted time as well. Exactly. <laughs> this, was, this day has gone by really fast. It has. It it's always does. Although it's... It was amazing. Kyle Cheney bringing him back before midday. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, he got back just in time for lunch. Well, I can see there being a third lap for the UTVs next year. Yeah, exactly, right? You can't have them finishing that early. <laughs> now, you know what's going to happen is Mr. Cole's going to make it even that harder. It sounds like we have a finisher that has came in, but they broke a belt right at the line, so they're pushing their car over. Well, we saw that earlier as well with Hunter Miller, one of our top runners, literally broke a belt in the infield. Oh, is that what it was? The, yeah, had to push it all the way across the line. I didn't realize it was a belt. Happened right in front of me. I was right there at the finish line. It was, <laughs> or I saw that happen and pushing, and it's, everybody just went over there, giving them water. They were exhausted just from pushing the car. Yeah, it means so much to everybody. They have to do this. Okay, as the action continues here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance Nitto Race, uh, <laughs> Nitto King of Hammers, <laughs> we're here for the Kina, uh, for the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championships. We're going to pop out for a short commercial break, and we will be back with the action very soon. Radio, leader in off-road communication since 1972. Our equipment was developed for racing in Baja, perfected for enjoying the weekend with family and friends. Stay in touch with our track stereo intercoms, two-way radios, satellite communications, helmets and headsets. Find new adventures with GPS. Breathe clean air with Race Air Fresh Air Systems. PCI has the highest quality communications, navigation, and safety equipment. Backed by the best support in the industry. 
Find us at hundreds of events each year, supporting our equipment on site and providing the PCI Weatherman Relay. See you in the desert. day race in the world as far as I'm concerned. When you need your winch, that's the only thing that matters. It's about getting to the finish line first. It doesn't matter how you do it. in the 4500 Utah Well, Mr. Sparks, welcome to the podium, my friend. Thank you, brother. You've been in one hell of a race. <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> You're the first guy that's been giggling about it all afternoon. What was it like out there? Man, it was rough, it was just tight. Like, Dave, he said he didn't have any gotchas, but there was every freaking part of that course had gotchas. Like, it was great. Like, it was one of those things you had to drive, you had to pay attention, and you had to be on your game. Like, attrition, I don't know how many finished, but like attrition, I just saw it yeah. <laughs> as we were going along. Like, so it was amazing. Like, our MRT tires made it through great. Um, you know, our HCR suspension, that's freaking amazing, and my co-driver, like, without him, we wouldn't have made it up sledge, save our lives, plus we found I had a funny feeling as he walked around he was going to do something like yeah, that, but... Hey, we, we, we made our own, we made our own lines, like, when we got caught up, so, like, and they were tougher than what David put in, so, we had no complaints. <laughs> how, many t how many times did you make him do something outside the car this afternoon? Oh, at least probably five or six. <laughs> That's why you look the way you do. Don't do yourself a favor. Miles uphill. Just, just don't look in the mirror. Just go straight to the shower when you're okay. okay. You don't. Want, <laughs> what was the afternoon like for you? It was an incredible ride. I had no idea. My first time hammers for me. So, I mean, the rocks, the places we went were scary, crazy, fun. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved every minute. He made me hike up a couple hills, spot him through stuff, but it was. I can't believe where we did it, what we did, and uh, anyways, I was happy to have the opportunity. Oh, congratulations to both of you, man. I know you didn't do it all by yourselves. How'd you get here? Just our entire team, family, uh, ACR, ZRP, MRT tires, like amazing to go through. Uh, Tracy, or Traco Jacks, and Can-Am. Like these things just are the best race cars there are. I don't care who they are. Like you need to get a Can-Am, -Am. like buy one. <laughs> <laughs> like, you ever want to get in the desert, want to go rock crawling? Like, they are the ultimate machine. So, they club. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right what about. Oh, yeah. And then we had Epic Brain Center. We did some performance review as well, like, which was amazing. Uh, and so we did, like, performance. And honestly, like, I got my fastest qualifying after doing it. So that was the best part about it as well. <laughs> Is that why he's giggling all that? Yeah, yeah all he's that? happy. <laughs> well, congratulations to both of you. Good too. I'm absolutely tired. No, it's not words like we were expecting you know a much shorter day and but with holdups and just everything like we persevered and, and came through so i'm happy <laughs> well 
Uh, nice job, both you guys. Uh, first time uh, finishing it for thir his first, your third. Second finish. Second finish in a row, and congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Appreciate right. it very much. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. And still, we're watching the action here. That is car number 80, which is Matthew Jeffrey picking his way through Sledgehammer. Still a long way from Hammertown. And they'll be passing a lot more broken vehicles before he gets here. As we just saw one sitting on the side right there. And what happens sometimes with these racers are super awesome. They help each other out. Instead of having to winch out of certain areas, racers that are broke down will help each other out. And it looks like that's probably what that car had been doing because their winch line was, was out. Yep, you can also see here, this is the big winch line or the big pull. Well, we were speaking to some of the drivers earlier. They were saying they actually drove this. Cole Clark reached for his winch earlier, couldn't get up there. And if you look down the left, there's somebody's wheel. Oh, wow. Three wheels on my wagon. Now, is he going to punch this or is he going to winch? If this was me at this time of day, I would definitely be winching. I would too. I mean, it's just been a long day. The race has started at 8 o'clock this morning. I don't think I would want to be uh, struggling and possibly hurting my car at this point. Yeah, absolutely. What was it when you're doing that? It's always a good idea to get your winch cable out before putting it onto the obstacle. And give your co-driver a little bit of a break. So this is Emerson Ridge. Fantastic shots here. And as the shadows lengthen here in Hammertown and Johnson Valley, California, We'll be winding up the coverage to this, the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships. Earlier today, we saw Carl Cheney crossing the line in first place overall. In second place overall was Phil Blurton. In third was Cole Clark. In fourth, Justin Jones. In fifth, Hunter Miller. And in sixth, Cody Miller. And we had three different classes. And we just gave away those awesome LaserNet trophies. It was a great time up there. The guys celebrating, giving their champagne. It's always fun to see the celebrations afterwards. There is indeed. There is no better feeling when you get to the podium. And that right there is one of our rookies in the rookie program. We keep mentioning it, mentioning it but uh, the rookie program is so awesome to see. The rookies have learned so much. And again, like I keep saying as well, the people that have been racing in this sport for quite some time, they wish they would have had it around when they were, when they were starting out in the sport. Absolutely, I know it would have benefited me massively. But the interesting thing for me is how many rookies we have. I know, there's so many. Exactly, and see the growth in our sport continuing is a wonderful thing as we watch the 49.97 there. 49.97 of Michael Adams, another rookie. I love the way you know these all off the top of your head. <laughs> Very impressive. Someone's been doing their homework. Trying. We're all trying. <laughs> <laughs> your brain gets a little uh, uh, tired after a while after trying to figure all these guys out and get their names in your head and stuff. And yes, I still struggle myself. Yeah, we all, we all work hard. The host team put a lot of work effort in to learn yes. about all of these guys and all of these teams so we can bring you all of the information and tell you about these wonderful vehicles and these wonderful drivers. Look at that view. The sun is starting to set. That's when I'm wondering if all these guys had their light bars on before they left because some <laughs> of them will start the races without their light bars on and they'll put them on, you know, if they think they're going to be running into the night or not. Blink and you miss it, that's for sure. So true, so true. I haven't looked at the timing, but I'm curious to see the finishing rate right now on uh, drivers who all has actually came through and finished. Let me see what I can do for you there. Now, normally the attrition rate on these events is huge. So let's see where we're at and how many finishes you have. Wow.
At the moment, we have across the line 43 finishers. 43, and how many took the green flag this morning? 107. 107 and only 43 finishers. But you know what, I say only 43? That's, that's actually quite a bit. Yeah, that's a, that's a very high rate of finish for this event which just goes to show you how good the cars are and the car preparation. Exactly, and it sounds like we have Scott up on the stage once again with another finisher out here at the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Thanks a lot, Pam, and before I go anywhere with this, everybody around here wants to know one thing, all right? Why does he smell like gas? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I didn't have any problems with it, so you'd have to ask him. But it is pretty potent. It's been there all day. Well, we got to know. So we uh, we had a little issue out in uh, out in remote too, and you had to what run over and give some other. Well, no, actually, my co-driver was fueling the car up and happened to dump. Wait, 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 wait! You had a co-driver. What's going on here? You're. Driver 4400 day oh, okay. was gassing us up and he uh, dumped some fuel on my leg on accident for us, so we had to smell it all day long. Well, there's better things, you know, I mean, than that. I mean, as far as gas smells, not bad. No, no, not at all. Just keep the matches away. Yeah, that's that was the goal. How was your afternoon besides that? Uh, we had a heck of a day. <clears throat> we got we bent two trailing arms, uh, what, probably two, three miles in, and uh, we got. Uh, Got a couple of my four-year-old HCR ones shipped out to remote one, and uh, we got them changed and took off. And made it what five miles? Yeah. Blew a tire, <laughs> jumped out, put that on there, and then uh, hammered down the rest of the day. We had uh, really good luck up until uh, my power steering went out, probably wrecking in wrecking ball. Yeah, and so I've been driving since wrecking ball without power steering, and he had to pay for that because he was he was definitely being a winch guy. <laughs> How many times did you make him work today? Uh, boy, at least five. <laughs> at least, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a long day. We're just happy to be here. We well, are a lucky man that for, it, that for him to work as hard as he did and still have that kooky smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate him. Definitely appreciate him. Well, what's it like? I mean, you got all these fans, uh, family, friends, crew back here. Uh, they all helped get you here. I'm quite sure. Yeah, a lot of every one of them down there helped get me here. I had quite a few companies: RCV, UTV Life. Uh, HGR helped me get here, and uh, well, we had performance machine tire or performance machine wheels, and they uh, they ran for a little while on a flat today, and and uh, yeah, everybody. I mean, it's been it's definitely been a joint effort on this one because it took uh, it took some time. Well, at one point in time during the afternoon, all of a sudden it starts to set in as the sun starting to throw all kinds of shadows out there. That the goal at that moment, right there, is to get your ass to Hammertown. Yeah. You guys did that. You took the checkered flag, and as I understand, you barely crossed the line because they blew they blew a belt at the finish line, and uh, you had you had to uh, actually replace it before you came up here to the podium. So one hell of a full day. I can tell you right now, congratulations as finishers of the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Nice job, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. And look at that fantastic view, looking out across to Jack, or from Jack, should I say. Sun is slowly going down here in Hammertown, Pam. That's when it starts getting cool outside. You guys want to get your jackets so you can finish watching the rest of this race with us up here. It's uh, The music is getting ready to play. We have Sublime playing tonight. That's really fun. It is indeed. I know there's a lot of big fans out here. They've been playing here for the last two years. <laughs> And there'll be a lot of people very excited to see them out there tonight, that's for sure. Yes, I'm excited to see them myself. They're always uh, always good to see. Great music, good times, fun with all of everybody out there. I think many be beverages will be shared this yeah. evening. All right, did you see Race Mile 65 right there? Look at that, such a beautiful view. I love the sunset, it's so gorgeous. Those are one of those pictures that I hate to miss, but here we are. I'm in the booth with you, having a blast, but we're watching it from a different direction. <laughs> we are indeed. So we've had nearly 50 finishers here today at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammer Championships. It just goes to show the evolution of these incredible UTV vehicles that so many can get to the finish. Carl Chaney took the checkered flag earlier today, coming in before 12 p.m. to take his third title which is absolutely astonishing. 
He was a class apart today and gave everyone a masterclass on how to drive a UTV here at King of the Hammers. Great view right there of Hammertown from Means Butte. Look how many people are here. That's so many people. And there's a view from the KMC Turkey Claw. Yeah, Turkey Claw. And I've got to say a massive thank you to the production crew once again. We've got Jumbotron assets all over the place this year. So it's Jumbotrons up at Chocolate Thunder, Jumbotrons at Turkey Claw, which means that the crowds can get really close to the obstacles and yet still see the rest of the race. Another thing, Pam, this year, we've got nearly a thousand cars racing with us, which I know. is absolutely incredible. So we've had the desert races, we've had the motors, we've also had the great, uh, great American short course joining us as well. It's been quite incredible. So many different series here of racing. The motos were my favorite to watch so far. I mean, I love all the racing, but motos. I tell you what, I, lo I tell you what, I loved as well. Those class 11s with oh, that yes. Land Rush start, yes. largest field of class 11s ever fielded. 37 of them on a land rush start from Melville Lake Bed, racing their way back into Hammertown. That Incredible. Was, that was super cool to watch. I only saw it on the Jumbotron, but it sounds like we have Scott up on the stage with another finisher. So Scott, take it away. Thanks a lot, Pam. And once again, Mr. Clark. Hey. Uh, both you guys look dusty. Look like you've been through a little bit of, um, dare I say, H-E double toothpicks out there on that race course, especially co-driver. Did you make him work a lot today? Did a little bit of running, so yeah. Running. Yeah, running, wenching, yeah. You know what it takes to finish this race, so yeah. So what was it like out there on that course? Uh, we broke a uh, shock bolt, so that took us about a half hour, 45 minutes to get changed, then a big bottleneck in, uh, in yeah. Thor's hammer. So that was uh, slowed us down a little bit, but we finished. So we've never, this is our fourth time finishing this race, and we've never finished in the daylight. So, uh, <laughs> Good well, work. it's it's getting better and better. Talk about some of the uh, companies and the uh, people that got you here. Um, I'd like to thank all my friends and family. I got um, Daniel. I got John from IMG Motorsports. Um, Badek and Jack, uh, my longtime pit guys that always go out and help. Um, my my wife, I, the, um, Isaac. We miss him. He should be here today. My co-driver Ethan. My, that's my two sons. Um, and then uh, Raceline Wheels and RE Sun Tires. So no flats today. So that uh, was a big help. So, Well, last question. Did you make Ethan scream at all or, or like punch in the arm? What the hell are you doing? Well, fortunately, he, uh, he stays pretty calm during this <laughs> stuff. So uh, not a whole lot of screaming and yelling from him. A lot, a lot from me. So... Uh, <laughs> So, yep. Well, congratulations, guys. You are finishers in the daylight. The Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Nice job. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Scott. And still the finishes keep crossing the line here in Hammertown. Pam, it's been a wonderful day of action once again. Yes, it has. And, you know, it's been an action full week. I mean, the qualifying going up, Chocolate Thunder, that was a lot of fun. Something that we have never done before here at King of the Hammers. And that is the 4997 of Michael Adams. Michael Adams chasing that sunset right there. Beautiful view, except when he gets up over that crest, that sun's right in his eyes. That's when it's super hard to see, no matter if there's dust or not. That's when you want a sun visor in your car. A lot of people uh, will make one themselves and put it in there, or there are companies out there that make them as well. But beautiful sunset to be chasing right now. It's absolutely stunning out there, that is for sure. And we're still working hard here in the booth along with everybody else helping to bring you this amazing race footage. But I can't wait for tomorrow and I cannot wait for Saturday. It's gonna I can't be wait for all of it. It's going to be incredible, <laughs> isn't it?
We spent all year waiting for this. Tomorrow is going to be the four wheel parts every man challenge. Join us live at 8 a.m. Keep up with the best of the action as we watch the 4800s, the 4500s and the 4600s doing battle once again on those fabled trails. That is a uh, fan favorite class, bringing you back to the grassroots of Ultra 4 racing. Yeah, and it's great to see the continued growth in these classes. I was talking to Paul Wolf the other day and he's actually mentioning that he's going to be building a, uh, a 4500 class car, which I thought was very interesting oh, wow. indeed. Yeah, I did not know that. There we go, little things. Paul Wolf hasn't had a great day today. What can he do in the 4400 class on Saturday? So, I'm not sure, did you find out what happened with Paul Wolf? I, I did not find out what happened with him today. Um, unfortunately, I have no idea. We did see him stopped in remote pit one early in the race. It looked like they had some problems with the front end of the vehicle. I'm sure we'll probably be able to get some information very soon as to what happened. If anybody knows, please let us know. Yes, and you guys at home watching this, Give a shout out to your drivers. Let us know who you're watching. Let us know who you're cheering on. And let us know what your favorite part of the race is. And we still have on screen the 4997 right there of Michael Adams. Beautiful view right there, overlooking the valley into a lake bed. How would it be to be the only one out there right now with your dust going up in the air? <laughs> I mean, you have clean air in front of you, but... I think I'd rather be back in Hammertown with my friends drinking <laughs> beer at this moment in time, having started the race at 8 o'clock this morning. But that's what racing is all about. That's what racing about is all about here in Johnson Valley. That never surrender attitude. Fight to the end. Fight to get back to Hammertown fight to say that you are a finisher at these incredible races. And something I always say is just to finish this race is a win in itself and it stands true today for the people that are still out on race course. Just to finish this, just to get through the last part of the race course is a win in itself. Oh, absolutely. It's incredible. And the buzz you get when you cross that finish line, when you get into Hammertown, you got to come up on stage and you got to say, yeah, I did that. Exactly. To go home and say, I finished King of the Hammers. To the people that don't know what King of the Hammers is, I mean, I run across them all the time on the East Coast. They don't know what King of the Hammers is. And I'm like, I have to explain <laughs> it to them. And then they go, oh, wait, no, I have heard of that. Once they start explaining the vehicles that are a part of this race. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely been a fun, fun, almost three weeks for me out here at King of the Hammers. <laughs> Over a week of racing already. So it's good to be up here with you again, Jim. Yesterday I had a blast up in the booth over there at Chocolate Thunder with the EMC qualifying with you. Uh, 4,400 qualifying. 4,400 qualifying. <laughs> See, I'm losing my days. <laughs> yeah, it all does melt into one. The, the 4,400 qualifying yesterday was absolutely incredible. But we're going to have a look at our top 30 results from today. And here's our top 40. In 40th position is Joss Owens in 39th. Peyton Isabel. In 38th is Chris May. In 37th, Matthew Walraven. In 36th is James Contrell. 35th, Christopher Amberge. In 34th is Carl Anderson. 33, Joe Gould. In 32nd is Jake Godfrey. In 31st, Hubert Rowland. As we move on through, in 30th is Trey Price. In 29th, Tyler Rimreed. And in 28th is Roland Beck. 27th, Ben Cahill. In 26th is Jason Weller. 25th, Michael Lee. And in 24th is Byron Starrett. In 23rd, Louis Leon Gonzalez. And in 22nd is William Martin. In 21st, Dustin Robbins. Then in 20th is Brian Tilson. In 19th position, Mr. Jamie McCoy. Then in 18th is David Dezida. 17th position, Brian Deegan. In 16th is three-time king, Shannon Campbell. In 15th position, Zach Pollard. In 14th is Ronnie Anderson. In 13th position, Dennis Dermis. And in 12th is the Iron Man himself, Cameron Steele. In that 11th position, Mr. Terry Madden. And our top 10, starting with our 
previous Dakar winner, Casey Curry. In ninth position, Robert Parker. In eighth, it was our fastest qualifier, Jay Shaw. And in seventh position, the Mr. One and Only, Travis Zollinger. In second is the first of the Miller brothers, Cody Miller. Fifth position, Hunter Miller. In fourth is Dustin Battleaxe Jones. In third position, Cole Clark. And in second, it was Phil Blurton. And the man of the day in that number one spot is the one and only Kyle Chaney. Three time triple Can Am winner. <laughs> Absolutely. But look at his time, Pam. Three hours, 31 minutes. In second place was Phil Blurton with 3.44. Absolutely incredible. And then you notice how the times tighten up after Phil comes in and how close those vehicles were. Another noticeable one is Cole Clark in third position. The first of the single seat vehicles. And what a difference that's made in the last year or two. We never used to see the single, uh, single seater class doing particularly well. Now we've got two inside the top 10. Right. And Cole Clark had some issues last year uh, off the start, and here he is now in third position right now. Absolutely. He was also one of the fastest qualifiers in 4400, but unfortunately didn't pass technical, so wasn't allowed to race in the main. Yes. But it's been... So as we wait for more finishes here in, John in Hammertown, let's have a look at some of the highlights from this incredible 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship.
right, welcome back up here onto the stage. Uh, I think, don't take me to the bank on this, but I think this is the first brother setup we've had up here on stage this afternoon. No, it isn't. How do you know that? Oh, you're, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had to, well, anyway, I stand corrected. Cody. Might as well be brothers. You just, you just were up there for, um, uh, Upside down. Yeah, upside down. Yeah, we, uh, and Jack just got a little off camera and flipped it completely, almost all the way on its lid. Uh, Randy was absolutely awesome as a co-driver, a little snatch block action, and uh, flipped us back on our wheels about the time the traffic jam was undone anyway, so. Well, uh, we were talking just off camera a moment ago, and all of a sudden you were like, um, yeah, I kind of busted his balls this afternoon. He was out of the car a lot. In fact, tell a story about him running all the way back here from... Uh, uh, what is it, turkey claw, I think you said? Yeah, so earlier in the day on the desert, we broke a clutch. Actually took exhaust bolts out of the exhaust to put in the clutch to fix the clutch to limp it back to Hammertown to get a clutch put in it. And then uh, coming on the home stretch in turkey claw, we uh, busted a knuckle on the front left, and he ran from turkey claw all the way back to Hammertown to get the part and all the way back. So we came in with, we have. No so tonight the steak dinner's on you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We have no four wheel drive, no brakes. It's, uh, it's hurt, but we did it. Well, and here's the thing. These guys are from all the way from Illinois, just south of Chicago. And uh, way south of Chicago. W question. When you tell your friends or neighbors or any of your acquaintances what you guys do out here, do they, do they, do they have a clue? Not a clue. They have no clue. They, uh, we told them we was coming out a couple weeks ago to race. And I think like every day in the last two weeks, I got text messages. How was the race? Like, we haven't raced this. We've been here two weeks pre-running and practicing and t tuning a car. But they still ask, how was the race? How'd you do? We ain't did it yet. Till now. So they think, you're, you, for all they know, you're on a circle track someplace out here in the West Coast. They don't know what we do out here. <laughs> they, well, uh, you can show them that rollover video. Yeah, hopefully there was a few of them back home watching. We sent the uh, feed information back so they can watch and kind of get an idea of what's going on. And I think uh, maybe they'll get their eyes open up if they watched all of it. Well, Cody, talk about uh, your crew here and the people behind the scenes that brought you out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, wouldn't be possible without these people out here for sure. Uh, big thanks to High Lifter, AMS Tires, and Factory Players. Well, congratulations, guys. You are finishers of... Uh, and Nate, that guy on the crew chief, I met him on the lake bed a year ago today, right? A year ago, last year, first time I met him, pid with me, staying with me, he's the man. He hooked me up this weekend, got these shocks lined out, and everyone else helped out, but a year ago, you don't find friends like that every day right there. I'm looking at him right now. You ain't making him run back to Hammertown. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> I told him before we did this, I told him, I was like, okay, I might run back to Hammertown, but then I'm staying. <laughs> no, I ain't going back. Nice job, guys. Congratulations. Very, very cool. Much, very good. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks, Scott. We right now have on screen the 4990. Let me get the name of that person here. My eyes are not wanting to see. David Answorth making his way through the desert for the finish tonight but i am going to step away and the infamous miss emmy hall she's going to step in for me jim you get emmy back i do you surrounded do. by beautiful ladies all day it's my, my job doesn't get any better than this really does it <laughs> fantastic awesome. racing wonderful hosts perfect well jim thanks it was a pleasure to be in here with you again and i will catch you later and miss emmy it's all yours. Have fun. Thank you very much, Pam. And still the action continues here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. We've still got cars making their way into Hammertown. 107 vehicles left the line this morning at 8 a.m. Uh, race course is hot until 6 p.m. And then we have an allowance for adjusted time. Emmy, it's nice to see you back in the booth. How are you today? It is very nice to be here, Mr. Marsden. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Pam Hall. She is my sister from another Mista. We seem to have a lot of halls in off-road racing. There's me, there's Pam Hall, there's Shelby Hall. Chad Hall. Chad Hall. All kinds of halls, halls, halls. Yep, and the late Rod Hall. There's that 499 car. You know, the, it, 
it is dusk now. The, the sun is set behind that mountain. If I were these guys, I would be starting to panic a little bit because racing at night is not my jam. Now you see, I love racing at night. Ooh, I do not. But there we are. Right, okay, the next car in is likely to be Michael Adams, which is the 4997, currently showing, just working his way into Turkey Claw. <laughs> and we will keep bringing in vehicles all the time that the race course is live. And Scott will interview them on the stage. It's a family thing here at King of the Hammers. And we always bring home our races. <laughs> Jim, you'll not believe this, but I can't have that slice of pizza that you offered me because I just broke my chair. Good grief. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to have to take the Twinkies out of here. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It is time for me to do some more sit-ups, everybody. All right, here we go. I, I think some might be. You know what? You are the, <laughs> you are the worst person I know. <laughs> today <laughs> all right david ainsworth there again we've got a good line on him with our drone coverage here at the 2023 koh king of the hammers powered by optima batteries but look already how effective his lights are out there that gives you an idea how dark it actually is out on those trails yeah. our drones the cameras themselves they pick up the extra light but you can see how much the lights are actually lighting up the track in front of that vehicle which gives you a very strong idea of how dark it is starting to get out there in these gullies yeah now i know that a lot of people do like racing at night because they focus and they just see what is in front of them and they're just trying not to outrun their lights but for me i like to read the terrain that's around and once it gets dark that's all you have to go off of is what is directly in front of you and that really scares the boopies out of me uh, it depends on the lights that you're using. So there are so many fantastic light companies out here. Uh, light companies like Triple R, Rigid, just to name a couple, Baja Designs, KC. The list goes on and on and on. And the technology in the lights these days, mostly LEDs, a few HIDs still out there, but yep. not many these days. It's usually the LEDs, and they're so clever. Yep. My uh, off-road Miata has got a set of hella L um, uh, HIDs. <laughs> And they're not even aimed, so one's like really far out and one's hitting right down at the bottom. And I'm like, you got to get this light situation figured out. So I believe I've got a set coming from Rigid, which is pretty, I'm super stoked on that. Might actually be able to see where the heck I'm going the next time I drive that car. <laughs> I'm just checking out the tracker right now. It looks like Michael Adams is in the middle of Turkey Claw right now. And if everything goes to plan, he should be joining us in around about eight minutes time here in Hammertown. I'm just looking further back on our tracker, and I can see that David Ainsworth for the car 4990. Yep, he's the one that we've got on screen right now. Yeah, I mean, he's still working his way right around the back of the rock trails. He's going to be punching out through and back into the desert, but he's at least 30 to 40 minutes away. Yeah, but what a relief for him. He's gotten out of the majority of the rocks now, and he's going to have some of that open desert that's a little bit easier to drive. He can get a little bit more speed, but again, when the lights go down and the moon comes up, it can be a whole different story out there in the desert. So here we are at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship presented by Progressive. Remember, later on this evening, we're going to have a whole bunch of live entertainment over on the Monster Energy stage. So if you're camping out here in Hammertown, there is plenty to do once the lights go down and the racing stops. There is. There's no place quite like Hammertown at night. Got the monster jeeps running around, limousines. Yeah, I saw that lifted limousine at BFG last yeah, night. Yeah, and JT's new ride. Oh. The big, the, the big, <laughs> the monster is, dodge. That is nuts. So, I do know that the Gambler folks, uh, they were planning on arriving tonight. They're camping up at Turkey Claw. So if you guys see a bunch of weird, like, lifted crown Vicks, uh, cars that are lifted that maybe shouldn't be lifted and they look like, well, can I say S-boxes? <laughs> on the live show you all know what i mean anyway we'll start seeing those cars around in hammertown for the next couple of days uh, we always like when the gambler folks come because they do a lot of good trash picking up uh along with tread lightly and they are i know they are sponsored by the ford <clears throat> wild peak fund okay so as the shadows start to lengthen here at the 2023 Can-Am UTV Championships at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. 
Let's cut back to some of the highlights of this amazing race.
Okay, it sounds like we got another finisher coming into town about now. We are live here racing until 6 o'clock. That is 16 minutes according to my clock. But don't forget, Emmy, we also have to allow for adjusted time. And we still have races out there on the course right now. But we are watching. That is number 49, 4997. That is Mitchell, Michael Adams coming in. It sounds like, sounds like he's got a fan club out here at Hammertown. Are those our Michael Adams fans out there? Yeah, yeah buddy! Cheering for their driver. You know, it takes a village to get a car across the line here at King of the Hammers. There we go. Come on, Michael Adams fans. So it's cool to have that whole team here watching their friend, their brother, their father, their son come on into town. And that's what it's all about. We keep bringing these vehicles home. One at a time. Been a fantastic day of racing here. We're going to get Michael Adams up on stage. And he is going to be talking to Scott very soon. Now, Emmy, how relieved do you think he's going to be? He's avoided having to drive all this in way in the dark. He managed to get through Turkey Claw, punch his way down the saddle, and get back to Hammertown before the shadows really finally lengthen into full darkness. Yep, arriving at the perfect time. We've got the campfire going. We're going to have the Monster Energy stage live here in just a bit. So it's the perfect time to bring your car in, grab yourself a frosty beverage, and have some fun at Hammertown at night. Or as I like to call it, Hammertown after dark. Ooh. All right, so... I think you've just in invented an entire new series. <laughs> Hammertown After Dark. Oh, you know, come on. All of this stuff, that crazy stuff that goes on here once the sun goes down. Can't talk about it on here. That right? is 100% a whole new... That's a whole other Oprah. No, it's very, very true into, indeed. The fire pit is the center of Hammertown at night. We have stretched limos. We have lifted trucks, monster jeeps. I've even seen tanks driving around Hammertown at you night. Saw, I have not seen a tank. That's pretty cool. I've seen those Mercedes Benz, like a like kind of a Pinsgauer military thing. Ah, oh, that'd be I've a Unimog. I've seen those guys. No, no, no. It wasn't a Unimog though. I've seen some Unimogs, but I've also seen some other Mercedes Benz, like World War II stuff, crawl, crawling around. It's oh, pretty cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, 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 like I, a, I, a forward cab thing. They're they're right at the end of Boone Road. Oh, okay. You know Boone Road. The big road. Uh, yeah, the I did, one but road. coming on the right stage right now, it is Michael Adams, and he is going to be joined by Scott any moment. Scott, what do you got for us? Here's going on down here in the whole nine yards. Very, very popular finish. I'm going to give it a little up to you. It's your decision. Do you want to get out or not? There's something special about this car that uh, and this driver that everybody needs to know about. This is a hand-controlled car. He went all day long with the hand controls. And just look at him right now. Still has the energy to do this. This is what the Hammers is all about. Look at this man right here. Michael, you look like you've been through hell out there. I think I have. Oh. That was brutal. What was it like, man? Uh, Got a little arm pump going on to you? Oh, I can barely <laughs> even hold my right hand. Um, it was brutal. It was fun. I More than I ever thought it would be. So this is your first hammers? First hammers. No kidding. I haven't been in a car in 10 years, 11 years. So first time back in. So there's more to this story than just being at hammers. There's like this whole... Gosh, I would love to know what that's all about. But, man, welcome to the finish line. You have done what a lot of people never accomplish, and that's finish. Yeah, I have to thank a lot of people. Wherever Jim is, Jim and Tracy, they're the team owner, and they, uh, it's their car. So we built it. Big thank you to them. Um, ZRP, that's front end. Everything is from ZRP. A uh, huge thanks to... Uh, Rugged Works, Rugged Radios, PRP. Which, is your wife down here? No. Pearl Source. 
my co-driver. Big thanks to my co-driver, Austin. Last minute, he came up and jumped in the car, helped me build it. So Pro Source Machinery, one of our great sponsors, everything. So, uh, and our pit crew. You can see him down there. Oh, they've been screaming. Every time you popped up on the video coming into Hammertown, they kind of lost their you-know-what. Well, yeah, good. <laughs> they did awesome. So, Levi, it's your turn tomorrow. <laughs> Is he out here? Levi, you, oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, he's, he kind of threw the gauntlet down on you, man. Okay. It's going to be a long ride home. Yeah. <laughs> No, thank you, everybody, and I mean, this just proved to you you can't quit. They told me I would never walk again. I'm standing here on stage winning this, not winning, but finishing this race. It's a win. That's a win. So. Well, with everything you guys had going on this afternoon, how many times did you make him work? Way too many. All of them. All of them. <laughs> All of them. We, we started on a brand new belt. We never changed a belt all day and took one tire. So, good job. Thanks to Maxis for the tires, but yeah, we, he didn't have to do that, but he had to winch a lot <laughs> and pull rope. He's really good at it. At least now, right? <laughs> so, well, here it is. Congratulations. You're a finisher of what a lot of people have never accomplished. Of King of the Hammers. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> Time to celebrate, guys. Oh, Come on up. All right, that is Michael Adams in the 4997 vehicle. You know, that's pretty cool going tr tr doing this whole race with hand controls. Sounds like he's been coming back from a pretty big accident, and he's proven them wrong. He's walking again. He's in a car again, and he is finishing the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship here at King of the Hammers. Yeah, that's remarkable stuff. And I'm just looking on the tracker right now. And I can see that we have one more car that is possible or capable of being able to make it to the finish before the cutoff for this race. And that is David Ainsworth in the 4990, who's currently at race mile 115. Ooh, that's going to be close. We've got eight minutes left. He's at race mile 115, so he's, he's way far back coming uh, west. I'll just stop you there, Emmy. Let's not forget we also have adjusted time as well. You are so it correct. depends on his starting position. We're going to have to have a look at that, see where his adjusted time might be, uh, so we can actually work out if he can make it back to Hammertown in time. But he needs to be kissing that skinny, pe skinny pedal and burying it to the floor. Yeah, absolutely. So David Ainsworth from DD Racing, he looks to be the next person who is possibly going to be able to uh, cross the finish line here. Other than that, we still have a lot of folks in the rocks which is, woo, really scary once this sun goes down. I mean, look at this shot here from Means Butte over Hammertown. You can see all of the lights are happening. All of got the fireworks are absolutely going to start get going off at, at one moment. I think I already heard some fireworks happening already. But, yeah, look at all of those cars still out there in the rocks. We've got cars in Wrecking Ball, cars near Jackhammer. I mean, it is, it, that is not a place I would want to be right now. Yeah, I'm having a quick tot up at the moment. I reckon we've still got over 30 vehicles still stuck in the rock trails at the moment. Most of them have got little red uh, triangles on them, and that means that they are stationary. So that means that they are probably nursing a broken vehicle. But right now it's about David Ainsworth from DD Racing. And he's made it round now past race mile 120. So and when was the last time his tracker updated? His tracker updated literally momentarily ago. So let's see where he is. I think he might make it. Depends on his adjusted time. Yeah, exactly. Let me uh, grab the papers and let me do some math. Oh, oh, my goodness. We're doing math up here in the booth. Well, we would be if I could see. <laughs> I shall break out the... Uh, I'm not allowed, I'm, are we allowed to use brand names? I shall break out the iPhone of Doom. And see if we can uh, work this out. Oh, you can call it a fruit-based phone. A fruit-based fruit phone. I like that. A fruit-based phone. Yes. yes. So car 4990, let's see if we can figure out when he started. 
We uh, actually have a lot of uh, papers in the booth. I think we need to give this booth a little cleanup. <laughs> It looks like he went off the line around 8.24 this morning. So uh, he, so he's got until 6.24 to make it across the finish line here at King of the Hammers. We're going to be confirming that with race ops, but hopefully David will actually make it into Hammertown on time. Uh. So we have to say thank you for David, keeping us working until the last moment of the day. <laughs> Joking aside, it'll be fantastic to bring him home. We want to see him back here in Hammertown. We want to be able to reward him and say congratulations for completing the 2023 Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. So tonight at 6.30, right after this race course closes, we're going to have local anthology live at the Monster Energy stage, followed by at 8.30 p.m. Spray Allen, and then at 10.30 our headliners Sublime with Realm. That is all happening down at the Monster Energy stage. So if you're camping out here, um, you're not going to get any sleep tonight, just FYI. Okay, so we're just bringing in the tracker here. If you look at the top of your screen there, you'll see David Ainsworth, 4990, DD Racing. And this is the only car that's capable of still being able to finish this course today. He is got to be back here by 6.20 p.m. We've just had that confirmed by Race Ops. So the race is on, Emmy. The race is indeed on. So his tracker updated at about right, right before 7, uh, 5.54 currently showing 556 so that tracker is oh. oh well look at that just updated and the magic of technology oh my goodness it's just not so heading at just about 30 miles an hour right there now this is a fast section of the course so he should be able to blow through this fairly quickly he's got one more rock trail which is turkey claw which will be a downhill descent towards the saddle and be able to make his way back to Hammertown to join us here on stage And while we're waiting for David and see if he can actually complete this battle and make his way back to Hammertown, we're going to have a look at some highlights from earlier today.
Sometimes, adventure is a road. A ribbon of dirt winding through the woods, or a strip of pavement disappearing over the horizon. More often than not, how we travel these roads is the adventure. Move confidently. Journey often and stand strong when the pavement ends. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. That's the fire pit in front of us, and today has been the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship race. It's 6.20 at the moment, and our final runner that could possibly make it back to town in time is David Ainsworth. Emmy. It looks like he is not going to make it in, although that tracker hasn't updated in four minutes, but I'm not sure that that is going to be a four-minute run from where he is there around Turkey Claw and into town. So that is just a heartbreaking uh, problem here for David Ainsworth. He's going to miss the cutoff by just minutes. Yeah, but that is always the hard part about this result, that these races are tough from start to finish. But let's have a quick look at our top 10. This is the overall top 10 from today. No, no it's not. Sorry, I do apologize. This is the Pro Stock Turbo UTV class. In 10th position is Ben Cahill. 9th position, Jason Weller. In 8th is Byron Starrett. 7th, Luis Leon Gonzalez. 6th is William Martin. 5th is David Ziza. In fourth is Brian Deegan. Third is Cody Miller. In second, it was his brother, Hunter Miller. And first place is Mr. Kyle Cheney. So that is a great run here. And now we've got the 4900 Can-Am Pro Mod UTV. Tenth place, number 52, Ronnie Anderson. In ninth is a single seater, of De Dennis Dermas. Ten, our favorite there, Cameron Steele. In seventh, it's Thor himself, Terry Madden. Number six, Robert Parker. In fifth, it was our fastest qualifier, Jay Shaw. Number fourth, another single seater, Travis Zollinger. In third, it's Dustin Battleaxe Jones. And second place, again, a single seater, Mr. Cole Clark. And in first position, it was Phil Blurton. 
That is a stellar list of names there, Jim. Looks like there is a lot of a uh, lot of great competition out there. Now we come to the Can-Am Open UTV, and in tenth place is R.J. Anderson. In ninth is Joshua Smith. Eighth place, C.J. Greaves. In seventh, it was Bryce Menzies. Now, just before we go on any further, you'll notice that those last four there, they only have one lap listed against them. So they actually only completed one lap and not the full course. The top six is as follows, and they completed the course. So sixth place, we've got Joe Gould. In fifth, it's Trey Price. Fourth place, Ronald Beck. In third, it's Michael Lee. Second place, Shannon Campbell. And in first place is Dakar winner himself and no stranger to these hills, Casey Curry. All right, so Jim, have we updated on our tracker? Where is our 4990 truck, or UTV rather? Well, I'm looking at the moment and he's still looking like that he's heading into Turkey Claw. So it does look... It must be absolutely agonizing for his friends and family look watching, but it does look like David Ainsworth is not going to make it back here before the official finish of this race. Oh, that is just heartbreaking, heartbreaking there. Now we're going to go to our uh, list of Can-Am Sportsman stock in sixth place, Martin Duffy. Now, just going to note here that the, uh, the six to three have only completed one lap. So in sixth position, it was Martin Duffy. In fifth, it's Ben Collier. Fourth place, Robert Moen. In third, it's De um, Dylan Heiser. Second place, Hubert Rowland. And he has completed course, but in first, it's Brian Tilton. And in the next class, it looks like we only had one finisher, and that would be Kyle Anderson. But here in fourth place, Tim Mo Moyon? Moyonic? In third is Anthony Yout. <laughs> Second place, AJ Hoover. And that is in the 4900 Can-Am Pro Stock NA UTV. And A next we've got our overall top 10. These are the leaders in all classes here, starting with number 10 in the number two car, Casey Curry. In ninth is Robert Parker. Eighth place, Jay Shaw. And seventh, our highest place single seater, Travis Zollinger. Sixth place, 221, Cody Miller. In fifth, it's Hunter Miller. Fourth place, Dustin Jones. In third is Cole Clark, who is actually our highest place single seat vehicle. <laughs> Apologies. Second place, Phil Blurton. And in first, he gave everyone a schooling today. It is Kyle Cheney. Three-time back-to-back winner here at the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Just wow. And look at that, finishing it in three hours, 31 minutes, and 45.3 seconds. That is so fast. Our top five cars all came in under four hours. Okay, it's been a fantastic day of racing here at the Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers 2023. It's been the Can-Am UTV Hammers Championship. Tomorrow at 8 a.m. will be the four-wheel parts everyman challenge. Then on Saturday, it's the big one. It will be the Nitto Race of Kings powered by Optima Batteries where you'll see your 4400 superstars live on track. Do not miss the action. Join us here live at Johnson Valley. We look forward to seeing you then. Have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you very soon. Good night, everybody from Hammertown.